good and you've also got like fantastic aesthetics going on like there's there's stuff to be praised in every episode Shirley walker's music is is really good as well so or is it <gasps> maybe that'll be the separate hot take it's creating conversation is horrible no stop it Lore? just play jay's video and we all leave well I wish, you know, but Jay's going to come after us. <laughs> you've you've already done response. too much. We, we should just like okay, take pictures fuck. of our chairs and set them as our profile pictures for an EFAP. <laughs> I think people, it would be a good meme for a minute and then people get very upset, I think. <laughs> We're not here for the chairs. Wow. Can't no. say, you can't say that in my, in my, on my stream. One of the chair PFPs could be the chair that uh, Falcon summons into. No, sorry, uh, Batch Rock summons into existence to kick against Falcon's shield. <laughs> I wonder if they'll bring him back. No, he's definitely dead. <laughs> like, why not? Nah, he's he's gone. He he doesn't get a second chance. Oh, wow. I guess he got a second chance. He didn't get a third chance. Well, no, because remember, he almost died in the opening of episode one, so maybe that counts as his second. Batrock had his chances. So like, he had, like, four chances. That bastard. Jeez. Yeah, he just wouldn't die. Remember when Cap was like, all right, Batrock, let's have a fair fight when I'm trying to prevent you from taking all of this technology and having these people hostage? I will indeed drop my, yeah, my uh... helmet and my shield for you. Very bizarre, but in the, in the the film, the confirmed bad film, The Winter Soldier. Oh, <laughs> that, was, that was that was one of many. Which is it, like genuinely, that doesn't seem right for Cap, does it? No, it doesn't seem like he he's not the kind of person to put his sort of reputation like before actually just saving lives. It's more interesting when the villain does it than the hero. Like, yeah, because they uh, yeah. got a bit more ego. Like, yeah, they want to yeah. want to prove it. It's kind of juvenile. It's like what you'd imagine like someone with an advantage would do like on a playground. It's just like it doesn't seem right for that type it, of a situation, be, especially for I guess it would be one thing if like they had already rescued all the hostages basically, like Batrock's basically lost. Yeah. Like I, I think even then, then, it'd make I, it work for Cap to do it. I was going to say it still feels weird for Steve Rogers to do that. I just don't know that he does anything like that ever. I I it's like I it's kind of like twisting a knife. I think that there's there's a context where it works for Steve Rogers. It's just not in the Winter Soldier that we got, because the Winter Soldier is very bad. It's well, a guilty pleasure of mine, but it's very bad. I was going to say that, that scene certainly not, because like he needs to save people's lives. He needs to prevent these people from having this back in their ship. So it's like you got stuff to do, buddy. Um, but maybe a particular circumstance. Yeah, sure. I don't know. Hello, everyone. Chat's all there. How you doing? Oh my goodness. Look, look at our PFPs. We're all we're all kitted out to take on a starfish. Or possibly an empress mm -hmm. lady with a laser beam. Oh no! Could be no, any of them. None of that. <laughs> the, the, the hula dancing, right? Oh yeah, yeah. She does a bit of that. And her yeah. brother as well. Don't, don't forget him. We got um, we got Blade Runner man with us too. You could you could easily have that avatar could easily just be something out of a Zack Snyder movie. Nobody would be able to tell. <laughs> I feel like yeah. that. Dark and rainy and super serious. Yes, we're um we're back with our this is the DC crew essentially with um Cap is unable to make it, capital opinions, thus replaced uh with Evan and Meme. Uh Evan being um very into the DC universe, big fan. We brought him on to sort of try and counter our negativity. And then Meme <laughs> is the guy who edits a lot of it, so he's very aware of the um Let's just say incredible filmmaking techniques throughout the sh the, the series. So. See, mm. that was that was him. Pain is a yeah. Pain is a technique. It's an emotion, right? <laughs> it's a feeling. Yeah. It's, it's an idea. Well, a beautiful idea. Right. Um, we're all here today because DC came out with another one. They did it again. Oh. Got another movie. Yeah. We, we took bastards. a break from Marvel, which was nice. Because for our mental health. <laughs> <laughs> well, some might say, you know, wow, you're going to jump from Marvel to DC? You, you, you're trying to make everything worse? And so I, I figure, much in the same way we do it with uh, EFAP movies, why don't we just jump right in and we'll do a, like, one to two sentences each of uh, overall feelings on this, this movie, The Suicide Squad. Then Ooh. we will break it down chronologically. 
with a bit of jumping ahead and jumping back. So hopefully people who haven't seen it can follow along. And those who have can enjoy a bit of uh, banter about what was working and what wasn't. Or if all of it was working or if all of it wasn't. And then um, then we'll probably do Super Chats. So uh, if, if, that, if that works for all of you guys, we could go left to right. I don't no, see why not. Um, or should we, should we go um, right to left? Or should we go middle to the left, to the right to the left, to the right to the left to the right? I don't know. We always go left to right. I just don't know, I don't know if you guys... Is that, is that a right? You know right. what? I, I just don't feel that strongly about what order we go. I, so I, I will need you to vote. to y'all. I need you to vote. I, like, let's go, let's go. go from left to right. Yeah. All right, Evan, All off right. you go. Uh, I think this is in a very good direction for the DCEU. I don't like it's it's a it's a it's they clearly let James Gunn do what he wanted to do. And he has a lot of freedom in terms of like how he wrote the script, how he directed the movies. The characters are pretty solid for the most part, but the plot is basically non-functional as far as I'm concerned. And it it's not good, but it is better than what the DCU usually pumps out and certainly anything that the MCU pumps out. So. I would call it a step in the right direction, basically. You're by by saying anything that the MCU pumps out, you're referring to anything that the MCU I, pumps out nowadays, right? Yeah, recently, like post Endgame, as far as I'm concerned, like the the stuff that's uh, Phase uh, Four, including that... Endgame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> well, hey, hey, dude, including let's like, include Black Panther, Captain Marvel, you know? Well, yeah, include Captain Marvel there. What about including that's... the Incredible Hulk? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure the Incredible watches. Hulk probably stands up okay compared well, to what's coming out nobody right here remembers that movie come on like, i've never I, seen I, it i remember <laughs> that movie like, it has like, tim roth, oh, tim roth the, is in it yeah the fight at the end isn't he gonna be in Ab abomination is he gonna be in that uh legend of the ten rings movie like, <laughs> yeah, isn't he in the yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's gonna so, be in, in she hulk too the fan favorite back, so. well, it'll be so weird i they, they didn't explain even what happened to him at the end of that movie <laughs> Um, yeah, he went to the rap. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think the trifactor in the MCU of movies nobody can remember the plot line of is The Incredible Hulk, Thor 2, and Ant Man and the Wasp. Those are the three yeah. movies where everyone's like, yeah. fuck, Those it was about. Real. Yeah, see, some people don't believe they're real. That's, that's where we're at. Sludge. <sighs> um. Because, like, Huge. I think Ant Man and Thor 1 are genuinely, like, I remember them way better than their sequels. I definitely remember. Ant Man won more than the Ant Man Wasp Lady. Ant Man quantum. Wasp Lady. Ant Wasp. Yeah. Um, Bug right. Carnival. Fringy, now you. I really like this movie. Um, all of its plot issues aside, I think it's got great characters. And I will be totally happy if we, if this is like, if, if, if we get more of this. Uh, going forward, um, because like, yeah, all, all issues with the plot, of which there are plenty. It has great characters, and that's worth a lot. Um, so yeah, I, I really like it. It's like a would recommend, definitely. All right, um, I'm in the same boat as if this were the worst it gets, I would be a very happy movie watcher. Um, I think we're in a really yeah. good position with this movie for getting characters right. The, the plot is, it seems like we're all going to be repeating this a little bit, but, you know, the proof yeah. will come. Ooh, boy, that plot. Like, spaghetti. It's everywhere. It's all over the place. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll go over it. Um, yep. But my goodness, did I, I have lots to say on how well I think these characters are written, as well as how strong the dialogue is in lots of places. A lot of the, a lot of the humor. Um, the, the world is like, eh. But um, we got we got a bit of theme going too, so this is this is a bit of a jumbled yeah. mess, and we might finally have an entry on EFAP, but we're not saying it's in the realm of terrible or incredible. It's in a different realm, a middle realm. Oh boy, we'll have to figure out where it sits on there. The dark realm, it's, it's, the dark it's, it's, world. It's not like a dark or light realm. It's just, it's like a grayish realm. It's like sort of the sun's it's, going it's down. In, like you can still see everything on this world. Yeah, it's um, twilight, metal, go. You can only mirror what you already said, basically. Right. Go. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> keep going. Keep going. This right. is 
Oh, yeah, it, uh, I don't know if Metal was finished. Go ahead, was Metal. Say oh, all of the things. <laughs> you don't, say. Like, don't let don't let me stop you, Metal. Keep going. Don't let me get in the way of you letting loose all of your opinions out onto the podcast. Just keep on going. Say what you need to say. Leave no stone unturned. Leave no opinion unspoken. You go ahead. So off you go. Say it. Do it. You got this. See the face that my my profile picture is doing? That's, that's me in real life right now. Just waiting. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> You're going to hit me with a bat, aren't you? <laughs> oh no. <Don't> me. <laughs> Not only will I hit you with a bat, I will do so inexplicably and it will take me 15 minutes. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Um, While everyone closes the distance towards you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good characters, but terrible plot plot. Uh, action scenes are questionable, but sometimes funny. Del so sometimes they're deliberately terrible, almost. I'm not sure, but sometimes it's just really bad. Uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. It's a very funny movie. I I, I laughed a lot. All mm. right, rags go. All right. So, The Suicide Squad is not only the best DCEU movie that has yet been made, it is the best DCEU movie by a considerable margin, with none of the others, I would say, even coming close to the quality that we have here. The plot is pretty bad. It's quite bad, in fact. Um, I wouldn't... I would not unfixably bad. We don't have the kind of just fundamental broken world building issues that we have in a lot of other stuff. The plot is really bad though, needs a lot of work. However, although the plot is pretty terrible, the characters are great. There's a lot of really good character writing here, a lot of good interactions, a lot of work and a lot of care was putting uh, was put into making us care about this cast of characters. It was funny. Um, I, I had a lot of concern and sympathy for the people inside, uh, you know, in the movie in this universe. And with a few exceptions, I think the whole cast was done really, really well. Uh, if this is the, um, if this is kind of the direction the DCEU is headed, then I am on board. I think this is a great step in the right direction. All right, Southpaw. Um, mixed bag. A lot of terrible stuff, but a lot of great stuff as well. Um, it's one of those movies that I'm like giving basically like a four or five out of ten, but it doesn't mean it's like just fine. It's just it's a mixed bag. There's stuff in it that makes me cringe, and there's a lot of stuff in it that I also really really like. And uh, I I rewatched it last night and had an overall good time watching it. Didn't honestly give it a, as much of a critical eye as I gave it the first time. Um, and I just enjoyed, enjoyed it a lot. I can see myself rewatching this one uh, a good number of times in the foreseeable future. Um, and as everyone else has said, plot is uh, just garbage, but the characters really carry this one. So best DCEU movie <clears throat> by a long shot. Uh, most enjoyable one that we've watched thus far um, by a very wide margin. And that's all I really have to say. All right, finally, Meme Repository, what did you think? And here I am, the sourpuss, the hater, the person who doesn't like anything. I really, really, really liked this film. Um, obviously, uh, plot issues out the wazoo, but man the fucking characters in this um not only are they well realized um in a, on a writing level not only do they all have arcs for the most part not only is there a, is there a lot going on thematically they're also just so much more heroic and noble these brutal psychotic supervillains <laughs> than the actual superheroes in this yeah. universe oh it was this was a better Justice League film than Zack Snyder's ever made. This is a better DC film than yeah. Zack Snyder's ever made. This is just a better superhero film than Zack Snyder's ever made. And I was getting legitimately emotional um, in the theater um, watching this. And um, it was uh, one of those things where I knew that I would need to at least give it one more watch through um, because I knew that my objectivity was being compromised by the 
sheer amount of joy um, that it was giving me, though I did spot um, a fair few issues on that first watch through and the second watch through. It highlighted a couple of things um, here and there. Um, but yeah, this has been a blast to watch. Um, it's also just a really um slick and stylistic movie um like the, the it like the style for me the way i would describe it is it could have been really obnoxious but for me it kind of hits that sweet spot where um it kind of hits kind of a verisimilitude ish kind of place where it's kind of incorporated naturally enough that um it was never it never brought me out of the film maybe a couple of cinematography choices here and there but overall the style was very appealing to me and yeah, I just had a I just had a blast watching this film. Um, I think there's stuff worth criticizing, but my goodness, it felt good watching something DC that I really enjoyed again. That's can, can my I, take. Uh, can I just add that these characters who are supposed to be super villains that are basically being forced into this mission are actually better heroes than most of the MCU's heroes at this point. True. Um, the uh, kind yeah. of class yep. DC and Marvel, yeah, for the heroes, yeah. sort of. Not just their actions, but they're also part of their cause. Like a lot of them, very corrupted, and you'll find that because um, portions of the Suicide Squad are where they are for reasons that aren't explicitly like, oh, they're just evil people doing evil things. And it's, it's usually a little bit more complicated. And so they, and um, when thrown in positions where they can save a civilian's life, they will likely make a choice. And Bloodshot did nothing wrong by shooting DCEU Superman Once with a Kryptonite sport. bullet. You meant sport, he yeah. <laughs> Uh, the world sorry, was sport. a safer place. Well, it is he, blood he, shot he, because he's definitely dead shot. I, just I keep, a different I, character. I, I, oh, I just I keep on uh, mixing up. Disagree with you there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Well, no, they it's, it's, they wrote they wrote him differently, but there's there's parts where you can tell that like they he. I feel like he was originally meant to. Wasn't he meant to be Deadshot originally? And they changed. Maybe he was originally going to be that, but he's. A totally I don't think so. I he's, think, a, um, he's a better character. By better far. Oh yeah. Will Smith was. From early on, I think Will Smith said that he wasn't gonna be doing this one. No, as far as I'm so, aware. I think they. So, from what I understand, originally the plan was that they were just gonna have a recast, but then they changed. They changed their mind and decided to create a brand new character. I think well, they wanted to have Will Smith still around in case they want him to come back as Deadshot instead of other movies. I think that's one of the reasons why they changed it as well. So, well, so... it's funny because. <laughs> During the, the 2016 Suicide Squad coverage, um, we, we noted, like, you know, Death's, sorry, uh, Deadshot would probably be able to take on uh, Superman by himself if you just give him some kryptonite bullets. And then Bloodsport, he just, he did that off screen. He's the fucking Chad. And he almost uh, rid this world of the, the most horrible tyrant that it's ever seen. Great. Um... Just There's going to be, the head. we'll probably have a couple of uh, controversial topics to go through instead of just trying to rush through them all immediately. We'll try and do our best to have them come out naturally. For example, uh, was Harley handled better in this film than any other? That's a, that's one of the topics a lot of people discuss. Was Bloodsport a copycat? Um, and how do we define that? We'll go over that. Uh, what does it mean for a story to have a completely broken plot but incredibly consistent characters? And does this movie qualify as that? Or someone else we're going to have to go through? And then, of course, just, like, essentially character profiles. Like, um, going through a lot of the main ones in this. But, like, when do we choose to do that? Is it after we've got enough references from going through chronologically? Is it when they meet the end of their story? Whatever that might mean. It's gonna be a little bit complex. You know how it goes. We'll do our best. Um, but I figure, if everyone's alright with it, we'll just, we'll just start as though we've got one person in this call who's never seen the movie before. And we'll, uh, their name is Chat. What's his and we're name? gonna have to... We have to talk. Maybe chat's an acronym. It's a really long name. Oh, yeah. and chat uh, Howard, Cornelius Howard, uh, Anthony uh, Ty uh, Tiberius. Tiberius. Pretty cool name. Um. Yeah. So just yeah. don't let me say it again. <laughs> you probably forgotten. <laughs> it's like yeah. So the, they're in <laughs> chat. They're thinking, what's what's going on? Um. You know what's what's happening in this movie. So. You remember the original in 2016? I call it the original. It's probably what we're going to do from now on. How could we forget, Muller? Yeah, How could we forget? It wasn't even that long that we gave our coverage of it, actually. <laughs> um, a well, horrible well, movie. I was, well, I was referring to just how memorable it was in general. Yeah. I mean, I could have seen it 10 years ago, and I wouldn't have been able to burn it from my memory. Um, it's there forever. <clears throat> and I have you to thank. And so, yeah, and, and so you guys know that we weren't 
fond of it. Um, in fact, what did we pull as positive it from it? It was very a few small, tiny bits of pieces. I'm not. I can't remember. I, can I think. We, what we, was that? Like, like um, Diablo having some kind of through line. That was a positive, right? Oh, yeah. Diablo yeah. kind of had a, a little bit of a character. Yeah, that was our praise for it. Is that one of the characters actually was sort of a character, kind of? Yeah, and yeah. I've already seen someone saying like, really, just because a character has an arc, that just automatically makes it good. And it's, it's like, it's funny. The praise I'll be giving to the characters in the Suicide Squad, it's not specifically about whether or not they have arcs. It's that they're consistent. That is going to be my main way of uh, praising them. The way that they behave and what choices they make with what information Mind we have. Raising a show Diablo's arc was kind of rushed, especially the way that he uh, refers to the Suicide Squad as his family, um, which was not earned at all by the text of the, of the film. Um, but it was still more than anything that we got from the other characters. Oh, sorry. Slipknot was really good as well, yeah. A lot of people point that out. Um, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That guy can climb anything. He was fucking great. Uh, Best character, most consistent the in the movie, for certain. Would have been nice if he had like yeah. a son <clears throat> that turned up in this movie or something. He's the exact same actor. Just his son. Not slip. And then he dies, and no. then he had a son in the third one. Just keep going. That's the way to explain it. No one's going to question anything. Is, is our EFAT movies on Suicide Squad? Is it out? Am I living not, in some strange fever dream? Not or... the Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. Oh, the first one, it is out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> no, it isn't. Yeah, it is. It isn't? Yeah, it it is. Is. I'm, it I'm, is. I'm gaslighting rags. I don't know. Again. Someone, <laughs> someone needs to. I mean, the, I don't know. I was gonna say this is gonna work because I could see it, but like, <laughs> just... <laughs> well, rag, I can confirm no, that we I... were in the same call when you were watching. Um, e just, I know that rags was so, unsure, so. and I wanted to gaslight him like we were doing during that that EFAT movies because that was yeah. very fun. Um, I, just can't remember. I don't really have much of a. I mean, I mean, I hope it is. That would be cool. I remember that was great. But right now, I just the suicide all I feel is are, just, I I'm surrendering despair. I mean, I don't know. It's just, I'm just a poker. I, I, I just... Man, my <laughs> that thought disappeared very quickly. I'm just <laughs> so I think it was some. So we're talking about like Suicide Squad. What is there that's like actually meaningful to be pulled from that film? Um, like, if we I were all writing like the sequel, what would you take from it? I would huh. discard it. I don't think yeah. that there's anything mm -hmm. particularly valuable. I, I I really don't like that film. Like I don't enjoy that film at all. What I would and be if you were to look at like it Yeah. What all I was gonna mm -hmm. say quickly is what I would be keeping is um not from the film itself, rather it's just the what they're adapting. So like I like the idea maybe of villains who are given a chance to reduce their sentences by doing black ops jobs for the government. It's like, yeah, there's this potential. Yeah, it's, but... it's a cool it's a it's a cool concept. Ooh. Yeah, hmm. that sounds cool. Yeah. Well, this is the thing about The Suicide Squad. Like, is it a sequel to the... F it is, right? It's a sequel to the first one, technically, it's, right? I would I would say it's kind of like a soft reboot in the same way that a lot of things that, where it's it's part of this universe, but, like, you really don't need to know about the first one, and they're kind of ignoring it. I feel like, like there's that's, some that's, things that they want, like the whole flag and Harley stuff, like the right. idea that they're like friends think, or something. Like, I, I think feel like there's what they want... Well, I would say that what they want this film to be is that you don't need to see this, uh, the first one. And in Which that is case, true. You don't like, need yeah, to see the first you one. You don't need to see the no. first one. And I would recommend no. that you don't, because you're not going to get anything out of it. No. I, I, I feel like we're starting fresh when you think about these characters, because it's like, well, do you need to know much about Rick Flag beforehand? It's like, nah, you, you just need to know this Rick Flag, this much better of... Rick Flag. It's kind of like the Croods movies. Like, you don't have to see the first one. The first one's kind of meh, but the second one's really funny. Wait, which movie? Jungle the Croods? Cruise? movies? No, Croods. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Jungle Cruise. Caveman comedies. <laughs> I haven't seen Jungle Cruise because I'm not giving Disney money. I'm not even giving them my time by pirating it. Nobody's giving them the time for that one, from what I hear. Like, very, not a huge amount of people are seeing that. Though, that's a tough one to market, even if we weren't in low marketing well, times, you know, it's like the Jungle I Cruise, guess, like, okay. Isn't mm. Jungle Cruise meant to be like Pirates of the Caribbean? It's, it's, a, it's a ride at like Disneyland, oh, and then they turn it At least with Pirates thing. of the yeah, Caribbean, there's pirates, so there's gonna be some no, sort I of agree. there for it's sure. It's a cool high like, concept. Ooh, it's, yeah. a, it's a cool high concept for sure, like Jungle Cruise, it's like, wait, what is this? Oh, it's like an action adventure. Ah, cruise. 
that's you know when i think about adventures and crazy things i think of cruising on a fucking boat <laughs> yeah <laughs> people don't normally yeah. go on cruises to have action adventures they they I, normally yeah. go on cruises to to relax and I, just lounge I around people, i think people have been like comparing it to the mummy meets the african queen is the well, yeah it's, it's going hearing. for that it's definitely going for that pulpy like 1930s you know adventure thing but i don't know like i don't i don't see why i would want to watch that movie i i, I have no reason to ever see it <laughs> it's probably yeah. never gonna happen uh so yeah anyway drawing out of 2016 vision james gunn took um captain boomerang he took amanda waller harley. he took the concept of the suicide squad existing and harley yeah. um is and that Rick. it? And Rick. Oh yeah, and Rick Flag. Yeah. yeah. Um, why the Suicide Squad worked with Garbage Squad failed. I'm oh, sure Phil Mento weasel. will nail it. I'm sure you'll know exactly. He just uploaded it seven minutes ago. I'm, sh I'm, I'm sure you'll nail it. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, to be fair, I think it's pretty obvious it's going to be a character focus. Whoever's going to compare these mm -hmm. two will talk about the characters. Um, but I wonder if mm -hmm. people will even notice that the plot is not better in this one <laughs> like uh, even the, i don't know how many people criticize the plot of the first one they were mainly going for the characters i think because i think a lot of people just they'll remember characters far more than they will plot lines um it seems like plot maybe. is not of much value when we're talking about superhero stuff it seems like we don't because i mean you know like if people talk about endgame there's never going to be somebody saying i like how well constructed the time heist was that was like really smart and cool like, it was probably the only one thing guy. Would be is like, Tell Mento. Yeah, there, there would be that one guy, but like all the people would be talking about, it was cool that we got the scene where Tony met his dad, or it was yeah. really, can you tell I've been thinking about Endgame? It was really cool that you know, Thor got to meet his mom. It's like, you're thinking about the character moments, it seems like, is the main focus in superhero content, which I guess makes sense, right? It's the namesake of a lot of these movies. Um... So yeah, he, he grabbed those pieces, and this film doesn't waste any time. It basically introduces us with Savant, a new mm. super villain, yeah. or villain in general, I guess. The Michael Rooker, so good old Yondu, but with normal mm -hmm. human skin instead of blue skin. Crazy. He's got some oh scars, God. got really long, like, I guess you'd call it white or like platinum hair, I don't know. Um, and he's got his little outfit. I'm guessing some people know of him from the comics savant I, I don't know i don't know what he does like i'm guessing he's just a good shot that seems to be the idea he um, seems like kind of bullseye the way he's able to ricochet mm. objects mm. yeah the wall and shit bullseye <laughs> nice i've and heard he's also yeah. like a expert planner or something like that i think he was like supposed to be one of the leaders of the the team on the beach right like along with flag so. <laughs> i um, if he did uh, that <laughs> his abilities say genius level intellect exhibits forgetfulness due to chemical imbalance master martial artist computer operation and multilingualism okay wait multilingualism considered a superpower yes um, <laughs> yes do you, do you like fall into like, acid and then like, you well up and the language language. really quickly i, I, was gonna I, say, I mean, guess if he, if, if he like speaks every language on the planet that's pretty impressive Oh, well, I mean, wouldn't they call it, it a different thing rather than multi? At that point, it's like that's understating just how much Omni you can do. Pan, Omni -lingual. And that's still kind of like a, just a skill. It's not really a superpower. You could learn all that. Well, so is being skill. a master martial artist. Oh, yeah. I, I guess. Well, also, I mean, yeah. that's an interesting conversation yeah, on its own. It's like, what does yeah. it mean to qualify as a superhero? Is just being like John Cena, for example, is he a superhero? Oh. Uh, I don't, I'm not even Wikipedia. referring to Peacemaker, I just mean him. Like, is he? It's like, well, he's just strong, right? I don't know. Well, I mean, this is Wikipedia saying ability is not superpowers. True. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, um, he's given a really quick intro, and I feel like this is a self aware sort of meta thing where it's like, hey, if you didn't see the first movie, this is how it works. It's like in bullet point form, essentially. Mm -hmm. is, yeah. um, but actually, really cool instead of literal bullet points on the screen. Yeah, um, yeah. Like well, Waller even movie. literally says that she's like, you know, the drill X Y Z this, and they just they just run through it really quickly. Yeah. Um, and there's this bit, and it was only on the third time watching this that I that I had a thought. They have the first time you see Rick Flag, he's in slow mo, reaching his hand out. I was like, could it be said that this is like James Gunn being like, give him a chance, okay? Give the previous films references. I know you didn't like it. Just, just give him a chance. We're gonna we're gonna try this again. Yeah. All right. 
You're like, okay. Because I'll be honest with you guys, knowing Rick Flag is in this, I was just like, yeah, cool. Mm. Boring Army Man is back. That's fine, I guess. <laughs> like, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. That's fine. Um, I just, I liked. I like Joel Kinnaman as an actor. I've I've seen him in some uh, separate. I'd like the movies aren't great, but his performance is good. So, uh, well, I was gonna so, say the irony there is that I'm not a fan of Jai Courtney, but I like him in this, and mm -hmm. I am a fan of Joel Kinnaman. And I didn't like him in Suicide Squad. You know how it goes, just like oh, yeah. But like with James Gunn, it's like well, we have you know a more capable writer that's gonna hopefully give Kinnaman more uh, more you know good material to work with. So. Yeah. Um, hey, Mr. Candyman. So, Savant being our POV character, he's introduced to the current Suicide Squad, so obviously time has passed, and they've refined the whole idea, and we've still got some left over that we remember, like Mr. Mr. Good old Boomerang, Boom Boomerang. Captain, Captain, Captain Boom. Boomerang. As yeah. Mr. Boom. And, uh, as well as. And, well, I was going to say as well as Harley Quinn, um, <laughs> And she uh, actually yeah. refers to him as Boomer, and they have like a back and forth, and that's like the clearest evidence that the first film's not been retconned. It exists. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Gonna be yeah, there. Yeah, Don't it's... worry. So Those who loved it. Like a, <laughs> like a throwaway line to account for how Harley is incarcerated again when she wasn't at the end of Birds of Prey. Yeah, they. She well, said she. Yeah. Didn't she say something like I totaled a car in a bank or something? Yeah. Like a. She got road rage yeah. at a bank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad line. It's just like. And she's in, and she even, um, I think there's like a sort of hello to Rick as well to imply that those two are on relatively good terms. They're not like find each other annoying or anything. Mm -hmm. um, Which is a testament to his patience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we have new characters. Um, yes. Now, All of these again, classic. we're going to we're gonna do this as, assuming the person in this call has not seen this movie, okay? So we're just going to really, this is, this is pretty... Like, there's lots of information to take in at once, so don't blame you if it's difficult to follow us. But I think the film does a really good job of getting you right in real quick. Um, apparently it's, a, it's like an SNL comedic actor, is it Peter Davidson or something? Peter Davidson, yeah. He plays Black God. He's got a bunch of pistols, and looks like he'd be um, considered just similar to Savant and others, where they're, they're just weapons experts. It's like a mm. tier of superhero. Um, he has his guns like... Um... What's his face? Oh, uh, in the Mandalorian. Yeah, um, fuck, I've forgotten his name. Damn. Oh, um, Bill Burr's character. Yeah, what's his name? Yeah, just Bill Burr. Bill Burr's character. Just Bill, Bill, Burr. Burr. Bill Burr. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Burr Baggins. Someone in chat will know. Someone will remember because they like that show. Bill Mayfield. Burr there Baggins. you go. Mayfield. Um. Mayfield. Then you got like orange woman with weapons. Mongal. Orange Mon Mongal. Um, you got jav with javelin. javelin. Yeah, Javelin Man with a Javelin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got Nathan Fillion playing TDK. Dark um, Knight? I suppose. <laughs> Batman's in this? Well, yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. I guess we'll, no, we'll, no, we'll explain what that... Jam, it's the Dunk Knight. For those who just... I mean, I was going to say, if anyone's in chat without knowing stuff, the rest of the chat will probably tell them anyway. But we'll get to it in case you're just listening. Hmm. He's called TDK. Mm -hmm. And then... We've got, yeah. uh, that's, that's everyone except, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's Very not new it's just, there's one more character, one more member of the Suicide Squad, he's called Weasel. <laughs> Weasel's, great. And we, Weasel's uh, my favorite. We are introduced to him by him screaming at the top of his lungs, <laughs> he's getting <laughs> out man. Yeah, this should be appreciated, actually, I'll see if I can play it on the stream, it's so I've, fucking... Your okay, yeah, to, yeah, Weasel is I've, my I've, spirit animal. I've affectionately, yeah. I've affectionately nicknamed him uh, Murder Scrat. I am Murder Weasel. Oh, I just like calling him Weasel. I like Weasel, I, yeah. He's, he's Weasel, yeah. So, for those who haven't seen this, the, the, Savant looks at all these people, <laughs> the camera pans around, and uh, give it a sec, actually. <laughs> Copyright makes this so difficult. Especially with music. <laughs> that's, that's how you first meet him. He's just screaming. <laughs> 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 Sean Gunn plays him, right? He has yep. to, yeah. Yes. Yeah, James Gunn. Sean Gunn yeah. also plays another character who I got a little bit giddy when I saw them for like three seconds. Um. So yeah, these guys are gearing up, and um, we get you good old-fashioned. When you have a, a group of people, 
they were just in an enclosed oh. space and they back and forth thing so we get to understand what's going on with this lot mm -hmm. um and then you know there's some fun there's some fun bits of dialogue like um asking tdk what it stands for it said it stands for me it's my name and then uh he's like your name is letters and he's like all names are letters you idiot or something like that it's just a good old all fashioned names are letters you kid yeah. And um and then fucking uh, black guy being like, is that a dog <laughs> about weasel? <laughs> <laughs> and you have the oh, obvious response of like, down. how the fuck do you think that's a dog? And then uh, TDK in the background is like, I think it's a Afghan, Afghan hound. Afghan hound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen an Afghan hound with uh, with thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> And um, you know that's intercut as well with the Suicide Squad handlers, all the people in like the tech room and stuff. They're betting on who's gonna live and who's gonna die, which feels like yeah. it would very much be a thing. And can I quickly say, yeah. um, with just a few quick like dialogue exchanges, we were already liking all of these characters way more than detailed, lengthy backstories on most of the characters besides Slipknot and Katana. Yeah, in the original Suicide Squad. Well, I mean, I feel like that's, I don't know how much more backstory you need for the man who can climb anything. Honestly, <laughs> I feel like, that, I feel like that's the, that's the important thing, right? Is like backstory doesn't really tell me anything. Like, I need to see what they're doing right now. Like, yeah, who are they right now? See, Slipknot, he had an uncle who died and told him that you know, with with great climbing comes great responsibility. <laughs> great rope responsibility. <laughs> Yes. He died in a rock climbing accident, and then he's like, I will climb anything. I will be better than my dad. Um, <laughs> now, relating to the whole the dog conversation, uh, Harley suggests he could be a werewolf, and we have what is my favorite back and forth in this whole sequence where he's panicking about being a werewolf, <laughs> and um, Rick yeah. Flagg is like, he's not a werewolf. He's a weasel. He's harmless. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's killed 27 <laughs> children. <laughs> <laughs> And then he just goes, look. And then the best part is like, well, but I think he's I, he's agreed to do this. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I think he's he did. <laughs> I think he ends up saying he's with, sure. I think. It's, it's fucking great. Yeah. Like, it's <laughs> basically the, the joke being we have no idea what Weasel cares about, what he's doing. He's just here. <laughs> like, it's, it's just terrifying to other, other people. <laughs> And just making these weird sounds. Yeah. Jumping up in its feet. <laughs> chittering noises. Yeah. Um, and so, fantastic. yeah, like, this is the thing. When we were watching it, I was just like, man, I'm already into this quite a bit. This is, like, you, you keep me really entertained with this fucking weasel creature. Like, what the hell is this? Yeah, it's so unusual. <laughs> He's, um... And, you know, again, like, once, once the scene calms down, we're back to Savant leading... Sort of our our perspective on this whole scene and he's we're getting dropped into the uh well the ocean just outside of a beach um that relates to whatever mission they're on which we still don't know the details for because that's going to be like revealed uh, yeah yeah um and yeah and they're all doing your standard sort of like epic jumps into the water we're seeing them go one by <laughs> one by one um and this is this again feels like a moment i should probably play for the stream when yeah we'll <laughs> give it a sec to get there i guess it, it, this is the thing with VLC, if I skip around, it fucking dies. Just clicked into my file and just saw a weasel. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing I see. He's, uh, he's quite the little fucking, creature, you know? The fucking expression of the eyes just go wide. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah. Um, Apparently, um, Sean Gunn was asked if he knew that weasel was going to look that ugly. And he said, <laughs> no, that was a surprise on James's part. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right. we're right there. You yeah, got I was going to say, all right, yeah. um, let me just play this for the stream. Um. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> so, so for those who are confused, he just drops in, slaps into the water, screaming, and then resurfaces just flailing. As he's <laughs> because well, everyone... Everyone does these like really graceful like entrances, like foot first into the water, and Weasel just belly flops. <laughs> and then it cuts to Rick Flag, and he's like, "Did anybody check if Weasel could swim?" <laughs> <laughs> and Waller just I... has this like face palm expression on her face without actually yeah. face Dude, I... talk about comedic Got timing. It. Having them all stare at the screen while he's flailing around was fucking. <laughs> Oh, I love that it so much. That bug me, though. It made the people in the tech room and Waller seem like idiots. It's just like they didn't even look into well, that. It's like, oh, <laughs> great job, Waller. Well, like, there goes one well, of your I, teammates. No. Okay, so I'm going to push back on that. 
why please do if you why would you like it is so unexpected that the weasel is just gonna hit the water and not be able to well, swim well it's the why first part to... of the mission you drop in on the water and it's like no well, one bothered right. to check also, and they're on an so island as well also let's factor check in, in... Oh. what's what's the purpose of this particular team i'm not going to spoil it we can because we can get there when well that's uh, it's it's not what i think you're thinking of because that's i think there's another plot point that's, that adds to that right that's something we've yeah, got to actually we'll, we'll talk there, about yeah. we should i don't know if we should skip we'll, ahead we'll or before so we can we could put a pin in the weasel thing for sec to explain yeah, yeah. how everything else turns out if you want to hang on to it and just bring it back but um yeah um uh, they just kind of pop up again later perhaps in, well in fact the next part of this is just it just hard cuts to weasel's body slowly falling through the ocean <laughs> and uh <laughs> Savard grabs him and it's it's so because you just hear the constant splashing and crying and stuff and then it's just dead <laughs> and he drags him all the way to the beach and just announces that weasel's dead it's like all right then yeah. let's just keep going i guess weasel's dead and, and, and ironically all of us were just really sad yeah <laughs> it's uh, a lot yeah, of people's favorite character guy. I didn't even try to give him mouth to mouth, right? those fucking hot wow. cock. <laughs> <laughs> Chad Savant as well going in and like getting him out, pulling the yeah. beach. Just like that was pretty cool. Trying to do something about it. Yeah. And if it, it feels good because he's our, he's our POV guy, so it's just like, yeah, I feel like I would try and help him out. It's good that he is too. Um should have blown the weasel. And so yeah, we're at the beach. Everyone's setting up. And then Blackguard jumps over the um the sort of edge and starts announcing hey we're here it's fine don't worry about it we're here i was the one who called you mm -hmm. um so it seems like black guys made some kind of deal with the i guess the military on corto maltese um to sell them out and and he's hoping this will work out but he just gets killed instantly Yep. Um, How the hell yeah. did he pull that off? I, did he call from prison or something? Did he have like the phone number of the person who was there and oh. knew what was going? I don't, I don't know. How well, did that work? Don't I, you know? Um, that shit happens all the time from prisons. Have you seen Prison Break by any chance? Uh, no. So they get depending on your position in society, you can get all kinds of communications out to all kinds of people. Especially, um, you could have someone who works for you set it up all for you on the outside. And then come in and speak to you in code or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of ways to do this. These are all criminals, long term. I don't, I don't have any problem with that. Do you don't, you don't. What? About, how would he get the information about the exact team? Doesn't he say that like he knows, like he brought everyone and he knew the people that were there? Like, um, I don't, I don't know. Them? All he says is I've brought every, well, everyone's here. I think what he means is, as far as he's aware, the full team that's arriving team. is on the beach right now. Yeah, which is true. I guess. Is it I true that, uh, I, not, 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 I, not I guess it is like that's just the case the whole the whole team as he knows it is there and yeah. he well, sold them out also is it is it true that um weasels tend to love water like IRL weasels well I mean I feel well, like I don't the think he's actually with that is like I think I, I, I don't I think he's actually <laughs> he's cold weasel <laughs> not a real, yeah. I just say like on the thing of weasels swimming it's like man it does feel like the kind of thing that you would just like not think about yeah, of course the weasel can swim. Like, it's fucking the weasel that, like, is a human annoyed thing. I could see somebody totally just, like, it's it's hilarious because it's like, oh, right. That's like, yeah, that might <laughs> yeah, be worth you, checking. You but just have to believe... Understandable oversight. Yeah, that's what came across to me, that everybody made the same assumption, which is, well, you can, yeah, you can yeah. swim. Why wouldn't you yeah, be able to swim? Yeah, it can swim. And it's like, Everybody did anyone actually understand the whole team to make I, I don't think it's part? A, I don't think it's a dumb assumption. I think it's something that I could, it, I can easily see people assuming, yeah, everybody can swim, right? I, mean, I would have. Like, I assume everyone here would have. Yeah, yeah, I assume, yeah. I like, assume it, the weasel it, could swim. I assumed it could. That's why it was hilarious, but it couldn't. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. All, all mammals have, like, like a an natural animal. instinct to swim. And it seems um, the aspect here as well is that um, a lot of people just sort of move along with weasel like nobody has actually spoken to him they just speak at yeah. him and he sort of <laughs> he moves along with it so it's a, you know in, in a lot of ways well, there's some what is it what is it to check that the weasel can swim do you put it in water to like just to see well, i mean i'm not sure. saying there's no ways you could check i just don't think that they thought that he yeah. couldn't swim i just figured that, um it reminds me of because uh fringy's seen it and so some people in chat may have but like there's this character in in clarks's farm which yes i'm referencing again don't worry once it goes out of my memory i will stop but there's this farmer <laughs> dude who, who fixes walls and the and clarks is like yeah hey I've, uh, he's he's he always fixes the walls here he has done for like 50 years so of course i'm keeping him on to fix the walls and he's like yeah you're right and he's like oh, I don't have a spare he's like <laughs> 
Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh, we've always had those regular walls and every year it's just, it's just really good playing. Yeah, yeah. And, and every season Lance is just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. And like it's just something humans do with a lot of interactions, a lot of people who just sort of you don't know what the fuck's going on. And just like enough people do not give a fuck about Weasel that this this is an eventuality. <laughs> and I just I think it's uh, honestly wonderfully done in some ways, just because it feels like a real thing that could happen to me. Um, it's a really good joke. It's a really good joke. I think it's at the cost of Waller's team. There's a lot of scenes that are like that later on where they they're just well, insanely dumb. I would with how they act. I would agree. I would agree with them later on, but I I just don't think that this is like an obviously stupid thing that you didn't, didn't know stand out to any of us and, you know, as we were watching it. Yeah. Um. Well, okay. Um. So what happens now is something we need to get clear first because it'll make more sense to do this ahead of time before going forward with describing the events as they happened. So there is basically the first guy dies, and then. Everyone's opening fire, and Harley fires an RPG, and there's just shit happening Harley, everywhere. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna. Look, I'm sorry for those who are looking for clips, but like, it's so fucking annoying to show these without getting hit by copyright. Black Widow stream, for example, that was a uh, mm. lots of bad. Now, we're still up, which is good. So I'm gonna Ooh, summarize these ones instead. So the short version is Harley fires the RPG, then she runs forward. Avoiding about a billion Most bullets. Plot armor. At least, yep. yeah. <laughs> then Rick Flag follows yeah. her to sit behind a rock with her. He avoids about a billion bullets. At least he's firing back while he's doing it. That's a small sliver of. Eh. Um, yeah, then you have. Um, I suppose the start of this is they say deploy the detachable kid. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. And this is strictly he removes his arms and then they float and he can have them attack people. Um, now, the thing <laughs> with humor like this is that the shock of it, even it hits the characters, <laughs> they're all having the same reaction we are. We're just like, the fuck? Like, what? And then um, they're like, why Why is he even on the team? And then he says, I didn't pick the team. Um, <laughs> the ups are so slow as well when they fly. Yeah, and they're yeah. just awkwardly sort of, like, <laughs> just, just hitting people. Slapping. like Yeah, they're just slapping yeah. really, really weakly. When, when I heard that this guy was going to be in the movie, I thought maybe he was going to, like, pop one of his arms off and then use it as a weapon, like, by flailing it around using his other arm that was still, like, attached to his body. That's not what happened. <laughs> oh, man. They should have gone with his uh, comic name, which is Arm Fall Off Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was always a decision to not have it be that. AFOB? Yeah, yeah, well, I, I spoke to him about that. I feel like AFOB would have been the stronger acronym, too. It almost sounds... Arm just... fall off, boy. Yeah. Um, the, many people may have seen this. His arms just float forward and then start hitting people. It does barely anything. And so there's a vibe right now of, like, our team is about to come through. Maybe, because they're activating their sort of power. They're doing stuff, but then um, things don't work out that way because Mon Mongal, did you say her name was? I can't remember. Mm. Yeah, Mongal, uh, brother of Mongol and son of Mongol the first. She, um... Mongaloid. She, she starts the chain reaction of a certain event happening. She jumps onto a helicopter. It, I guess she weighs a ton because At it least, um, completely... That, that was all I could I assume because, like, yeah. she weighs it down to the point that it just spins out of control. I was like, that, that wouldn't happen with just a regular person. Yeah. Um... So it crashes and it shreds a whole bunch of like pine trees and all the wood splatters into um good old Captain Boomerang. Boom. And uh, no! and then Boom. the helicopter flies into him as well, so he's just torn to like individual pieces of blood. So he's completely gone. And he got to he got to throw yeah. a boomerang and it was pretty cool, but yeah, that was he it for him. Twos of people. Yeah. And um, guys at top ahead. A little, a little sad for me, because I really liked him, and I thought that the whole thing about him in the first one was that he needs someone to help him out script-wise, and we'll be fine. And it's like, James Gunn! There you go! He could do it! Oh, he's dead. Well... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a bit of a bummer, not gonna lie. Bit of Maybe a more than a bit of a bummer. It's just a flat-out bummer. Yeah. This, so this he's... is kind of what disappointed me about this scene, is that I feel like a lot of this is for shock value. It's like, you introduce the cast, like, yeah, and then... Just gone it's like you kill off captain moore's like oh 
Well, so much yeah. for that. Like, well, it's just, um, just good old-fashioned subversion. To be fair, I would argue partially the reverse. It's telling us, yeah, these people aren't safe. No matter who you love, it ain't safe. We're, in, we're not in a standard Marvel movie where it's very clear well, who's going to last till the end. Unless they've got Harley's plot armor, of course. Harley's the so only that, one you know, that yeah, I will excuse from that one, rule. Yeah. Um, I was concerned for uh, a lot of the characters throughout the movie. There's, we'll get to that yep. in certain scenes. Yeah, same here. Um, it's quite an interesting phenomenon considering the plot armor in this movie. So yeah, mm. Mongol's dead. TDK gets shot to pieces as well. His arms, which is a bit of a comedic Grimm payoff just issue, just, the floor, just, just in the background the screaming <laughs> <laughs> on the ground. Um, I feel like you should have expected that, you know. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a bizarre addition to Kinda the team dumb. for this particular mission. Um, yeah, in a different movie, he, there could have been a really cool use for him in terms of espionage and stuff, but uh, he'd done some weird clever stuff with it, but uh, not here. Not not here. Uh, and then Savant just loses it. He sees everybody get killed, and he screams and runs away. Um, this is a guy that like the film has been focusing on quite a bit in the opening like ten, uh, five, ten minutes. Yeah, um, this would be the, the end of the subversion being that they blow off the protagonist's head, or at least what we thought was the protagonist. Uh, because he goes off mission and Waller boops him. And his yep. brain splatters onto the water with the words Warner Brothers presents, I believe. Um, yeah. Which is a, a nice touch they have throughout the movie for little title cards for like chapters and stuff. Yeah, I got some of these. They work pretty well. Diegetic. Some are way better than the like others. Some, some are way better than others. And then it's, Summer, yeah. we can get to what we were looking to talk about. So there's a reveal of, well, Team 1 is dead. It's like, huh? And it's like, turns out there was a Team 2 on the other, well, a different side of the island. Um, like the west side or whatever, I, I couldn't see it. Uh, and they're coming in, and these, you, you get the impression immediately like, oh, these are our characters. That other oh lot God. are all not our characters at all. Mm -hmm. Um... And so, yeah, uh, th that raises a bit of a question, which is, was this intentional from Waller? And I if, do not think so. No, in the I slightest. don't think so. No. Um, so no. the thing is, is, she's pissed off when she finds out Weasel dies. She's like, oh, fuck's sake. So mm -hmm. that's true. Then it would be weird for her to feel that way when she's like, well, all these are going to die anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, Isn't that why she says to push forward to flag as well? She says like the mission is too important. Like you, it's a tough crew. You can make it or something like that. Like, so there's, I th there's a couple of ways to explain this because uh, this is the thing. You have you have two options. One, she wanted this to happen. Two, she did not want this to happen. Um, but she will make the best of it as she can, which I think makes a lot more sense. Because oh, I'll yeah. say this about Walla, like no matter what is happening. She will do her best to make what is probably going to be the best choice from her POV without wasting time with, like, emotional reactions, I, I would argue. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And so if yeah. she finds out we've been betrayed, everyone's shooting at us, she's like, fight your way out. You can do it. There's, like, because that's all you can tell them, basically. Because they're, they're all just going to get killed anyway. And then I would say telling Team A, or Team 2, rather, which is how they're referred to, right? They're not the primary. They're considered non-primary if you look at it from a numbers point of view. And so if they say, like, what the fuck were all those explosions? Is it worthwhile telling them that I sent a team in who were doing the same job as you, but they all got killed because someone betrayed them? Or is it better to tell them that's a distraction we've launched to help you guys out? Don't worry about it. I think she, had, yeah, I think she totally lied to the second team and told them it was hmm. a distraction because it just makes tactical sense to do that to get the second team to keep yeah. doing what And we do doing. get a more overt admission of that when they're like, why didn't you tell us about Rick Flag? And she's like, you didn't need to know it at the time. Now you do. Yeah. Yeah. And, Is and there a just, particular yeah. reason why they split the teams up? I was like, it, that's kind of why it's a little bit confusing. Is you're like, wait a minute, why would you split it up if you thought? Me. I, think, I mean, it worked yeah. out, right? Like, it was probably, yeah. a, you, you could argue that foreseeing an event such as this would be a reason to do it. And Wall has done this potentially many times at this point. There's a yeah. saying about it's eggs just and the bath. first team is bigger, the one that gets killed off. Like, there's like, it's like twice as much as Team B, right? Uh, um, yeah, about twice as much, I think. Eight. I think in that one versus like five. Yeah. So, yeah, um, maybe even I, more than that. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people being very critical of it makes no sense for Waller to have done all of this and put Rick Flag on the division team when she wants him alive. And it's like, I don't think That's they were another reason. intentionally yeah. the division team. Yeah. I guess that the yeah, issue was just that Blackguard cool. betrayed them. And that's that was I don't an see that as an issue. Variable. No, I'm not saying that that's an, an issue. issue. I'm saying uh, that. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. 
that that was the hitch in the plan. Um, and then something fucking insane happens. Um, Rick Flag is just in the jungle running away, and he gets captured by rebels. <laughs> away somehow. Um, this is such a jarring cut that I. Th it's almost like did we miss a scene? Like he was on the beach getting covered in in bullets and explosions, and now he's in the jungle. Which, if you remember the just the what they show of us, uh, what they show to us, sorry, of um, the the approaching enemies. I'll try and get a screenshot in a sec. Uh, they're they've filled the jungle. They're all over it. Like, where the how the hell did he do yeah, this? Yeah, they were completely surrounded. Power of editing. This is like yeah. This is yep. the problem is that you want Harley and Rick Flag to like be separated so that they can like have their own adventures, but at the same time they throw them into the meat grinder, so they need plot armor to get out. So it's like, eh, well, well, it's fine. They're Evan. Separated. They only do it the one time, right? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the one time. It's, yeah, so it's just a simple mistake. This this screen right here. I'll get you guys it in case you're not. Oh, you yeah, already got it. I wasn't got the screen up. But um, yeah. how the fuck is Rick Flag getting into the jungle? Mm-hmm. And this is the thing. If, if there was the, only the answer. if there was only um like ten of these soldiers, but we saw the same kind of like you know debris and shrapnel everywhere, like I still don't exactly know how he did it. But with this many, that's not happening. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. You're done. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he's Honestly, captured by the rebels. Think it... Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, honestly, do you guys think it's a little weird for Waller to ask them to push forward when you're looking at that? I know that Flag was like contesting it, and she said like the mission's too important. But seriously, like, I, oh, so I don't know what she expected. <laughs> like, my theory with that would be but... that she wants them to make as much noise and damage as possible. She knows they're dead. But but Flag's on the team, and like, yeah, there's no way they're getting out of that as far as yeah. she's aware. So kill them so all, kill fine, every yeah. She, and, and as some people in chat have mentioned, like in terms of morale, telling them you guys are the greatest up. team I've got, fuck them up. It might actually be like, all right, let's do it, everybody. <laughs> like it's sort mm -hmm. of, but she, yeah, I would assume she knows they're as all opposed, fucked. As opposed to outright telling them, yeah, you're fucked, you're gonna die anyways. Bye. <laughs> yeah, this is like why not? And of course, the the more they kill, the more distraction they cause, the better for team two, I would assume. Yeah. I guess flag is talking. the only trouble there because like that yeah it would the whole idea is to kill and if he, he's killed and that like my questions about that when they're trying to cover something up it's, it's a little yeah. questionable but I assume that they can they can cover up his death when this is a black ops mission they can just fake it or whatever I could say he was on a secret mission and he's dead there's, there's plenty they could probably do probably. with that to escape it I mean they'd have to get away with this somehow with the villains they're killing you can't just grab people out of prison and kill them. Like, you you got to have something mm. that you can cover this up with, and I assume they've got all that sorted. Um, so yeah, that takes us to team two. I was going to say, unless there's anything else about that beach scene, because I might have missed something. Um, I, I want to highlight just something very small, but something I thought was uh, neat, uh, I noticed on my second watch through, which is um, very first Suicide Squad movie, you have this retarded touchscreen phone with one press of a button, someone's head explodes, right? Oh, you, yeah. You, uh, in this one, you have a giant bulky suitcase, so you have to open the suitcase, and then there's the names of everyone there, and then you have to flip a switch if you want to have access to the button that will detonate yeah. on their head. So I thought that was a much better design for that mechanism rather than, oh, my finger you, slipped, oops, yeah. I've, I've just you killed... You think that's better? <laughs> also, no one on, uh, also, no one on premise has, has the, the ability well, to... I'm very curious what everyone... Press the button. Oh yeah, go ahead. You, think you, don't, you don't think that that's you don't think that that's a button that you'd want to be able to quick uh, press quickly? No. In the event Absolutely. of an emergency, you like could accidentally, no. you no. could accidentally blow someone's head off. Yeah, this is clearly better. It's obviously better. This is so better. In, in the Suicide Squad, if you guys remember, I'd get a visual, but I can't get it. It's right at the end when they're all like, "We can go home." Amanda Waller shows up. She's like, "Nah," -uh, and she's got her thumb on like two people's heads. Yeah, and that's all it takes to blow him up, and it's like, "Fuck, woman, <laughs> what are you doing?" Yeah. Um, this she has complete control. She's got um, like the view and the and uh, uh, like live camera feeds, and then it's all in the room where she knows that nobody would try and stop her, so she'll be fine, unless she underestimates oh, yeah. them for any reason. Well, you know. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, to me that makes a hell of a lot more sense than having an app on your phone where you can accidentally fucking press buttons on it and kill everybody. I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't have a safety. I think that I just think killer app like being faster might be more efficient. Like, because the whole idea is you want to kill them in the case that they desert or they try to like take over or maybe take a hostage. Like, I think having that in quick access in an emergency would be nice rather than 
imagine, going through so, the whole process. I mean, and neither and I'm, none of those scenarios I, I, would. Yeah, the the, yeah. the amount of potential advantage that you get from a touch screen is so tiny and minuscule and arguably negligible. Well, just run the run the, the scenario. The chance of an afterlife activation is just it because in as, in the first one, she like has her hand on the thing, and it, like you wonder why it's not even going off. Um, like it, it seems like it would happen all the time by accident, especially if it's a touchpad that you were holding in your hand, like like a phone, and it has to be on. So if anyone were to touch that, then boom, head goes away. And, and in uh, this, it's clearly a deliberate move as someone's being monitored constantly. If, if as you can see from my avatar, I'm aiming to shoot Fringy, right? And um, I've got the thing in my head, and Rags is like, with the touchpad, I guess he could blow me up instantly. Or he could be like, I'm going to blow you up if you don't lower your weapon. Like, or he could just, you know, do do the same thing, really, with the other case. He, he won't be able to necessarily stop me from killing Fringy, but I don't know that that's something he could stop me from doing with the touchpad either. Because I'm going to do it so quick, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not too much time. It's just something that I think is like, I mean, you have to open the briefcase, like flip the switch. Like, there's a lot of safeties, and it's like, I, considering yeah. all these people are supposed to be disposable, I think it's almost unnecessary safety, I, I, although... The missions are so, important, so I don't know I don't how know. like they're just they they can be disposable, but in the sense of you want to keep them alive if you can. They get lots and lots of warnings for things. Like they these are assets to you that you can use. You definitely don't want to risk accidentally getting rid of one of them. I feel like the of easy course, thing yeah. is like how many times have you had your phone in your pocket and then like you pick it up and it turns out there's been pressing buttons. Imagine if you had that in your pocket and then like dead shots head just blew up because like your phone turned on in your pocket. Like your I, pocket I feel like there's a way better way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah um, just accidentally touching <clears throat> the screen. Dude. Yep. Well, there's yeah. also like one other thing I wanna highlight, and that is they were taking bets on who was going to survive the mission. I thought that was like a neat little detail indicating that yes this suicide squad's been going on for a while and this is kind of just the tradition in the office that wall is kind of just like oh fucking whatever i think isn't isn't yeah. one of the lines when she catches them it's like this is an adorable thing to do or something like that like <laughs> so it's just got an yeah, awful line like that. that uh yeah also gary's in chat how you doing and uh i hope you're enjoying yeah. vegas they're all they're all doing their, their hangout over there we're still all in our respective parts of the universe and we've managed to get yeah. through um a good you know 12 minutes of this movie. Okay. Maybe an hour. Good job. Doing, doing great. Yeah, that's actually, you know, it's pretty good. Um, well, considering yeah. that we had to get everyone's perspectives on the movie first, I'd say we're making great time. That's actually, so, yeah, it does feel like we're being expedient, <laughs> just not compared to a lot of how people would do it. Um, Although, it's worth noting, we haven't run into too many issues thus far as we progress not further. Really. Into well, so something I actually oh, yeah. forgot to say, and um, if you look at the, the, the image I just gave you guys, if you know ahead of time that they're coming to get you, they're coming to this beach or whatever, shouldn't you have units prepared in the water? Um, I would say if you know they're coming here, I would wait for them on land, especially assuming that they have to get here with boats or a helicopter or something. Well, so you don't want to have one of your boats out there. They that have, a, might be they have helicopters. They have attack helicopters, so I yeah. So when I said, I guess it was further call. inland. When I say units, I mean like literally anything you can think of in terms of like. So we could have scuba units, or we could have just standard helicopters approaching with spotlights, so you can make sure no one's escaping and stuff. Um, just seems to me that if Savant Maybe hadn't had his head exploded, he might have been able to swim down and then around the island, and he would have escaped. Yeah, maybe. Um, I guess I'm wondering how competent this military really is. If there's some. Well, bunch of dudes on an island. That's a, you know. Um. Yeah, that's that's about it for the scene for me. Um, again, just, if no one else got anything, we can move on to the real beginning of the film. Yeah. I don't uh, think I... Do we need to talk about the javelin? That's a little bit later. No, yeah, that's later. Okay. All right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, we we do a little like intro credit scene, and it basically just scans through all of the people being dead, and um. I think it's the the song is everybody's gonna die or something like that. It's it's some kind of uh, those match. The, those are the people who died, right, or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, even <sighs> we saw him kill a bird in the opening, and a bird is feasting on his brains. 
I, I forget what kind of bird it is. Sorry. I, I meant yellow Savan. bird. Yes. And so then we we enter into seeing straight on to, to Bloodsport, good old Idris Elba, um, who is I guess you guys would call he, he's our protagonist, right? You'd probably say. I would yeah. say so. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, and he's just cleaning everything in the in the prison. Uh, Bellevue. It's is the prison, right? Bell Reeve. Bell Reeve. Bell Reeve. Yeah. Uh, he even Bell pulls Reeve. out Savant's yeah. hair <laughs> from. Um, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, oh, I didn't make that connection. <laughs> I assume it's Savant. Really? It could be someone else's hair. I, guess. I assume so. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and they're all forced to wear Crocs too, some with socks. Monsters. Ugh. So <laughs> it's, it's uh, it's, it becomes clear quickly. So this was actually something weird that I only noticed this on my third time in terms of thinking about it. The way that they introduce Bloodsport to us in terms of a character profile is Amanda's sort of what seems to be her like main analyst guy. We see a lot from him. He's like, so who's Bloodsport? And I was thinking, like, how the fuck would you not know who the guy who shot yeah. <laughs> Superman is? Like, he's probably one of the most famous villains of all time at this point. You, and, this is and weird thing that I, movies do these days, where people that should know what was going on are, are asking really dumb questions. Like, why I feel like who's those, this guy? What a, what, I feel like hmm. those guys in the control room are kind of meant to be audience surrogates in a lot of ways, because a lot of people were like guessing which characters were going to be the ones to die inside of this movie as well. I feel like that's kind of what the betting is for. Like, but like, I feel like they they want those guys to ask the audience's questions. I feel like there's a better kind of, way to do that. You have a new guy in the room, oh, yeah. and the rest of them are like excited to tell him about blood sports. Like, oh, you don't... F okay, so blood sports whole thing. He's like, all I heard is he killed Superman or something. He's like, no, he didn't kill him. He's in the ICU. He's like, how do you do that? It's like Kryptonite Bullet, man. Surprised Batman World didn't Grace think of Go. it. It's kind of funny, um, because <laughs> in the original, Slipknot arrives and they're like, Yeah, that's Slipknot, the man that can climb anything. And then here is we're like, Bloodsport, who's that? Wait, why? He he shot Superman, like as if they don't already know this, but they already know, knew about Slipknot. The man who could in fit us. <laughs> like if, if there's two people in the world to know the most about, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be the guy who shot super bad. Sorry, the one person it would be it would be the guy who could climb anything. That's someone you want to know. Everyone would talk about Slipknot, I'm sure. Um, yeah, they don't waste any time. They they have her explain he's weapons expert who was trained to kill from a super young age by his dad, who was a mercenary, and um, he's very he's bad news, bad ombre. He doesn't want to talk to anybody about anything. He's like fuck off, fuck you, fuck everything. I'm not going to join the Suicide Squad. Um. I don't think we ever get a specific reason for that. I'm assuming he just doesn't want to go on literal suicide missions. I uh, I don't know if anyone else could draw anything from the, what they saw. Maybe he wants um, to serve his time, potentially to get back with his daughter or something like that. Like maybe he wants to go straight, kind of, maybe? And... Possibly. I, 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 just, I didn't... With his daughter is like pretty antagonistic, so I'm not sure if it's oh, yeah, yeah, motivated yeah. by that. Yeah. The impression I got sure. was just he just doesn't doesn't want to join his suicide, he thinks it's a fucking crazy endeavor, probably, which, like I said, I think you could infer the amount of people who've never come back from those missions, it's probably fair to say that there's reason to not want to join. Um, but it could just be the fact that he just doesn't want to be used, um, he'll just serve his time sort of thing. There's just not a huge amount on that, but he's definitely against it. And then it's like, now leave me alone, and she's like, ah, oh, but you've got a visitor. And, um, this would be... The first way that people are going to compare the two characters, of course, we've got issues with a daughter. A daughter is involved in some way, shape, or form. Now, where Dead Shots was, like, he did, he wants to. What, what would he even say in 2016 about the daughter in Total? Does anyone? Uh, they just want to be in the daughter, his daughter to be proud of him, basically. Yeah. It's like a pretty straightforward relationship. She's like, Mom told me that you kill people for money. He's like, That's not true. That's a lie. She's <laughs> lying to me. <laughs> Dude, that delivery was fantastic. It's also a dialogue. Excellent delivery. And I mean, the child actress is also doing just a, the most amazing job delivering her lines about how she does, doesn't care about what her dad does for a living. Um, so the scene basically plays out as uh, she's stolen something and now she's in trouble and he doesn't really give a shit. But um, he quickly finds out that his sentencing is going to depend on whether or not he's cooperative in relation to the Suicide Squad. Um, and as much as he makes it clear, he's aggressively gunning for her to have nothing to do with him. The second that she's threatened in such a way that he can stop it, he's going to do it. 
Um, I'm a big fan of Bloodsport in this movie. It's probably going to be yeah. gushing a little bit of how well he's done dialogue-wise. But it's yeah. really fun to watch him rip into the daughter because he's desperate. Oh, their to... back and forth is great. Both and of he... them are oh, fuck yes. it's yeah, really yeah. kind of great. It's funny. Not just because he's a bit of an asshole, but also because he wants her to get the fuck away from him. And he makes it very clear because he's ended up the way he is because of his dad. And so he reckons that she'll end up a similar way if she's anywhere near him or anyone like him is what he says. He's trying to get her to fuck off, basically. But the yeah. second that she's threatened he's willing to take someone's head off with a pen. So you got the... It's a very approachable sort of archetype. You understand it very well. Yeah, I, I, I get it. The, yeah, there's... but what I... Oh, sorry? Well, interesting exchange between him and his daughter. Like, uh, I, I find it funny how he basically roasts her for getting caught for stealing, uh, like, a smart watch. Um, and she says <laughs> that she's just embarrassed that he's her father. And I'm thinking, like, bitch... He's the man that puts Superman in the ICU. You should be, like, super <laughs> proud that he is your father. <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. that Superman. <laughs> like, exactly oh, yeah. this Superman. Who did it, Dad? Specifically this Superman. <laughs> the world you is saved so the much world. <laughs> what, what I do really like about his opening scenes is that it, it pretty quickly establishes a pretty comp complex character. Like, not only does it subvert what you would expect from a quote-unquote dead shot clone like it pretty quickly establishes this is a this is quite a different kind of father-daughter relationship but it also what it establishes is that this is a man who under the surface is pretty he's got a pretty strong paternal instinct he's very much driven by um fatherhood um yeah. under the surface but he really fucking hates that he's driven by fatherhood he really fucking hates that he has this noose around his neck thanks to this daughter that he didn't want um and it manifests in interesting ways later in the film. I'll just say that. Absolutely. It's a, they really quickly set a foundation for exactly who he is and what he cares about. And we hard cut to him rushing toward Amanda Waller. Uh, there is, there's a lot of exchanges I like in this. And uh, again, I don't know how, what I'm going to end up saying about Waller in totality, but he's like, you're going to send my 14 year old daughter to prison. And she just goes, no, <laughs> she's 16. She's 16. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> She's a bitch. She's a hardcore bitch. Um, and she basically said, like, he thinks that's bad enough that she's going to prison. Amanda Waller makes it clear it's not that. It's, I'm going to put her in Belle Reve and uh, people die here. Dot, dot, dot. That's about it. And, and, and like, yeah. the, the yeah. other analysts are like, did she just, did she just threaten to kill his daughter? And, and it's like, yeah. Basically, yeah. That was probably my favorite scene with her. Like that was like the way she delivers that and the way that that's written. It's like, damn, dude, that's that is a good threat. And, and that's I mean, basically, how Waller always is. She's a stone cold bitch. I was gonna say it's in line with what we saw of her in the 2016 version. She's a little bit more yeah. insane in that one. At least with this one, I I better understand what she's doing. For example, if someone said you really think she would kill that kid, I'd be like, I'm not sure. Um, but I believe she would absolutely use it as leverage for as long as she could. Because. That's what she do. Um, yep. If she can murder federal agents very casually, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's a woman who gets what she wants. And he's like, you're threatening my daughter, and she's like, I'm protecting this country. Like, mm, there you go. It's pretty clear of what she's characterized as. Every goal she has is apparently, from her view, going to better the country every time. And so she's willing to go to any lengths, basically. And a lot of people do compliment, um, I'm not sure the actress's name, but her as Walla, I was just like, I think I'm just... Viola Davis. Yeah. I think I, I, think I like her, I just, um, I keep thinking about the, how much I hated her in the first movie, because it wasn't just <laughs> that she's a, you know, a cold bitch or whatever, it's also just like being baffled by her decisions. Um, yeah, that, well, yeah, I th it's just, it, it, you gotta, it's like two different universes, the first movie and the second. It's weird to mm. see the... Like to see Flag again, to see Waller again, and to see them being so different in terms of their writing and what they're, you know, how they're going about what they're doing. Um. So yeah, um, she's basically like, I'm making you team leader, and let's get going. So they meet the first member of the team, it's, uh, John Cena as Peacemaker, who uh, she yes. just she, she describes him exactly the same way as she described blood sports as people earlier, except swapping out the word mercenary for soldier. Um, 
And like at and the end of the description, Bloodsport's like, "You fucking, you having a laugh? Like, what the fuck is this?" <laughs> He's like the same yeah, person. Uh, he, she Im he immediately because she said, "Oh yeah, everyone on this team has chosen for their unique set of abilities," and then immediately describes him exactly the same. <laughs> as and, him. and and then Bloodsport says he does the same thing that I do, and then. Peacemaker's very first line of dialogue it's is, better. I do it better. <laughs> better. And I'm yeah. going to say, do you do we'll do, we are going to do our best again to keep everything chronological, all right? I know some people are going to want to jump ahead with certain references. You just keep them, in, keep them in your pocket, put them in your notepad, right? But oh. he, yeah, he says that, um, he, well, I love the line. He says, um, I hit my target's dead center. I hit the more in the center. He's like, how do you hit the more <laughs> in the center? He's like, smaller bullets. Smaller bullets. <laughs> <laughs> Good shit. Um... Yeah, and then they meet up with, I think they, they both moved to Ratcatcher 2, who, all we know up to this point is that her dad was Ratcatcher 1, he died, and she has the power to control rats. So that, you know, could come in handy in any way, shape, or form, you never know. Uh, By the way, we've, we've alluded to some of these things, but while you're watching it, especially in retrospect after you finish, there's a lot of little setups here. Yes. For oh, things yeah. that will pay off later yep. on. Mm-hmm. Sign of some fun scripts when you can look for a second time and be like, oh, okay, oh, nice. Yeah. Not, yeah, that thing wasn't just a thing, it was a thing for someone oh, else. Oh, not that. Well, my bad, that's chat reminding me. I was just going to do him second, but he should have been first. King Shark was actually the next person they meet. Oh. Played wonderfully oh, yeah. by Stallone, which is pretty fucking cool. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Frank Stallone? No. Yes, Frank Stallone. Yeah. Um, so, uh, like, how do you, what do you even have to say about this? He's, he's a giant shark man. I guess he's not really, he's a big man. He's not necessarily a big shark. <laughs> it's just like, the, you know, you put him together, he's a shark person. And uh, he speaks in very limited sort of English. Um, and the first thing I think he's doing, he's reading a book upside down. And they point out that and laugh. Yeah. And he's like, I am so smart. So smart, me. <laughs> yeah. Smart. <laughs> I, re I like books. This is like, yeah, so. Yeah, heart's in the right place. He comes a well, with like a real childlike demeanor. Yeah, and and so oh, we've already if if the joke with Peacemaker and Bloodsport is that they're almost the same fucking person, this is a like polar opposite to them. This guy is incredibly dumb, super strong. That seems to be like what they're gunning for. Also, he's a shark. You could say that's a bit unusual compared also, to them. Also, he's a shark. <laughs> yeah. And... But, yeah. Um, yeah, and then the last uh, person to meet on the team is Polka Dot Man. Um, yeah. Yep. As John Cena points mm. out, what does what, what does he do? Throw polka dots, and then it just pans to Amanda Waller's <laughs> deadpan face, almost like she's aware. <laughs> like I am in such a fucking stupid movie. <laughs> like, uh, yes, he throws polka dots at people, but they're not just any polka dots. Um, I don't consider this like spoilery or anything. They, they are um, multi-dimensional polka dots, so they can tear through basically everything. Yeah, they're they very melt. powerful. They mm. melt stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and it, uh, there's also a cameo from the Calendar Man in that same scene, played by Sean Gunn again. There was, um, I remember there, there was like a woman with like patchwork tattoos or whatever. Apparently she's something as well. Yeah, I believe so. I just, uh, I, I just I don't can't think of her name off the top of my head. Uh, she's Is that supposed to be Crazy Quilt? Uh, Potentially, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Uh, so that's the team. Um, I'm trying to remember if there's there's bits to point out. I guess um, that the Bloodsport immediately uh, is a like fucking. With the, she's rat catcher, and he's just like Jesus Christ. She has a rat. Get away from me! It's just like, huh? But the rat, and this this just this is just how animals work. I think at this point, the rat immediately waves hello to him. Uh, and wants to, yeah. to shake his hand. He's oh, like, I ain't shaking that thing's head. And it gets really <laughs> sad. Yeah. yeah. What a piece of shit. Yeah, the rat wanted that to shake his hand. That rat's great. Well, the little rat's name's Sebastian. He will be, uh, he'll be relevant going forward. He's a good little rat. Yeah. 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 As is Rat Catcher too. She's, she's, she's good rat. She's, uh, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll have to just, just keep pins in things as we're going to make sure everyone's following. But yeah, that's pretty much our pins. team. And yeah. I think, uh, like, her thing we, we get straight away is that she's just really tired. And um, turns out that's just a constant element of her character. She can very easily go to sleep, and she's very hard to disturb. Mm. Um, which, by the way, relatable. 
I think I mentioned <laughs> this on EFAB before, but um, there was a jackhammer just outside my, my house doing road work. It, was, it felt like it was meters away, and I managed to go to sleep because I had been up for a while, and I was like, fuck it, and I, I, I don't know that I've ever done anything as impressive as go to sleep next to a jackhammer. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then we hard cut back to the beach, because this is the... Oh wait, no, sorry, that's in a moment we get the, the briefing. That's, that's what I was going to say. Um, which, yeah, uh, it's, it's kind of a cool idea, um, compared to a lot of, I don't know, supervillain, superhero plots, is that, um, there is an island off the coast of, like, I guess, Corto south. Corto Maltese. Well, it is Corto Maltese, but I can't remember where, where it is in the world. Is it, like, South America? I think America? it's a small island. Um, yeah, it it'll seems be like to south be, like, America. a South America kind of yeah. setup. Yeah. One of those, so, like a Cuba. It's been ruled by yeah, a family like, for X amount of time. There was a military coup, and that family have been killed, and it's taken over by a new set of people. And so, naturally, a Peacemaker assumes, like, oh, you want us to kill those those guys? And she's like, no, we want you to get to a place called Jotunheim, it's like a big building, and destroy all of the data in there. Like, huh. Strange kind of mission, but hey, and it's Black Ops, so you have to wonder what this could all mean, where it's all going, but... Very straightforward, and they're going to get in there by getting the thinker, uh, Gaius Greaves, I think is his name. He's um, he's, he's Peter Capaldi with a bunch of things sticking out of his head, and uh, so that'll be their way in. They have to capture him, and he will get them into the building, and then they destroy the building, and that's mission complete. Then they can leave. Um, yeah, and immediately you're like, wait, that's a reasonable mission for those people. It seems like it. Yeah, destroy data. Yeah. It's like yeah, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah better than stopping a, a witch lady. <laughs> lasers, just stopping random lasers appearing, big blue lasers in the yeah. sky. Um, I think the body language is pretty interesting in the in the briefing scene. You've got uh, Bloodsport couldn't give less of a fuck. He's just like waiting for the briefing to be over. Uh, Peacemaker is paying complete attention and writing down all notes in relation to everything yeah. that's being said. Mm -hmm. uh, King Shark is completely vacant. He has no idea what's going on. <laughs> it's just like he's right. chill. And uh, Ratcatcher 2 is more interested in the overhead projector and why it's even in the room, because it's some <laughs> old tech right there. And then uh, Polka Dot Man just looks nervous. He's just like at uh, 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 ease. And um, as if anyone's seen the trailer, it's just like, we're all going to die, probably. And then he's like, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and then hard cut to them being the only survivors. <laughs> yeah. And we've got uh, everyone's in their outfits, and Peacemakers is quite just, yeah, like yeah. beautiful. Yeah, they just it's go for really it, man. Goddamn God damn comic. Comic. I love it. It's so totally just makes you immediately think like you got that directly from the comics, didn't you? <laughs> it's gotta be. <laughs> it. You can tell it's from the comics because it looks dumb, but charming. That's very what's important. charming. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, they're not 100% clear on exactly what they should do and where they should go, and like immediately we're getting a back and forth between Peacemaker and Bloodsport about that. Like, um, yep. I think is so uh, he, he says like, go eat a bag of dicks, which by the way, this is a joke, but it leads to something that I think is really interesting. He's like, go eat a bag of dicks, and he's like, if there was dicks all over this island, and I had to eat everybody, every one of them for liberty, I would do it in a heartbeat, or something like that. Uh, yeah, of course, that's really funny. Fucking great. And Ratcatch 2 is like, why would someone put dicks all over the islands? <laughs> and, uh, get the classic <laughs> line, who knows why madmen do what they do? Who knows why <laughs> madmen do what they do? What a great line, boys. And so, yeah. uh, made it very clear, he will, he will go to any extreme, for, in that case, liberty. And then Bloodsport turns on him and says, um, I think you just use liberty as an excuse to do whatever the fuck you want to do. And then uh, the response is, essentially, I can't remember the specific line, but he's like, yeah, but I don't kill men for money. Um, and so, you, you, despite the fact that these two have been introduced as essentially the same archetype, we're already deviating significantly in terms of who yeah. they are. Um, Very different values. What, did they ever like... say what Peacekeeper did to get in prison? Peacemaker? And I'm not sure. I don't think they ever did, actually. No, they did Peacekeeper? probably killed someone i mean he says like later on <laughs> he kills a lot of people no problem. Yeah, maybe I I love... that line's great um, he's pretty like almost psychotic like this scene kind of establishes that he uses liberty almost as an excuse to um perhaps 
indulge some deeper urges um, within him. Yeah, that's that's the criticism from Bloodsport. And once we get further along, we could probably talk more about it. Um, oh yeah, and we of course uh, the explosion from Team One makes uh, Bloodsport immediately grab two pieces of tech from his suit and turn them into a gun. Mm-hmm. And so basically, his if you want to call it gimmick is his suit has loads of pieces of metal all around it, and he can pull them off, and they're like nanotech pieces or chunks that can morph into something else, be it a uh, pistol, rifle, a uh, grapple hook. You know, like he has, a, he has a lot of little devices on his uh, helmet. Um, it's pretty cool. It's, this is uh, an awesome, awesome, really cool like power set to have, because it's like all of these modular elements... There's like compromises every time that you need to use something, but also like benefits that you can get from them. And if you lose little bits, then you have less options to work with and you need to improvise. It's awesome. It's really cool. Yeah, and, and they do work with the stakes of that later on. Yes, yeah, it's they incredibly, do, yeah. incredibly compact and uh, easy to conceal. Yeah, and it's just, it's such an opportunity for creativity too. I'm hoping if we ever see Bloodsport again for whether or not he may have died in this movie so we could do a prequel or sequel or whatever. Uh, I'd like to see more with that tech. A little, uh, maybe yeah. some crazier ideas. I still like what they did in this movie a lot, so it's all good. Then yeah, we get a scene. I, um, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead um, if it's on that. Oh, yeah, so something like on that like subject. Um, so... You have you have like um, Bloodsport, who has you know, as you said, he's got this more modular tech, this more sophisticated modern uh, tech. Meanwhile, you've got um, Peacemaker, who has a much more classic kind of um, aesthetic to him, a very like firm. This is a costume. This is a superhero, supervillain costume, yeah. and it's reflected in their gadgets and abilities as well to kind of help further contrast them. So. So Bloodsport's the more like I suppose utilitarian, um, you know, assassin. While um, Peacemaker, he's got a lot. His gadgets are a lot more. Um, I guess you could call them um, classic. Obvious. So he doesn't use. Yeah. So he's not. He's not. Um, he, so he's not using not a lot subtle. of. Not subtle. Yeah, that's that's a kind yeah, of. He, um, uh, his full at. arsenal yeah. includes the pist- silenced pistol. It's like and it's really mm-hmm. fucking long when he puts sense on it. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's it looks, like a, yeah. <laughs> It's super like really, really impactful as <laughs> as an no. item. Then he also has um, a dart, a blow dart, and um, and an axe. I think that's in total what we see him use. Yeah, Tomahawk. So, yeah. Um, obviously, Bloodsport is just he could pull out anything, and it wouldn't necessarily be a surprise. And it's all really uh, got some nice sound effects to it, and um, it makes him come across as very, very cool. Uh, he's got a huge cool factor, especially with how his suit is all like black and orange. Or um, black and like a dull gold, I guess. And then you've got um, his mask. I can't help but see Alien in it with the um, yeah. The black... It has that smooth top to it, and then the more organic-looking mouth teeth. Yeah, it's like the jaw of a skull is is the bottom of it, and it, and and he gets the modulated voice whenever he has it on as well. So to me, he comes across as like. A, a person's attempt to make a really cool, modern, uh, badass sort of villain, and then Peacemaker is just not even close to attempting to be cool, and yet, pretty cool. <laughs> like, he, he can be yeah. pretty cool. In a very um, uncool way, it is cool, yes. Yeah. Um, and then we get the first of what I consider to be pacing issues, um, but, you know, we, we can talk about it. Um, I, at this point, so, oh yeah, the only one thing I forgot is polka dot bad distracts everybody because he's got fucking colors growing out of his skin, <laughs> and they're all like, "What the fuck?" And he just quickly goes, "It's a rash." It's a rash. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, more on that later. Um, yeah. But yeah, we we just we cut to what I felt was like just too long of a scene of Javelin Man passing his javelin to Harley Quinn, and um, lots of Harley Quinn humor. And I don't know. I I don't want to say it's just her. I would rather say it's always it's always going to be the writers, and that not even James Gunn James Gunn could write her dialogue three, that was entertaining to me. Three's a pattern, Mahler. But well, no, it's not because it's three different writers at that point. Well, in terms of her, and she's the mainstay. Well, so right? I'm saying that if a writer, if we've got three people, different people writing her with three different goals, uh-huh. which I think you could say she's. I don't know what's going on for her in each of these movies in terms of, like, exactly what the writers are trying to do with her. Um, 
but like her dialogue is cringe throughout. Uh, does that mean we conclude that she can't work, or does that mean we conclude that all of them failed? Oh, um... I mean, I get. I mean, all of them failed. I mean, well, it makes you wonder. Well, we'll we'll go through it because I know there's there's a growing sentiment among lots of people that she's pretty good in this movie, and I those I just, people are wrong. I don't. And they I don't should be ashamed of themselves. She's insufferable in this. She um, there's sucks. a couple. There's a couple of lines that she says that are like somewhat amusing. Um, I think like her reaction to TDK is just her going the fuck, which is like kind of an yeah. easy one to nail. And then there's an exchange later on, which I don't want to spoil at well, all. Yeah, we'll try and um, you guys know the one as we as we go on. We'll try and point out what we think works and doesn't work about it. But like this scene, so like Javelin is like, you must take this Javelin. It is, it is meant for you. And then the payoff that everyone can see coming is there's going to be some kind of joke. Like, what's the joke gonna be? And the joke is, you didn't tell me what I'm supposed to do with a javelin or who I'm meant to take it to. And then everyone shows up with guns and she's like, this is so fucked, I don't know where I'm supposed to go with this javelin. You didn't tell me where I'm supposed to go. And I was just sitting like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I thought this was the beginning of some kind of meaningful character <sighs> thing with her. Well, well it and... is. Nope. It's, it sets up how important the javelin is, because the javelin is very important inside of this movie. Is it, or could it have been anything? I think it. we'd have <sighs> it to conclude been, it would I... have to have been the javelin. The only way yeah. that we can help make it make sense, which we will get to, is that that javelin has to be more than just a javelin. It's got to be some kind of it, special magic javelin. or some mm -hmm. sort of tech. It has to. There's no other way. <laughs> Otherwise, this movie f has more damage. Let's just put it that way. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Javelin Man dies. She's got the javelin. And I was just like, this is where it begins in terms of the, all right, as long as I'm not spending too much time with her, I want to go back to my characters, please. Like, And then we do. It's like, okay, we're safe. Um, Bloodsport wakes up to the sounds of Polka Dot Man. V well, not the sounds. I guess the sounds of him like uh, being well, very concerned. Well, He's got a body well, horror thing going on. So, sorry, could I just interrupt? Up, like, I also want to point out that they don't gun down Harley. They were shooting at her that entire time, and then they take her hostage of course for they do. reasons that become clear later on. It's like, oh. They say, mm -hmm. like, give oh, up or we'll mm -hmm. shoot you, because that's how they did it with the rest of them, right? Well, then again... <laughs> and Waller doesn't immediately I guess at that point, the battle was sort of, like, over. And they do have a reason. We're going to get to it for sparing yeah. her more than uh, the others. But, um... So... There's a level of allowance, but it's still... I'm not going to give away... She was lucky as fuck to be alive throughout that whole thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and how come when she got taken prisoner, why didn't Waller just detonate her right then? Is there something I missed there? Um... I sup Well, she uh, sends them to... No, wait. She sends them to, to save uh, Flag, right? Not I think... Well, was that Waller or was that Flag's in, um, own initiative there? Well, so this is... We're going to have trouble now because she says that she's lost Flag and they only discover Flag later. So does that mean mm -hmm. they don't know where Harley is? But it, does that... I don't know why they wouldn't. They would have to have trackers on well, all... what about the... Trackers? No, they do. That's well, the thing. They do have trackers on all, but they lose... The, the closer yeah, you get to the island, happen? and they apparently lose Flag when he meets up with the rebels. Only to... Yeah. This is the problem with this film. Um, if you remember, the analyst goes, I am so fucking good at my job. I found Rick Flag. It's like, how... What do you mean? Why was that hard? <laughs> Either his signal yeah. transmits or it doesn't. What do you mean you found him? How does that work? Um, so yeah, maybe he, I don't know. They technically it all works stuff. the way that After, it has to work yeah. for them to have the things they want. Unfortunately, yeah. there's a lot of that. It would be this. weird if if they all have trackers but Flag doesn't. No, like, he does. Why, why, he definitely does. Um, yeah. It's that it turns off because tracker, they get jammed. He's not a bomb or anything. Just a, yeah, just yeah, a yeah. tracker. Yeah. They get jammed. That's, that's what the film's telling us. And and for some reason, they detect him briefly, and then they can send the Suicide Squad to go get him. Um, yeah. It's weird, and it's convenient for specific yeah. things that they want. But you're right. Uh, if Harley hasn't registered as dead, then I guess they're not going to kill her until they find out what she decided to do. If they knew she was captured, though, which uh, Waller never finds that out, I don't think, um, I, I guess that's the excuse. She didn't blow her up because she didn't know that she was captured. She just assumed she might have been dead. Mm. Yeah, so it's more an issue with how inconsistent the tracking is yeah. on the neck bomb. Well, do those trackers have confirmation on if, they are, if they're dead or not? So this is interesting. They, yeah. they have pictures right. of the characters, and they go black yeah. when they're dead. I and don't know. In the picture that you have in our Discord, you have two with skulls on them, the live tracker. I'm, 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 what? 
<laughs> on, the, on, the, on our Discord call here, the one with all the little the, the jungle, like the overhead, the heat map thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got the two skulls for the dead ones. Oh, interesting. I didn't even... Well, in that... I don't know. So the, all I was going to say is I don't know if that's automatic. Like, they've got a sensor of the brain activity or blood flow or something. A heartbeat, maybe. Yeah, that's maybe weasel. that. Maybe. I think Tom Weasel's dead, but he's enough, alive yeah. and well. <laughs> Why would you say that? Spoilers. He's absolutely dead. What do you mean? What are you talking about? This was a tragic oh, moment. Sorry. Yeah. So, yeah. Savant announced it. He's blood. dead. Yeah. That's true. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Saying that Savant's <laughs> lying, like fucking. Hell. We we all want him to be alive too, Frankie. Yeah, I get it. In your he's, heart, he's alive, alive in my heart. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's just alive in my heart. That's all. So, yeah, the track is weird, and um, it's funny because there's a line later on where she's like, "Yes, we can't get through to you to communicate, but we definitely can blow you up still. So don't try anything." <laughs> and it's like, okay. <laughs> I'm not convinced, but okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I, if it's bomb in my neck, I'll go along with it. I'm not going to take that chance. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you get some little neat. Uh, once Polka Dot Man rises and he's covered in the dots, he, he vomits it all out and he's back to normal. We'll get more context on that in a minute, Lots as you can see. Polka just, Dot Man rises. Yes. Uh, we're just putting the pins in this. Then Bloodsport's like, wait, what? And Sebastian is squeaking at him. It's like, what's going on here? And the rat points over. Unfortunately, King Shark is about to eat Ratcatcher 2. Um, oh no. You see, the Shark Man is huge, and I imagine he gets hungry quite a bit. Got, got a lot to power up that uh, body of his. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because he does the, the good old just normal comedic thing of like, he's spotted <laughs> and his eye looks at Bloodsport and then back <laughs> at her. <laughs> and um, yeah, she's, she's very much a deep sleeper, as you can tell from this image. Um, yep. And then we get some pretty, just, just good old-fashioned... they sort of set up in the first time we meet her. She's very sleepy. Well, yeah, she doesn't even wake up, really, yeah. after being dropped. And, uh, yeah, he just nanotech guns, gets it all together, and blows King Shark away until he hits the back of a tree. And this, I would say, is establishing either that he's using stun rounds on King Shark, or these are lethal rounds, but King Shark is that strong. Yeah, it's hard I mean, to tell. The, the is, effects I think it's the are latter. sort of... Yeah, I, don't know. I, yeah, I think it's reasonable to, to assume that he would have just used lethal rounds on him. Why not? He's about to kill yeah. a team member. Yeah. Um, we see, we see later that he gets shot. Nah, nah, nah. shot that's, the, 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 that's the whole thing we're avoiding, Metal. God. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Gosh. First person <laughs> to spoil program. anything, by the way. So that's why I'm so mad at you and not anyone else. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so I think it's safe to assume from that that he may very well be bulletproof, as well as the fact that Waller says soon after this that uh, he is the strongest member of your team, you don't really want to kill him. Because, of course, when you try and eat a team member, the rest of the team might feel like you shouldn't be on the team. Feel like that's a safe sort of assumption. Um, but then... Despite what bad guys killing their own uh, <laughs> men trope might lead you to believe, you don't want to be around people who might kill you at any moment. Um... Yeah, so so now the question of what the fuck do we do with this? And it's funny because Ratcatcher 2 turns up and she's just like, I was having a really nice dream. Like, she has no fucking clue that she was about to die. Uh, and she doesn't believe that King Shark would have tried to eat her because she likes him already. She's like, he has kind eyes. Like, oh, that's that's nice. And then the rat tells her, no, he tried to kill you. And she goes, you bastard! That gets her army of rats to turn up. Which, by the way, I guess there is an army of rats with it meters everywhere they go. Rats um, are everywhere, uh, Molly. I that's believe here. that it's just it's People a little it's a little quick. That rats are everywhere. Yes, rats. I, well, is there isn't it's there like two billion rats on Earth or something? Is is that correct or is something it more like, like, that. like that? Yeah, right. There's a lot of rats, a lot of rats. Um, and so yeah, th this is um obviously just a scene to establish exactly what kind of stuff we're dealing with with her. She has a little device. She turns it on, and then all the rats will in the area, which apparently can be as many as like a thousand, will immediately do whatever she says. Or thinks, I guess. Or well, puts into the device. She probably has specific buttons for specific things. I don't fucking know. It's a it's a sci-fi device. And um then like they all they all sort of turn up ready and John Cena just turns up in tighty whities because uh, <laughs> yeah. he was sleeping. Yeah, I was getting comfy with a sleep. Yep. And uh at this scene, I think this is where I started to basically be like, I'm really liking this movie now. The dialogue throughout this scene is fantastic. Um, pretty much every line they deliver is a banger, um, over and over again. Because the first thing you have is her activating the rats, and we already know 
that Bloodsport's got a thing with rats from earlier. And so he immediately yep. gets really uncomfortable. And he just goes, I've, I've got a thing with rats. And she's like, you've got a thing? Well, why you want a team with me? And it's like, it's not something I asked for. <laughs> like, <laughs> and John Cena's just laughing at them while in, in having this discussion. And the, so he obviously gets a little pissed off because they've got a bit of a rivalry going on. He's like, well, what, is, what are you do Why are you wearing tighty whitey? He goes, hey, man, that's racist. That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we cut to the the sort of analyst desk place and they're discussing shit and if you listen you can hear them arguing on the radio and he goes I think Bloodsport says something like it's not racist they're, they're tight and they're white <laughs> like that's oh really <laughs> you have to know. listen carefully to try and catch it um yeah and I, I don't know it's, I have a couple lines I really like from Bloodsport in this but when she says you didn't tell me you have a fear for rats Dubois which I think what is his name it's something Dubois right I forget, um, honestly. Robert Dubois. I, I forget. Robert, yeah. I Robert just call Dubois. him Bloodsport. Yeah, I That's typically call him Bloodsport. Yeah. Bloodsport. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and it cuts back to him and she goes, I'm an assassin! Why would I share my liabilities? That! <laughs> and screams because <laughs> he sees a rat. <laughs> so this is... This a is, good point. This whole scene... <clears throat> this whole scene is, like, such a great example of the fine line of balancing, like, comedy and drama. Because we kind of have the dramatic element of, like, Rat catcher is talking to you know King Shark about friends and like what it means to be friends and not eating your friends, and this is all meaningful like character building stuff in terms of relationships. While at the same time, we've got all of this stuff going on with like Bloodsport and Peacemaker, but they're jokes that also tell us a lot about who these people are in meaningful ways. It's really good, like that's just really good. Uh, Expeditious writing. Yeah, uh, completely agree. Right, he's really um, achieving so many things at once. Yeah, and, and I, just, I don't know. The the humor keeps hitting as well. They got a uh, Sebastian walks up to the blood sport with a little leaf. She goes, "Oh, he's giving you a pretty leaf to show you he means no harm." <laughs> and he just goes, "Why the fuck would I no, want no. a leaf?" <laughs> it, is, it, is a, it is a nice leaf. It, it breaks my heart to hear blood. Bloodsport talking to this sweet little rat. <laughs> and yeah, um, this is really uh, Bloodsport just coming across as so fucking human because he's uh, we we the the initial blast of him is just ruthless, cold asshole. But now we get like he has a he has a fear of rats and he's getting uncomfortable with people criticizing him for it because he's supposed to be the strongest. It's very assassin. much a uh, it's very much an Indiana Jones like snake thing. Yeah, and it's like yeah. Like it's not it's not unreasonable that even this hardened assassin would be freaked out by certain things like rats. Yeah, and I've got some notes about how um, his fear of rats actually kind of um, has an interesting through line with uh, certain yeah. other thematic yep. elements with him later on. Yep. So yep. Um, yeah, and then and then we sort of cut out of the um, the more just comedic back and forth dialogue with, uh, hey, we gonna kill Megalodouche now or what? <laughs> from uh, John Cena, because he's barely like, he doesn't give a fuck, he'll just kill the shark if it's getting in the way. Um, and so yeah, uh, Ratcatcher 2 is like, alright, would you eat your friends? Because that seems like a, a mean thing to do. And King Shark's like, well, I don't have any. He's like, oh man. Oh, oh my like, heart. Alright, well, let's be friends. And she even says, if you eat me, like, that will have mean I gambled on love, and that's a good way to go. Like, that's, like, her line. And it comes across like really sweet, and they shake hands, and then Bloodsport's just like, you're an idiot. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> you are a little idiot. <laughs> and um, yeah, and her face goes from like really happy to concerned, because, you know, <laughs> what is she getting into? You don't really know. It's a shark person. Who knows what they're gonna... Who knows why shark <laughs> people do what they do. Um, yeah, and, and it closes out, and it's just a really strong scene. Uh, it makes me like everybody involved. Um, and you, you just need more of this stuff, and it, and it it progresses uh, plenty as well in terms of understanding people's powers and their um. Obviously, I, I say this as if it's not just understood. But it's like yes, King Shark is a hungry boy. That's gonna be an element to him that will be potentially satisfied mm -hmm. as we go along. Who knows? Um. Which means yeah, so Rick Flag is discovered by the incredible analyst man, and she just redirects them to go and rescue him before continuing the mission. Um. And we get a scene that is such a combo of... Well, you know what? Before we get to that, there's a little bit of dialogue that is so important and also so funny. 
Uh, yes. It was in. It was in the trailer. Um, yep. The way it goes is like they set up to have to destroy this camp that has Rick uh, captured in it, and so that's going to require a lot of killing. She says, um, "What's the what's the phrase for it? Like complete uh, when when you're allowed to kill everybody." Basically. Global saturation. No, I wasn't looking for that. Um. <laughs> um, oh, extreme prejudice. That's basically. the one. Yeah, extreme prejudice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the man was peacemaker says nothing like a little bloodbath to start the day. Yeah, and it cut, it, well the pads over to uh, yeah. Ratcatcher too. And she goes, they call you peacemaker, <laughs> which is such to a which he says. I just love that line. <laughs> to which he says, I cherish peace with all my heart. I don't care how many men, women, and children I have to kill to get it. <laughs> men, like, women, and that children. That is like one of my favorite lines in the entire movie. It, like so, it just. It expresses his oh, character like dumb. through and through. It's exactly who he is. So, so this is. I think it's a fantastic line, and the reason why I think that is not only is it a really funny joke, and when you watch it at first, it's like, "Ha, it's funny. You're an idiot," but like that he actually believes that. Yeah, like, that's he, what he yeah. believes. Yeah, yeah just, just philosophy. He, put it put it in your back pocket, sort of thing. Whenever you're considering peacemaker, because yeah. um, it may have been a funny line. But it might be a little bit more than that. Uh, so yeah, that yeah. that's basically like the intro to the scene. Now, there are two modes in which I would like to... Oh, I guess I shouldn't cut off uh, Ratcatcher 2 that says, I thought you were the crazy one to poke it up bad. He just goes, I am. Like, <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's so funny. So we begin a scene, and there, yeah, there are two ways I'd like to talk about it. One being how strong the comedy is, and then the other being... How strong the continuity is. Uh, hmm. Now, I don't know which which one would you guys like to go f with first, or would you just want to oh. bounce between them? Oh, let's, so let's start choose. with the enemy AI and how none of them hear each so other. So continuity first, then. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Right. Oh. So the way this this works is we have a camp filled with enemies. It's very you could say video gamey. With uh, we got our two uh, main killers on the team are going to kill everybody in the camp to free Rick Flag. Um, during it, there's a bit of a pissing contest on which one is the better assassin, and unfortunately, that means that we were more focused on how cool the kills were, and the writer director was not focused on the logistics of all of this. Because it doesn't make a lick of fucking sense. Um, no, nope. no, it does not. Not even no. from the first kill. If you actually yeah. look at how everything is set and where everyone's sitting, this is one of the quintessential examples of a scene that relies on you thinking that anyone who's not on screen doesn't exist. Yeah, fuck yeah. object permanence, basically. Yeah, there's there's literally a shot where um, you know it was after he tomahawks that guy to death while he's sleeping, where it whip pans to the side um, for Bloodsport to kill those guys with uh, the, the hook weapon. And it's almost like they spawned just before the camera whip yeah. pans. Yeah, it's, it's honestly, yeah. that one was one of the most distracting when we were watching it, because I was like, whoa, these guys were meters away from you just having killed screaming enemies. What the hell? But I feel like that's the question, right? On set, did you not think like, oh, they're like right here. <laughs> like, this doesn't really work. Like, what? Stand there. It doesn't it really awkward like the actors were ready right like literally outside of the screen waiting to do stuff yep yeah you think they just said fuck it because it's a comedy well, segment so they didn't give a shit which is which sucks Maybe. because like one of them it, yeah absolutely blood sport is like meters away from a person who is looking at him but the camera doesn't show them um it's just after the first kill he gets with the uh the strangulation thing he gets a ball and he spins it up ready to attack and the camera like pans over and it's someone who's looking right at him and it's like what were they doing the whole time like what they were just looking at you, being like, well, this guy looks like he's... Uh. But a lot of them have guns, and so we're just supposed to believe that they are literally on pause until the camera shows them. It's so bizarre. Uh, yes, uh... There's so much screaming, and there's burning, and there's gunfire, like, and yet yeah. nobody's alerted to anything. I mean, logistically, one it's guy like literally one of the... Explodes. Logistically, it's one of the worst, quote-unquote, action sequences I've seen in a comic book movie. It's pretty... Yeah, um, it couldn't help but well, compare and it so, to a video game because it just feels like a video game. Yeah, which no, you're bad right. AI. Um, it's like, well, an AI with what are they? What are they called in Dark Souls? It's like a oh, fuck. It. Mel, do you know what I'm talking about? Where it's like the like the limit aggression range. The, the aggro, uh, yeah. Aggro range, hey, probably. Yeah, is what it, yeah this, it also reminds me of like leashing ranges as well. Where um, hey, Mahler. Yeah, must must have been the wind. Oh yeah, that's the, this entire <laughs> scene. Mm -hmm. Um. 
But if... If are we through on that mode? Because then we can reset the scene and talk about it from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. The character interaction in this. Because yeah, because it ends with them entering Rick Flag's area, and he and the people there have no idea any of this ha had happened, despite all of the crazy noise. It's just like okay, don't really believe it. However, we re, re rewind and go all the way back. Um, it opens with with King Shark eating someone. Which, by the way, that that alone should alert everybody. But I'm, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop saying that now. Well, um, <laughs> the kills are all like they start. They almost like amp up in terms of the complexity. Um, because the opening ones are just like uh, like axe throw to the head and then sword to the to the neck from. Oh yeah, Peacemaker has a sword too. Um, I guess I forgot that one. Oh, right, okay. Uh, as does Bloodsport. You do see him with a sword at one point. Uh, yeah, like I assume. Yeah, yeah, it's all. Oh yeah, I don't know if yeah, because I'm not sure where Peacemaker keeps his sword. If it might be retractable. Um, it, are you talking about the tomahawk, or am I missing something? No, he, no, so he has a sword. Yeah, he has a sword. It's a full-on well. sword. He uses it a couple of times, actually. I just remembered it. Um, I, there's this kill that I think everybody fucking found hilarious, where Peacemaker is... Um, he kills someone by slicing, slicing their throat with his axe, and then he comes across another guy and he just, who's sleeping, and he just hits oh, yeah. him like seven <laughs> times with the axe. As he's, it's... Yeah. <laughs> oh, the re reaction to that guy's like, God, God, God. It's so yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's so funny. That is comedic timing. Right there. Yes, indeed. And then um, he blow darts three people, and as he jumps down, you see the uh, blood sports been setting people on fire. So, like, that's a, again, just, you can tell when they were making this thing, they were like, what's cooler and cooler and different ways we can have people die? Because it's not as simple as they just shoot, 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 done. It's um, just different interesting things. And because the, um, the last kill in that moment is he shoots his gun <laughs> right next to dead, uh, I, keep, I want to say dead sport on accident. Like, is it dead, dead sport, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Blood sport's face, he, he shoots the gun right past him. And he ends up like taking the mask off and frowning at him because it's like this is the closest they get to like getting in each other's way and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, so then he immediately pulls out his pistol and shoots a leg of a table that knocks a fan into a bath <laughs> and electrocutes someone, which yeah, as kills go, you could tell he's like impressive. And then John Cena shoots and someone. And it also gets the guy in the dangus um as well. Um at the exact Yeah, you same see a time. big old floopy dangus in in the movie. You see a dangus. It was mm -hmm. yeah. it was what it was. Um, and so to try and one-up that, he shoots someone without looking, and it, like, seems to hit them, like, in shoulder, torso, and so Bloodsport's like, non lethal, I win. And then he's like, <laughs> exploding compression bullets. And, uh, I can, oh, I can show the result of that. Just blows up. And, uh, yeah, he's like, no one likes no to one show likes off. No one likes to sh show off. Unless what they're showing off is dope as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Bloodsport <laughs> turns around <laughs> one and curses to fuck, him. he's right. It's true. It's true. true. <laughs> Which, yeah. by the way, does feel like that. If you think about what they're showing off as dope as fuck, is something that would apply to Bloodsport a little later at one point. Well, I think it's. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I was about to. Yeah, that's yeah. spoilers, though. Um, and there's Polka Dot Man's power right yeah, there. Yeah, so, yeah, they, they get. Somehow they didn't. I guess because there's like fucking covers on this outposty thing, and they get revealed, and then there's several people in there, and so they're all taken off guard a little bit. But uh, Polka Dot Man reacts the quickest, and he just vaporizes the the whole thing, and they fall down. And you, yeah, you finally get to see his powers in action. And, uh, I'll show it on screen in a sec. But um, yeah, it's it's almost like a in a way, I feel like this is a passive sort of admittance that these two are the powerful members of the team, along with King Shark, while Ratcatcher and Polka Dot are kind of like less so. They'll be less important, but maybe that's a misconception. Who knows? We'll have to see how everything turns out. Um, but yeah, everyone's kind of shocked and just like, yeah, that's Polka Dot Man's powers. He fires Polka Dots at people. They melt. Mm -hmm. It's it's yeah. a really interesting scene because it's very entertaining and I like to watch it, but logistically it's horrible. It's a uh, yeah. very, very interesting experience. Well, like there's two layers because there's, there's good material going on with the character through action and like what's occurring on screen there. But in terms of like the enemy placement and how the scenes put together, it's it's problematic. So it's it, it's almost it's like the beyond problematic sides are fighting each other. Oh yeah, broken for certain. Um, and yeah, the the only the only thing before sort of reaching the next part of this scene would be just um he he says sorry it's so flamboyant about his powers, which is such a bizarre <laughs> thing to hear about your superpowers. Like sorry it's yeah. flamboyant. 
Uh, yeah. yeah, Ratcatch is like, I, I think it's cool. It's, it's, it's neat and that he's like, I just don't like killing people. Uh, if I imagine they're my mother, it's easy. <laughs> it's just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, which again, it's a funny line, but it's also relevant. We will find out more so going forward. Oh yeah, and they arrive, and Rick Flag is very fucking confused because he's actually these are the rebels of the um, <laughs> the current coup. So technically speaking, they line up with us in a way. Um, and you've just wiped out the entire thing because you assumed they were all hostile, which I think is a great joke. I think it works really well, and and we play off a little bit because all the characters are awkwardly like. I, I didn't oh, see anybody. Fuck. No, I didn't see, I see anyone. <laughs> I didn't see anybody at all. It was like, think, I pretended think they were me. my mother and I killed them all. Yeah. <laughs> thing for me, though, was that Flag didn't try to contact Waller. It's like, it just seems like I get maybe he was just trying to talk to them to like figure out what was going on, but you'd imagine the first thing he'd be doing was try to reestablish communication, but he so didn't. That's so that's part of the problem is apparently they're able to know where he is, but they weren't able to talk to him. And then yeah, they, they're able to talk to the Suicide Squad a little bit later, if you remember. Waller talks to them when they're in the bus. And so mm -hmm. it's literally right, just yeah. convenience. They, it works and doesn't work at the whim of the writer. It's not based on anything. And it's for the sake of this scene, and so that, like, basically all the team can get killed off, so that, like, the leader and, like, three people are left. So Well, like, that's something I'm itching to fucking talk about. When you're the leader of a rebel army, and you're specifically created to oppose a horrible government that's killing people, she explicitly said they killed my family, and that's why she wants to fuck them up. And then you have this team of people rush through your base and kill what looks to be about everybody. Uh, uh, we, yeah. All we see of the rebels going forward is a selection of about four or five people, including her. So for all we know, that's just the rebel team has been wiped out. <laughs> and they're like, yeah man, these guys are assholes, but uh, you know, we need your help. And to me, yeah, like when we were watching it, we were just like, nah. Yeah, no, <laughs> I think she yeah, said I'll, was, I'd make uh... a deal with the devil or something. Yeah, I know. Like that to make that work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, what? What are you? I just don't. I don't. I don't think I could mm. swallow it. I just like the idea that that all just happened. Yeah, and you're like, it. well, I guess I have to work with you guys still. I think she deserved oh, a lot shucks. more time. She, oh, you. I would argue she deserves like the chance to pull a gun on them, and Rick stops her, and then we have like a quite a dramatic scene where we have to calm everything back down and you know you need the conclusion to be this is our only shot so you're with these people or you're dead also be like an ongoing conflict throughout the film yeah we're clearly on on edge and maybe she warms up to them eventually maybe sacrifices herself for them but who knows um you could do a lot more like, stuff with her character if you gave her that like material yeah it was to work with. it was so actually, absurdly quick it was just like actually, oh well Give, yeah, actually give her a character, maybe. That'd be nice, yeah. yeah. Uh, her what character in full fix... is, I want to overthrow the government, and I, I hope to do so. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, in regards to the communication thing, what I would do to fix that, like if, like if I would just slap a band-aid on that, like obviously you'd have to fix a lot more in this scene to get it to work as a whole, but as far as Waller not being able to communicate, I would establish that during the during the conflict on the beach, his communication systems got damaged, so Waller can track her, but that's a separate system from the communications, and he's been trying to reestablish communications up until that point, so that's why he wasn't able to contact her, and then when the team arrives, there's like a spare comm unit that they can pass over, and that's how they reestablish communication with Waller, um, but uh, they never try even try to do that, it's just kind of a hole in the film. Yeah, um... And I think it's worth mentioning that like, a lot of people are like, in fairness, what, what else is she going to do? And I'm like, I think she deserves that scene. She didn't really get it. She just sort of says, like, uh, yeah, I, I'd make a deal with the devil to take over the government, so, yeah. Just re react like a person. Yeah, she should. I, I, I think she deserved to be furious. She deserved to pull a gun on them or something. And then she needed to be calmed down and explained that this is the only chance we have and we're so fucking sorry. Or oh, you wouldn't get that from, you should get that from Rick. It'd be like it's, yeah, the rest of the movie. This this is it's a character that kind of acts like Spock a little bit, and that she's yeah she's like pretty yeah. logical to a fault. Um, but she, at the expense of coming across as like you know a a person. Yeah. This is uh, one of those kind instances of, where we, we, yeah. we would like a little less logic and a little bit more emotion and irrationality yeah, in the character. Happens, it's really tough to buy what she does after you. Mm -hmm. uh, after the film tells you what it tells you, they they do seem to have, they kind of want to have it both ways. Um, they wrote themselves to a really, really strange position, 
Uh, yeah. And I, I think it was just for, I, for I don't know. Just well, it's really, really odd construction of. It's really funny. It's, it's a really morning. engaging scene. It's really like it, it, ignoring the logistic issues. It's a crazy subversion. Like the camp takedown scene. Turns out those of those were good guys. Like, oh shit. You know, it's, it's all, it's all wicked, but then it's like, now can we move on quick? And it's like, no, you can't, you can't move on from no, that quick. You, you, <laughs> you can't. This. You, you, yeah, you made your bed. And you know, some yeah, might they... say, what are they to cut from the movie if they to include more time for it? It's like, oh, gee. Can't oh, I can think. think of a few things. Mm, maybe. I can think maybe of one something. or two things, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, we'll get there. I do, we will get there. I do like the exchange where she looks at them and she's like, is that rat waving at me? And then Rick Flag is like, he appears to be friendly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Really friendly. Uh, Once again, great rat. What a what absolutely. what a good rat. Um. Yeah. And so rat. then we catch up with the um, established sort of villains in the debriefing. Uh, we see that they've killed a whole bunch of scientists, and Peter Capaldi is kind of pissed at them. He's like, "You killed my team," and they're like, "Well, that team was loyal to the past regime." It's like, who are you loyal to, Thinker? And there's this... It's, it's, it, it amused me, the line, but it's so easy as a line. He's like, basically he goes, uh, what's all that shit in your face? Does it make your brain good? And he goes, yes, it makes my brain good. And it's like, it might be Peter Capaldi's <laughs> delivery that I like so much. It's such an easy joke, and it's just like, heh. <laughs> um, like, yes, <laughs> it makes my brain good. And so... Um, I like it. Yeah, no, I like it too. I was trying to figure out why I like it. And I think it's it's just how well it's delivered from him. Uh, by the way, fantastic actor. It's cool to see him in, yeah. in anything. Uh, and it's such an absurd fucking look, but he can carry it easily because he's just uh, he's quite commanding as a as a sort of actor anyway. And so we find out there's this creature that's like a starfish, mm. and um, it apparently grows inside whenever it takes someone like. To be a part of its collective, where just like it spawns little starfish and they sit on your face, and um, it grows as a result of that. It feeds on consciousness, is what he says. Um, so that's what's been worked on in Jotunheim, and uh, the thinker is willing to work for them. And uh, the villain says that with this giant starfish, um, the will governments will take us seriously. Which you know, um, if. The, the only thing about that that I find strange, I guess, is just like, imagine you're America, and they're like, we have a giant monster starfish, so we demand to be on the world stage. Wouldn't you just be like, what in the world? A like, giant monster starfish? <laughs> and like, can mean? it survive a nuke? Because I don't know how threatening it is compared to having nukes, you know? And I can't confirm that. I do not know if Starro could resist a nuke. You know, it's an interesting question. You know, um, could he resist a Superman? Is another. Yeah, uh, I, 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 from what I've seen in the film, I don't really believe that it, Superman would have that much trouble taking out Starro. Especially with the uh, yeah. laser eyes. Yeah. Feels like the laser eyes yeah. would be enough, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. And Thinker says, you know, I'm the one who knows how to work it, so you can't kill me, you need me for the project. And they shake hands, and that's that. Um, and this thing, and like, then... this to me, I'm like, okay, that was... That was a lot of exposition, and it was a little slow, just to establish what our bad guys are up to. And I like that we've got the introduction, just like, back to my characters, please. And then it cuts to, meanwhile, Harley. And it's like, oh, uh, okay. Oh, no. Okay, I guess we'll we'll hang well, out with no, Harley James Gunn. for a little we, bit. We, yeah. Who knows what we'll do? You know, we could have... Who knows what this guy could do with this character? I mean, sure, she's been in basically two movies, one sort of devoted to her, and, and those were both shit, but... Third time's a charm, right? And, like, I timed it, just so you guys know. This scene, in total, the Harley scene is 17 years is how long it is. Um, oh, I my it. goodness. You know what? I, I thought it was longer. Yeah, yeah no. I know. I, I was completely mis misled on that one. It took a while to time it. That's why this episode of EFAP took so long. I just wanted to make sure I got it right. <laughs> um, so she's trapped, and she's like, what are you guys doing? Oh, this is really cringe. This is the thing. I feel like the jokes are sometimes top-notch. Right? Oftentimes, even. Some of them, I'm like scratching my head, like, did James Gunn write this joke? Some, um, she says, I'm gonna kill all you cold toes, mul Maltese, whatever you Mario Kart racing D bags are called. Uh, and I was just uh, like, oh, what is that line? That was, yeah, that was, uh, 
Do, do you think they wrote her dialogue like that to try to make it more consistent with the previous <laughs> movies because they know that a lot of people like Harley from the previous movies? Or I, I don't know how to explain it, man. Because I'll, I'll tell you, we were. You could argue in good faith mode with this, like, like what's what's the like like overly good faith mode with this film up to that point, and like she slayed it. We, we were just like, oh yeah, woo. They were just like, what what do we what? Oh oh. Cringe oh. Rex. Right. Yes, cringe. Cringe. And then Harley they, Quinn is cringe. Yeah. So then, while she's tied up in this pit, they throw a dress down <laughs> in a bag to to her in the pit, and they say get dressed like by the way so first off she's tied up she can't do that secondly she's in a dirty pit she's gonna get the dress dirty yeah. right she also she's all like covered in mud as well they just mm -hmm. hard cut to the car and it's like what happened in between you see Why they applied the makeup the to the mud the yeah exactly yeah. you want to shower also, her um, off first and then get the dress uh, Thunder just said, I, I've seen people say that she's better in Birds of Prey, so I'm happy to say I think she's the best in this out of the three. Um, I just don't like her in any of them. She's not yeah. good. Yeah. Like, she feels stapled on to all three, like, they yeah. don't take the time to organically integrate her into the film, which I think is the problem with all three, and so she, a lot of her stuff comes off as very forced as a result. There are a whopping two or three lines in this that she says that are amusing, which yeah, is way more than what we get in the other two. I would argue there is about yeah. 15, maybe 20 seconds of Harley Quinn content in this movie that I like, and that is 15 or 20 seconds more than the other two. I don't know why yeah. they didn't just integrate her into the, the second team and just have her be with them the entire movie rather than like have her basically be a subplot. She's just separated from the rest of the group doing well, her own maybe thing. Maybe that... Maybe that tells us a lot about what was actually happening in terms of the process of this story. Maybe, it's yeah. pretty yeah, clear yeah. that, like, because she's got top billing, but, like, Bloodsport, he's the main character. At least I think he's the main character. He's, like, the prominent leader POV character in the story, and there's a lot more going on for him than there is for her. Like, she's really got much going on for her at all. I'm not even sure what, like, her journey was in this film. Like, there's a few bits and pieces that I think had potential, but yeah, we can, it's still so divorced from everything else. We can try and draw it together when we've gone through a bit more, but, um, so for those following along with us, they throw her a dress, they put her in a car, they start sorting out her makeup, and, like, as an audience member, it's just like, what the hell is happening? Whoa. Mm. <laughs> what? <laughs> and I guess, to sort of rush it along a little bit, just for this scene, we find out that... The current president, the one that's taken over from the previous, the people aren't a huge fan of him, or at least a lot of people love him, but more would if he had a wife, because they, they just like seeing that he would have a wife. And who better than Harley Quinn, somebody who has taken quite the... She, she stands up to American oppression, and that is quite the symbol to have as a wife. Just like, Apparently she's really famous for that in Corto Maltese. Like, the adventures of yeah, Harley Quinn have up, propagated too. to this foreign <laughs> nation. It is bizarre. I, just, I, I had no clue what to think when I was hearing that. I was like, what? how does she, for one, how, is that even true that she, like, fights a pr American oppression? And then it's like, like why... why would they know about that? And, like, talk about Lucky as well, that, like, they didn't kill her in the beach invasion and then brought her over. It's like, wow. And this That's guy so nice. happens to be a fan of her, the president. He's like, I know you. You're the one that, again, he, I'm pretty sure he says, like, you represent uh, standing at, you're like the fire against American oppression. It's just like, what the fuck are you talking about? She's just a criminal. She's yeah, not, she's a crazy criminal, too. Yeah, she doesn't she's distinguish nuts. between, like, good or bad actions or for in and against or as a part of a system. She's just insane. I don't know that Harley... I don't know that Harley Quinn has any political opinions. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so yeah, just absolutely confusing. And he says, like, part of this is because his men want him to have some form of a wife, too. And so it, we, we thought we were being tricked at this point. A lot of people didn't experience this scene the way we did. I've seen a lot of people talk about it. It was like, this is really funny and, and like, cutesy and interesting for her and stuff. We didn't believe it was happening. You get a montage of them <laughs> doing, like, honeymoony dating things. Like, having food that together, going on the veranda the together, watching the sunset, playing with birds. We were confused as fuck. 
Yeah, that was, was like, where I thought it must have been fake. Is it's like they're playing. I forget that the song, and it's like it's all happy and cheery. It's like what is this? This does I not thought, match the tone. It's like what's going I on? I thought it was like a hallucination of yeah. Harley's because she's like schizophrenic yeah. and she has a, a similar sort of like hallucination sequence in Birds of Prey that comes out of nowhere as well, and it apparently wasn't the case here. So we were really confused by the time that we got to the the end of the scene. Yeah, but so and just to clarify for anybody who's listening and confused, it's to tell us they've had some time together now, and she's actually invested in him and he in her, and he asks her to marry day, her. It was a day, wouldn't it? I say sometimes because I have no fucking clue. Yeah, um, I think I think like it is a twelve day, hours. She says I, that they spent, or at least the dictator guy says. I think he does specify it's just a day. Oh well, there you go. Um, and he asks her to marry him, and um, she agrees. And then they have the big sex. They knock over a couple of things, <laughs> including things, a, a a display Ooh, of right. several old timey guns. Lots lots of guns, and she they they oh. destroy the display case and they all fall to the ground. After they've had the big sex, he starts. It's like, and this is another thing that people have noticed, and I completely agree. Damn, James, you could have tried a little harder with getting expositional dialogue out because. <laughs> He stands up, he looks out the window, and she goes, Oh, is that Jotunheim? And he goes, Jotunheim was used by the Nazis when they were fleeing America in the war and stuff. The dude experiment. It's like, what the fuck is happening? What, what do you mean? Uh, it's quite a normal answer to give. It's, <laughs> it's pain. This, this whole scene is pain. It's just, yeah. it's a waste of time. It goes nowhere. It, you, this whole time, I'm like, go back to the rat. Oh, absolutely, dude. You know? We were dying at this point. We were like, "Please give us Bloodsport back!" Like, this is so unfair. Why do we have to watch Just Harley doing this weird her, shit? Yeah, all the stuff please. that we've been saying about how much we love about this and how great the characters are. Harley Quinn is the exception. She sucks. Well, I don't like her, but I don't think she's inconsistent or anything. Like yeah, I guess she's not. Yeah, I guess that's the thing. She's not inconsistent. She's always just kind of shit and empty. Yeah. Um. There, well, we're about to get almost... to what is something you know you could say yeah it's something um and you think with this amount of time of they must be doing something right so he That's says for her. Oh. he says what well, uh the the previous regime did was use jotunheim to capture and kill political rivals as well as their family members and then she says oh that's like awful and i'm sure that now that you've taken over you can put a stop to that and then he's like nah I'm going to use it to kill my political enemies and their families, including their wives and children. Like, he's very specific. And then he continues, only to turn around and get shot. Uh, Ali has one of the guns from the floor, and she says that when it comes to dating, she looks out for red flags, and killing children is one of them. And I'm okay with that line. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, that, that line is okay. That fall God yeah. forbid, this actually follows from Birds of Prey. Yeah, she's she likes kids to a degree, and this yeah, is what I mean. Kids are kind of... We almost have a question mark about that because I just know fuck all about Harley Quinn. Like, uh, it's been two value? movies, what and we don't really know in? much about her at all yeah. after two movies. Meanwhile, well, yeah. if he said I kill children in front of someone like Peacemaker, it would be the context in which he's talking about, and then that would regard how he'd respond. But if it's Bloodsport, Bloodsport's probably going to take an issue with it no matter what. Like, we, we know these people already. Meanwhile, like, Harley Quinn's had two movies, and I have no idea. Like, I'm just like, oh, she, yeah, she, she's very much not okay with that. Yeah, that, that seems to fit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Either way could go, because craziness is just her trade, basically. That's the, yeah, that's a, part, a big part of the problem. Um, And so, I mean, I want to jump ahead to this part, and we'll go back again. But just, like, she points out that it's a fucking crazy thing that the gun was loaded. It's like, yeah... Oh yeah, right, it's yeah. a lampshade. Yeah, it's just that's yeah. Fucking, yeah, yeah. That is kind of wild. That is, is weird. Really crazy that he has loaded yeah, guns on a display. Wood. But uh, all right. Um. Yeah. And then she gets uh, recaptured. But uh, she spends the scene trying to explain why she's killed him. And she at one point gets to saying that um, there are men in her life that she'll date that when you just leave them. That won't be it, and they'll they'll come back, and they'll like burn your possessions, kill your pets, and uh, leave you in pieces after enough time. And she starts to tear up, and you're like, "Oh, okay." This is something. This this yeah. is something, and I can I this is the part that I like. It's a shame it took us seven hours to get here. 
Yeah. And we wasted a whole scene <laughs> and we had to have this big exposition dump. It it was it was slow and clunk the whole way, but at least we got to something. Um the issue is that you, you might as well just get rid of the whole scene because they don't really ever do anything with this. Um, it, it's, a, it's like it's an isolation. You know, I was I said to the rest of the crew after we watched this that it felt like halfway through production. James Gunn was told that Harley Quinn needed to be in the movie. And she needed to be in for like 25 minutes or whatever. That's how it feels. That's not the case, but that's how it feels. Because yeah. Harley Quinn has, and we'll get to the other one later, in particular, two long sections that are really just devoted to her and her alone mm. in ways that don't really help the plot out at all. Yeah, we don't gain a lot of character from it. We gain some. We, yeah, we get tiny, tiny little shadows of an idea, but it, it that's the feeling that you get. It, and I'm already it, seeing and... in chat that apparently... James Gunn said he was most excited to write about Harley, and I'm just gonna be honest. He Gunn, he fucking failed with Harley. I think um, so. He more failed than succeeded. Failure. Yeah. She. Uh, yeah. If I could redo this movie, that would be the number one thing I would change character wise. Is just like get rid of her. Don't even have her be here. Mm hmm. Another problem is there's no one for her to bounce back off of. Like there's there's no other supporting character that she's like captured with or something like that that you could use to like have some yeah, she dialogue often, sequences between. She'll say something weird and then other characters will sort of just be like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty much the only uh, thing that the scene has going for it is that she's working off of this guy and not Jared Leto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this guy's like a normal guy. Not like a <laughs> fucking crazy person, I guess. Like, congratulations, James Gunn. You you hit the bare minimum. Well, yeah, because he said he yeah. he said there was like reasons for why he didn't have Jared Leto in this film, right? But like we all know the actual reason, which is just he's a fucking disaster, and you don't even want to try and fix him. He's like, I'll just I'll just use other characters. It's Here, fine. Here's the thing: everyone recognizes that Jared Leto is shit as Joker, even in the Zack Snyder Justice League, but those people are weird. But so is Harley. But she gets just this pass. I don't think she's as bad as he is, but I agree. Yes, but uh, I guess she yeah, has feels like she has time to work with, so maybe she's mega cringe, more and I hate Harley Quinn, and I never want to see her ever again. I hope she dies. And apparently, he had the option to kill her off, and he, mis <laughs> and he mistakenly kept her alive. <laughs> Could have spared Could Margot have Robbie. This. Could Honestly, have saved us, James. I Honestly, I wish that she had been killed off unceremoniously. I remember when the movie ended, and I was just like, oh, man, it could have been nice if she bit the bullet. <laughs> um, Margot Robbie's a billion times better than Leto? No. Not at, not in these roles. Um, no. I mean, can you really... What, what is a zero times a billion? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. No, I get it, but... Mm. Um, so anyway, we then cut to another awkward scene where uh, the general is now the president, and it's implied, I don't think it's explicit in any way, that um, it could have been that they wanted Harley to be with him so she would kill him, um, so that he could take over, um, but I think there's equal amounts to sort of interpret that this is just something that's happened and they're going to move on from it, but he fucking burns down the bird sanctuary. Yeah, just to show he's evil. For some reason. I guess. I just, bad you could have just it's opened yeah. it and just let them go, up. but look, burning yeah, birds yeah. makes you evil. It's so. such how a, evil I am. Look, it's, it's something Fire. like I, I think I think that I I made a comment on it uh, as we were watching it. it was like this feels like the kind of thing that Zack Snyder would write a villain to do. It's just it feels edgy for the sake of being edgy. It's just gratuitous. Yeah, it, it feels like it's for the the lizard brains out there who are like, is he bad? He's a bad guy. Okay. Bad guy. <laughs> bad guy, everybody. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. Moving on. <laughs> he burns birds. Definitely bad. It's like yeah, we've established he's bad. <laughs> and yeah, and so he's aware that there are other Americans, potentially, and he's going to torture that information out of Harley, hopefully. And then a miracle happens. We cut back to the Suicide Squad. Woohoo! Like, oh, Thank God. Yeah. Yeah. Thank fuck. And, it, and it's literally Polka Dot Man falling to the ground and smudging the chapter name um, as he's getting covered in his Polka Dots again. And we have uh, 
of course it's it's only gonna go for so long it just to me it just seems like the kind of way you do it where it's it's like we're getting to the point where it's getting getting a bit much it's like we're gonna have to address this you keep erupting it's like what what's what's going on <laughs> um and oh yeah and i think that it's it's a neat in a way it just tells you a little bit more about Bloodsport that she she says like we can't keep slowing down because polka dots falling over and uh, rat catches sleepy um the the rebel leader is like if we're going to be able to you know uh, save my people or help my people we we got to do it and Bloodsport's like we're not doing this for your people it just cuts her off it's just like mm -hmm. oof harsh but like making it clear you're not team leader i am like oh but i, I just i like it um so a lot of them are like getting a little bit confused and um i think it's a peacemaker who doesn't like let him continue because he's like is that shit contagious and um yeah. he has what i think is a fucking great line uh where he's like explain what it is he's like it's an interdimension interdimensional virus and then there's just a gap <laughs> and then john Cena just goes the fuck is that <laughs> 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 um and yeah, so he, uh, he explains that he is one of many kids in his family. They were all experimented on by their mum in the hopes of creating a superhero. And of course it went very wrong. And uh, some lived, some died. And he ended up the way that he is. And if he doesn't vomit out his, um, his polka dots twice a day, he will... Uh, I think he says they'll consume him? Something like that? Yeah. Yeah, it'll, like it'll consume him from the inside out. Yeah. That, sounds, that sounds like a really horrible fate. For a guy that's, uh, you know, been <laughs> yeah. set some really serious childhood trauma, uh, I really hope that they explore this in a in a serious manner. Well, it, it, we can we can talk about that. If they played it off you as don't a have joke. to be thinking about it. It's going to be over in a second. So the uh, <laughs> he explains all of that, and then um, I think Ratcatcher says, well, uh, "So where's your mum now?" And then he looks up and he's like, "I see her everywhere." Or like see you right now something like that and this will be the I'll, I'll put the image on screen um so i i yeah like i, said, I think it's fucking hilarious and i love oh, how yeah. much all of them are the people that you know you can tell whoever it is basically is where i'm going with that like king shark it's like yeah king shark was pretty, especially when he starts going for the little fly it's like distracted <laughs> Yeah, King Shark and Peacemaker by far are the funniest looking of, of yeah. a bunch. Um, but I'm assuming with what Southpaw just said, I'm assuming you're not a fan of the undercutting of his story with this. Yeah. So this they is just keep why? playing the same joke. They keep like using this Whoa, over. Oh, hold your horses a second. Uh, yeah, over. yeah. Now you said keep Wait. reusing the same joke. What are you referring to? I'm referring to the whole mom. Th Thing. I feel like they. How many times I, did we, they do it? No, not not that it's it, the the repetitions the problem. It's that like it is a serious thing. Like this is funny, but at the same time, like it it punctuates what he's talking about with like the story with his mom. But they don't really do much else past that, or at least in terms of dialogue, maybe more material. I don't I don't know. Well, so yeah, the, I, this thing, I, I'm I'm ready to quite... uh, battle this one. So I want to I want to hear some points. So like, mm -hmm. what are we what are we dealing with with Polka Dot Man in terms of is this a problem or is this a preference that you don't hold? Uh, for me, for me, man. Either you or Southpaw, really. Um, I don't. I, what What's your take, South I Was uh, you you mentioned it a little bit before? What's What's your issue? Well, they're clearly going for a more comedic uh, bent with this, and it it works as far as like being funny. Um, it just. It kind of reminded me of Thor in Endgame, where it seems like his trauma is being played off, uh, you know, Sorry. as just a joke, that's, as opposed to. That's see, that's where I would disagree on that because it's in Endgame. It's like we are constantly just like, ha ha, you're fat mm -hmm. and depressed. Ha, isn't that funny? You're eating Cheetos. Oh, you want to save the world, you fat prick? And it's like, what are we doing here? You know, it's like, what what's going on? Like, why are we? Why are we just making fun of him? Whereas here it's like, this is really funny, but are we laughing at him because of this? Or are we laughing at this image because it's hilarious? Like, does that mean that we're laughing at his trauma or laughing at his suffering? I guess or we're, we're laughing at his view. Like, we're laughing at his perception of things, kind of, which... I, yeah. 
which yeah. I think is it's it's a really funny perspective, but I don't think that that necessarily undercuts the fact that like like it's not we're not we're not laughing we are laughing at an image that is really funny, but we're not laughing at his expense, or at least I don't feel like that's what's happening. Yeah, uh, I would agree with that. I was never laughing at the fact that he was traumatized. I thought that part mm -hmm. was always quite tragic. Yeah, but I think it worked. I think, yeah. I think that that makes sense. Because what? Yeah. Especially because we just like, got done with. It. It's worth mentioning. Just, go ahead. That seeing someone who means everything to you, trauma wise, in your life in different places, that can be portrayed in quite. In fact, that comes up in Tasm too, right? He sees the chief, um, uh, where he's oh, dead yeah, and yeah. stuff. That way is much more serious, and it, it's going to be led into in terms of also, discussion stuff. I, but I want well, to just clarify on. something because well, uh, chat keeps on saying that I said it's the same thing as Thor. I said it reminds me of Thor from Endgame. So I actually I wanted to, to talk about that as well. Um, mm -hmm. Don't don't worry. We'll we'll it'll all we'll all make it all clear because this, 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 this is an important discussion. Sure. I think it's it's quite interesting. So. Having it be that it's like, I see her in everyone, and it's set up to be like, oh god, is this gonna be like a haunting thing where she's, like, you could see her face through, like, some some trees, or you could blah, 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 it's just like, no, literal, he sees her as every character, and then we get to, it like, appreciate that he literally, like, transforms them in his view from what we know to be these characters, and that's absurd, and of course it's hilarious to us, because we're not, um, we've not got the history that he has, and so it's gonna be, um, compared to Thor, for example, which... We have like how many movies to support it, and I would say that it's one of the most important uh, moments several, yeah. in Endgame, where he is standing well, up to he's say, a main character. "I will essentially kill myself so that we can get these people back because I failed to save them." And then you have fucking piece of shit War Machine saying, <laughs> "Yeah, but you're fat," <laughs> and like it's and meant to be that, funny. Yeah. It's supposed to be funny that he's fat and a loser and he can't save his friends, which is a weird decision to make when this is the one of the main characters of this story. Like he, yeah, Polkadot Man isn't the main character; he's a supporting character, but Thor is one of the main characters. And also, like, there's just a, a ton more, uh, I guess, weight to Thor's trauma that's, I guess, a little bit more fresh. No, oh, there's a lot more build up to it, and and so for them to undercut all of all of that, all that, like that huge payoff from Infinity War, and you think that they're going to explore oh. that in an interesting way in Endgame, and they just <laughs> refuse to do it. So, so people are like, he didn't say that. It's like, okay, so that's the point of the joke. What he says is, I've got uh, like strength coursing through my veins or something, and then War Machine says, more like Cheese Whiz. Like the, the point being, you're uh. fat, you eat lots of food, you're fat. Which is just yeah, and I, they're talking about who's gonna die to save the world, and, and War Machine feels the need to tell people that Thor is fat. It's like thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think, think it's it important work to all remember. Though, yeah, and and I think it's important to remember that like this is a visual gag versus the characters actively yeah. and almost maliciously making fun of this really serious, not only like trauma but also physical condition that 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 Thor has. Um, so it's um there a there's a difference in execution like, yeah. definitely a different in, in execution for sure it's it's because i i mentioned someone i saw someone in the chat mentioned gallows humor it's like well do we want to commit to the position that like you can't make fun of something that you're still you know well if they want more argument, as, i would say it's, as out of meaningful. it's out of character for war machine to have said that there uh, absolutely yes war machine yeah. roadie's a really good person uh he's not looking to make a fucking joke to score points in the middle of discussing who's gonna die he barely does that at all in those early mcu movies it's only end game that really makes him yeah. the joke person he becomes a, he becomes the jester in that movie he's making and a lot of the jokes are funny that one isn't um and th and this is the thing the the part that feels awkward to discuss it if if someone was to make the point like yeah but you can't take polka dot man seriously you can't feel for his trauma or something it's like so I did which means mm -hmm. yeah I did that we're yeah, yeah like that like, that's, like, hmm. we're at an impasse I did and you didn't uh, so I guess that's it <laughs> like yeah. yeah um he is quite the tragic character he's going through all kinds of shit and I just don't think it conflicts with anything to note that this without his context and history being your own you can find this amusing, that she turns up and she will morph into the person that she is, and like she has these huge thighs. She looks very much like a classic sort of mother, in some ways, like a, more so usually a villainous <laughs> yeah. mother. Oh, yeah. um, 
Yeah. So, so, um, yeah, because it's, it's funny, but it's still like, when you think about it, it's like, man, this is like, what a, what a tortured existence you have. Yeah. In a way, I'm almost laughing because it's almost like a relatable kind of thing where, you know, if you do have like a traumatic figure in your life, you're almost subconsciously looking out for them everywhere. And you kind of just, you know, you take the smallest like physical connections between uh, different people out in public. And you just go, oh, fuck, is it that person? Oh, fuck, is it that person? And then there's a quick realization of yeah. no, 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 you're just being a paranoid lunatic. And that's kind of reflected in, in the way this joke is. So in a way that makes me feel for his tragedy even more through the humor. While with Thor, I felt it undercut. Uh, the tragedy yeah um, with how people are offended that i said she's like a classic mum. i bet it's, like there's loads of archetypes oh. for mums like there's come on like I, you know the people are like maybe a british mum. it's like no like there's all kinds of mums. this one totally you could see playing the mother in lots of things um because like, some like, people are saying like maybe classic evil mum. it's like you're not evil because so, you're fat like that's not you. like i <laughs> like I said, I think it's amusing. I think it's it, it it definitely elicited a lot of like you know chuckles out of me. I also just kind of felt conflicting feelings about it. Yeah, I no, I understand. Uh, well, I uh, was kind of yeah. the same here. I just I never I had an issue. Didn't want to laugh at him. I had more it, and this is right after a scene where we see a bunch of essentially quote unquote good freedom fighters just get killed horribly, and it's mm -hmm. kind of played as a joke. Yeah, which mm -hmm. is arguably way worse. It yeah. is. It is way worse. Um, so that would have been on. Um, I yeah. I next to that, I don't think it even comes close and to sort of being a thing. Worth keeping in mind that in universe, none of these characters are making fun of him. Of course, they're all just like no. a little bit stunned by the story and just going to move on. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh. oh my <laughs> that's grief! Good. That's good, good great lord. Lord. <laughs> Oh my god! That's that's pretty fantastic. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> frog. oh, good job on you, Raiden. <laughs> or, hey. King Frog. <laughs> god, Rags, you have you? <laughs> what happened, man? <laughs> like, I've, been, I've, I've, been, I've been working out. <laughs> but mostly it's mostly it's the meth. Mostly it's the meth. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes bulging out too. Perfect. Yeah. And a little, <laughs> a little box to block out the like, Freaky <laughs> Freaky looks like it could be yeah. a bloodboard. In a, in a way Rags does too, actually. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I keep thinking yeah, about the green still Christmas. Christmas? What about Christmas? I like how the Grinch? Oh, right, yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Yeah, that's the, the kind of thing story, I yeah. yeah. Also, just that's kind of on the good. subject of the mum, I just want to compliment the actress, because she's very, she's only in it very briefly, but just in this one shot, you can tell she's kind of taking on the physical mannerisms of each person <laughs> in that scene, and I'm just like, oh, you know, you're what what little you were given you were, you you were really able to kind of get like Rick Flag's <laughs> stiff upper lip and uh, kind of uh, John Cena's glare and uh, Rat Catcher's kind of like oh. <laughs> it's good and the King Shark one King is Shark's funny. like oh, yeah, yeah he's always cracked like it like a, <laughs> just like, a do, do you see outwards into space the, the King Shark darts from the the butterfly to polka dot butterfly polka dot and then commits to the butterfly <laughs> like <it's>, yeah <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Really funny. And yeah, so their mission, as it stands right now, is to have some help from the rebels to get access to the Thinker. And so the nature of that is they need a driver to help them with knowing how the city works. And so introducing Milton, one of the uh, stronger characters of the film as well, I would say. Uh, Definitely, wow. yeah. Milton's been through a lot. Mil Milton's a legend. I fucking love this scene, just as a joke. You have Milton is in his car, and he knows he's supposed to be meeting with the squad any time now, and so uh, he's at, like, a vehicle check, and he's trying to delay them as much as possible. And so he's just like, oh, man, you know, oh, let me get my papers. Oh, shit, where's my... Oh, no, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. And then they get more and more restless until they start shaking the car, and then boom, 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 they're all getting shot down. Until there's one guy who gets fucking eaten by King Shark, and just blood splatters everywhere. And then the camera pads over to Bloodsport being like, Are you Milton? And then he just goes, See? See? <laughs> 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 just crying. 
He's, um, is a very traumatic scene. He, Milton has gone through a lot already, but, um... Yeah. Yeah, the idea will be that they use the truck to get into the town, they'll go into more civilian clothing, thanks to the rebels supplying that, and then get into the bar that the thinker frequents, kidnap him, and, um, hopefully all of that goes well. And we're getting closer and closer, we're not quite there yet, to a particular scene, I know a lot of us can have so much to say on. Uh... They're all they're all setting up, and there's still just banter. There's general banter and carriage stuff as they're putting the the clothes into the uh, the van. One of the things to like is just King Shark saying he can use a disguise by having a fake mustache and fake yeah. mustache. And like they tell him it's not <laughs> then you... not gonna work, and as much as they like it to, this. yeah, um, <laughs> it's like he won't be able to. And his reaction is probably the most aggressive I've ever seen him. He just goes fuck. <laughs> like just walk it off because it means he yeah, can't he can't do anything with him. Never see him. Yeah, he's angry. Yeah, he can't he can't do the, the adventure with him. Understandably so. Understandably so. Yeah. Yeah, and they'll, this for me. Which I just want to make sure we we point these little bits out so that when we get to talking about these characters individually, this we want to make sure you've picked up all the stuff there is to work with. Um, they both laugh. Uh, Bloodsport and Ratcatcher at him being so frustrated he can't hang out. Like and looking at each other and then. The rat is there, and he's like, I think looking for another sort of wave or handshake and stuff, and she's like, he senses the good in you. And Bloodsport's like, there's no good in me, and just shuts the door. And she's like, alright. They had a little moment mm. of connecting, but he's, he's, mm. he shut her out again. He's like, okay. Um, and while this is happening, uh, Rick Flagg says, you know, when we get to Jotunheim, we're going to be drawing a lot of the military forces. And he's like, well, yeah, hopefully you don't. And what she doesn't realize is he's like, no, 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 if we draw them, the main sort of place where all the leaders are is probably not going to be guarded as well. And she just says, you're a good man, Rick, or something like that. Like, you don't have to uh, be given it spelled out. He's basically just like trying to help the rebel army's cause while also doing we his suicide squad get, job. Yeah, we didn't get James Gunn crazy exposition about plans and things yeah the character stuff there you have to dig a little bit it's not explicitly obvious exactly what's happening here it's just like rick is doing a little bit extra to help people that he doesn't have to help um yeah especially after everything has happened and uh unfortunately uh, this will be a plus negative in a sense i was like huh how come it's 55 minutes until i've been given something about rick that i really like like, yeah, like, you know, because he's still a little, little just, he's just Rick. But, but that was the first thing where I was like, Harley Quinn. Yeah. That's the thing, man. I was just like, I like that. And it's like, okay, you know, yeah. I'm still fine with Rick Flag being here. But I was just like, that was, that was nice. Then we cut to the bus scene. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, my God. I have to pee. I'm so excited. Oh, oh. my God. Oh, no. Uh, Going everywhere. I guess we'll just delay a little bit until until uh, Rags comes back. But um, the idea being is they're on their way to their destination. That's all. That's right. They're going into the city to this really cool location for a superhero story. I really like the setting. Yeah. It's neat. Why it's do you like it? For Explain it in an essay. <laughs> oh well, but I got nothing beyond. I just think it's a neat. Three thousand words or less. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it's tropical, Central American, like, city. Beautiful architecture. Just, yeah, the architecture is, is really great. It uh, reminds you of, like, the sort of the look of, like, Cuba and, and stuff like that. It's, it's cool. I just like it. That's all. Those my notes. Please write more. <laughs> <laughs> Exposition scene more? Oh. Oh. Mm, you know. No. We might, we no, might need to no. make clear with everybody. Technically... A shit ton of things are exposition, and it can be done well or done poorly. As far as I'm concerned, being yeah. like, "Look out the window, it's Jotunheim." Nazis yeah, used to be. God. It's like that was awful. Let's talk about this scene extensively, shall we? Um, it opens like with talking to Waller. I think. Well, I'm gonna mix things around just a little bit. I want to get that out of the way first. Uh, Waller just reminds everybody that just because the comms are down, uh, which they're about to be further down, I guess. Doesn't mean the kill switches aren't working, and you still got to do everything that I say. And then when she ends the call, her uh, analyst person is like, um, it, "Are you serious about like killing this kid and stuff? Would you really do that?" And then she says, "You don't know half of what I would do." And I was like, 
you know what? In a way, that feels like a reference to the first movie. In a way, especially if you don't know her <laughs> from the comics. It's like, yeah, she's fucking yeah. insane. She'll kill everybody in this room. You're like, she's, she's nuts. Mm -hmm. um, and so everyone sort of settles down, and we get a question that is perfectly reasonable for a person who's essentially the queen of rats. Bloodsport, why don't you like rats? <laughs> There's a weird mm -hmm. thing that you just don't like rat, and then he's like, defensive about it? Absolutely, because we already know that. And so he has this little moment where he's like, you know what, you seem like someone who has daddy issues. And she gets noticeably offended instantly, and the camera's still on his face, and you can tell he regrets saying it almost instantly. He's like, oh shit. Because the thing is, he deals with assholes all the time, I imagine. And so that's like yeah, a but tiny she's bob. Nice. Exactly. She's uh, she was asking, about others. Yeah. was asking an honest question, and he shot on her, and then he was like, probably shouldn't have done that. And the thing is, uh, with how quickly he responded to King Shark almost eating her, there's reason to believe that he he absolutely does like think this person is a okay if if not you know like like someone he likes more than the rest, but at the same time he's not looking to make any relationships and so that's why he says that and then he's like ah oh, probably shouldn't have said that but it prompts her to start talking about her father. Well, also um, I I just wanted to point out like he uh, he's introduced to her uh, like very briefly after he has that confrontation with his daughter that sets up his concern for her, you know, going to prison. And here he sees this woman who, you know, uh, had a father that made this um, device that controls rats, basically. And now she, you know, has kind of fallen into a life of crime. And I think that he sees a little bit of his daughter in her, uh, which explains his attachment to her from the beginning of the film. Yeah, I would, I would push that even further. She says her story is that of her father's gone, uses what she's known as a result of her father and it puts her in jail when she's not she goes away for armed robbery when she had rats um yeah the idea of she's getting a way harsher punishment for something that she really shouldn't be is like one to one with his daughter um and so yeah the um the story is essentially that her dad uh was clearly into drugs while simultaneously... Yeah, he was a drug addict, yes. Yes. Um, and she describes that as his burdens, which can obviously mean he used them to offset something, or it's just something of a general addiction. But um, he also created technology that can manipulate rats. Um, and so those two lived like on the streets, but the rats would help them out with different trinkets and doodads here and there. And as she says, keep them warm at night. But unfortunately, he overdoses... And uh, she's left alone with, with what she has, and she ends up in prison. That's uh, the, the point of the story being that her dad always loved her. It's just, you know, unfortunate events sort of thing. Um, and even uh, Peacemaker, while he's listening to the story, is like, he looks sad. Just um, everyone's appreciating sort of like the circumstances suck. And it prompts uh, the question again of the rats. For Bloodsport, and this time he's not going to be defensive because she's genuine. She's not trying to poke at him or anything. And so he explains that uh, as the, there would be times where if he failed tasks when he was younger, his dad would punish him. And I, I appreciate the cut to Peacemaker smiling when he says the that. The true taskmaster. Oh, yeah. Because uh, you can imagine with a soldier's upbringing how principled Peacemaker is, he, he probably thinks that it's uh, totally on board to do certain things to kids who misbehave. I doubt he's cool with locking them in boxes with hungry rats, is what uh, Bloodsport's dad Only did to for him. liberty. Only for liberty. Uh, uh, for liberty. <laughs> yeah, and what I kind of appreciate about that is that um, his immediate response when he when he's asked, why do you hate rats, is to deflect with, you have daddy issues. And the cool thing about that is that that's not him actually making an assumption about her. That's him projecting his existent daddy issues onto her because there is that association with rats. Yeah. And that also reflects on his issues with being a father because his daddy issues kind of spiral back into his daughter. And I think, you know, there's an implication that he does not want to be a father because of what his father did to him. And he does not want to then put that another child through that experience, even if unintentionally. Yeah, he misfires on her with that, and um, it after like he gets that part of his story out, and she says, in relation to her father, 
how strong their relationship was and how unfortunate it was. And she finishes with saying, um, I wish I could give that love to you. Like, uh, the, the, the father's love for a kid to you. And it's cool because you could argue there's a break in the dialogue in terms of his response doesn't make complete sense, but it totally does subject subtextually. He just immediately says back, I'm going to get you out of here. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's his, that's what he has to say about what she's just said. Even though, it, like I said, standard, like, unwritten, that doesn't really make sense as a response, but that's how he feels. And then she says, I'm going to get you out of here. And uh, all, all blood sport wipes away a tear. Like, damn. That was like two minutes. And you, you've made it so that these two are like better characters than everybody in the MCU and DCEU, yeah. at least post phase four. <laughs> phase four, and I'll you just know, say. And um, you know what? It didn't undercut it with a silly joke right at the end. Nope. Nope. They let that was it. Yeah, I was. That I was, was the uh, concern I had for this whole scene. It's like, oh, don't do it. Just don't, <laughs> oh, don't, we were don't on do point. it. We were waiting with bated breath, like, please don't do the MCU thing, please don't do the MCU thing, and they didn't, and it was really impressive to to all of us. Um, and we were just, we were all just really invested and hooked into the scene. Um, that's a uh, like, what silent investment um, moment yeah. for the EFAP movies? Yeah, yeah, it happens here and there. Um, and I, I was I was exceptionally happy with this because um, it just bonds them now. He's He's basically after that story and how genuine she is and how he sees his daughter in her and pretty much would like to protect her at this point. But there's not much he's not going to do for her now, more than likely. Um, and that's, uh, that's only them two in this bus scene. There is a, a really good shot of we see a lot of just people doing perfectly normal things and then it cuts to King Shark is just staring at them all as the, the <laughs> truck goes down. Yeah. Obviously being the King Shark can't be like normal people. Um, yeah. And oh, um, I, I just wanted to say, like, I think that the bus scene, that was basically the, the point where we're like, so this uh, this shits all over everything else that we've seen in the DCEU thus far. Yeah, I, I think we said no matter <laughs> yep. what the second half of this film is, it's better than everything in the DCEU. Yeah. Like, it just that was, has uh, something of merit. That. It has a scene of quality to it. As characters. I, I encountered someone I'm, I'm in a server that said that they prefer the first Suicide Squad because at least that was funny bad, and I will never understand that, <laughs> that comment. That is bizarre. Eh? That is bizarre, There's and that person's so strange, and they should feel this movie. But this one is yeah. funny and less bad. What? what? Yeah. Um, what? Um, <laughs> it's almost a, a given, uh, so I do want to mention it. Um, excellent acting from both Ratcatcher 2 and, and Bloodsport. Yes. I should Absolutely. really use their yeah, actual actor yeah. names for that yeah. compliment, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> She's very likable and approachable and understandable, and he has got this, uh, this this vibe about him that just seems really, I don't know, it's hard, to, it's hard to pin it down. He is everything that I think they wanted to do with in the uh, dead shot in the first one. It just failed but, miserably. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, he really is just the the obvious superior version of that kind of idea that's been given time to breathe and be explained and been given a really good actor to make it happen. I don't know how to pronounce uh, Ratcatcher 2's uh, actress's um, last name. It, it, it seems to be Daniela Melchior. Melchior? Mm -hmm. We'll go with either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've, this is the first thing I've seen her in, and she's uh, she's great. I, I want to see more of her in. Uh... Yeah, because so, yeah, she's been in a lot, English, right? Her first English language film. It is. Yeah. She, um, I'm, oh, yeah. well, I'm very impressed in that oh, case. Oh, no, wow. Really impressed. Yeah. Yeah, that is very impressive because she was great. She sneaks up on you she because was really good. As far as you can tell, at first, she's just going to be the the nice one. She's the friendly one. But then, like her story in the bus scene, you're just like, hmm. She's well, I mean, just a she's fully fledged really character. Important. She's a really important part of the film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they arrive at the bar, and um, they've got a little bit of uh, time to kill. Obviously, waiting for Thinker to arrive, and so they sit down to have some drinks, and we get something. Well, we get a couple of things that I quite love. First being that like Bloodsport's like zero drinks, no, no, no. But then Peacemaker's like, oh come on, like have some fun. 
And it's almost like mm -hmm. a, you might be like, you might not expect Peacemaker to be the one to suggest that, but in some ways you're like, I guess it kind of makes sense too. Like, of course this guy's going to be able to have fun. Like, it's, it's, it's not like uh, in the search for peace that you would be against alcohol or anything. It's like, no, that's probably something he's more than fine to be on board with. And he says like, oh, come on, a little alcohol never hit anybody. And fucking Polka Dot Man is just like, it causes 22,000 deaths per year. <laughs> 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 like that. Um... And yeah, and a part that's really fucking endearing for Peacekeeper, Peacemaker is that uh, they all get drinks and oh, um, yeah. and the, the the maid is walking away, or the hostess, whatever, um, and he's like, hey, you can get one for the rat. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. she gives a little fist bump to um, Peacemaker, Rat Catcher does. It's just like, yeah, and he smiles at her, which yeah. is important going forward, I would say, for discussions to be had. But they're all having loads of fun. And there's a visual... But I think I only caught on the second and third times watching this. Um, they cut to Rick Flag and Bloodsport laughing with each other for a good amount of time and sort of putting their hands on each other's shoulders sort of thing. And you're like, yeah, because they worked together in, in the army or whatever. They went on missions together. And uh, Rick Flag recommended him for his skill. So, of course, those two are buds. Like, there, there's no reason that they would hate each other or anything. Um... And I think that's that's just a good little thing to sort of pin as well. Um. So yeah, it's it's just again a scene to just see them sort of mingling, and um, you even get John Cena and Polka Dot Man. Everyone, everyone's dancing. Everyone's just having some fun. Polka Dot really Man's dancing is. Uh, go ahead. What? <laughs> well, sorry. I I just want to say they're they're all really selling this because uh, this cast has just amazing chemistry with each other. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Um, and you, and you just you're sort of in it for them. You, you start to forget like what are we doing a starfish or something? I don't. know. It's fine. I'll just watch <laughs> these guys do stuff. Um, and yeah, the people that Polka Dot Man is dancing with slowly morph into all of them are his mum. And um, the poor guy. Yeah, there it is. I, I was gonna say I can put it on screen in a sec. <laughs> there you go. Uh, He's like, man, it's boring, <laughs> horrifying, I just hilarious. Love King Shot so much. Whatever. Oh, well, yeah, so I was going to say, this, this is all happening, and it's quite the juxtaposition, because um, we're sort of just mingling, everything's chill, and then it cuts to the, the truck, where, of course, King Shark will have to wait, because he can't do any of this with any of them. And the guy is so sad. Yeah. <laughs> just has to sit here. And if I remember correctly, he has to wait there for, like, three hours or something. Oh, <laughs> Why oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. Just... The rat got to go, but he didn't get to go. And he was... <laughs> I'm he's, just, I'm... You know, he's upset. I'm glad that they remember that you have King Shark in the back all alone out here while everyone else is having fun, and they just remember to acknowledge that. Yeah. yeah. Um... You sympathize with him a lot. Yeah. Um, again, worth just popping a little, little thumbtack into, and we'll think about all this in sort of retrospect when we get along, but um, Thinker arrives. Which sets everybody to, to get moving. Um, unfortunately, because the plot line is phenomenal in this, it coincides exactly at the same time as a police search. Damn it. So now we're gonna have to get him out the back way. I mean, I might be skipping over some things here. Feel free to stop me. Um, well, the whole IDs th thing, that's what I love, is that they're like, everyone show us your IDs, and it's like, you can't just see it. Like, it's not that big of a bar, and they they have men everywhere, so... Yeah. Um, well, it's, it, there's a lot of things that don't really make sense about any of this. Um, but funnily enough, I have the same argument here that I do for almost all of the film. I think the plot is mm. garbage, but almost everybody is doing what I think they should be as characters. And what I mean specifically about that yeah. is... Um, you have the characters acknowledge that people are getting beaten to get their IDs. And so um, Bloodsport... From my point of view, he decides we're not probably going to get out of here, so let's give up now so they can take us, and so you don't have to watch people getting beaten to find us. Cut to the chase. Wow. And Rick, Rick Flag spots he's a... that, and he's like, yeah, me too. And Peacemaker is the one that's like, what the fuck? No. <laughs> why, why am I going to... Why am I going to... Oh, fuck's sake. I'm going with you too. <laughs> um, while Thinker goes out the back way. Now, the guards, very intelligently when, you know, controlling this place, they sent, like, 15 people to the front and one guy to the back, just to make sure no one comes out. Unfortunately, this man is very bad with a gun. And so, when he sees people, he fumbles for a while until, like, I know it sounds bizarre, 
But like, what if like a rat jumped onto him? That would just be GG. Wouldn't be able to and stop anybody. Tried climbing into his mouth. Yeah. And so can't do anything about that. To stop with the confusion, basically, um, they send Thinker through the back with Ratcatcher and Polka Dot Man, who get to the van, and there's only one guy in the way of them, and he just gets knocked out straight away by a rat. It's it's really fucking dumb. And the three yeah. of our heroes all get put into a van. All the parts are there. Yeah. Yeah, all the parts are there for them to make their escape. The way they chose to do it was really bad. All you had to do was have Polka Dot Man sort of, you know, take a look out, spot there's like three soldiers just waiting. She activates her device, and you hear noises on the other end of the door. Then you open it up, and they're all down, or something like that. And you're like, right, let's go. Just anything that's not... You walk up to the guy with the gun, you're a meter away from him, and you pull out your fucking machine, and then he just goes down straight. It's just, oh, it's so it's done so quickly, and so, sort of without any care. Um, yeah. And yeah, this whole scene, it, it, there's so many conveniences. There's also boobies. Ooh, yeah, there is. Yes, to toss them in. They're pretty not. They're pretty good. It's, um, good old get old right there. Well, definitely keepers. And uh, as they're moving through, I think because uh, they're worried and they're not sure what to do, I think Thinker is like, clearly you are not the alphas of this group. And then she cuts them off and says, uh, do you, I can't remember what the light is exactly. She's something like, do you want a rat to be shoved up your ass or crawling up your ass or something? And then his response is like, I don't think you'll uh, expect my... Re oh, fuck, I, I can't remember what he says, but uh, a lot of people... It's like a lot of people's favorite line from him. He says like, my response might not be what you expect. My my ass might not be what you expect or something. And so, it's, yeah, it, uh, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's fun um, and unexpected. <sighs> then we get to more plot, unfortunately. Uh... So, they're in the back of this like armored vehicle and they're all tied up. Oh, yeah. And it's like what what else is there to say? They all head but the people with them and they're all dead. <laughs> yeah. It's so bad. <laughs> like it's, it's just <laughs> I don't know. You didn't try at all. Like they're just they're in the, and it gets worse as it goes on cuz like yeah, they talk about like a the one hit death one one death uh, hit, right? Kiyoshi Jitsu. It is a uh a thing that I believe a character in an episode of Batman the Animated Series studies for an episode to try to use on Batman to, like, kill him with a single strike. It's the dim mark. Um, and so they're like, uh, he's like, you, you can't do it consistently, is what the guard says. And then I think Bloodsport is like, yeah, amateurs think that. And then uh, Rick Flagg says, on one... I think, and Peacemaker says one, and then they all do like a move, and all the gods are dead. <laughs> um, the gods I in the they were, I thought they were knocked out from the hit. Either way, it's oh, it's, it's more bad. reasonable to go with them being knocked out. Yeah, but I thought the fact that they were talking about the death hit was that they're saying that they're going to be dead. I, I don't know. That's the thing. I I don't know what they're really going for with that. I like I could be fine with the idea that like Peacemaker. I keep wanting to say Peacekeeper. But Peacemaker, I can, I can believe that he can knock a guy out in one, because he's a big, strong-ass dude. Yeah. I can believe he can knock a guy out. And I could probably believe Bloodshot could. Um, cool. But Bloodsport. I, fuck it, I'm doing the thing that everyone does. Dude, I've been doing it too. It's hard with so, no, many, so many hero names, so many villain names. I didn't, even, I didn't even felt the need to correct you. I was like, yeah, yeah that's right. So, um, we know what you're talking it, about. Yeah. But like with Flag, it was starting to get... Uh, we could have done something more clever. I, especially with how much they focus on the cigarette in that scene. Yep. I was expecting something like he was going to spit it with his, I, I don't know. Like what was, I was, ex I guess I was expecting something clever and that didn't happen. No, they just, they, they tied up, they do a move and it's, it's even more frustrating because the people in the front have a camera on this room and they only notice something's happening when John Cena is about to kill them. And so it's too late. Um, Which is insane. They should see it immediately. They should have heard it. Oh, like, but oh, also, yeah. that shotgun blast that like makes like a clean hole that John Cena can just like <laughs> yes, fit his entire yeah. arm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know. When we were watching that. I was like, no, no. Isn't, it, no. isn't it like almost a perfect circle too? It's, the, the it's like yeah. someone took a laser weapon and melted a hole through it. Yeah, <laughs> shotguns don't work that way. Sorry, Hollywood. Someone said he's driving. Really. Like, yeah, like he's not gonna notice yeah. anything because he's driving. It's his whole fucking job. He's got a he's got I, a passenger. Yeah, I don't There's know. There's two people in the front. 
I don't know what you're talking about, Mauler. I'm always oblivious to uh, people <laughs> in the back seat of my car getting kicked as I'm Wasn't driving. There a, was there a? Was there? I. I will. I'll defend it a little bit. I think that the since it's like a prisoner transport, there was going to be a sturdy wall between the drivers and the the back area. Isn't there like a like a a thick glass window or like a there's a wall there that he has to blast through? Silly as that is. Well, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not basing the whole argument on he would have heard it. I'm I'm still on the point of the visuals you would have recognized anyway. This screen is pretty yeah. high def considering. Mm -hmm. Like you're not missing that. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, the sound is. Especially if there's sound on that fucking thing. Holy shit! Then then they're done. Um, you don't see the 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 movement just on your peripherals. Like, why is there so much movement? Uh, yeah, you'd see the black the and white colors oh, shit. are moving more than they should be. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um. So he shoots one of them, and that guy fall slips down into his seat and falls onto the gas. So mm. his car's going full speed now. And then John Cena puts his arm through the hole and rams the guy up into the like the ceiling of the of the car uh, roof rather, and and. Uh, until his head is basically just like mush and then the car keeps going until it smacks into a like a big truck thing and then they barrel roll all the way down a, <laughs> a, a hill and uh then they With get no out seatbelts on yeah like all of the, them are human none of them have seatbelts. this whole scene is ass it's just it's yeah. just terrible it is ass this is one of those things where you it didn't have to be ass but it was ass now is there an action sequence that has happened yet that we've that we've talked about that is like logistically speaking good because there's character stuff for the clearing the camp scene but i'm pretty sure that there hasn't been any like actually like amazing choreography of an action sequence so far right i mean i'm I, I, did we say it at Maybe. the beginning where we were like i don't think there is yeah, one the beach uh, a little bit in the beach no scene, the beach doesn't like work. they're all entertaining no. but none of them dumb. work yeah. functionally. they're entertaining yeah, yeah, yeah logistically i'm pretty sure every single one of them will have comments for every one of them i'm pretty sure yeah unfortunately yeah. Fact, especially yeah. this next one right well oh yeah we may yeah we may as well just keep it going so they're like right off to jotunheim and then rick flag's like well no because we just found out from those police officers in that truck just now which almost feels like the whole reason this happened that harley's still alive and we got to go get her um Mm -hmm. And we, I think it's going to be an Eve. Why do you have we, to go get Harley? We were like, no. Because, well, you can clearly, I think uh, Bloodsport even says that it's uh, Rick Flag wants this, and there's no point in trying to argue with him when he wants something this much. He says something like, there's no yeah, point because, in pulling the rag out of his mouth or something. I don't know if that's a phrase. Because apparently, like, they, they consider, he considers, like, Harley a friend. It's like, so, when did that happen? <laughs> this is the thing. We have the thing thinnest of fucking references for Rick Flagg and Harley being friends, and I think that was a missed opportunity in this film to not give them more before things yeah. happen. Um, one of them being we're going to decide to subvert the whole mission to go get Harley Quinn. It's like, this, this is because Rick Flagg is invested in her as a friend. You're like, okay. Uh, yeah, it, it has it, nothing to do with information that she has, or that like there were, like, her tracker slash like detonator doesn't work like they couldn't kill her so they need to get her out to make sure that she doesn't spill anything it's it's nothing like that it's completely we need to get her because we care about her um, and it's like uh, and, and that's the thing like i can believe it if these two were incredibly good friends that he would be like mm -hmm. guys i'm gonna go get her you don't have to come with me but i'd really appreciate it and you, you can have you can have the sort of back and forth but um i don't believe they have that connection at all I, uh, I just, yeah i don't yeah. Um, but the yeah. film. I wish Wolf... they let her die. Sorry. I wish they let her die. Oh, you, I mean, yeah. Um, oh well. I guess that's a spoiler feel... for anybody who didn't know. <laughs> like it's... I think it would be funnier. <laughs> oh, yeah. it, it it would that's be funny. funnier, right? If uh, they just didn't go to rescue her, and then maybe she gets out on her own, and then she meets up with them later, and they're just kind of confused because they they just kind of like left her for dead because the mission's more important than going on this uh, diversion to, to rescue Harley. And so there's, there might be like an awkward well, moment there. What if what if the line was that she was like, you chose the mission over me, I guess. And then you could be like, we weren't going to save you anyway. <laughs> like, this is just, <laughs> like, oh. That could, it could have been really funny. Um, there's there's a lot of stuff that they could have done there. Yeah. yeah. And so it's then, a, yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's a good thing that they ended up rescuing her anyways, right? It was, a, it was very important for them to do this little detour that you could consider out of character for them. 
Oh, and someone's just suggested in chat, and I think you could have this as a solution. So the guards in the in the van could have said, um, I don't know what you guys are doing here, but believe me, you'll give it up eventually. Just like your friend. Or something like that. They'd be like, oh, wait, who? who? They'd be like, Holly, she may have, she's, she's holding tight for now, and surprised how much that woman can take, but uh, she's going to give up the plan eventually. And they could both, like, they could look around and be like, we have to get her, because she's going to yeah. give away everything. That's better. That at is way better, point, yeah. But at which point, that's where you're like, why doesn't Waller just push the button and kill her so that she doesn't Well, they don't anything. have contact with Waller at this point. Which um, is stupid. Yeah, no, you're right. That's the thing. We we would want to we, redesign we, it so yeah. it makes sense instead of being built on bullshit. Um, so anyway, we, we don't get a 17-year-long scene. It's more like a 12-year-long scene, but it's categorically worse yeah. than the other one we uh, had. The other one was a little boring and annoying. This one... Oh... I when she, when she snaps that guy's neck and he's literally on his phone facing away from her, I was like, "What the hell am I watching?" Oh, it's yeah. so. Do you want to like rewind through the scene so that we can just? Well, oh, yeah, what, just one quick thing I want to say is, when she opens her eyes, you remember us in the fucking recording? We're all like, "No, no, 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 no!" <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's gonna do well, something. It's amazing because he decides to uh, to stand right next to her instead of maybe like a few feet away out of her legs reach. And then while she's doing her little jujitsu hold on on him, she is able to lift him up off the ground somehow. Yep. Which I don't buy. That would break your Crazy wrists. Feet. Even if well, yeah, imagine that, yeah. the strain on her wrists from the chain to be oh, able yeah. to lift that much weight. Oof. It's going to hurt. Mm-hmm. Now, believe it or not, this is actually the best part of this entire scene because oh, it just yeah. gets worse. Yeah, well, and, uh, you, you're correct in the uh, the way she. If we accept all the stuff that just happened, her grabbing the key off him and using it is something that she apparently did. Like IRL. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, I was about to so say that, that is, too. And if you remember, I think in the recording, um, it was brought up as a potential issue. But I was, I think, I think me and Rag said like, oh, I can believe that. Like, I'm pretty sure I've seen someone do that before. Um, oh, the, the, it, the nimbleness thing with her feet. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. That's the like that's the thing with Harley Quinn. If you're, we're still kind of baffled as to what her power is, other than incredible plot convenience. <laughs> but that's the kind of thing that I can believe. If she does that stuff and she's super nimble, like a contortionist, um, and that kind of plays into her character to a degree, that I can believe. It's the other weird mega strength stuff that that I just can't yeah. buy. Well. It's like her being able to actually do it um, in real life is like, it's it's always nice to see people being able to do their own stunts like that because it makes it makes it a lot more believable. Um, so of course, knowing that Margot Robbie can do that is like, all right, this is definitely not an issue. Then, of course, I don't believe that Margot Robbie, let alone anyone, can walk out there with two pistols. Absolutely not. And stand in yeah. the middle of basically an intersection of several hallways and people will just charge in and not like bother taking any cover, maybe peeking around the corner, see what's going on. They'll just keep running towards her with their guns, which are, are things well, that I think are good at, at long range. But... With mentioning for context, right? Like what happens next for people who don't know is she kills like 50 people or something. It's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Yep. She just goes through the whole place and shoots them all down. And I've seen loads of people praise this scene. And I'm genuinely curious why. Is it literally just because you watched Harley kill people? Is that it? Like, what is there to... And I, it makes no sense to even compliment her as, like, a gun... Like, a marksman or anything. Cause it's like, where the fuck would that have come from? And secondly, she's not doing anything impressive. She's spinning, spinning around, around they shooting did, They got people. the whole flower thing going on for the blood. You know, that looks pretty, doesn't That's it? That's, like, the only thing I kind of liked. The rest of it was... Yeah. yeah. Like, in a better film, that could be, like, you know, that is, like, you would have, like, Harley Vision, where, you know, mm -hmm. her perception of reality is quite different, and you would have something like, oh, when she kills people, they just explode into flowers, and that would be something interesting. But again, like, all the Harley stuff in this film, um, there are there are points where I'm like, okay, I can see where that could be, like, a character, where you could do stuff with that character. Like, she may maybe she has trust issues, and the whole friendship with Rick is like her coming to like because there's a moment where she sees rick and she's like really touched that someone would be selfless for her and i'm just like wow there's maybe something you could have done with that but they don't really explore it and that's kind of just a lot of the harley stuff 
for me is that there's points where I can see where it could have gone well, but in execution, it's just fucked. Like, so I think my note... Oh, sorry. Oh, no. Go ahead and finish. Oh, well, my notes here are basically enemy soldiers don't seem to know how to aim their guns until the plot requires character deaths. Yeah. Um, well, and this so, is really apparent here. So someone in chat said she's either invincible or the soldiers are worse shots than stormtroopers. Here's the thing about that. That would require them to shoot their Take guns. Shots. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. At least the stormtroopers, Charlie they shoot has their like guns. like a meta power. Her power is the power, which would be interesting for the dceu almost if you had a a the her the, the someone whose superpower was like a meta level power they had incredible luck or like they acknowledge they i don't want to go too far into the deadpool territory but that that could be an interesting kind of idea where it's even alluded to and it's never like maybe questions are asked about it but never answered you mean um incredibly lucky person like that's their power well isn't maybe, that a character yeah. in I was, I was about to say that is a Deadpool Domino, character. Yeah, I've never, I've never seen Deadpool. It was hilarious. So. No, 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 that's I mean, that's that, the interesting that be, connection, yeah. I guess. Yeah, that that could be yeah, interesting. There's a lot of stuff. I mean, DCEU is so is is really wacky and is clearly not taking itself so seriously. Um, and you you could do something interesting with Harley because we're still kind of wondering what is her power level. What it and who what is she? she do? <laughs> who is she? Who is she? And what does she do? And she just seems to get away with things always inexplicably um, it could be like a funny idea of a like an in-universe power to make all enemies um too stupid to use their guns or they're suddenly <laughs> terrible <laughs> aims yeah, <laughs> like there's this little plot armor that could be funny yeah like there's just this aura around them that reduces enemy combatants iq levels it just I, I yeah, I'm, gun. Gun. I'm gonna just close the distance yeah. we were saying like yeah. the funny thing for us because a lot of people praise this scene i've seen a lot of reviews with like this fucking great scene the funny thing for us a lot and I, I know we're on a very very small and dark corner of the internet we genuinely would have preferred it if she unlocks the padlock grabs some shoes grabs some guns and she opens the door and then it shows her opening the outside door covered in blood or something and we're just like yes. so whatever happened she killed a bunch of people yeah, my imagination will make more sense than what they showed. Yeah. I promise that. Um, um, but yeah, we we like I don't I don't think it's worth us going through every single fucking kill she gets is nonsense. They're all yeah. fucking bullshit. I, there's Isn't fucking her... there's like thousands of guns on the walls, and they grab knives and walk she, towards dude, her. She drops yeah, her assault yeah, rifles that was for a javelin. Astounding. For the javelin. Oh. Well, yeah, so... Isn't there a shot where a guy's literally shooting like his rifle in her direction and? He somehow doesn't score a hit. I I I just don't remember yeah, it's in like the, needs her feet. It's in the corridor, and yeah. there's at least one guy I remember that has his uh, his pistol out and shoots in her direction and somehow misses. I yeah, I don't know how. He's there's um, right in the middle of the corridor. There's nothing else to shoot at. There's the, there's two like little things that Hollywood keeps fucking up, and we we've we've spoken a plenty about closing the distance. But also, when you drop a gun, the gun doesn't cease to exist. You can mm -hmm. go back and pick it back up. You don't have to yeah. opt for a knife. Think of all well, think of all the Hollywood fights where getting the gun is the focus of you know what people yeah. are you know what Which we're trying to do. Yeah, isn't that an extraction? Isn't yes. that what David Harbour yes. and Chris What's Hemsworth are fighting over? Yeah, I think that happens in that fight, yeah. Which, and, are, yeah. and that fight happens to be really intense, and there's actual stakes involved. Yeah, Extraction is worth a watch for those uh, who haven't heard us say it. But yeah, Extraction, is it is worth a watch. There's impressive stuff in there. Um, yeah. Um, treat guns in the <coughs> movie with respect, it's... because they are very, very powerful, and they allow a lot of plot things to occur. Talk about but, agency multipliers. <laughs> like, rags, it's not as cool to see people shoot each other as it is to see them doing martial arts moves. Well, then don't give them javelin. fucking guns. You gotta, <laughs> I was going to say, by the way, that. she actually does pick up the assault rifles. I think we were like, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> oh, she did it. Yeah, okay. Um, then again. Picked up the assault rifles, and then there were 50 people in the hallway who all had guns, but then also didn't shoot, so they all died because she oh. killed them first. And while we're on the subject, yeah, because, no, was, be, because of the music choice for this scene, I highly recommend you guys check out Nobody. Uh, it's this Bob Odenkirk wow. action movie, and uh, it features the same song, but it's actually really good. I haven't seen it. I wanted to go there to watch it. Sometimes. Yeah, we should do that at some point. Um, I, I endorse it. It's up there with extraction for me. It's especially cringe to me that she 
blows them all away, then drops the gun, grabs the, the sept. Fucking hell, I can't focus on Javelin for some reason. My brain never <laughs> goes to Javelin first. It has to be oh. rebooted first. Um, <laughs> the, the, the enemy spawning pauses while she sorts that out, and then it oh, yeah. restarts the second she's ready to fight. It's so crap. Yeah, just, just like you see the soldiers go around the corners, charging her with the pistol in their hands. Like, Fuck sake! Firing when... shots actually in her direction. It's like, how are you missing? She's got so, a javelin. Oh, oh, funny, funny story. When I first watched this, I didn't notice that the javelin was already there. I thought that she imagined the javelin into <laughs> existence. <laughs> <laughs> like it just, it was like it just comes out of thin air because it shines, like as a, like a video game weapon spawn basically. Um, oh my god. That's on me. It, it was there the whole time, apparently, but... <laughs> Mola's British mind goes to Scepter first. Is that a British thing, or is that just me flumping? I don't know. Why would it, why would it be British? A scepter's TV? British? <laughs> it's not even, to be yeah, fair... Not. Wait, what did you call a scepter? Well, that's the thing. The javelin is not even close to a scepter. It's just something I'm saying, because yeah. they're... You could say they're similar in, sh in form, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> Someone... <laughs> Usually roughly. Well, it, a scepter is closer to a javelin a than a chicken, you know? So yeah, someone... it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> someone in even, chat... a, even a chicken scepter is closer to a javelin <laughs> than an actual chicken. S someone in chat said, even that would be better, like if it suddenly revealed her power was javelin summoning, which is a really incredibly <laughs> specific superpower. Incredibly but specific, yeah. That's Harley Quinn, the gal that can summon javelins anywhere. Yeah, her, um, her focus on not only just getting but keeping this javelin with her um it's never explained why she does that well i guess she keeps with saying how, like with how if... they play off the javelin death at the beginning mm -hmm. i don't know why we should care because it's not played off as a thing that she actually does care about she feels it's played like off as a joke she does say at one point she's waiting for god or whoever to tell her why she has this javelin yeah i'm not saying okay. it's good yeah. Something. It's, it's, um, that's just verbally. That that's just verbalizing what she's doing. I guess. Yep. But I guess something. You know. Um, <laughs> so then, of all the things, yeah. right after she's about to leave, well, before she's about to leave, um, the Suicide Squad run past her. There's this awkward thing. We we pointed out. We were watching it. <laughs> Bloodsport peers around the corner to check if anyone's there. Clearly <laughs> sees a taxi and Harley Quinn are there. And then just starts running, like, past them. It's like, what was the point in checking? There's someone there. Like, what? What are you doing? Is, I guess you could it's say, like, so... well, he's checking for police or something. He's like, okay. And it's super convenient timing as well, because it's what gets Harley out of the car and meets up with them. If oh, yeah. Who knows what would have happened or if mm -hmm. she just drove away. Convenient as hell. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of that. And so, yeah, we get the... They reunite. But before that, we see them prepping the plan. And um, something that hit me, and I'm not even 100%, on the third time viewing it, I'm not 100% sure if it's a joke, but I find it funny as fuck when they talk about where everyone's in positions, this like, um, Sebastian has got the numbers on who's inside or where things are, um, Polka Dot Man is keeping an eye on the traffic to let anyone know it's coming, King Shark is looking at a bird, it's, it's, uh, it's all nicely done, <laughs> and then they, um, they ask, uh, Peacemaker, what's, what's going on? And he's like, I've got a view on the only one in there. Uh, say the word and I'll take her out. It's just a woman. on the phone. Like, <laughs> say the word and I'll take her out. I mean, he, <laughs> love it so much. He, he, really, he really is committed to peace. He will kill any man, woman, or child to achieve it. He's just, That's it's just funny as fuck joke. to me. It's, yeah, it connects oh to that previous God. line, and it's funny, but you're like, holy crap, like, he is 100% serious, and he would have gone I, with Well, that. yeah, you, I, you could say you could generate a more serious scenario with his point of view, yep. uh, theoretically. You guys are also overlooking... I think that's what I like, because uh, from, yeah, from his point of view, it is so serious, and yeah, that's what makes it work. You guys are also overlooking um, when Nanawe is like, bird. Uh, I think Rick Flag is like, get off the comms, bird. Nanawe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> get off the comms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's not even been that long. And I fucking not only believe it, but really enjoy this team. And I want to see them succeed and stuff. It's just like, yeah. man, you did that pretty quickly. And like, I said, she keeps just the javelin right. because it's a useful weapon. Not as useful as an M4. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's yeah. amazing the, the power of writing witty dialogue. Uh, exchanges between these characters. Yeah, well, th they say this about literally fucking just in uh, in discussions with people. If you are funny, it'll make people want to be around you more. 
because they enjoy their time being around you. And if these people are all funny, then when we see them, we will think of the times we have laughed and be like, yay, I would like to spend more time with these people. And that's aside yes. from all of their, um, what's endearing about them and their histories. That's just strictly just having witty... Writing good dialogue is fucking key. I swear to God, it gets you to oh, like yes. people real quick. Not just about, oh, they came from this place and they had this happen. It's like, okay. It's, it's banter. It's um, having them come off as re not only real human beings, but human beings you want to be around. Oh, and uh, just a quick aside, Nimlex, thank you very much for the very speedy new PFP um, you just dumped um, yeah, in the uh, Discord. Oh, yeah. I love it. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Um, yeah, something else I do like about this, though, is when, when they hug and he's trying to, like, pat her on the back, he's got his gun, so he's just patting her on the back with <laughs> his like, gun. <laughs> Which <laughs> just uh, works. And yeah, and, uh, you know, they were about to be engaged the plan. She's actually here, so they can just... Uh, move on, I guess. Which um, is there? Is there anything else before I go to the next scene? Because I'm I'm going through a little fast, I guess. I I, just, I feel like I might have missed stuff. I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't think we. Yeah, carry on. Uh, that's carry uh, on. very well. Um, we yeah, have go for it. What might be my favorite chapter, sort of thing. I like a lot of them, but this one is like a combination of like lots of scrap metal on a rooftop at a particular. Yeah, angle. I think it was my favorite too. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the perspective trick, revealing. which is really yeah. cool. It, is, it um, seemed to be more incorporated into the actual environment more than yeah. any of the other ones. Yeah. Like this, um, some of these haven't looked practical. Like some of it has to have been CGI, but this was like it has to have been practical, right? No, I it didn't, have, I, I, didn't I, have to have been. I, I, I mean, I, I, would, I, would, I would assume it's CGI, but it looks like it could be practical, which is the important looks, part. Yeah, I would have assumed that it was practical, which I don't know. I assumed all of them were CGI, to be honest. Every single one. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure that's Some of them I question, but yeah, it's possible they all are. Um, at this point in the it film... It looks really good. <laughs> yeah. Um, we were great. definitely in the position of like, man, this is bizarre, because we're having so much fun, we enjoy so many people, but also we're getting shat on by the plot, and uh, mm -hmm. Harley's annoying us. There's this big mix and um it is this, a big mix yeah this scene is another great example of that where you've got they're describing what they're going to do about the plan how they're going to use the thinker and harley is just cracking shitty harley jokes throughout the dialogue i yeah. hate this yes someone you know i was tempted to bring it up someone earlier had said one of the issues with harley is there's no one to play uh, no one for her to play off of but that's this and it's still bad the, 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 well, the, yeah, enough. the best you got is like Rick Flag going, "No, don't listen to what she just no. said." And the, you know, like, "Oh, that's that's great." <laughs> like, we're really uh, oof. It is. This is cringe. This is actual cringe. Maybe Margot Robbie thought that these would just be Harley lines, and nobody like told her no. I uh, I just wanted to mention quick as well. They, they were having food in the scene. Milton brought them the food. He is still. Um, <laughs> Fucking legend. He's still here. He's helping him out. Milton yeah. is the best. Dude. Just want to make sure best Milton character. is mentioned. Yep. I would give. I would give Hit M H Hilton. Hilton a high <laughs> <Hitler>? five. <laughs> I would give Hitler a high five. Yeah, you can't fucking clip that sound bite. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is the thing. I was about to give credit elsewhere of her, but unfortunately, like I said, plot. So they're like, we are going to drive in and we'll destroy the cameras on the way in, and hopefully we won't be checked. That is our plan. It's like, oh, that's great. Also, also, they don't seem particularly interested in like interrogating information out of this guy who's been working on the project for thirty years. They got to save that before they get into Jodenheim itself, so that it'll be more more dramatic. Um, I guess I they have no reason to think anything other than they're going there to destroy data. But I think I agree with you in that you'd think at least one person would be curious enough to be like, "What is the data anyway? What is all of this about?" Exactly. Um, He's a wealth of knowledge. Yeah, I think that's relatively knowledge. fair. Uh, obviously, they're, they're more focused on just getting the job done, so it's like a it's a toss up. But I think that someone probably would have asked that. I probably would have been like, "Hey, um, what's going on here?" But yeah, uh, they're, they're just explaining how everything's gonna work, and Harley just makes jokes. I'm trying to think of like one of them is she's they're literally speaking, and she's walking in the background. And she says, "I am walking back and forth." So like. Yeah. As mm. as I was watching this, um, you know the term flanderization. Yes. No. Well, yes. Uh, um, yep. I don't. Do you want to 
Go ahead. Yes. You, if I don't know what it is. You have to explain it. Well, Molly, do you, can, can you explain it? You can probably explain it better than I can. No, 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 no. It's on you. When... No, no, I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> well, fuck you. Just, it's, <laughs> it's good to do it with the original fucking person it's based after, right? So, Ned Flanders, when you watch classic Simpsons, is a fully fledged, layered character. He's not simply a hyper positive neighbor that embarrasses Homer by comparison all the time. He's actually a person. Religious zealot. With uh, positions on things, lots of values. He, the way he treats his family and friends have a lot of reasoning behind it, and he's he's quite the he's quite a guy. Uh, Ned Flanders, he's a really good person, sort of thing. As the seasons go on, he starts to lose a lot of the elements that make him a full person, and instead repeat what everybody enjoys as his peaks. Which is like, oh, when he says silly words, when he does like hyper religious things, when he um, mm. you know awkwardly succeeds despite all odds like these are things i like about ned flanders and then that's all they do with him until it gets reduced and reduced and reduced until you're almost a caricature of what the character was this actually happened with britta in the community as far as i'm concerned a couple yeah, of other because britta it like britta was the word for uh this sucks or this is bad and then well, that just became like her becoming this incredibly flat character and, it, and so, yeah, with like Ned Flanders, you look back from where he is now, it's like, could you imagine Hurricane Nettie? Like, could you, yeah, could you see that happening and, and believe that when it totally makes sense? Like, so, so, then like, that episode. so then I'm looking at the scene with Harley, and um, it's funny because it's not only such a painful contrast between like the previous scene with her hugging Rick and also her having that moment where she's talking to the guy she just shot because he announced that he wanted to kill children. But also, um, even like B Tass, like I think that B Tass Harley Quinn is is a perfectly fine character. And um I'm looking at this, it's like these people don't know how to write Harley Quinn. They don't they don't seem to understand her personality, what makes her Wait, what a you good character. You sound like Adaptation, almost. I mean, I mean, well, stuff. but I also mentioned it. It it's inconsistent with what we saw in previous scenes. It's just the character is just reduced to a a, a very gen, just I don't know two dimensional stereotype basically, and they're trying to do it for laughs, and it's just it's not funny. Well, it's it's, it's kind of like if your Batman is just someone who runs around going, "I'm Batman, I'm Batman," and then he just punches someone, "You're Batman," you know. It's like it's a little bit like that. Yeah, the mm -hmm. basis for Harley's character in a lot of stories tends to be the Joker. They tried doing that in the first Suicide Squad movie, then they abandoned that for Birds of Prey, and now they, it's like they don't really know well, what to do with her anymore. She's I would say like, that you know. broadly, I would say that broadly, what's happened with Harley Quinn and like everything is that they're trying to divorce her from Joker and just have her be like her own thing because of the baggage that is yeah. associated yeah. with. The relationship that they have which is very abusive and so that's really that's like kind of awkward to try and make that a funny like action adventure kind of thing so i think they've been trying to like completely divorce her from joker mm -hmm. but like but she was conceived your... as dependent on that character so it's like you need to find a way to move her into becoming like independent and yeah if you're gonna like make her her own difficult. thing she has to be a thing there's well, not they she's can't. practically they absolutely somebody said they can't they absolutely could you, you absolutely can, can. Any idea so, yeah i was um, literally yeah. right about to say that as we, we were can... watching this and kind of as we finished she comes across as this we've had her for three movies now and i'm getting mm -hmm. blank slate vibes from her still the, the, the well, bag of character traits is enormous we can pull literally fucking yeah. anything apply it to her and give her a storyline relating to it this is and... not hard and this is like this is why Birds of Prey is so pathetic at attempting to flesh her out. Evan and I, when we finished our run through of Batman the Animated Series, which is what I meant by BTAS for those that aren't looking at chat, um, the last episode that we watched was Mad Love, and Mad Love is a good episode that fleshes out her character yep. really, really well. Um, it like ended our kind of roller coaster of a marathon on a high note. Um, and that's a 20 minute episode of, of a cartoon from the 90s that did that way better than what a like almost two hour movie released today did. And and now you have this fucking broken character that I think James Gunn is just struggling. He is trying desperately to salvage, but I don't think it's he's just trying not desperately to salvage. I don't think 
Yeah, because I think the the I can see I can see like a story that you could do here, even with the character that you've been presented. I feel like the problem is that we need to be willing to actually be very critical of a uh, Harley Quinn, and I don't know that that's what people want, and so mm -hmm. that seems to be informing the writing. Because like I feel like your story has to be, well, I think Molo will kind of know what I'm thinking about in terms of like this concept, but. You know, she she was a victim of Joker, and now she, and like maybe it, but now she's like almost she's damaged goods, and it's like so. Where do you go from there? Like, how do I? How does this character go from piece of shit to like and you, somebody who's actually worthwhile? And you feel and like how much accountability does she have versus how much is beyond her control? Yeah, and you feel like maybe you've got an opportunity here to tell a story of maybe in the first third to a half, she is open and honest about how she's been ruined and torn apart by Joker. Then the rest of the storyline is going to be about how not only is she going to build herself back up, but that she sees a lot of what she's done in her past as not just Joker. This is also stuff she enjoys. Yes. And she needs yep. to address that yep. in some way. Well, I, I think it's I think it's the meaningful way of like making it so that it's she's not defined by Joker in twofold and that she's not defined by the damage that was done to her by him, but also that some of the bad things that she did, that's like, that was her. That yeah, was like her decision. When she, she is with him really cool or with without him, that's not what makes her who she is. We can have stuff. Yeah, There's exactly. so much we can do, but we spend the majority of her time in this yeah. indulging in other stuff. And uh, yeah, now thing... funny. <laughs> We're talking about it more, it's like, man, you you could, ma you really can ma like make something out of this. Absolutely, like, Harley like, Quinn is you not can do a pretty much whatever you want with her idea. At this point. That's that's true. Yeah. Like, we're eight years into this franchise, and we've finally gotten something that is worthwhile. Like, I mean, yeah. it, it's never too late, I guess. As you know, the it's title reverse of Marvel. Another, Someone said, or it sounded like. <laughs> So, someone said, "Make then make a new character. Don't use Harley. If this is the maximum you ever get from Harley fucking Quinn, that's a fucking shame. That's an embarrassment. If this is the limitation she has, say, why would well, somebody say not to? Yeah. Well, because the implication from that is that this is Harley Quinn. She is comic accurate. Leave her the fuck alone. I'd be like, well, what a shit character no. that is. No, oh, we yeah. can she's, change. But that. she's, we but can she's change missing it. a lot of the substance from the comics, well, so, though. Yeah, that, change it. I, I don't know. I don't know shit about the comics. I just know where she originally came from. B Tass, where she was a decent character for the much of the comics, time. That we... Yeah. Oh, sorry. Well, from from my from my memory, I didn't have much criticisms of Harley Quinn as I do for like that version of Mister Freeze. That's a... she isn't given oh, much material in some of those earlier episodes. Is the thing she's mainly just there to be the sidekick. They kind of introduced the whole abusive relationship instead of like later seasons, but. Mm -hmm. Still, well, she was I, pretty functional. Mad so. Love was really good. Mad Love's a really yeah. good episode. Everyone should watch Mad Love and see what Harley Quinn can be like, you know, when she meets her full potential. When I saw the trailer for this movie, the scene that we got of Harley, cause we need to skip over it, but we could go back just a little bit to dote on it because it's uh, relevant, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, the scene where she's she has escaped and then she comes across uh, our, our heroes, if you will, uh, trying to like save about to save her but she saved herself and her reaction there like was genuinely good and interesting yeah and in isolation yeah. that gave me a lot of hope and interest with what we would see of harley quinn and what would be done with her as a character and what a damn shame that it ultimately amounted to absolutely nothing yeah you you pretty so much had the full context you already needed in that yeah trailer. that was it that's that just it. It's a weird, isolated thing that happens that leads nowhere and essentially comes from nowhere. And I don't, I don't think that, that the issue is Margot Robbie's casting. I think that nope. she can be no. a good Harley Quinn. Not at all. Absolutely, it's definitely not an issue with her cast. She is entirely it's the writing capable. every time. And I thought James yeah. could be the one to fix her up, but I, I'm sorry, he just didn't. It feels um, like James was almost fanboying over the fact that he could use Harley Quinn, which I think might be what contributed to this like he was like oh my god i got the keys to harley quinn oh my god and then he wasn't as ultra critical about how she was introduced into this story as she was about these more unknown as he was about the more unknown characters which might be what happened here if i had to guess 
Well, it feels like he liked the version of Harley Quinn that we got in Birds of Prey, but that version sucks. That character sucks. Yeah, we got more of her here, and it's like you got you have this like otherwise really fun and entertaining movie with a shitty plot, but you know you've got otherwise great cast of characters, and then they just like it's like they they surgically inserted this uh, this implant from this horrible pile of garbage, um, and. It's just, it's so out of place. That's all I really have to say about it. <laughs> people saying, like, maybe he wasn't allowed to do much with the character. As far as I know, he had full freedom. Yep. Yeah. Like I said, I honestly think maybe he might have been a little afraid to change her up too much because there are definitely a lot of people who love Harley Quinn by Margaret Robbie. I don't know what so. they love. I don't I'm, know what it is that they like about her. I? Rags, shit. I, don't I think know. it is the same thing that people like unironically about Alice. Like the people who actually oh, like right. Alice, because oh, there's me. a lot of the similar problems. She's just so quirky and fun when she's on the screen. <laughs> who knows what she's gonna do next? It is like, uh, mm. go away. So yes. unusual, oh, and that is valuable on its own. She's unusual. Yeah, like a lot of the, a lot of the performances. She's crazy. Whoa, isn't that cool? But what's man, behind it? Kylo Ren, man, just they can do anything they need to do. Yeah. <sighs> Damn shame. Well, um, there's there's more Harley Quinn in this film to come. We will probably try and do some kind of like uh, character discussion, I guess, like for each one. And uh, that was yeah. we pretty much already done Harley now, <laughs> but like there's a few extra bits we could talk about. Because <laughs> in fairness, my favorite Harley moment is yet to come. Um, I can't remember. I don't know if you guys know what I'm referring to. I know what it is. I don't um, remember. Well, it was, it was. I think Southpaw points it out in the EFAP movies recording. Uh, but we'll get there. So, we got, uh, the, the, we're gonna do the plan. Jotunheim is surrounded by guards. We're gonna go in with our little truck with the Thinker driving. The Thinker will look at them and be like, I'm the Thinker, I'm allowed in here. And that's it. You won't, you won't need to worry about anything else. Uh, and then it's like, well, what about the cameras? They might spot us. And it's like, the rats will destroy all the cameras. And you'd think that if the rats destroy the cameras, which makes sense to me, um, because they can chew all the wires and stuff, wouldn't there be a high alert thing? Like, oh, our cameras are down. Make, make sure you check everything now, because we, we need yeah, to make sure. Yeah, if all the cameras go down, then um, unless they just... I Now, I think it was the front gate one that they did, and the rest didn't seem to go off, but I am going right. off memory. I'm not... It might have just been... Because we only... I think we only see the one. Well, that's, the, the that's ones more on the inside, fair. I think, still works. Yeah. It's, it's more I fair think you wouldn't it's panic just the one at, point, at the yeah. front gate. Yeah, it would just be like, oh, shit, this camera went out. Well, yeah, it just I I depending on the person, you know, send like send some people there or I'll mark it down to tell the tech guys later or I'll go back to reading my I don't know, good housekeeping magazine or whatever. Yes. Um and then we that is in Spanish. We come to there's a lot of things that happen in this movie that I think you could pick for most bizarre moment. But, like, this one baffles me the most out of everything, honestly. Yeah, this one confused us when we watched it. I wasn't really sure what was happening, well, if this uh, was supposed to be, and I, 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 because I, we, we have that, the weird stylization stuff for the text and things that are clearly, you no know, not in-universe, it's just to present information to us in style, um. And originally, so, I thought that's what it was. Well, it's worth, let's just get it clear what we're talking about, and then we'll, so this image I've yeah. got for you right now. That is, you see that doorway? That's where they're gonna get to. Now you might think, damn, so when they get out of this truck, we're in trouble. Because how do you have, how do you not tell that all these people are fucking crazy superhero people, whatever. So yeah, what do we do? The mystery machine. Now, let's, let's talk about it from, a, like, let's just pretend for a second that everyone in the area goes blind and so you can walk through. It's like, well, that's incredibly convenient if something like that were to happen. But the thing is, what they chose to make happen isn't just convenient. It just doesn't match up with anything that I know <laughs> like about I life. I don't. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know how it happens in or out of reality. This is a bizarre as, one. As you can see from here, because I just want to make it clear, this area that I'm putting my cursor around, that's where we're about to go, right? And you could just from, from your, your eye here, you're just like, well, this this whole place looks pretty clear of view. It's like this is going to be tough to uh you know deal with. Um, and if you remember from the trailer, if anyone's seen it, they're stepping out of, like, a van, and it's raining. And Harley says, uh, it's like angels are splooging all over us. Another fucking classic line from Harley. Just Curious. What a like banger. Get it. Oh, how her. But, so, as you can see, it's starting to rain. So it's like, oh, it's lining up with the trailer, but, oh, oh you know, it's getting, it's getting a little bright. 
Yeah. Oh, oh, my, oh, the clouds are clearing and the sun's coming up. Now, if you guys know, just like this soldier is doing here, when the sun comes out, you run to shelter. Because the sun is a horrifying scareball that will project <laughs> blinding light onto the universe. Yeah, I don't... yeah this, one's, um, this is a weird one. And, like, I can't under-exaggerate this. The place gets lit up as though they're in fucking heaven. Look at the windows. Um, it's just it's, white. That's it. It's it's like Storm from the X-Men stopped by and gave them a hand. I yeah. think, but if she put it to this level, then they're all blind if they try and open their eyes out there. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering during the filming, like, was this a real thing, a real effect that they were doing? Or was this something they did in post? Can the actors see? Could... It's weird. Uh, so we, as you guys will see in months to come, potentially, um, we had no fucking idea what was happening. We were, we were like, what, did someone... What what's going on? Like this can't this can't be the weather. This is not how weather works. So what's happening? Yeah, is this the introduction to a new superhero that we don't know well, about arriving? We well, see. Or... It's the it, Milton's ability. It's the <laughs> yeah, Milton's the meta human. I just, I just want to really illustrate that this is this is dead. Fuck blood sport. There you go. <laughs> Walking off into this. Look, just disappears into the light. Like what the fuck now, like, is happening? Theoretically, <laughs> there are guards everywhere here it's just that this and weird blinding white light has just emerged well, well the the purpose of this is for that trailer shot of they're yeah. like they're all walking through the rain in, a, in this a badass lineup and like it looks really cool well um it's not I, just I that thought that this was i thought it was going to be like um like the final shot after the climax like there was some crazy shit that just went down and and they're yeah. all coming out of it like uh you know how in the mask of Zoro there's that big explosion and everyone's like walking out of it and it yep. looks like yep. it's a super cool shot. I thought we were gonna get something like that. No, this is before the climax has even begun. Well this this is what the sun does, guys. It's just like uh I'm unaware. And you, you say it's for the trailer shots, like true, but it's also for the plot, it allows them to get past the initial set of guards and they can surprise attack the next set. This is incredibly helpful for them. Um, Bloodsport even says it'll provide great cover when she comments on it. And it's like, yes, it will, because this isn't real. <laughs> this isn't something that yeah. happens. Yeah. I, and again, I don't know what their plan was if this didn't happen. Um, I don't know how this is occurring. Well, this is... I am baffled. The kind of stuff where I'm like, does the average moviegoer not go like, what the hell? What is happening here? Yeah. Like, I don't... How do you follow this? Had, like smoke grenades or something like that. That could have worked. Like they throw this... them out like of the truck, and then it just goes everywhere. Like that could create a smoke screen. Is is this the um the closest that we get to something like style over substance in this film? Like is this the the most egregious instance of that? Uh, potentially, yeah. Um. What do you think? Oh, okay. Um. So yeah. They push on over, and all the guards can't see them coming. They're like, oh, what's, what's going on here? It's so bright. Ah, oh, and then they all get killed. Um, the notable kill being King Shark. Uh, you would have seen in the trailer where he tears a man in two pieces, and a lightning strike is in the background, I think, while it's all light. Yeah, it's, like, it's a neat awesome shot. shot. Um, yeah. Awesome kill and awesome shot, yeah. And yeah, uh, we just got more guards being retarded. Uh, Peacemaker manages to cut through, like, six of them with a sword. They all have guns, and they just don't. They just don't. They just die. Um, it's which, straight out of the Mandalorian. Yeah, it's just boring at this point. It's like, can you work a little bit harder, please? Come on. Please um, remember what you have in your hands right now. So there you go. Yeah, King Shark is Blah. fucking that guy up. Oh yeah. Uh, what a horrible way to go. Oh yeah. It kind of looks like a starfish in the silhouette. Then... It does cut to a peacemaker ramming Finger's face into the ice cap. He's just like, <laughs> son of a bitch! <laughs> and puts him in. Oh, and uh, they do the movie thing. He breaks the lock scatter thing, and thus it doesn't work anymore. Like, and everything it, on this end is just all broken. It's just like, ah, oh, fuck. Never mind. Um, at least they didn't do you break in and engage a secure lockdowns or something, you know? Is that. Oh, they just get Finger Maybe to do that anyway. So yeah, um, that that set. So we're in this big building. Um, lucky there's no guards in it, which is what I assumed at first because I was confused. Turns out there are lots of guards in it. They just they're all sleeping right now, and someone is about to realize this is all happening in like two minutes. Um, 
again, plot is just in tatters. Because, like, if they had people in the building ready with guns, or security of any kind, they probably all would have died. Um, so it's just, it's just lucky that it's all empty, and that the people who are actually in there to be able to stop them uh, only activate a little later. Yeah, it all works out, it's great. So we split up two groups, or three groups, I think. There's um, people setting explosives upstairs, some people setting them a bit downstairs until they join them upstairs, and then another group with going with Thinker um, down to where the data is mainly stored. Um, everybody's pretty much on board with just doing their stuff. We get some, get some looks from uh, old Peacemaker toward uh, the Thinker and Rick Flag. And uh, we know that the police or the security are on their way, so it's a bit to be concerned about. But you know, th things are moving forward, and we get an interaction between King Shark and Peacemaker that I think everybody loves. Where King Shark makes a little Peacemaker out of uh, oh. I don't I don't know what to call it, explosive clay stuff, you know. Yeah, and and um, I think I forget the dialogue, but it's it's like uh, it's like, it doesn't I, look like, anything like me. Actually, I and mean, that's actually it's kind of cute or something like that. Like adorable. Actually, yeah, oh, like, it's really nice. It's really nice. Yeah, that's really like very that. nice. <laughs> like, oh, it's uh, plastic. Plastic. The, yeah, there you go. the little explosive clay. Yeah. Yeah, King Shark obviously considers them all friends, and uh, John Cena's trying to get on with his work. And so, uh, yeah, everyone's sent their explosives, and I think we. I can't remember what we cut to next, I'm just sort of waiting for it. Obviously, yeah, King Shark notices that um, Peacemaker's disappeared. But, uh, he'll just, we'll, we'll, he'll carry on doing that explosive setting. And, oh yeah, so, uh, after that happens, of course, the President and all of his men are gonna be made aware of the situation. And, um, something incredibly distracting happens. No need to point it out. But, uh, that'll be a funny... <laughs> 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 Big booba lady. Right, I'm That's gonna be a funny moment in the, in the, in the yeah. In the, the <laughs> someone someone was in the middle of a, of a sentence yeah. and then she comes along and, and then they're like, uh, it's just like <laughs> <laughs> completely forgot what they were saying. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've got loads of the military are on the way, which is just yeah, and and the the rebels notice them all leave, and so they're gonna try and take over the uh, the area. Yeah, it seems to be about like ten rebels left. It's just like damn. Yeah. Oof. Uh, that's what I was thinking during this. I was like, man, ugh. Well, maybe a bit, maybe 20? I don't, I don't know. So, um, we got Rick Flag, Ratcatcher 2, and the Thinker that go all the way to the base of Jotunheim. And we get another scene that, um, it, again, just, it felt a little clunky. It's not a delivery from Peter Capaldi, he's doing great. It's just the dialogue itself is a little like, man, you really wanted to get every piece of information about this sort of design, this area and everything out, didn't you? Um... It's revealed that Thinker has been working with this thing for 30 years to the point of, you know, sacrificing people to it to get uh, the starfish bigger and to study it. And he, he said earlier in the film that he was looking into how he can control human beings. Um, and yeah, and, and when you get here, this, the Starro has its, well, extensions of itself, like, begging to be set free. And... Uh, it says, like, he's tortured us for ages, and I just love this look that Thinker does, because it feels to me that he's just a full-on villain, he's aware of it, he's just been, it's just been said in front of him how horrible he is, and the heroes, like, look at him, and he's just like, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I'm a horrible piece of shit, yeah. I'd like to turn back now, come on. Um, <laughs> and so, of course, they're calling him out quite significantly, um, until he's like, you know what, fuck you guys, you work for the same person I do. And um, we get a big reveal that America were the ones that wanted to organize this experiment to help, you know, further advancements in science and whatever else, and that they organized to have it on this island because it was discreet. Um, and so once the rebellion takeover happened, uh, this sort of project was in jeopardy, and I guess the government decided they wanted all data related to it erased um, and their involvement in case it gets out of hand. And so, yeah, uh, it's, uh, Rick Flagg is, you know, good old Mr. America, so he's just like, holy shit, this, that's not good. That's what I would actually call bad. In, in fact, that's, that's really bad. And they're, like, calling him a liar, but he's, uh, you know, th Thinker's not exactly in a position where he needs to lie about anything. Um, 
And then he, I think he says like it's been frustrating as hell for him because of all of his work getting partially destroyed thanks to this stupid coup that happened. And um, in the background you just see Peacemaker and he's like, oh yeah, you're the real victim in all of this. And um, as much as it's nice to see him, because I do like Peacemaker quite a bit, it's a little bit weird that he's there. Uh, he was supposed to be setting explosives, as Rick says. But his response is uh, he doesn't trust Thinker. And so th that's a little bit distracting and not really an answer, but we keep going because Rick is like, I want the data for what you've just said. Like the proof, the files, whatever else. And um, there's just a standard good old-fashioned set of what look like servers. And um, he opens one up and grabs out a hard drive. And so we're at the point in the story where you could say that yeah. Rick is holding in his hand proof that um, America were the ones behind Starro. Uh, which is going to be staggering as a public release, I would say. And he mm -hmm. says on his way to the file that um, he's worked his ass off his whole life for, for his country, and um, he's had to, like, put up with a lot of the dirty little secrets, but uh, this shit is taking it way too fucking far. And so, This is a guy yeah, that was the... okay with Waller sh gunning down those federal agents in the first movie, by the way. This yep. is, like, this is yeah. a huge deal to him. Well, I think that uh, there's a perfectly explicit reason for why this is uh, way too far for him. Well, not just well, the agree. I mean, we see all of the, uh, the the gruesomeness of the experiments well, and just I, like the nature of this mission. I'm not even talking about I that. I fully agree. I fully agree. I'm not criticizing it. I'm trying to emphasize how upsetting this is for him that you know he was okay with mm -hmm. what yeah. Waller does in the first movie, and this is too far. So. Um. And so as you can see on screen, Peacemaker pulls a gun on him, says give up the hard drive, because if you release that information, it'll essentially just be chaos. Uh, we'll never be able to get like a, a reasonable peace back if the whole world's aware mm -hmm. of what America's done here. And he said sometimes keeping the peace involves like making some really harsh decisions, even taking the life of a hero like you, sir. So give Man, it. Oh, and so oh, our, our initial context of his j things that we assume are jokes, it's like, this is very meaningful beliefs that he has. Yep. This is who he is. It's like the, it's, it's you know, it's, it's a great example of just this dichotomy. We've got two people who believe that they're right who believe that they're right for reasonable well, reasons uh and one of them has somebody has to give like the, there's an it's a just a complete impasse here something one of these guys has to lose um come on man yeah and and, and ultimately to to peacekeeper this sorry fun. maker you're right that is it just you, it does feel right doesn't it peacekeeper funny enough, I, that's... here's the thing i i play um I, I play a lot of Apex Legends, and there's a gun on that called the Peacekeeper, and so that's often kind of... Oh, yeah. well, I'm around that a lot. For and, me, it's uh, Farscape. There's a whole faction called the Peacekeepers. I was about to say Farscape, too. Yeah. That's a faction in Farscape that I know about. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, hmm. and, um, so, obviously, in this conversation, Rick is, is very upset with uh, the choices Peacekeeper Maker is making here. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> And uh, I'm just trying to get the right thing to play. Fucking, see, this is so awkward because of copyright. I'm just trying to find the right start and then end. Um, yeah, uh, obviously worth mentioning, by the way, the walls are falling apart. And uh, Thinker is like, those fucking idiots set off the explosives too early. And you might be thinking at this point, by the way, I wasn't when I was watching this movie. You might be thinking, wait, where is the other half of the team? What are they doing? Why, why haven't we seen them? Mm -hmm. um, I was so engaged with this drama that I completely forgot we yeah. haven't seen anything that they're up yeah, to. Same. <laughs> like, yeah, go, same here. So, again, uh, I'm, I'm gonna just play this because I just want to make it clear how what's happening. They experimented on children. They experimented on children, right? Which it's it, it that's what he's stressing. Not that it's a giant monster set to potentially destroy the world. Not that all of these people have been torn to shreds and tortured. Um, and the response to that from Peacemaker is nobody saying what they did was right, which is his principled position is that there is less peace if we release that hard drive. I'm not saying that it's good that they're getting away with what they've done. Um, I feel like that's mm -hmm. a big thing which that really very helps big, Peacemaker. Yeah. Mm, absolutely. Really yeah. Him, Colin, um, Colin Flagg, a hero, really, really, he really wants him to hand over the hard drive because he doesn't well, yeah, want to do this. 
Exactly. Know. We've got the peacemaker. It's like it's 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 a matter of pragmatism. It's like well, it's it's the greater good. That's basically his, or at least he believes that this is the greater good. Yeah, and uh, and then we get a double down. They experimented on children. That information gets out of cause. So that's probably the best thing I've seen from Rick Flag in all of every DC stuff. Yeah, it's just like, it's great. Yeah, this it's is great. great. This, uh, like this scene is great. I I really really like this interaction. He doesn't want them they, to they, get away with they it. Could have, they could have easily gone peacemaker, totally bad, <laughs> all the way villainous, cranked it all the way in one direction. But there's really a lot of you totally believe that this guy's a real person. You you um yeah. It, what's funny is his delivery of that line reminds me of Jesse from Breaking Bad. He he can't keep getting away with it. That's it, it's literally the same thing. Jo like yeah, Joel Kinnaman is 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 projecting that. The like of all the things about it that are so heinous, they experimented on children. They don't get to get away with this. It's done. Yeah. Um, and that should worry anybody because that means we're dealing with two people who principally will not allow the other one to succeed. Um, yeah. So you already know like what's about to happen. And so, but the rubble gets too extreme, and it begins to cave in the whole area. And something I noticed only on, I think, my third watch through, I was talking to Rags at the time, I think, but um, they show the the place is starting to fall apart, and um, we get like a split second with the two of these guys. And as the rubble is falling, I'll show it here. Just keep an eye on Rick. As soon as the rocks start coming down, pulls both of his pistols. Mm. Um, so he's absolutely willing to execute the fuck out of Peacemaker. Uh, the second he has a chance. Oh yeah, Peacemaker is not willing dis definitively to kill Rick right now because he respects the fuck out of him. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it's a super interesting dynamic. Unfortunately, the rubble falls too fast and they both uh get hit by it. And uh, we yeah we go to cut to black. We come back and the glass sort of shielding, if you will, that kept Starro in its area, um, is blown open, and the thinker is pretty much immediately dragged off to a very grisly death where he is torn in half and tossed yep. at a wall so hard he splatters into pieces. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Which, by the way, he's one of the worst people in all of this, so it's not yeah. a surprise. Yeah, of course. Like, no um, no tears shed for him. Monster. Yeah, he's, he's quite possibly the worst person in all of the DC canon, so good job. <laughs> like you, well, you, I right? mean, in terms of villains, it's like, yeah, he's just a, um, he's a big old piece of shit. Yeah. Um, of course, Rat catches watching it happen, and um, Starro starts to try and break out, and for a moment does actually attempt to uh, catch her. But uh, Sebastian clues her into a little hole she can probably crawl through, and much like a rat, she escapes through the tiniest of, of, of areas to her, to her own safety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... And then, yeah, so you walk, that's the, by, by the way, I, I almost understated it. The way that he dies, uh, Thinker, we splat him on the wall and the camera moves into the room that he splatted on it. It's, it's where Rick and um, Peacemaker are, and they, they're slowly waking up. So the thing is, knowing everything from that prior scene, and they both got knocked out by rubble, but they get him back up, or, you know, temporarily inconvenienced, um... You, you 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 wonder like what because I remember when I was watching it I was just like are they both committed right now to killing each other because um I didn't even catch Rick pulling the gun on, on my first watch through obviously uh but the thing is th there's there's lots of things at stake is is kind of where I'm going with this we've got the giant starfish is about to be released we've we've got like all the data probably needs destructing and stuff we need to get the fuck out of here but ultimately how much do these two men care about that hard drive. Um, and that's going to decide a lot of what happens here. So he wakes up first, uh, Peacemaker, and he spots that Rick's got a bit of debris pulling out of his, uh, like his gut. And then they both note that the hard drive is where it is, and so they yeah. both jump for it, and we get what is a shot that everybody, Amazing. everybody's mm -hmm. complimenting this yep. shot. Amazing. Yep. Uh, we, logistically, really cool, it must have been so fucking really difficult to pull off. Yeah, we, the action... Yeah. Yeah, the action is uh, clear, the choreography doesn't seem to have any faults, and it's just, it's a really creative way to shoot fact, this scene. This would have to have been CGI, because the reflection of the no camera, camera would have yeah. been there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. what I, I bet it's they, still, yeah, still they really did impressive. some kind of, 
trickery. They, they probably shot the scene like normal, and then they found some way to wrap that image around yeah. a helmet shape. Yeah. And distorted it it's with the. It, it looks really great. This looks great. It looks yeah. It's, yeah, but it honestly, they might have used a fisheye lens. Everybody, even down to like the five to ten minute reviews, nobody's failed to mention that shot. <laughs> it's just like that shot, man. It's just a fucking awesome shot. It's For really memorable. Reason. Um, and yeah, so the thing is, they're both gunning for the hard drive, they're both pushing each other, punching each other, until it starts to get really hard-hitting, like throwing Rick into like this, it looks like some kind of like seed supplier thing, I'm not 100% sure, yeah. throwing him again, seed. and then, you know, Rick gets like a, a punch, elbow punch, and they're both, like, it's getting more and more closer to extremes, and again, I was sitting here just like, Oh fuck! Are we are we in a are we in a place where yeah. they're willing to give killing blows? And it's like the problem is like you have to stop the other because like there is nothing else. Like you, you can't you know say like okay okay I give up. It's like no, both of these men believe that this is the correct thing to do. Like absolutely, there's nothing else to it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it looks like for a moment that uh peacemaker's winning, but then uh Rick gets a pole and so it hits him in the leg. I think in the chest and then the face, and blood splattering everywhere. And so uh, Peacemaker's struggling. And uh, Rick goes for the kill. He gets on top of him and pushes the pole down on his neck. And he's looking very much like he wants to fucking kill Peacemaker. Uh, oh, yeah. This is not something he's having trouble with in terms of his conscience. Um, yeah. Thing is, they smashed some porcelain. And so there's shards of porcelain around. And, uh... Oh. Good old Peacemaker manages to grab one, and this is John Cena, so his arms are strong, and he, a big he boy. just plows the shard into his heart, and uh, they make sure you don't miss that as a fact. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to keep copyright cover on. I'm sorry, guys, but it would be nice if this yeah. was viewable when it fucking ends the stream, you know. <laughs> um, and I think I think this is almost a callback to the first film as well, because they very explicitly show the heart being stabbed and the whole conflict with him was the Enchantress, the last film, and surrounding her heart. Um, so I wonder if that was intentional. Um, yeah, maybe. No, uh, I, 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 I imagine they're going for the heart so. because it's, in this scenario, Important. it's the insta-kill. I have no doubt, like, no doubt, this is... This is he, death, he's yeah. Dead. It's, yeah, he's gone. Um, and um, so... Crazy enough, yep. phenomenally enough, felt really sad about this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I really like Rick Flag. They really, they recovered him. Yeah, They're in that really last, absolutely. in the prior 10 minutes or so, like I said, it was, it was like halfway through the film, I was starting to feel for him. And then when he made his speech, like, this is unacceptable, they've experimented on children, we have to do everything we can to get this out of, like, and then he's fighting someone to the death to do it. I was like, man, I like Rick Flag. Yeah, and and then yeah, uh, yeah, and even what's interesting is like Rick Flag was just trying to to choke Peacemaker to death, um, and seemed he was like really really committed to it. Peacemaker does this in self defense essentially, and you look at his face; he feels terrible about it. Oh yeah, uh, um, it was you can clear tell he's not happy about this. He liked yeah. Rick Flag. Which it's I I just I really like this character. He has a clear set of principles, but he also has the sort of conflicting feeling about what he has to do to abide by those principles. And I'm really looking forward to the Peacemaker show. It's like give me an entire show following this character. He's gonna be right. After. He's gonna be uh, yeah. John Cena John surprising Cena. the fuck out of us with yeah. uh, just, yeah. just going right. up against type. Well, it's oh, worth yeah. mentioning. A lot of people hate John Cena right now because of the. Taiwan stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we do this with Mel Gibson. We've done it with uh, you know directors, writers, actors. We're talking about the craft here. Um, really impressed with his acting throughout this film. I thought he was great. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, about and the, yeah, about, this about him as an actor. This reaction because we haven't even gotten to what I think is the best part of the scene just yet. But this reaction to knowing he's won and that Rick's dead, it's just like really sad. And you 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 feel the fact that he didn't want to kill him. I would say. Which is like, they've managed to have this character kill off the guy that's unambiguously like the good guy of this uh, conflict, but you still feel sympathy for him. Like, you don't, you don't hate Peacemaker. No. Uh, it's, oh, this is like, it's, it's one of my favorite comic book movie fight scenes. Uh, yeah, same, I love it. Um, 
That's a good one. And yeah. so uh, we get uh, the final line, which in fairness, this is one of the best death lines in anything ever. The, this it's, yeah. it yep. scores very fucking high. After everything you guys know in chat, whatever you've seen, uh, Rick Flag's what last line is peacemaker. Just nice little gap, and then what a joke. Yep. Um, yeah. I adore this line, like. Probably more so than I should, but still, I don't really kick. You could talk it. about it for a while. Bill <laughs> Kinnaman's if... delivery is on point, and you also have John Cena's reaction to that. It's like, yeah. So uh. if if we can say that uh, Peacemaker is like peace peacekeeping uh, pushed to its let's say limit, because that's like the idea. He'll take it to the absolute extreme, which um a lot of fictional well and non-fictional villains are motivated by. Uh, like the fact that other sort of principles, like let's say truth, justice, uh, how sacred life can be, they're all outclassed by peace. And it's just like, what does that actually mean? And where does that take you? And um, the idea being that like the peace being kept isn't fucking peace at all. It's absolute bullshit. It's the like he's sitting here with a with a shard of porcelain sticking out of his fucking heart, thanks to the guy's desire to make sure an evil the government peace. decision is held as a secret. And, and like, what, what can you say about that other than Peacemaker? What a fucking joke. Like, look what you've, exactly. look what you've done. It's like, it's, yeah, we've got a guy who has killed a hero in a pretty brutal way to, pre yeah, to preserve something that is awful in pursuit of a peace that maybe, what is that worth? What is this peace worth if it means that abiding by hiding all of this and doing these things, it's great. And it's, yeah, it's kind of perfect. Uh, Peacemaker like, does. I can't think of a better line for he could have said. He not only has got the the face going with the eyes, but he even like opens his mouth a bit after that line, like because that you just fucking shake down his entire life with that line. Yep. Fucking mm -hmm. excellent work. It's one of my favorite I'm, uh, I'm payoffs. Gonna, I'm gonna skip. It. And you know what? I'm gonna skip ahead to a super chat that's just come through to contrast that. Hot take, y'all are insane. This movie is terrible. What are you saying? I think you've watched too much garbage. The barometer is broken. I oh, fuck don't off. want... I really don't want it to be understated that this is, like, really good character writing. Excellent content. This is when, this is when, you're, this is when you're doing very well. If you can have you a can line have really good that you can talk about... For... Surrounded by a bad yeah. plot. You like can the, yeah, yeah. yeah we like the, the described plot, plenty of bad so far. We're just like plot, pulling out some good material. Yeah, so like the plot will compromise. Like the issues with the plot compromise the payoff, but the payoff is still there, and the character work is still there, and it can be appreciated for. Like, yeah, I wish that the plot was better, and it could have uh, bolstered the payoff here more, but um, payoff is still good. So well, um, so all, another so, comment. A bad movie can. Oh, go ahead. Just so with with the super chat, all I would, all we need to do because no argument is being made is go hot take. You're insane. The movie is actually okay. Like, what are you saying? Or well, the movie is is terrible. But like, that's his position probably. But just be like, I think you've watched uh, too much garbage to the point where you can't tell the difference anymore, and that your barometer's broken. Like proving it, it, super chat's point. How? In what way? Please back argument. up your statements. Well, I mean, it's just we've been through this a lot of times. The Fab chat—you got to make arguments, guys. Not even like the super chat didn't have an argument either. It just what we've been doing for the past ten minutes, describing what we've been given as their values in history and how that's proven in stressful situations, pushing the principles to maximum. Make an argument about how that's this is terrible, good. or shut up. <laughs> like, yeah, what? like I feel like we've done a pretty decent job at explaining why this is good and. We've been going I'm, into a fair amount of detail about it, yeah. Well, I guess the problem is, like, because I saw a chat earlier that said, like, a bad movie can have good characters. The, the problem is, if the characters are good, that's worth a lot. Like, that, that really helps push you up. Usually like, the problem is that, like, a bad plot will typically have adverse effects on the characters. And I've been talking about Endgame a lot, but a clear example of this is they wanted their road trip through time. And in order to have that road trip through time, they needed the characters to make a lot of really stupid decisions. True. And that's that's where, like, the plot compromises the characters, because they're meant to be smart and they're stupid, they're meant to be responsible and they're very irresponsible, all in pursuit of these scenes that they wanted. Whereas here it's like, the plot is really bad, 
but the characters are always acting in ways that make sense given what we know about them. And that's worth a lot, even if the plot is balked. Yeah, and in this uh, case, it's talking about really good work here. Really well, good work in terms char of character. Characters acting consistently with their established motivations, traits, strengths, and weaknesses doesn't come from a vacuum. It does take talent to write that in, even if the writer isn't so talented when it comes to writing the plot and connecting A to B. I'm I'm so confused. Nobody's making arguments. They're just complaining. Like EFAP, it's the they're just ignoring what they've said about other movies now. It's out of character. Tell us what's out of character yeah, first. What's paper out of thin? They're so, just funny. So example again, it'll be really helpful. You can make the point of like this is the issue, but please attach the argument. Like well, because someone said um, we have no idea what you're saying. Someone said <laughs> no, you is my second favorite EFAP argument after you're just wrong. So the super chat said you're just wrong. So I said no, so, you back to it because what else am I supposed to do? Know, like, <laughs> like claim claim without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. It's basically swap swap evidence for argument. If you just <laughs> make, say something without an argument, then yeah, get out of here. Like I'm not <laughs> BMB Studios. What a joke. Oh, I I mean, I'm sure he has an argument, he just didn't put it in the super chat. <laughs> like he's, Sorry, he's... I don't have a hundred dollars to tell you why you're gushing over trash. You can just put them down in the chat. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we I, can identify... What? Why would you what? spend two super chats not telling us anything? <laughs> like, what's the point? <laughs> yeah, I don't... Yeah. You're... Yeah, you... you... What? So okay, well, was... Fringy did it just now. <laughs> Fringy just did. It. He said, "What's wrong with the forcing the time plot? Is it made everyone stupid?" And you'd be like, well, "What's the argument?" It's like, so there's a million things they could have done that were superior to that option. Done. Oh, that could probably yeah. fit in a one dollar super chat. Like, it's, it's, it's you're fine. You'll be fine. Um, I mean, during the Mission Impossible EFAP, I didn't have to super chat every well, yeah, single thing. We're also yeah, reading I've... chat, so <laughs> you got yeah. Yeah. I, like, you don't have no to excuses. spend money in order to have attention paid to you as long as your points are substantive, and so this give is, us a point. This is really lopsided, because no, we just spent all that time talking about both of these characters and why this happened, why it was important, and how it has to end with one of them dying, and it does, and what it means to both of them. Like, no, no Mahler, movies trash and you're gay, lol. Okay. <laughs> like, like, guys... Either, like, I understand that there are limitations to chat, but what is the fucking point of just uh, pointing, uh, making a blatantly contrarian point without any substance? All you're doing at that point is being annoying. You're not right. accomplishing we an anything. Argument. We got an argument now. Amanda Waller is a joke, gets randomly knocked out. Why not blown the heads up not after random. everything? We haven't gotten to that yet. Yeah, make random. an argument about what we're talking we're about. Yeah, yeah. Not, talk about first what, off, it's not you random. Said that, because that's like right. We've... You said this before you knew whether or not we agreed with you exactly. on this point. Exactly, we haven't even fucking talked about it yet. So that's gets, a really gets, bad argument. Gets randomly knocked out as if like a, a random lamp falls from the ceiling <laughs> and <laughs> knocks her out. <laughs> Multiple times they set that up, that idea up. So I, it, it was one of the things I was thinking about in my head when I said, you know, we haven't mentioned it before, but some of the things that they've already done... Are, are, are set up yeah, to Yeah, I've been very on, deliberately making sure there's things you guys are aware of in chat that are going to be very relevant in a- we're, we're about to get like a machine gun set of payoffs in this movie. We're, we're building it up. We're building up the tapestry, right? We're getting there. But yeah, um... Let's, <laughs> let's just go with Rat Lady. She couldn't start off with the super move. In what context? For which which circumstance are you we're talking about? We're not there yet. And we're not. Well, yeah, Why we're is not nobody there yet. When, when I... We don't even. Like, this is what I mean. <laughs> They're making these arguments, assuming we don't agree with them. Like I thought, the whole pro. Why are we focusing on this scene? We're, we're that's what the conversation was about. I want to know why this scene doesn't work. Yeah, actually, that'll be the thing. Talk about why this scene doesn't work, or else you, I assume you agree, and then I'm not sure why you would be upset about the commentary. Yeah, like you super chatted in this specific scene, meaning that Im by implication, your problem is with our praise of this scene, right? Mm, so why scene. aren't you focusing on this scene? This is the thing. We've already listed many significant issues with this film. So if we want to just do yep, that, yeah, we can. <laughs> but we're specifically... No. Okay. All right. We'll move on then. No, you've just said no. You don't want to do it. All right. Or not okay. an issue with the scene. Not the scene. Okay. Awesome. 
So I don't even know why. Uh, why was on. that raised then? <laughs> so, so, okay, okay. So if there's not an issue with the scene, why did you super chat us saying well, that we're crazy uh, and this movie is terrible? If uh, you agree I'm, with our assessment of the scene, well, the thing is, I'm fine to move on at this point. Like, well, yeah. <laughs> so so am I. If, if, if with the movie. Something. Like, yeah, like, I just want to make sure we, we're all on the same page to at least some degree. It's like, I guess we are. Dot, because dot, I dot. just came into the chat. You just came into the chat. So you didn't even know what we would. Wait, no. Oh, man. No. Oh, you <laughs> just fuck came in. Say. So how do you, how do you know what all I heard were your initial takes at the beginning? Wait, like hours ago? Or right. In any case, that doesn't. You can't. You can't say wow. that. You don't even know what our points were. So moving on. <laughs> well, yeah, all right. Moving oh, on. Yeah. Yeah, um, used. This uh, could easily be considered uh, a contrivance of, I suppose. So that this 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 area has several hallways. Ratcatcher has made her way around, escaping Starro, and she ended up seeing uh, what Peacemaker has done to Flag. Yep. And she's grabbing the hard drive. Which means she's now gonna have to, she's getting in the way too. And since he just killed what he considers to be a hero, um, this is one of them. Ratcatch, you better get a fucking move on because he will kill you. Uh, mm -hmm. No hesitation. And so this the you, you know this is the thing. He's right behind her. He has a gun. So theoretically, there's just no way she should be able to escape this. She pulls her rat uh, device out as well um, after realizing the whole place is coming down. But it's too late. He's already caught up with her, which is reasonable, he was meters behind her. And um, we get another, what I think is great fucking line from yep. John Cena again, where he says, um, I think he says like, the data can't leave this, uh, this building. Fuck! Like he ends the sentence with that because now he knows I have to fucking kill this little girl now. Mm -hmm. Like he's pissed off that people keep getting in his way when he believes that what he's doing is 100% the thing that's gonna lead to the best outcomes. And so these people, like they're so stupid to not realize that this isn't this isn't going to end well for anybody if they do it their way, and so fuck, I have to kill them. Um, and she she raises a really good point that makes me feel so much for this woman. She's like, okay, destroy the drive. You don't have to kill me. <laughs> and well, I'm not even saying it from like a funny. I guess you could say it's funny from other movies' perspectives because they don't that they oftentimes don't consider the options. But yeah, this is this is quite serious for a. Uh, Peacemaker, because it's a girl pleading yep. for her life. He just looks down. His lip quivers. He does not yep. want to fucking kill her. But he mm -hmm. says, it's because I'm thorough. And, and it's like, man, I, I'm i so ready to see this character, like, in his show. I'm just oh, like, yeah. I'm all oh, there yeah. for it. So much. It makes us strong. And, in addition to that, he, like, that show is being written by James Gunn. Yeah. So, it's like, Hopefully. it's not like he's being hands off to a shitty writer that doesn't know how to handle him. It's like, nah, I, I have trust in James Gunn to handle this character now. Um, yeah, and he says, I'm sorry, kid. And then we cut to eight minutes earlier. Do not see the shot go off. Because again, there are some people in chat, there's one or two of them, who literally are running on what we're saying as the storyline. They don't actually know what happens. And I just, I'm doing it for those guys out there, okay? <laughs> cut to eight minutes earlier. The other half of the team. Where the fuck were they? What the fuck were they doing? Let's find out. We got hey. um they go to the higher levels and they're planting explosives in each one. Um and as they go into the next room, with Milton, of course, he's there, he's carrying a bag of uh the explosives with him. We have King Shark gets distracted, he finds an aquarium. Um So w it, I <laughs> I don't know much about aquariums. It just seems like a weird place to have an aquarium. Uh it's very high up. <laughs> like it must be a fucking nightmare to get everything up and down to it, also, if you know what I mean. Also, what, what were these fish as well? Were these, like, from Star or something? Like, the... Oh, the uh, well, they're experiments, right? Everything's experimental here, I so you're supposed so, to yeah. believe well, these are just... I guess. So, they are they're apparently a, uh, like, a species called Clyrax, because uh, I looked up the soundtrack for this scene, and it's titled King Shark and the Clyrax. Oh, all right. Oh, so they're actually real? <laughs> no, they're not real. No, they're... Wait... Those things are oh, not fucking like, real. They, they just, they just, <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> no, they, they have... They just yeah, have a name. Someone my aquarium right here. 
Dude, if those things were real, we would have heard about them. Like, holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have a fish tank full of them. They're hilarious looking. <laughs> they're like yeah. colorful and shit. It's great. Yeah, they're, Don't they're put really, your hand in there. But they're such, they're such awesome little creatures. Yeah, I love them. They, they form together to, you know, imitate what, the form of, uh, of King Shark. Arrow? Or a, oh, is it supposed to be a king shark? I thought it was like just an arrow. Like they were they were pointing upwards no, from the jump. King shark. I think they're no, just the trying to mimic oh. his, uh, his Okay, yeah. I think they were forming a king shark shape because they're and trying to get king to him. Shark says new dumb friends and starts <laughs> running around laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. a wonderful scene for King Shark. He's just enjoying having friends. <laughs> so, so happy boy. for him. I'm so happy like for king him. Shark. He's so happy yeah, with I life. He needed. I felt more for King Shark than any pr character in the DCEU, except for, like, the best characters in this film. <laughs> by, yeah. by the way, can I just compliment how great the, the CGI looks on King Shark throughout this oh, entire movie? Awesome. There, yeah, there, there isn't, yeah. there isn't yeah, one like, shot where I thought it looked fake or digital or, like, computerized or whatever. It's just, it, it looks well, really I mean, good. We haven't talked about it as well, but like Weasel, really impressive <laughs> yeah. as well in terms of CGI. Weasel Super looks well integrated. Real. He looks scarily yeah. real. <laughs> <laughs> I um, think like they focused, they focused on making Weasel as ugly as he did, like just in case the CGI didn't come out well. Like he, see, Weasel looks weird. He looks ugly. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> um, I was gonna like, say, look at that, look at that smile. Look at him. Yeah. Look at oh, him. he's so happy. <laughs> Particularly when he looks out of the uh, the truck, I would pull it up, but I don't want to lose my place in the movie. And VLC is a bit touchy with that. Uh, when they zoom very close to him, he looks fantastic. The detail on his skin, like it's something else. <laughs> they they're, they're getting real good at that. Um, so yeah, well, he's, when you compare it to like Black Widow, it's like man, <laughs> what what's going don't on? Do Black it. Really this was fun. Now, no. As, yeah, fucking hell. As as you guys know. <laughs> We know the police or the security are on their way, so they gotta get to somewhere at some point, surely. And uh, Polka Dot Man drops the bombs, the uh, by accident, of course. And unfortunately, he realizes just as he does that, oh god, security! And um, they shoot Milton. No! 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 no. F, F in chat. Milton. Down goes Milton. That's up. A funny thing, right? I only actually noticed Milton when they were um, breaking into the into the place. So I was just like, "Wait, is that just a fucking fat guy waddling along <laughs> I, along behind?" Him? I think in the recording for us, when when he gets shot, I was just like, "Fuck that!" Oh yeah, because he's the guy who he's been here for a while. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. <laughs> Uh, phenomenal it's, fucking joke. It's very joke. much the gorilla. It's very much the gorilla walking across the basketball court, except for like several minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, Polka Dot Man <laughs> wipes out the two people who shot him. Um, and then they have a back and forth. That yeah, this is this is one of the other yeah. times I actually like Harley's dialogue for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. he he just says they got melted or something like that. And you can see Bloodsport is like doing a curious face of like, and then I think Harley's just like, who's Milton? And he's just like, you. I think Polka Dot Man stands up like out of cover and just goes, he's you so are angry. joking right now. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> he was um, helping us. <laughs> yeah, there's, so this is this is the exchange I was talking about, and when when I said that Harley gets a few lines that are actually kind of funny, because it's part of an exchange that's really funny and. I think you swap her out with any character here, and it works. And yeah. It works, yeah. But also, like, it actually kind of makes sense for Harley for this character to be saying what she's saying in the scene. Um, yeah, yeah. And she's like, you know, Milton's a very specific name. I feel like I'd remember if we met someone called Milton, <laughs> which again feels very relatable. It's like, yeah, Milton is a fucking unusual name. You you, you don't catch it that Especially often around these parts, I'd imagine. Well, also, so not to mention, she's not the you type that would on? really pay attention to the the guy following them named Milton and I don't think she's even personally met Milton like they just picked her up right before arriving to Jotunheim so yeah she's not really quite so it's like it's just it makes a lot of perfect. sense she, yeah um and I think that this was the moment where the actor playing polka dot man finally became an actor to me instead of the yeah. weird looking guy who turns up in movies sometimes um, mm -hmm. still don't know his name, sorry about that, the second name is a little hard to pronounce. Um, David Death Malkian or something like, like that? 
he's doing such a good job of being a normal man who is invested in someone who helped them and no one's appreciating yeah. the fact that he just died for them. He's so upset about that. And, yeah, uh, I, I totally sympathize. And they don't understand, because they're just like, well, I mean, who's built? And then, yeah, Bloodsport is like, wasn't he back on the truck? Why did he come here? <laughs> but this is the funny thing, right? Like, this is what, what we do all the time. Like, oh, no, not that poor random dude that we barely know. Yeah. Uh, like, you actually have a, a character in a movie doing that. It's awesome. And yeah, uh, her facial expression, because she is a good actress, uh, her looking at the body and then realizing who it is, <laughs> again, I, I like that. Oh, Milton! Like, oh, that guy. This, she says, <laughs> Milton, then she goes, Milton, Milton. Like, oh, we all know Milton. <laughs> 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 Yeah, uh, again, Margot Robbie could be fucking amazing as Harley Quinn if they just give her good material. This is good material Absolutely. for her. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Um, it's this great love affair with Melvin Stark. I liked him from the beginning. And yeah, uh, it's just a nice bit for Polka Dot Man as well because he's like, he's like, when did this great big love affair happen for Milton then? And he's like, I liked him from the beginning. Like, like there's no, <laughs> you don't have to have a reason to like the guy. He's a fucking, he's been helping. Like, it's just. Yeah, you know, and I'm just like, Polka Dot Man, he's, he's a good guy. He's, he's looking out for Milton. He is, he like, really is. It's, it's just so funny to think about it. Just, you just saw these guys kill some some people in the, when we first see him. It's like, yeah, I'll hang around. They seem nice. <laughs> just bring some food or whatever. <laughs> just carries their bombs or whatever <laughs> those devices are. Yeah, and, and nobody considering... notices him. Nobody notices except Polka Dot Man. His... And then he gets killed. It's like, who's Milton, huh? <laughs> Well, what's funny is I didn't notice Milton at all until, um, of course, he dies. And then I rewatched it last night, and yeah, mm -hmm. Milton is there the whole time. Um, there's a lot of layers to this joke that works just really, really well. Um, but yeah, uh, so more security arrive, and um, almost by, uh, I guess you could say, like, like muscle memory, in a way, just reacting. Uh, polka Dot Man fires Polka Dots at them. Unfortunately, the bombs were dropped near there, um, and this is the thing. First of all, convenient that he just happened to drop them earlier, for no reason at all, because that causes everything else to happen. But secondly, yep. hyper convenient to have what are, what looks to be, like, fucking 15 packages of plastique <laughs> blow up with them meters away when it's designed to bring down the entire fucking building. And they and survive. And it doesn't kill any of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely phenomenal plot armor once again, uh, because they show them getting based. tackled out of the way, and it's just like, shut up, <laughs> like that's not gonna <laughs> do it. Um, so yeah, of course, now we know the context for why the bombs went off early, um, and the f the aquarium then, above breaks, yep. and all the water comes down into the room they're in, uh, with King Shark and the what did you call them? Cl Kleenexes? Clyrax. Clyrax. Uh, yeah. Clyrax. Now, and now Dude. King Shark is with his Clyrax friends. And I was going to say, should I? Smiling, they they have have to well, right next to him. I'll play the He's clip smiling. so that. He's so happy. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I will play uh, with so, audio. Such a, just... such a happy scene. Yeah, look, he's with he's all his so friends, happy. everybody. It's going to be great. He's so happy. Yeah. Oh, jeez. No. Uh, I'll play that much because of copyright. And then. Uh, yeah. So and let me tell you, we, this, let me uh, tell you, the we, we were very, gasp. yeah, we uh, were well, so, so let me, wait, we gotta explain why, so like, hit them jumping onto him is like, oh man, like, you know, but the thing is, this guy, he's a tank, so like, a fish, you know, we're not really worried about it, but, if I can show you this, if, if chat, if you're looking close, he he's got one on his really face, hurt. look at that, oh, oh, blood is going everywhere. Yeah, we were yeah, like, like seeing we him were get hurt for this character. Uh, we were so when when he found friends, like in and, and not yeah. even like friends in seventy eight quotation marks. Just that he was happy that he thought he found friends. We were we shared in his happiness. We are so on board with just Nanoe um, making it out this, okay. This particular moment, One of terrifying. We this was yeah. yeah. This is, I have never yeah. been more tense in a film when, ever when, in my life than at when you this see, moment. When you see like that's piranha like creatures swarm a character and you see just blood gushing everywhere, that's never a good sign. So and, we were uh, And you know, just to just to make it clear, so we have a guy whose main arc has been about trying to find friends 
And so he finds these little things, and it's like, oh, look, they're friends. They're like my buddies. And then they freaking attack him at the first opportunity. It's like, man, think about what's going through his head. Like, this this, this poor guy's head. And again, um, also factor in, King Shark has, like, the mind of a child. Yeah. So, yeah, so just imagine this experience well. happening what to a child. Think? Yeah. What is he mm-hmm. thinking? And, you know, just to just to make it clear, you know, in Batman v Superman, when, like, you know, B- Batman's about to, like, skewer Superman, and, mm-hmm. like, it's meant to be, oh, uh oh, oh, I cared much, much more, much more about King Shark's fate. Yeah. Just considerably more than the fate of Superman in that scene, or it, basically oh, yeah. in any of the it's... other films up until this point. And so it's worth mentioning, like, the reason we were panicking when watching this is because I know for a fact that James Gunn is more than willing to kill this character this way, to make it tragic as fuck yeah. that the creatures he's befriended eat him to death. I was just like, please don't make that the mm-hmm. ending. Please, 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 <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's like, this is so unfair. He's such a nice creature. <laughs> please, he just wants to have friends. <laughs> in, in please his... don't kill the thing that ripped he's... another thing in half. I love him. He's funny. He's he's endearing. It, you know that Sylvester Stallone's voice is uh, doing a lot for this character as well. I, yeah, I was terrified that we were going to to lose him before the end of the film. Like, um, no, yeah. 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 So we were all and, panicking. And this is what we talk about when it's like we were we were characters. actually panicking. We, we were, were very concerned about the fate of this giant dumb shark. Very invested. And for those who are baffled, I know they, they exist out there, they're like, what the fuck, it's just a shark. We will explain in full when we get to talking about these characters toward the end exactly what makes them so endearing, alright? Just for anybody out there who's confused, I think a lot of people feel for the shark in chat, so it's, uh... Won't yeah. need a lot of explaining, but we'll definitely do it, because I, I have lots to say on all of them, but... Um, portion of the building is blown up, and so... It tilts. And we get a split second shot of this. <laughs> I, yeah, well, yeah. They, they just saw, they swam through all that. It's like wow. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to save him. Well, I was just gonna oh. say this is actually my favorite moment for Harley Quinn in all three movies. Yeah, well, Risk and yeah. Yeah. Limb for King Shark. Yeah, character I, I, level. Yeah, but it doesn't make any sense that they could go through the water with those fish everywhere, man. It's I. Like, don't care. I'm just glad that she's trying to help King Shark. It's like I think I, <laughs> it's, I think that's it's yeah, cool. This, well, that's again. Is... I still feel like that's categorized as plot. It's like she's lucky as fuck that none of them bit her, and she's trying to help King yeah. Shark. That's her character. Yeah. Her character's if plot her character armor, was given the, that the chance with her the plot being as it is. I mean, that's a yeah. Character's doing what it's doing. Um, yeah, this is the thing that you said. I pointed out right. Like, oh, yes. this is like the most likable. Because I'm not even sure. I'm not 100 percent sure I caught it when I was watching it, but you, you, I think you repeated that she was trying to help King Shark, and it's just like that's enough for me to be like, all right. <laughs> like you, it's like one of the few you, selfless you, moments with right. her, where she just goes out of her way to try saving someone. That's like so rare with her character in any of these the, movies. The Such dawn's light shineth her. upon her. Yes. Yeah. And um, so yeah, you can clearly see that King Shark isn't dead, but he's still got them all over him, and he boops out of the tower with the water and slams into the ground. I think we were still all on the edge of the fucking the edge of the edge of our seats. Like he could die at any moment, he could be dead at any fucking moment. Um, and here he is, struggling, covered in blood. Those creatures fall off him. I think the implication is just they can't survive without a body of water, um, which is fucking lucky in some ways, but. Yeah, they, he has many men open fire on him. Um, and he just he just sinks into himself and oh, is just sad. It's just heartbreaking yeah. seeing him get hurt. He's just mm. been this tank through the entire movie and Look seeing people just beat on him. It's just, it's heartbreaking. So, um, yeah, he's oh, just kind of oh, cowering and it's like, yeah. fuck. Yeah. And we're just like, hold on, buddy. Um, just hold the fuck on, okay? You can <laughs> it's me trying it's, to edit. You know, we're getting there. There's like a, just a tiny bit of relief, like, okay, he's like, he's covering his face, that means he's alive. <laughs> um, yeah, and so uh, Bloodsport is hanging out on the end, and so, like, fucking 15 Firing soldiers squad. unload all of their weapons on him, <laughs> and of course they all miss, because, yeah. Yeah, and know, he, he, he doesn't fall to his <laughs> death and die, it's like... Now, like I will say, they are, uh, like, a good ways, of, like, a good distance away from where Bloodsport is, however, the sheer number of bullets There's that they're so firing... Many. There's no it's, way. There's no honestly, way that this volley doesn't 
Yeah, it's more, more than I thought it was, actually, on one of these shots, if I could just get it again. Yeah, the exterior one, it's like 30 yeah, to 50. Like, I think so, so many people. Are so close. <laughs> Holy shit. So many. It's insane. Not one so person fucking scores dead. a hit. He's so dead, like, there's, yeah. look, look at the sparks! There was just right next to his head! <laughs> look at that shot! Oh. You ain't, you ain't so- oh. If it was one guy with one gun, I would still be like, eh, he lucked out, you know, if they're unloaded, he lucked out, but look how bad he's <laughs> like, like- Oh, it's like, yeah, you like, should, uh, stop. Stop yeah, it. He should have put his lottery ticket in that day, like, holy shit. Oh, yeah. Were, were they even, like, actually aiming down their sights? Were they actually focusing? Were they trying to hit him? Because I feel like if everyone's trying to hit him, they're not going to miss all their shots like yeah, that. Yeah, you have enough. Yeah, if you have a, yeah, all We're those talking guys talking astronomical are, that they would all miss. Him. Yeah, um, that is... Also, some people are just curious about his armor. So we don't know at any point in this movie if his armor is good enough to block bullets. It's, uh... Yeah. All we know is his helmet can block a hit to concrete, or at least absorb it. Mm -hmm. So, like... Yeah. But yeah. Harley, and, on the other hand... Yeah, Harley's just who dead. Who also yeah. your view... Also, even if you were hit and you had armor, you could potentially fall off. He's like holding like by just the slightest of grips. If he falls, then that's it as well. well so, so also armor, very lucky that was there from the grab on too. Well, well, also yeah. unless unless your armor is made of something like vibranium, right, which can absorb all kinds of uh, kinetic energy, um, bullets when they hit armor will still like have a sort of like uh, like a, a it'll knock you around. So, this would have knocked him down and he would have fallen to his death. Well, yeah, sure. Um, I just don't... I don't even... If you'd asked me, is his suit entirely bulletproof, I'd been like, I don't think so. I, I just... I didn't think it was. Um, they don't show any sparks when this is happening on his suit, yeah, which would be great. I, yeah, he just doesn't get hit. Yeah, to my understanding, he, okay. he's just... He gets off scot-free. Yeah. My... I mean, my answer is, I don't know. Right. Oh. I, yeah, I, 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 I can't... Like he gets hit. I can't... Yeah, I, I would just say that it looks like he wasn't hit because there's just no... Bark or, or clip or, or scratch or anything. He's just, uh, and you can see them appearing around him, but not on him. He's a lucky boy. Um, and yeah, uh, apparently someone needed clarification. Yeah, so King Shark, this is if official, definitive information. He's immune to bullets. He's strong enough to deflect bullets. Um, yeah. And so earlier, like I said, it doesn't really matter if he was using stun or lethal rounds. Uh, King Shark would have survived them. And someone's trying to tell me that bullets don't have much power to knock you around. So what I mean by that is he's dangling off of this ledge here, and if he gets hit by any of those bullets, there's still, uh, you know, there's still kinetic energy. There's still concussive impact to them. We should be seeing yeah, if something. If you're shot and you're wearing a bulletproof vest, those things can, like, break your ribs. Like, it's... Armor well, yeah, they showed, not gonna, they still they showed not it for... Vibranium. They showed it for King Shark. All of the deflections and his skin rippling, and, like, you know, they, they did Name. the work for that. Why? Yeah. Why have you why have you cursed me with knowledge? <laughs> the <laughs> Snyder <laughs> School. Yeah. Oh yeah, god, and it's specifically like about Army of the Dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah not... there are four episodes. Man, think yeah. of what you could learn from Snyder about how to make a movie like <laughs> Army of the Dead. <laughs> yeah. Uh one thing uh, I just I just thought of with King Shark. So he's not getting hit by bullets, but he has these bite marks everywhere from these fish thingies. Mm -hmm. I just wonder what their their fucking teeth are made of. Uh, that's of the that. thing. You have to conclude when you're showing they're, stuff like that that they're, they're a fantasy creature aliens. with teeth yeah, that, that's, that's, that sharp. This is kind they of are, getting, it's like, oh, okay, more so powerful than bullets. They... <laughs> well, sharper than bullets, right? Like, cause cause that's I, theoretically possible, I assume. Sure. That if you... I, I, yeah. I check for bullets these themselves aren't sharp, but... Because I checked for these things, and this is legit the first first time they ever appeared in any of the DCU stuff, so... Yeah. I guess they're just... Teeth. It's very powerful teeth. Well, the Laser thing, teeth. when you invent a fantasy creature, all we can do is... The... People think that's a stretch. It's just like, what do you want me to do? It's made up. It's like saying nanotech's a stretch. It's just like, it is a stretch. It just is. But like, we're yeah. being told yeah. in a sci-fi environment, is in... this is something they invented. Yeah. It's, the important thing is that it's just internally consistent and doesn't break something else, and it doesn't yeah, like, really, as far as I can tell. You rank it in, like, a power level. It's like, so if those things ever bite anything in future and fail to cut through, and it's something that's weaker than King Shock, then we would be like, so that's fucked. Um, and yeah, there's gotta be something to this, like, with physics and how bullets work versus sharp, like, knives or whatever. There's gotta be something, um, 
to it in terms of how they apply their force and their penetration. There's got to be a difference. Uh, typically, yeah. Like, uh, what's funny is um, bulletproof vests. Oftentimes, they can't like uh, they can't stop a like an arrow or a crossbow bolt um, that can go right through a, a bulletproof vest that would otherwise withstand bullets fairly well. So. Um. So yeah, King Shark's pretty pissed about everyone shooting at him, and he tears the head off the guy really? who was leading them. Uh, which gave us a big sigh of relief. Of, he's okay. He's getting back into it, guys. He's he's not dead. He's gonna be alright. And in fact, he's pretty chill him. after he's nomming on the guy's head. I was half <laughs> expecting him to like just rip through all these guys yeah. uh, like by himself, and I, I would have liked that, but then he just kills one dude and is just gnawing on his head like an apple, and... I was alright with that too. Yeah, it's fine. It was, uh, would have preferred full carnage. Um, yes. Yeah, then we get a, a, a cool moment, but again, logistically confusing. They start to tilt more than ever, and that is when they get their opportunity to start running up the other side. We were like, yeah, this is like the worst. Okay. This is the it's least leverage struggle. you've ever had. <laughs> like, Yeah, it's not even a struggle. They just stand up. It's like, yeah, we got to run now. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, this leap at the end here, like, it's like it's 30 insane. feet or something. Hey, hey it's Evan, insane. it's foreshadowing that she has <laughs> super leap powers because she does that like three times in this ending. Oh, yeah. It's fucking I mean, ridiculous. Definitely... Her leaps are hilarious. She has like, she's clearly on some crazy levels of strings. I, uh, I'm not exaggerating well, when I see it looks like 30 feet. She does like 30 foot jumps. It's like, how do you do this without superpowers? It, that's so is, strange. Yeah, that's uh, I'm, that I'm, I'm sure ridiculous. And so I'm sure that someone else has already brought this up, and I apologize if I just wasn't paying attention. But like they, uh, it wasn't that steep when they were struggling, and then it's getting steeper and yeah. steeper the, that incline, and they're able to run up it easily. Like really? Hmm. Okay. It's called a plot slope. It's as steep as the plot needs it to be. <laughs> so polka dot man lands on a secure bit of, bit of debris. Um, she climbs up after she's got a javelin in the wall and gets it out. Unfortunately, the debris that um, good old Bloodsport is on is not reliable, and he falls and he activates his uh, grapple and uh, slams into a wall and loses his helmet. Um, and just just have some another relatable moment of the grapple starts to loosen and he just goes, "Ah, oh, fuck's sake!" <laughs> like, it's just it's just not going well for him. Um, and that then reminds me like. Nathan Drake commenting on his shit luck while like climbing crumbling uh, rubble and, and shit in, in Uncharted. Yeah, um, but this and this plot armor that takes me out of honestly everything in, in this sort of stuff, but um, in terms of just being like, so they should be dead, they should be dead. But this one was one of the most like jarring in terms of me being invested. Him, his, his grapple hook breaking, I care about him quite a bit, Bloodsport, and I know that despite the plot armor in this movie, anyone can still die at any point as soon as James Gunn decides it. So I'm still worried about him. And so his grapple breaks, and he falls significantly far enough that I now know, as, as, as how gravity works, he has to be saved in some way, shape, or form that isn't just landing. But he lands. Mm -hmm. And he just lands, and he's like, oh, phew. And I was like, what the... <laughs> like, that was very you're high. Why did you just it's like your your, it's like four stories, and it's like that would definitely break your legs, or you you would not be you're, standing up from that if you survive. Oh, you're dead. You're you're, you're, you're like you're like he has, you're dead. He has an yeah. almost yeah. superhero yeah. landing, and it's just like you're a human. What the fuck? You're you're yeah. tibias oh, but are that's shattered. not all. Well, and no, I mean, so, I just, that's that's that topic. I just we'll move well, on to the next one. Don't worry. So. When when um when this started happening, I was like, "Is he going to flatten Peacemaker? Is he about to like? Is this rubble that?" that... So all of <laughs> yeah, all all of us didn't say it, but we all had the same concern, which is he starts yeah. falling level by level by level mm -hmm. with a platform underneath him, growing you know by one platform every every level, and so Probably like. Which is insane that that happens anyway. Absolutely <laughs> fucking insane, crazy <laughs> nonsense. Um, I, I could not help but laugh in the theater. I was just like, what the hell? <laughs> like, I don't blame it, you. It, yeah, again, it looks it, it looks like Looney Tunes and Tom and Jerry here. Like, like it's that exterior there's... shot that does it for me, where you just see the floors falling <laughs> down. I was just like, Come on. Yeah, and then I was worried, like, oh, is he, is he actually going to flatten Peacemaker and save Ratcatcher? Like, yeah, so are we going to get something that stupid? That was the nightmare scenario that we none of us were want. None of us said it because we were all just paying attention because we knew that 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 sort of confrontation's coming. But so he's just four legged, four legged. We like you could picture the frame of Peacemaker just getting flattened, and that could be it. But um, no, he lands. Peacemaker sees him, 
And uh, this is one of their moments of all... He has zero context for why any of this has taken place, but he sees Peacemaker is aiming a gun at Ratcatcher 2. And I think you know which side Bloodsport's going to take by instinct. Yep. And yeah. uh, Peacemaker knows that too. So they both take aim and shoot at the exact same time. And um, I guess I'll try and let it play here, and uh, then we can have a chat about it. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, well, yeah, give it a sec. So they both shoot... And goddamn copyright! There he is. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. Yeah. Now, um, I think let's get the actual well, the first floor out of the way, which is that um, incredibly convenient that any of that shit happened to get Bloodsport <laughs> where he is. It's insane. Oh, yeah. so, fucking crazy. So I feel like a, a better version of this scene, um, and I can't give full specifics, is like if uh, if there's like a door or a doorway or something, and blood, we know that Bloodsport is established to be in this exact area, um, I could see him just simply rounding the corner and happening upon them in this room. Like, no matter how we change the scene, Bloodsport has to happen upon Peacemaker and Ratcatcher yeah, 2. There are so, solutions for all of this. We've talked about this so many times across EFAP's whole thing. It's like, that's the fucking hard part. It's the part that takes mm -hmm. a while. It's the part you have to wrestle with for a while to get all this stuff working. Or you could just have him fall through a bazillion fucking floors <laughs> right to the exact confrontation that we would all like to see and see what happens in. You could just do that, I guess. Um, could just do that. So yeah. A scene needs to be over the top to work. It is a masterpiece of excess. I disagree. Fuck off, it no. <laughs> 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 It's just oh, okay. So anyway, um, <laughs> now both of these guys, are the top of their game, that's how they've been described, and they said they aim for the center. My take on this scene, you can talk more about it if you want. The way this makes sense to me, and I said this in the recording straight away, it's just like this makes so much sense to me. I believe they both aim for the center of the eye, like between the two eyes. The bullets connect. Nanotech piercing beats the the bullet he's got there. Whatever. Rags, what kind of bullet is that? Is it called a thing? The the nanotech bullet? No, the other one. Is that a hollow point? It's like a 45. Uh, a hollow point 45. Um, and so it smacks through, because they're, they're both hyper accurate, which means they're both going to shoot pretty much the exact same direction if they're... Uh, it's just going to be dead on, is my point. And then the clash of the bullet is enough to put the nanotech bullet off by a slight margin, uh, putting it into a Peacemaker's neck. Um... Unless you would argue that they both aimed for each other's guns to try and destroy them and disarm them, and that it was just successful. Um, but that seems to be the best explanation for me to make this payoff happen, is that they both tried to kill each other by shooting both of each other directly between the eyes. The bullets clash. One of them is victorious, as was said as, uh, in their opening lines to each other, and then it just puts it off course enough that it goes into Peacemaker's neck. Um, but I think it's a 357, actually. Thoughts. Because, no, it's 50 automatic, right? Right, they, they established that. Because he's got a deagle, which means it shoots either a 50 or a 357. But I think he says 50, right? Or was that... No, I'm thinking of the movie you showed me. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so I, probably 50 or a 357. Either Holy way, big, fuck. fairly big. Oh, sorry, I read something. Yeah, and he says... Uh, um, how? And he says smaller bullets, which is what Peacekeeper told him in the beginning. It was a nice little uh, setup payoff. Especially with nanotech bullets, it makes sense that those would likely be smaller. Um, <laughs> meme, meme just posted, it's all good, I'll take my apology in a month when y'all come to your senses. So we are uh, 20 minutes away from the end of this movie, and there's nothing we've said so far that I think requires clarification in terms of pros and cons, so you know, let me know if there is elaborate. any. Yeah. Not to mention that we've gone over a lot of problems. Like we're a lot of them. I, I think we're being very fair here. We're not just gushing about this. I'm I'm still like torn because there's there's more good in this movie than I remembered, and I definitely I want it to be more distant <laughs> from the rest of the DCEU in terms of like ratings. Well, we'll but it's hard because we can, this plot. <laughs> we, we're we're at the point of so many payoffs that I think it's like, just give it give it a sec. We'll we'll have all chats about that in a second. But I was just gonna say what is, what's everyone sure. thinking about this particular payoff? What what, what do you think? So. I think um I think we we talked about earlier how like there's meant to be this sort of not a direct mirror but like that rat catcher you know kind of reminds him of his daughter 
I think it's like a pretty clear parallel here uh, in terms of like what he values um, in terms of this situation. Because yeah, like you said, he has no context for this, but he immediately commits to this decision. And it doesn't surprise me in the slightest that he would do this. I think it's a cool payoff. It's a shame how he got there, but um, yeah, well, yeah, I think it's working. I would argue it's thoroughly in character for both of them. There's no problems there. Yeah. It's just the plot that got them into these situations. Is it, it reminds me of um, yeah, it's you know, like just I I literally just pluck Jack Sparrow, the Joker from the Dark Knight, uh, Tywin, and Bloodsport, and I drop them into a cube, and then drop a I don't know a fucking like some a juice an orange juice machine, and I'm just like, what would happen? Let's see. And he'd be like, I mean, it's none of their fault that this is the plot. <laughs> like, it's, it's not really like, what can um, we say about them? It's just, it's just. Uh... I think someone's asked about, like, about wouldn't wouldn't Peacemaker be dead? And I think all I'd say is like, I don't know. People have survived like being shot, even shot in the well, neck. Peacemaker did die. Well, it's, it's it's pretty clear that he died in this scene. Well, yeah, okay, Peacemaker's so, definitely dead. Like, yeah, I guess that's for... one we could skip forward on if you guys want to. There's no there's no real <laughs> reason not to. <laughs> so what's funny is. So right. Earlier, we mentioned a movie called Extraction. We did. And Extraction has a similar thing happen. Um, well, um, it's, it's, it's ambiguous as to whether... Tyler, Tyler takes more dead. damage than uh, Peacemaker does, right? He's shot... Is it three times or two times? I um, think three? He, he's shot once by the sniper and then another time in the neck. By the yeah. And then he falls really into, yeah. the, the, into is, the water. Yeah. Um, by a much bigger bullet. It looked, This looks like... That's thing... This looks like a tinier bullet. It it probably gets slowed down a bit by the. There's a the, the thing that works yeah, against yeah. this is that a lot of blood's coming out. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot, lot of blood coming out. And he is not blood. Blood. He had He's also not there. getting medical attention immediately. And not only that, Southport, he has to get. The blood. He has to get yeah, the fuck I'm out of that move. building in the next ten minutes, or he is definitely yeah. dead. Oh yeah, and of course. Like that. So, so, it, so it is very contrived that he is alive. Yeah. So so like very very. So I like Tyler Rake a lot, and I will watch Extraction Two. I'm hoping it's a prequel. If it's a sequel, I'm going to be a bit what? bummed out. What? What I thought we were talking about Peacemaker getting well, shot in the back. Well, I'm 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 but... trying to like just sort of draw a parallel here. Um, okay. Uh, I, it's like with Peacemaker, I'll be. Are, are we just going to let the cat out of the bag about? Whether or not he survives this, is, is that is that already basically done? I think so. Yeah, there's no reason yeah. we need to hide that one. Um, Peacemaker yeah, does he's... is in a hospital by the end of this film. Um, he's it's... getting a show that's a sequel to this movie. Yeah. Uh, the thing, it, we, all we needed to determine was: is it possible that he could have survived this? And everyone in chat feels the need to tell me that people have been shot and survived. It's like I am aware of this. I five everybody. I am very aware of this. Do you know how likely that is? And that means no. John Pretty Cena unlikely. is incredibly lucky. And let, that let's ask you, all the if variables. you get shot and yeah. live, it's likely because you get medical attention pretty quickly. But something like this, where you lose that much blood, you're left for dead for that long, and in a building that's crumbling, is just I don't I know how you could have gotten out of there. The big thing is that Star Wars came out of here. Like that's yeah. That's <laughs> well, to be honest with you, that might actually be more of a problem than I previously realized because. Let's You've just get these shots compared. It looks yeah, like he yeah. pops out where John Cena's body was. <laughs> so. Yeah, so oh, you've yeah. been uh -oh. you've been shot in the neck, and then a kaiju fucking 911s the building that you're <laughs> that you're in. So like, eleven it flies into the building. <laughs> Damn. More like it's it's more of a reverse 911 because it flies out of the building. Um, oh, okay. So. It, it, it's just uh, this is how I'm how I'm feeling about both this and Extraction too. Like I like the character and I'll be happy to see more of him, but plot wise, this is bullshit. That's all I'm yeah. gonna say. Yeah, it's if like, you compare those two shots, I think John Cena's de yeah. very dead. <laughs> this, yeah. He is obliterated. There's nothing yeah, he's he, doing he about that. He's actually insanely <laughs> lucky to be alive. <laughs> he's he's squibs. There's no yeah. There's no way. This is worse than I thought it was. Like. He's dead. Am, yeah. Or or giblets. We yeah. we went yeah. from yeah. extreme unlikelihood to no, that's just a hole now. Yeah. yeah that's impossibility. <laughs> that's no he's way. he is a puddle of blood. Like he is what we saw happen to Peter Capaldi, that just happened to John Cena. Yeah. 
but uh, maybe with that, 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 had, yeah. like agents on the island that they didn't tell him about and they just happened to pull his body away before star got out and well, in that split that second the they grabbed maybe, him. well i mean you know it's not a plot hole maybe when he got flung a piece of debris got lodged in his neck to like seal the wound and, that's how <laughs> and he, and he really... fell onto a mattress <laughs> Yeah. Yes, it was no, it was it was the air mattress crew from Sherlock. Remember that? Oh yeah, that was that was a great little little meme. Yeah, that's the plot hole. That's just the plot hole. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, and I, again, I, I, don't buy I, it. I like I like the character, and I'm glad that we're going to get more of him. But this is bullshit. Like, well, well, I think it's... that's the big thing, though, right? This is highlighting precisely like the main issue with this film. Plot is absurd, but like this doesn't hurt Peacemaker as a character. And he's, he's, he's as you said with attacked. Endgame, there are times where it does. There are times where they force yeah. characters to make stupid decisions in order to make certain plot things happen. But this movie's been pretty lucky, dare I say, in that all of these prop <laughs> problems, for the most part, I don't, I don't know, uh, we haven't finished the film yet. Um, they don't affect the intelligence or the values of the characters, which, by the way, like, someone like Black Widow does it throughout. Every fucking decision yep. everyone's making is entirely out of character. Um, so, like, I guess I guess it's different from, like, Peacemaker. I don't know. He has a gun on someone, and he chooses to close the distance, and that's how he dies. Yeah. It's like, you've destroyed his competence to kill off the character. That would be an example, yeah. Um... Especially if we got that, like, you know, several times, we'd be like, so Peacekeeper's done. Mm -hmm. Maker is done. <laughs> um, so yeah, Starro erupts from the building. Giant starfish. Yes! And it's very much yeah. a moment, um, he gets out of there, the, the, everyone sort of managed to make room for him, but it freeze frames him and just says Suicide Squad versus yeah. Starro, which is fun. <laughs> That's a cool, it's just a, a cool shot. Approaches. Yeah. Crazy starfish just there screaming. There's um I was I was on Wait, Smudcast once. Just one thing quick. The human body can take much more than most people think of. It has protective systems. People can also suddenly die. Because that's yeah, how it, shitty the human it's, body can it's be. It's twofold. It's it's really twofold. Some people survive incredibly dangerous things and other people die over very spontaneous small combustion. Things. So, it, it, like with action movies, um, it is just a kind of like a convention of the genre now that the action hero is going to have a a slightly bigger health bar at the very least, but there's limits to this. <laughs> um, what's funny is I was on I was on uh, Smudcast when I found out about the existence of Starro, like from the comics, um, and I I thought that was intensely amusing, and so to actually see Starro in a live action film, uh, like this is, uh, oh man, yeah, um, <laughs> James Gunn is he he went balls to the wall on this one. <laughs> well, a sentiment that I have heard, and you guys are just gonna be. Because we're just not the comic people, uh, guys, in chat. We are not the comic people, okay? So this is this is mm -hmm. going to maybe offend even you, but it's just so funny to me. Some people are very upset with how poorly they've adapted Starro, because Starro oh, no. is supposed to be much stronger than this, and he's supposed to okay. be a Justice League enemy, oh, not a Suicide no. Squad enemy, you fuckers. Okay, oh, so that's Zack Snyder's no. fault. <laughs> okay, let's... How about we talk about how, uh comics accurate these characters have been thus far let's see king shark king shark is doesn't have a childlike brain in the comics so he is oh. quote unquote assassinated in this adaptation that's cool. i'll do he's... you one better i don't care i, just yeah, don't I, don't care. Know. I know I don't we, care. Like, none of these characters yeah. almost none of these characters just are consistent with the comics we don't care they're good characters in their own right Adaptation. I'm sorry that your giant it. starfish from space <laughs> called Starro wasn't treated more reverently. Well, the funny thing is, Rags, I'm just I like be... Starro in this. I was about to say, yeah, I was leading I. into, yeah. as much as you might bitch about it, he's kind of a top-tier DCEU villain. He Maybe is a top-tier top. DCEU villain. He's better than he's... Steppenwolf. He's better than he's better than Lex Luthor. He's, be he's better than Zod. He's better than he's... all of these well, guys. Well, Zod just... the worst. I love Starro in this film. Yeah, Zod is the worst. Yeah. He, he so uh, he is he doesn't have like the emotional complexity of Max Lord. However, he doesn't have the world breaking shit that Max Lord has either. But he also there is that final line that we get from. Yeah. We will we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Oh, and, oh, yeah. and I was gonna say yeah. um, I'm not gonna spoil <laughs> we, it. I'm the thing not about Max Lord it. is if you remember when we were watching it, we got lost on Max Lord around like early third mm -hmm. act. We didn't know what he was, he was doing really anymore. Well at yeah. first, and then yeah, mm -hmm. he fell off a cliff. 
Well, and then there's been lines of dialogue that Starro has spoken through the people that he's possessed with, like the mini starfish um, that, you know, shows a bit of this. Like, again, this is a, a monster that has been, or an alien rather, um, an alien that's been held prisoner in this Jotunheim lab for 30 years and has been tortured by the thinker. It's like, this is a kind of tragic uh, force of nature that we're dealing with here. Um and the way that he speaks through people is uh, very haunting. I'll just say that. Um, there's still some people in chat that like, in fairness, he is supposed to be more of a threat. I'm like, you're not listening to us at all, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying he's supposed okay, to be. So he's not supposed I'll to be I'll say anything. it again. I don't care what he is in the comic books. By the no way, one read comic books, get over it. You know what you should... <laughs> like, honestly... Compared to fucking MCU Taskmaster, you guys got off very fucking easy. Yeah, oh, count ridiculously your easy. Yeah, what if Absolutely it was a female starfish? <laughs> Star, uh... <laughs> Starly. And here's the thing, right? You can still just... see. Yeah, of... oh, sorry. Oh, uh, so in this, no, 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 you can. Go for it. Oh yeah. So um, in this, you can still see why Starro is a good Justice League villain, even if. Um, by necessity of this group, he might be a bit weaker because you can see a he's got all the he's he's already a big kaiju, so that's already like a worthy team threat. But b he's got the whole mind controlling innocent people thing, which would introduce interesting conflicts. So the core components of Starro to me are still there. It's more just um a power level thing. And the thing is, I don't blame James Gunn for some of these limitations because guess who fucked it up in the first place? Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder chose not to use Starro. So bringing in Starro now, um, you kind of have to make these concessions if you still want to play in this shitty, godforsaken, necrotic universe. Let's, I think let's go just through. To, let's examine. Um, okay. So, Rags only cares about chocolate starfishes. Not true. Clean your butt. Uh, okay, so when Rags complains about Amazon Lord of the Rings, just say the source material doesn't matter. All right. So... This is what's called applying your rules equally to everything. That's why yeah. that's, what, that's why we call it, God forbid, a standard, right? If the Amazon Lord of the Rings doesn't adhere to the source material, but it is in and of itself good, then we will say exactly the same darn thing that we say for everything else. It, ranks. it is good, and it is a bad adaptation. Do, and do, that do, will do. be that, and it will not change because we are consistent. You, know, Rags, a, you can make that argument for any book or comic oh, to movie, and we got, often do. Thank you. Hey, Shining I, I, is a horrible adaptation, but it's it still is. a good movie. Hey, hey, Evan, Batman the Animated Series, it, its version of the Joker is terrible, and I'll tell you why. Because in the comics, he doesn't have a girlfriend named Harley Quinn. Damn. Yeah, exactly. Well, or that he's not adhering like, like he's not adhering to the fifties comics where he was all goofy. This is the problem with using comics is they're arbitrary since like. There's so many different comics and iterations of characters, so there's no consistency, really. Yeah. So, the big one for me, and I feel like I have to bring this up every time, a lot of people like Hill House, Haunting a Hill House. People, lots of big fans of Haunting a Hill House, so it's great, it's good, it's good, it's all good. Yeah. Meanwhile, man, these fucking movies that don't get the comics source material right, no respect to the fans, la la la. Go check, we did this when I first ever saw Hill House. I was like, what do people think about this awesome show, IMDb? Holy shit, there's a lot of twos and threes and ones, what the hell? And you read them, oh man, this is a common sentiment. Haunting of Hill House practically spat on the source material. It ignored it completely. It just took a couple of character names and told they're entirely their own story. You could say it disrespects the source material exclusively, like there's nothing else to it, because it practically said, fuck off, I don't care about you. I don't really see that argument popping up very much for Hill House. Probably because people haven't fucking read the book. Oh well. So much for oh, that standard. No. CW shows don't follow the source material, so it must be awesome. I feel what like the hell? you missed the part where you there are was no, you are misunderstanding the no argument claim entirely. as to whether it's a good or bad thing to be different. It is a neutral thing. It could either different? be good or bad. Yeah. You could be different and be good and different or be terrible. Just because something yeah. is the same as something else or different than something else, that in and of itself isn't enough to work with. Yeah. See, so, that's our point, that it's actually irrelevant whether it's different. Like, that's so like, the point. 
I mean, like, it inherently will be different to an effect because, like, if you're adapting a book or a comic, like, you're changing the media form. So you're going to, there's going to be certain changes that you make. Change. So, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Hey, uh, can I, Muller, can I, can I read out, like, something that you, you sent me a while back? The, the idea of um, take Lord of the Rings, right? We have the same Peter Jackson movie trilogy. Um, but in the 1800s, there was a comic book uh, called Lord of the Rings. And. Uh, Everything is the same, except that the Fellowship are all women of varying histories. And Sauron's also a woman. And Saruman's also a woman. Okay? Now, Peter Jackson comes along and makes his film series, but it's exactly the same as we see it. The Fellowship, like, the characters are not women. They're men. So, that's not faithful to this supposed, this uh, hypothetical, ad like, version of Lord of the Rings that's different, right? Um, but... The, the films are good because they stand on their own. They're not good because they're faithful to the source material. Well, yeah, and nor would we all know for a fucking fact that if that was revealed, that if Tolkien had this horrible history that no one knew about, where he accidentally, he, he killed him. He killed the fucking guy who made the comic book in the streets because he read his stuff and he's like, this is really good. I just hate the fact that there's so many fucking women in it. There can be also, only one. <laughs> yeah, and, and, I, and I don't like, and just, just think of a bunch of changes that you see in all kinds of comic book adaptations. He's like, fuck all of this bullshit. Turns out it's a really fucking good comic. And he just took it, and then he wrote his books, and then those were adapted. It's like, is anyone really going to give a fuck? They're not going to say Lord of the Rings is bad now. They might say it's disrespectful and it's built on a really shitty history, but they're still phenomenal movies and phenomenal books. Like, I'm sorry. The existence of a comic book that is entirely different wouldn't change a thing in terms of how much people love those stories. Yeah, I don't. I don't give it. Uh, turns I don't, Hollywood. What? I don't. The, I'd say it's the opposite we, of turning Hollywood. <laughs> like, we don't give a shit about like what came first. Yeah, to, to, clarify, yeah, I really to don't. clarify the point. To clarify the point, in case people were confused, imagine the Lord of the Rings, the book, and then Lord of the Rings, the films that came out by Peter Jackson, and we're like, oh man, it's amazing, and a great adaptation. Then imagine there's a secret history that the Lord of the Rings, the books, was actually based on a hidden comic from like a hundred years prior. Does all of that content retroactively become bad because you discovered that it's a bad adaptation? The answer is yeah, no. <laughs> we, the answer is I, no. Before, yeah, yeah we, we've said it before. The secret we'll history is real. It is think... an analogy! <laughs> The hypo yeah. Oh, yeah, so hypotheticals aren't real. That's part of what a hypothetical is. You just... Why? Also, um, God damn. <laughs> James a, thing, a thing's quality and its mm -hmm. adaptation accuracy. Those are two <sighs> different things. Just You're just going to have to well, accept that. I don't That's know how, how, how much more simple been. this could be. Because Lord of the Rings is like super beloved. So what if I just said the book, Lord of the Rings, it's the Matrix. You read it, it's like, so this is just the Matrix. How did you... Peter Jackson fucked this story completely. It's like, yeah, okay, but Lord of the Rings is still good, though. Now, James Moore in the Discord also said, Dude, sorrow is more of a fucking threat in this movie than the comics. In the comics, people can recover and live after being infected by him. In this movie, the second sorrow gets on a face, they're fucked, they're gone. It's fucking over. Yeah, as far as Unless we know, yeah. Um, your hands he is a, he's yeah, a they terrifying gotta... threat. Yeah, they uh, they'd have to explain something or do something, but yeah, it's it, it's got to be internally uh, internally consistent. It needs to it it's its own thing. Well, yeah, and we just eventually can appreciate oh, what it got oh, its information. We just have to from. remind can... people of what we do here. Yeah, that's a hypothetical that changes the order of things. That's a cheat. No, 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 no. So the the point is that like, Jeez. if you. How can something change in quality based on the existence of something else? Well, wait, I can help you. It's like from before it. It's almost like their argument is you've retroactively invented this thing so that the results would, would have been different because that didn't happen. You know what did happen? The Hill House one. And look what happened. It's praised. Yeah. I'm sorry. This happens. Yeah, People cares. don't always read the source and so they can't, they can't criticize the adaptation. They just watch it and assume. If a whole yeah. generation of people <laughs> watch the movies without realizing there's any books for Lord of the Rings, it doesn't matter how fucking disrespectful they are, they'll just be like, these fucking movies kick ass. Yeah. And of course, the, the simple thing of like, I haven't read the book, I watched the movie, it's like, oh, the, the movie is amazing, I'm gonna read the book, and then I read the book and it's different, it's like, ah, the movie's bad now, it's like, that's just not, how, how is that possible? How is that in any Google way a system it. that can work? And then, it's... it's it, <laughs> like, I... Guys, 
We're... Don't you want an adaptation to be better than the source material? And would that no. not therefore necessitate change? At least oh, God. No, I want it to be way. accurate. No. This is what I mean. Me we're you already are, highlighting... You are... There's like 17 arguments that destroy the adaptation thing as a standard You're... because of what you just highlighted, which is a bad comic. Should it be adapted faithfully? And then does it become good content because it was adapted You're... faithfully from a bad are... comic? You are defending legalized theft and vandalization, Mahler. Well, that's the thing. I'm I'm not against that as a as a possibility. I think that we should be consistent and call Hill House a vandalization. Then, exactly. But it's a great story. It's a great piece of content. Yeah, vandalization or not. Yeah. And so, I mean, if we, but the problem is that I get the impression that the person who said that would not accept that statement of it's fantastic vandalization, maybe, but it's fantastic. Like there is a want for the, it to be like, well, no, it's not good because it's a bad adaptation. I, I just, I don't think that that's, if that's not what you want, that's a totally different story, and that's totally fine, because people have preferences, but there's a you bit of what? a difference between projecting that preference onto the quality of the story itself. That's yeah, entirely and, and All of this comes back to, Starro should have been stronger. Like, should yeah. he have been? Should How? he? Yeah, sh that's a, that's an interesting word, should, ought. Um, someone highlighted, by the way, and I'm just showing it now, uh, the smoke that comes from the two guns of these characters, uh, I think on Blood Sports, it's, uh, I don't, I, I dare I say this, it's more normal. I don't really know what's normal for smoke huh. to come out of a gun. Um, but Peacemakers, I showed it briefly there, I want to get a better shot for people. Eh. Oh, that's huge. Well, it, not only is it huge, oh my it good god, kind of looks like an eagle. <laughs> yeah, it does kind of. If I could just show it again, yeah. I think this is pretty fucking cool. It is a desert eagle he's shooting. Just a sec. It's not a real desert eagle because it can't shoot through everything, but yeah. it's still pretty good. <laughs> it shoots through most things. Well, you see, Bloodsport shot through a bullet that came out of a gun that can shoot through anything. That's pretty impressive. I missed it again. I'm bad at this. Hopefully, you guys saw some of it. <laughs> yeah, I did. There, okay, I'm not gonna miss it this time because I can go frame by frame, bitch. Look at that. Yeah, that seems very deliberate. I like it. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's cool. Wow. Freedom. <laughs> That's what that is. That's a neat little small detail, man. Talk about a neat pick. Yeah, good good shout from chat. Uh yeah, I never noticed that. And I saw someone with a sad face in chat saying, I really want to know what happens next. Because <laughs> we were like, <laughs> they follow the storyline through this. Like like the bar scene in this movie, and then that person in chat is King Shark sitting in the van. <laughs> oh, it's Come okay. On. It's okay, chat. All right, yeah, for those out there, let us let us continue. So Starro gets out yeah. and releases, as was shown prior in the movie, the uh, like little Starro's... But let it know that before that, we got to highlight they they unload on with guns all over him, just shoot. He's shoot yeah, he seems to be immune to bullets. Completely. Yes, his entire body, his his arms, his eye, his body, just bulletproof, completely bulletproof. That one. Yes, just want to point that out. No, yeah, that's good. That's fair. Um, so he releases his mini Starro things that just latch onto people's faces and make them permanent, sort of like extensions of itself. Now this part is some hot bullshit gravy. It's uh, yeah. You get there are like thousands, and at one point Ratcatch two puts her mask on, and so <laughs> this the little thing. These things tear your flesh apart, and apparently just gives up. It's like ah, oh, you got a mask on. Never mind. Like oh. polka dot man literally is like slapping them away with his hands. There, it's a it's a yeah. metaphor for Corona. Just put, a mask uh, put on. the mask on. And so she puts that on and it fails. And then she tells our team, hey, you just got to cover up your face. Uh, I guess no one else heard this because everybody <laughs> dies the except soldiers, the main yeah. characters who put their hands in front of their face. That is it. I feel like that's just the obvious thing to do is to cover your mouth once you see yeah. the first guy. Absolutely. Actually, no, Harley just this. gets lucky. <laughs> Yeah, look at that polka like dot man just slapping them away with his hands. It's like not one out. Suicide Squad member gets gets starfished. It is so, and you you watch it and you're just like, again, how many plot issues are there gonna be? Jesus Christ! Like, what the fuck it, is it? Oh, you're so and that's lucky. That's the only time that Starro does that, right? That's the only time that he spams like yeah. the the mini stars when he could have done that throughout the entire third act. It's like, why? yes, um, there's nothing to really give away why he didn't 
keep, especially when he was attacked by the Suicide Squad soon after. I don't know if it's on some kind of timer. He generates offspring over time. Well, not offspring, whatever these things are considered. Um, Actions of himself. But there is, uh, uh, at least in this moment, they'll survive that mysteriously. Um, but Suarez is down, the military leader, which means the remaining military people are now in charge. And because, again, these guys are apparently hyper-retarded, they're all at gunpoint from the rebels. And the rebels are like, drop your weapons or, you know, stand down, we're taking over. And they all go, no, fuck you, and try and pull their guns. And guess what happens? <laughs> Which is going to work about <laughs> zero times. They all get killed. It's like, yep, that's what would happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're shown that Starro is now being broadcast worldwide on the news. Oh so God. that may just create some problems for us. Uh... Do we know the current situation with Superman? Well, uh, last the, uh, I, I, as far as I know, the only line referring to him is that dead shot, dead man, blood, is, blood, uh, sport. blood man, blood shot, blood guy, <laughs> slud, um, slud blort. Uh, Knuckles is Ed that sport. Knuckles put mm. him in the blood ICU, come. and I think that's the only line referring to him. How long ago that was, and the seriousness of the condition, we do not know. No clue. Um, it's, so that's a lot. A lot that, of people say he is for I, the sake of this. It, well, wonder. to help the movie, sure, you could say he's in the ICU, but that is incredibly convenient that he's apparently still in there, and uh, I guess he's just indefinitely in there because how long ago was Bloodsport put in prison for that? Well, think about I don't this, know. Boy, right? I, uh, Superman recovered from the kryptonite fart gas rather quickly, and he was cut by a kryptonite spear, and he recovered from that fairly quickly as well. But I guess Kryptonite it depends bullet. where the bullet hit him, or where how deep are, it went, and where it got in, it and in how do you perform? Well, actually, and how would you perform surgery on him? And I, and I actually said Does this in a call, but like this could make for a really interesting movie. But like, what if he was shot? And I don't know if people are aware that he draws power from the sun in the DC universe yet. But what if like the doctors, the government, and everyone they gather him and they take him inside to work on him? So he, he's not got the sun to help him recover quickly, and so he's like in a, an extended state of unconsciousness while the kryptonite bullet is still in there, and, and then the government are considering whether or not they want to remove it. You know, there's, there's, well, yeah, there's that's a story there. Yeah, that's an interesting there. story. Yeah, he's, he seems to be incapacitated. Is that for better or worse? Well, and so, so they, or because they, because they can't operate on him i guess or they don't know how he just has to naturally heal so that takes a while i i don't know this is all up in the air it's yeah we really, got nothing for it well we got nothing well, we don't know this is an you, i don't know territory rags question like how you could operate on him but they still have the kryptonite spear don't they well so if batman has the spear and he knows that superman is in the icu then surely he would like bring the spear over and maybe if that just even, even if you could even I'm, if you have that that um, seems like it would just hurt him even more. I wouldn't be surprised right, it if would normal stuff to operate on him. works better on him when he's under the influence of kryptonite as well, right? Like, there's a chance a scalpel might work when he's got kryptonite. Uh, maybe, yeah. It could be because he's an alien, and maybe they just know he's stable, so they don't want to fuck well, around with him. This is the thing. There's a story there that could very well yeah. explain why he doesn't turn so, up here, but we get fuck all for it. Uh, uh, also, Wonder Woman is still here. You still that have Shazam. One... Shazam oh yeah, you got Wonder Woman's sword that so, can cut Doomsday. So, so this is the thing. Um, I think it's fair, relatively, to rule out Batman, because I'm not sure you can get here in time um, to have seen him. But the others... I would rule out Batman, yeah. Um, well, because he'll have, like, a bat, you know, plane, whatever, but uh, I don't know that that's enough. They're and I don't big, know Wonder yeah. Woman doing a standard flight is enough to get here in time. I, I think Shazam should be able to get here in time, probably... Flash definitely, and that's assuming Flash he even hears yeah. about well, it. One thing about, if you're taking a nap, if you're just yeah, not yeah, if they're asleep, news, obviously. Yeah, I mean, but there's why a million they be if things. This is in Central America and it's daytime. It'd be daytime in America too. You're probably awake. Probably, I'm not awake in daytime. but <laughs> even even uh, if you were yeah, awake, sure. if you're not watching the news that much, because this is like 20 minutes. Yeah, it does. Done. That's the one thing yeah, the movie yeah, has going yeah. for it is this conflict start and starts and stops relatively quickly. But yeah, there is a so concern very... that uh, this would alert some people. Um, they well, have they a... would, they would all know after the fact, but I'm totally fine with the idea that no one is either close enough or aware enough soon enough that they would be able to get here. 
You know what I actually think would be kind of funny is if, like, after Star was defeated, Zachary Levi's Shazam shows up. Yeah. And he's like, oh, gosh, you know, oh, you guys have already gotten this taken care of. And it would fit for Shazam, I guess, to act that way. I I'm think it would be funny. Superman. Superman had to fight side by side with the person who put him in the ICU. Oh, that'd be interesting, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So yeah, uh, it seems like Starro kind of lets them go. It's like, this is my world, or this is my city, or whatever. He says it to the Suicide Squad and then walks away without crushing them. And so, Which I'm fine. Well, so this is the thing. Um, you might, as a, as, a, as a viewer of this film, be like, Starro, why aren't you killing them? But like, you could infer that Starro could easily believe and kind of know to a degree that they're the reason he's released. Yeah, it, and they are. So maybe um, it's just like, Starro, look, you don't bother me, I don't bother you. Maybe. Yeah, if, just, if you think about all of this from Starro's perspective, all these weirdos show up, the building breaks, my captor is uh, delivered unto me so I could kill him and get my revenge. These army guys, you don't seem to be friends with them. Well, uh, especially if it, get, it gets the knowledge of the people it takes over, it would know that the Suicide Squad did actually release him. Yes. Um, Technically. Yes, as far as the people... Yeah, as far as the uh, El Salvadorans, were they? Conquista, Morista? Um, Conquistadors? Uh, Corto Maltese. Uh, uh, Corto Maltese. Uh, oh. Fal uh, the, the Falconese people. Yeah, they just... As far as they're... <laughs> yeah, the, the Suicide Squad showed up to release Starro or break him out or something. Who knows? But yeah. Which is fine. Yeah, um, I'm fine to... with... Two clarifications that are worthwhile. So, first, why does Starro send a star to possess Ratcatcher 2 and the rest of them if he's chill with them? You could write that off as they were all launched and they go for targets, not necessarily sent to specific targets. Um, they might individually, you know, controlling until it latches onto a brain. And second is the Thinker outright said that they'd have buried him, didn't they? Like, so, he fucking despises the Thinker, and once you get the consciousness of the others, you could infer that... Um, they didn't even know Starro was really a thing. There's, there's ways for Starro to be like, look, I'm out. Leave me alone. You guys, I wouldn't be here if not for you. I think this deserves dialogue. I think I, too. that this I, is something yeah. that, yeah, he could be like, I appreciate what you've done, but that's where it, like, you know, this is the last chance you have. Leave. Especially with the final line. I feel like as much yeah. as I really like it, it sort of means that it deserves more dialogue. With if you know, yeah, I'm really kind of, I like it, and I'm also asking you know, questions. Yeah, yeah. I forgot to mention, um, if Superman had been able to show up, he could have sent Starro into space. Well, that's a shame, isn't it? Yeah, that's the he thing. Could have I restored him to equilibrium. Well, that was uh, that's to be discussed. It's like someone might ask, it's like, wait, so why is Starro doing this? And it's like I think Starro's pissed. And Starro can't get back to space himself. We're, we're talking about uh, an alien life form that was basically plucked from its natural habitat and then held up prisoner and experimented on and tortured for 30 years. Yeah, I can buy him being this pissed off. That's the thing. It, you, if you remember all of... He's been tortured for three decades or something. So it's like, yeah. he's probably pretty pissed. Well, all um, he wanted to do was float around space, looking at star stuff. And even um, him controlling those astronauts, you might notice he was being held down by zip ties, meaning that that might have been a self-defensive move to begin with. And so, um, our team are told, oh, this is a fucking really bad line that I kind of hate around here. Um, where are you? It's, uh, it's where basically are the, are the Suicide Squad are like, now what? And um, they ask Waller, like, well, they tell Waller, first of all, what's happening. And she doesn't really seem to be that surprised. She's kind of just like, well, you yeah. Um, and then they're, like, suggesting that they try and do something about it. And she says, if anything, the White House will consider fomenting a hostile environment in a developing nation a positive development. Which is not true at all. I don't know. Well, like this. This, <clears throat> this specific context. There's no fucking way the governments of the world are like, so there is a giant yeah, starfish a destroying... A giant <laughs> alien starfish destroying an entire country. We're giant starfish alive. kaiju. 
It's like, oh, they want this. Like, they would want this? Like, no. That's no. stupid as fuck. Laura wouldn't stop at that city. Just FYI, US. Pretty sure. Sure. I mean, I would further believe the US would just be like, launch a nuke, fuck it up. It's, uh, whatever. Like, cause there's no, we don't want this thing to, uh, to go anywhere else to do it. Like, if they truly didn't give a fuck about this, uh, I don't know, island, um, I still think that other governments governments would be like, we should probably do something about that well, starfish. I feel like the easy one is, you know, US has never had particularly great relationships with Cuba if Cuba was being destroyed by a <laughs> giant alien starfish. I feel I mean, like they'd want to do something about it. Before it gets to Miami, yeah. Think of what it could do for- Yeah, they'd oh, be dude, like, I, yeah, we need to send- all, It could yeah, improve yeah, foreign relations by, by saving them from the yeah. giant starfish. Secondly, it's taking human prisoners as like, it's like, you know, assimilating them. That is a terrifying prospect to any government. They're like, oh shit, the alien is assimilating humans. We better get it. They they get they get Superman on the phone is like, Superman, there's a giant starfish kaiju that's destroying uh Corto Maltese. He's like, Yeah, well, my dad told me to maybe let the children die. Like, but yeah, there's a ton maybe. of collateral damage that's being caused by this thing. And yeah, that, that's a big you... thing too. It's not up to Walla. It's not up yeah. to her. The Justice League will stop it. <laughs> well, in theory. Well, eventually. Theory. Tell the man that Lois <laughs> Lane is in that area. Tell tell Superman that he can destroy as much as he wants to to kill this thing, and he'll be like, then he'll go. All right, I'm on it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> tell him he can eat it. <laughs> yeah, and, and this is the thing. Wall is seemingly high up in the government, but she's still beholden to like people in the Pentagon from the first movie. So that means yeah. the, there's going to be someone who outclasses her. Someone's got to pay the bills, so she is. Yeah. Is the is the because like you can't argue that she's not telling anybody. It's the, the well, it's on the news, so the government are going to be aware. Not to say, by the way, I'm not sure the government would have scrambled anything to get here within the time that it takes to kill it. And so that's fine from a plot view. I just find it fucking absurd that Waller said. No, the government want this. You're like, really though? Yeah, don't <laughs> believe that. Yeah. Just, I think it'd be funny if uh, Starro just like wandered into the ocean and it just sank and then it started fighting Aquaman and all the kingdoms <laughs> that are down in the ocean. <laughs> Giant starfish destroys Aquaman's Atlantis. Yeah, that'd be great. It um, takes takes down the rest of the crab kingdom <laughs> that was not killed by Aquaman. Uh, um so Suicide Squad decides to leave, and then Bloodsport has a bit of a change of heart, and he's like, ah, oh, fuck's sake, we should kill it. And then, um, yeah. Ratcatcher 2 says, uh, but, sh but they'll kill you, and he says, that's her business. Uh, basically concluding, yeah, okay, if she kills me for this, fine. Like, I, I can't not do it, uh, on a principled level. He's not gonna let the starfish kill all of those people. I like that. Um... Mm -hmm. And Ratcatcher 2 is like, ah, oh, I knew there was good in you, and he's like, just keep that rat away from me. Just like, stand this sort of, <laughs> yay. And then he's like, we're go, friends. And he's gonna join them too. And then yeah. uh, Harley has a realization about the the javelin. And uh, Polka Dot Man goes with him as well. And so this fucking infuriates Waller. She's very upset. And she goes to activate everyone's bombs. And all of her analysts are looking extremely anxious and awkwardly around until one of them fucking hits her with her golf club. Knocking no, her out. No, Mahler. She gets randomly knocked out, remember? So this is weird. I, I was going to say I didn't want to go ahead of it ahead of time, but why would someone call that random? That's that's bizarre. That's, not that's, random that's enough, something that they clearly that at least twice set up. Yeah, and, and they're they explicit. Are, like, these... They say yeah, like, these lackeys of hers are like, man, this, ooh, this limits, ooh, boy. She, Because she says all of those people, and then I think someone <sighs> says, like, you know, fucking hell, you crazy? And then she just goes, little kids. And it's like, yeah, once again, there's children that are all over Quarter Maltese, and they're all going to get killed by a giant starfish. Unacceptable. We have to do everything we can to help them. It's like, yay. Of course they knocked Waller out. She's a fucking bitch. <laughs> so yeah, down she is goes. a bit of a psycho, yeah. So I don't it's like um, the inverse of the FBI scene from the last one. It's such a simple concept. Have characters concerned for the livelihood of children? Yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. a hard mm -hmm. one for people children. to you know like people don't like seeing kids suffer. It's just the thing. <laughs> it shouldn't be too hard to explain. And you can infer that in a city like this, there's probably some children. A lot of them here and there. I would well, yeah. infer there will be a lot of them. It's a city. <laughs> I'm, I'm being <laughs> I'm being kind of sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, that means that the Suicide Squad are free to attack them. They have the help of the analyst team to direct them down particular streets and stuff. And it's like, oh boy, let's do it. 
Because it's like, yeah, wall is out. And, um... So the first approach, or at least the first thing uh, Bloodsport tries, is shooting it in, I guess, close enough to the eye with, like, his full gun, his full rifle. rifle. Cool and I feel like today. the eye is the obvious weak point that you aim for. Well, so, people. this is the thing, I had a change it's of heart on this. Though. I used to think yeah. it's kind of dumb that he'd even try knowing everything he's seen before, but then it's like, is it, though? It's probably worth trying. Like yeah, I mean, if you've yeah, got I mean, what else his you his, his gun seems more special than the fucking standard one, so it's worth giving it a shot per se. Also, there's a very clear weak point on that thing, like a giant video game boss. So might as well, well try we've shooting already, at it, right? Yeah, we've already seen that it's gun. immune uh, to regular bullets, but it's worth trying. And yeah, and he has this this little seed where he's attaching yeah. pieces and pieces of the data tech is slowly building up the gun. And I just want to awesome. say, uh, when we were watching this movie, uh, Capilopidius was not a fan of the the nanotech stuff. And when this scene happened, I was like, nah, I love it. <laughs> I was like, I, just, <laughs> yeah, I love this I like shit. It too. Cool. You know, it's it's that, it's the kind of uh, transforming technology like an Iron Man or like the Transformers movies. Uh, like, the first Transformers movie is, is fun to watch because of all the little moving parts and Iron Man as well uh, has has that little, I don't know, it's aesthetically pleasing to look at in um, Blood Sports Gun has the same sort of thing going for it. Yeah, um, and uh, I, I actually saw, because uh, this is a, obviously an isolated version of this on YouTube, just the clip of it, and um, so what are the comments are saying? The spinning end is apparently like a thing for weaponry where it'll it'll help with uh, kickback and knockback and stuff as a form of a gyrosphere or gyroscope or something. I don't know if you know anything about this, Rags. I I don't know anything about it, but maybe that's cool. Though. That is I very, yeah, apparently even, it's not it's not just style. There's apparently reasoning involved with well, that. Even even if it's that's not real, I can at least buy that even in like at least in a internal comic book logic sort of sense. Yeah, you, you could probably invent any kind of reason sci-fi wise for why that's doing that. Um, but yeah, uh, he shoots it a bunch of times, not really working, and then they all back the fuck up, and Bloodsport does the thing he was supposed to do this whole time. He starts giving everybody... He does a Captain America moment from Avengers. Whereas, um, mm -hmm. Except he wasn't prompted by Iron Man. He, he just went... He says, Harley go high. Uh, King Shark start trying to eat it. <laughs> and Polka Dot Man. Well, <laughs> I, guess, I think I'll, I'll, I'll play that one because I really like it. But while we get into that point, I thought it was bizarre as fuck that he just says go high for, for Harley... They must have yeah, talked. I don't know what the plan was. <laughs> they must have and talked like, prior that her plan is to toss maybe. that thing, and he's like, "Yeah, get a better spot, go high." That must be it. That's all I can gather. Harley's Harley's wire jumps too is. Uh, oh yeah, that's old, another old epic wire jump. Um, all right, yeah, here, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just get it, get it right. It is. Huh? It's your mom. <laughs> So that's one of my favorite deliveries. Like, <laughs> Idris Elba is fantastic throughout this movie, but um, yeah, he's really good. And yeah, just the, the Polka Dot Man's face. Look at that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. That's your mom. That's your mom. What a bizarre <laughs> fucking climactic moment for a boss fight. And yeah, so we we see his mother is. Starro destroying the building. <laughs> um, oh, it's it's honestly a really good payoff. <laughs> yeah, and so Polka Dot Man gets his courage up and attacks his mother, breaks off a leg, which in reality is one of Starro's. Uh, what are they called on a starfish? One of its things. Ten leg -tacles? leg tacles. Schlops. Um, yeah, or, um, I don't know, legs or something, maybe. I don't know. And it's screaming, and we get a payoff for Polka Dot Man. He shouts, I'm a superhero, which is, you know, that, that's what his mum wanted. That's what all this happened for. And he actually does care about people. So he, he's not a guy who vomits polka dots and has to struggle in prison and yeah, stuff. He's he, a guy who actually is. Big, oh my yeah. god, starfish arms are called rays. Oh, I didn't know that. They're called Sorry, what? what? Rays. Rays. So rays. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Um, but uh -huh. yeah, so yeah, he uh, he destroys evil monsters. He cares about random people. He seems to be a, he is a superhero to me. He likes yeah. Milton. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so the DCEU's first superhero. Yes. 
and then this happens. Um. Oh. Yeah. Rip. And um, just get full. I feel exactly the same way as Bloodsport. Just yeah, he's gone. Um. And this is I the guess thing. That my question is, how do they not see Starro coming in to well, so push him beforehand? It's, it's more of um, they have constant plot armor, and then Starro decided, "I'm gonna kill you now." <laughs> yeah. Um, because no, last time it tried to hit Bloodsport, they did notice it. I'm gonna give it to to Polka Dot Man. He wasn't looking. He was he was looking at his leader, saying, "I'm a superhero. I'm a motherfucking super." And then um, be proud of me. Well, it's Starro must have like moved very quickly and silently, I guess. I'm not sure how know. far away he was, because uh, if you look at the next shot, it looks like he leaned over Starro. So, mm. um, yeah, sad face. Uh, it's one of those Definitely deaths where I was thinking about: sad. could we not have kept him alive? He was such I a good guy. Wanna, that's the thing. I'm upset when a character dies because I want more of them. And well, I'm, mm -hmm. But I'm really glad he got to be a superhero, you know? I'm glad that he was happy. Well, so uh, I, I found out today that James Gunn was originally going to kill off a certain character that doesn't get killed off here. I don't know if it's yeah, fine to disclose. We can talk about that a little bit later. Well, something that doesn't yeah. happen? I should be all right. Well, no, that's the point, isn't it? If you If you say what could have happened, then that confirms that didn't happen in this version. So I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just put a pin in that then. Yeah, so yeah. just mm -hmm. so yeah, Starro's like doing a roar of I guess celebration for killing Polka Dot Man and grabbing King Shark and tossing him into a building. Um, and then uh, we get what's well, pretty cool scene. I wish you were a little bit longer. Sorry, I'm ignoring the Harley plot armor scene. Fuck that shit. You should be dead again. But whatever. Uh, You're Harley Quinn. Yeah. She's fine. I'll Don't worry about it. Um, Bloodsport realizes that he's surrounded by the. Uh, the guys have finally caught up the, the the zombie people, and yeah, um, he goes through basically all of his tech trying to kill them, and uh, it's just really cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I've got to say about this one. Yeah, I like it. Um, I wish it were a little longer because uh, it was really cool to see that he has a. It, I like it when characters have a sword on backup rather than their primary when they do jobs like what Bloodsport's doing, because there's going to be a time where that might come in super handy, like it did there, and. Uh, I can believe he would carry a retractable sword, basically. Sure, um, why not? But yeah, and then Ratcatcher tries to do something, but she's drawing way too much attention. And so Starro goes to wipe her out, and he tackles her out of the way to save her. And then, well, it's just throughout the scene, really. She's got some crazy levels of plot armor. Because th there's a lot. Of, this is much like that other scene earlier. Two modes to go on. First, consistency. We spend a good five minutes of probably around that, of Starro not crushing these two, when he probably should and would. Um, yes. He's got, a, he's got a, a minion saying, this city is mine, to them. I don't know if that's Starro trying to say, go away? Yeah. Like, rather than just crushing Starro is being very unclear with exactly what he wants, considering that it can talk to them. So it's like, you'd think you'd try to be a little bit more clear, or even have a dialogue with them, but it just doesn't. Yeah, and then uh, Rat catches free long enough to essentially pull in every rat that's likely on this island. Yeah, um, that's a lot and, of rats. And some, like, good god. It's a yeah, lot it's the, of the rats. Rat attack. Attack. Holy. Yeah. Um, they all... That's got to be, like, hundreds of thousands, right? If not oh, yeah. a million. Like, look at that. A lot of rats. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be able to estimate it properly, because it's just too many. Like, mm. um, But, of course... They crawled all over Bloodsport, he's losing his mind, but uh, Ratcatch has got her arm over him. And they start crawling all the way up Starro. And um, I I think we get, this is where it sort of cuts in, she's uh, she's tearing up. And we get, a, we get a quick thing on what she's thinking about, which is her dad. And... I love this, I love this so much. I think everybody loves the line. Uh, so we, we, we cut to them just being together. And uh... Basically, she asks him why rats, assuming you have many options. And, uh, he says that uh, rats are like the most despised and lowliest of creatures in the world. And so, if they have purpose, then so do we all. 
It's a really great Mwah. line. And it's Mwah. the one line that Taika Waititi gets in the whole movie and That's he right. nails That's it. There's only one, yeah. This is the thing. I like his wig. He's a fucking great actor, too. He really mm -hmm. is. Never yeah. disappointed yeah. me really in talented. all of his roles. Insanely talented. Um, and so, yeah, she says, as the rats are crawling all over Starro, uh, we have uh, Harley Quinn. She does a, oh, man. I, a Superman I glide. Of the, <laughs> it's the whole, like, they have that little line for her to be able to jump out. It's like inviting her to jump into yep. Starro, and it's like, oh, yeah. man, it, she's going to do the thing. Um, There's so much to say, I guess. But, yeah, she, Harley lines up and smacks right through the eye, pierces a hole with the javelin. And then the rats crawl into that hole. Eye. Well, so, again, so this is the thing. Um, I am I am now to believe that this javelin is a, a form of a fantasy javelin. Like, it's got a sharpness to it that's not like a normal javelin. Yeah, it's some kind of... it is a special javelin it, it from a guy called Javelin, so I'm fine <laughs> with it being special. Remember, like, her tech to control rats is insane. Like, that... Like, and so it's just like, can you believe that this is a special javelin? And I think yes, maybe the second be. question comes in of, well, but wouldn't it have been nice to have had that line in there somewhere? Someone could have been like, why'd you use a javelin? He's like, this is a very special javelin. Can cut through anything. <laughs> that would well, have been. That, that literally, so no it wouldn't have been into the like this one. It it's depends on how you execute equal. that line. But the yeah, man like that, javelin, I mean, even in that helicopter, normal, everyday just... javelin? I mean, it looks just like a, th this is the thing. There's literally nothing implying that it isn't until this scene when it all of a sudden becomes magic. So it's like, that was my problem. Well, so was if, like, Wait a minute. if you rewatch the movie knowing tool. it's the sharpest javelin ever, nothing changes. True enough. I get, well, sharpest, it, it, not normal, not well, yeah, fan she, by Again, fantasy javelin. Well, it's the sharpest javelin it's ever been because it's. It up from nowhere. She got it from a super villain, superhero who is javelin. I can buy that it implies his javelin is a special one because it's the only one he's got and he it's his namesake. True enough. And I mean, I mean I, like I'm, they, they, they I'm settled on it of... until they give me a reason not to think that that's the case. It's a special javelin until they say, no, it's just a regular javelin. I'd be like, oh, so that's bullshit then. Mm -hmm. I think special, oh. you have to stretch that because we're talking something that is either oh. like insane technology or why, why do you magic. think that's a stretch but you don't think any of this other stuff is a stretch because it's a bulletproof alien is the thing and like the javelin was never set up as being that way so it's like well, i it was the sharks are bulletproof. Okay. that's not so, bullshit yeah king shark is bulletproof but the the clyrax is still uh it's it's pierces the skin. Bullets, uh, we don't know anything about this javelin other than it's implied to be special I mean, the man's dying words were that he needed to pass this javelin on to somebody. Or I mean, that, that, there's so much definitely like, an implication that it's special. His javelin's so powerful that he got arrested and put on a team meant to die by war. It's like, so having a good javelin does not stop you from being arrested. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you would think otherwise. <laughs> you see, the javelin bullets will hurt you if you damage. have a javelin. <laughs> I don't He's know anything about with yeah, the javelin. We um, know very little about javelin i'm willing to yeah. accept it as a fantasy piece of gear or sci-fi piece of gear depending on which way they went with it um alongside the rat controlling fucking wii plus remote or, yeah. or playstation plus remote i don't know what that is uh the nanotech the Wii plus. plus yeah it's yeah <laughs> like i um if if so it was like it's bulletproof so it should should be javelin proof i just be like i think it is javelin proof but that's a special javelin from what i gather Regular javelin think... proof. Oh my goodness! I've got, we've got. Don't worry, guys. I got the best fucking rebuttal to all of your javelin arguments. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? It's a. I don't know, man. Damn. The javelin stuff is stupid. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your contri contribution. Um, Axis just said uh, earlier, Harley pushed the javelin through two layers of, but technically four layers of body armor, right? If it's two guys. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. True. She did that earlier. That's. Yeah. The sharp javelin. That is quite the javelin. Um, or if he's super strong, we don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I know that that's a huge problem for a lot of people. Uh, the, the javelin shouldn't be able to pierce the eye, but I'm mostly okay with it. I, uh... Yeah, I am too. Yeah. I don't know for me. That's, that's... 
I don't know, questionable. It's no less absurd than all of the other stuff we're presented with. Just, In fact, do, it's one of the more believable I never parts. said it, those things weren't absurd is the thing. I never I mean, said I that you said it was arguments. absurd. Yeah, if we want to get pedantic, he didn't say you said that. We can do it. We can do it. But don't try to out-pedantic me. He is. <laughs> little, little something would have been nice. It's like early on in the helicopter. I really don't think it would have taken that much I mean, to explain. You have to agree. They made a big okay. deal out of this javelin. Like it was okay. Well, yeah. Okay. I, I've got. Joke. I've got guys. I've got. I've got the fix here. This is javelin. He's got my back. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with, a, with one. Yeah. I would highly yeah, advise not got... getting killed by him. His javelin pierces anything. <laughs> also, it traps admit, the swords not... in the souls of its victims. Oh, no. We're not talking about something that's <laughs> insignificant here. This literally defeats the villain so it's like this is pretty well, so big what i was like so hold on i want to i want to address the jerk thing because we had the whole thing with uh peacemaker a lot of the time his stuff was jokes but it was meaningful just because it's a joke doesn't mean that it's not relevant or meaningful also what killed was... starro was a combination of polka dot man the rats the javelin and uh blood sports leadership so yeah but, but the javelins what allows the rats into the eye they would have that's pretty much what i just said else. they were weakening it um, was, so yeah. this, it, I mean, it, this is clearly also, a special. This clearly a special javelin. I think it's obviously a special javelin. And looking at the larger universe, there is a precedent for magical objects being able to cut through, um, you know, obscenely um, um, dense material, like Wonder Woman's sword, for example. Katana's blade, I'm pretty sure, was stronger than. I mean, the kryptonite uh, as well. Yeah. The kryptonite, Actually, yeah. I want to push back even harder. I would say it's the rats that get the kill shot. It's not really the javelin. Like, the javelin no. alone wouldn't have done it. Yeah, the rats definitely get the kill shot, yeah. But the rats, like, get into the eye is the thing. They, like, go into the blood vessels. Well, yeah, whatever, right? but... So, that, so wait, so you're saying that, like, we, we then give the win to the javelin rather than the rats? I mean, it's a team effort. I, that's what that's, 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 that's my yeah. primary position, is it's, it's all of them working together. Which I think is if, great. If rats don't enter Starro's eye, like, yeah, I mean, I guess Harley could try to cut through the veins of the eyes with the javelin. She but drops the javelin as soon as she enters, unfortunately. You could yeah, maybe the rats could have done it when they went up there. I don't know. Well, that's the thing. She would have been seen by a rat catcher, so I, and they were already heading close to the eye to begin with, so it all, it all lined up to me. Like, um... Because a lot of people, I've seen people say, like, how fucking embarrassing, it's defeated by rats. I'm like, why don't you try have millions it's of rats defeated by <laughs> inside your yeah, eyeball? I understand I that you said rats, lot. which is plural, but we need to emphasize the plurality <laughs> of these rats. Yeah. And, the, yeah. and the location <laughs> of these rats. rats. They are inside its played, brain. Gonna, if y'all haven't played it, it's a pretty decent game. A Plague Tale, Innocence? There's oh, a lot of rats that. in that game. Yeah, it's like it's that. pretty good. It's, it's not, it's not gonna... Not gonna blow you away with puzzles or anything like that, but it's it's a fun playthrough. With it's well, very gorgeous. Um, it's a nice the, game to kind of go through. So well for scale though on the rats thing, like a million ants versus you, like those million ants stand a really good chance. Yeah, and then someone goes, "How embarrassing you. for you! You died to ants." It's like, well, I don't yeah. know why anybody <laughs> would say it's embarrassing to die to ants if there were enough of them. Like, that's, and in the right the place, ants, if there's a thousand ants inside your brain, them. I feel like that's a you're dead. <laughs> hey, yeah. free endgame story hinges on a single rat. How embarrassing that was. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe the DCEU takes place in a parallel universe <laughs> to the MCU and Rat Catcher guided the rat. <laughs> They're all good rats. Maybe, yeah, she guided the rat to get them. Oh man, I, I'm not even sure if that's in the script. There's so much wrong with that movie. <laughs> <laughs> what you haven't got the rat in the in the script? The, the... I've got it. I've got it in my notes. Right, but right. I'm not sure if I put it into the script. I was gonna yeah. say that one's a fucking phenomenal. I, I remember being it's so sad one. when I saw the that whole, in the cinema. I was like, the, the rat whole pressed movie, the fucking button. The whole button. movie hinges on this rat. <laughs> hey, <laughs> listen. Even video. even the smallest person can change yeah, it's the true. Yes. You know, really, the true hero of Avengers Endgame is that rat that bailed Scott out of the... Is this uh, implying uh, the crossover uh, of the DCEU and the yeah, MCU? Exactly. Was I it really that, uh, that was the right... Yeah, that was the joke. It, yeah. No, after... after uh, Sylvie killed Kang and opened up all the, the, the multiverses and shit. You got you got the DCEU lapping over with the MCU. That's the timeline. War. Oh no! Jesus Christ. We've almost been going for six hours. 
Oh fast. my yep. god! Taking us a while. It's taking us a while. I didn't. I th honestly, if you'd asked me to guess the time, I would have said three. That that really went quick. Um, <laughs> no. Time flies when you're having fun. <clears throat> well, I am. Having, that's the thing. I do I have a, a lot movie. of fun with this movie. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Starro, Starro dead. That's Starro dead. But before he died, he yeah he mentioned about the stars, and it's like, oh man, yeah, like Starro kind of he uh he did not get a good run in no. his life. He's he's just kind of it's kind of just that last moment of like, oh man, way to make us feel pretty bad about all this. You just wanted mm -hmm. to float around in space. Why couldn't you have been left alone? Yeah. It, it's it's a tragic situation. Like, yeah, I feel bad for Star, but at the same time, he did have to be taken down. Yep. For well, that's what. Yeah, yeah, that's the tragic part about that's it. The tragedy, like, yeah. It's really unfortunate, but like, we you you can't exist in this world. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the, the tragedy. Well, if Superman Star were able to show up, he could potentially carry Star to space, as I mentioned before. Mm. That's uh. But and, Superman's and, and not there. the type to save people. That's not his repertoire. That's, that's true. Yeah, he would never take that. pity on this on this alien that, you know, was taken to Earth against as well. He would never ever take pity yeah. on something like that. He wouldn't sympathize with any life form like that. Nope. Um, someone said hey. seven guys referring to us, and every single one of them missed that PM, meaning Peacemaker, said he was on a side mission from Waller and it had nothing to do with his character development and he didn't make the decision based on beliefs. Wrong. Very, Fuck. very wrong. Yeah, that's wrong. Um, uh, he he has taken orders from Waller, saying that you can't let this data leave this room. But he says, when pushed, when pressured about the children, it's not about Waller anymore. It's about you've got to keep the peace at all costs, and this will keep more peace than it won't to uh, maintain this hard drive. We didn't mention it because it's just not as important compared to what he believes in. But I'm afraid. In fact, you, you could argue wrong. that Waller. Yeah, you could argue that Waller chose him because yeah. he knew she knew that he would keep his end of the bargain because of his underlying belief structure. Absolutely. Their um, interests aligned. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, he says Waller charged me with making sure none of this data leaves this area. That's his opening gambit. It says non personal. He said it feels pretty fucking personal when you've got a gun on me. And then he stresses the children and he's like, look, fundamentally, yes, what they did with the kid. It's not about Waller's charge at that point. He's making an argument of just ethically, can you really let this happen? They killed children, experimented on him, and then he's just like, uh, sometimes you have to make some great sacrifices to keep the peace. Um, it's really good. <laughs> just if we, in case we haven't made that clear. Um, so, our team hook back up. They're all okay. Uh, there's, there's a bit of banter that's worth mentioning. Um, it's a little bit, it just comes across a little flat. Um, Harley's sad. And he's like, yeah, I know. Rick said he wanted to get the hard drive out there, but um, this way means... So, so to give context, uh, dead fuck blood sport. Dead fuck. Dead fuck. Dead blood, fuck. blood sport has told Waller <laughs> that if she kills any of them um, or does anything to his daughter, he'll release the hard drive online. Um, and so they're free and they can't be attacked or whatever, and she's agreed. Is there a reason why Waller doesn't just push the button on all of them? Right? Because he'll release. Why the would you hardware? take that chance? If they release the hard drive, you're in a lot if of they're, like. If they're dead, did they like upload it to make it automatic or something? No. Well, like so, that? so that just probably the... all you got to do is think a little creatively here. So we don't know how much time has passed between Starro dropping dead and him talking to Waller. Um, and Waller's awake, by the way. So we could infer it's been a decent chunk of time since he was hit with a golf club and stuff. All he has to do is get to a working computer, upload it to a friend, and then tell them, if you find out any of us are dead or my daughter goes to prison, release this. I guess. They all, uh, not they I kind guess. Of, they kind totally of frame fair. it like it's around the same time. I mean, that, that that's the thing, is that's what you do. Like they, He doesn't say it explicitly, and obviously he doesn't need to say it explicitly, but... Well, the, the helicopter the to pick do. them up arrives right after, so like I think this has to have been a significant chunk of time. All right. Significant enough that he could yeah. set up something. And it could just be the automatic thing of like, I need to press this button every 24 hours. And if it could I'm be dead, that, yeah. I can't. So, and, and, this, yeah. and ultimately, uh, Wall has been knocked out. She doesn't know what they were capable of doing. Why risk that? Yeah. It's not worth it. Just let him live. Yeah, it's super risky well, to do Because they it. can 
well because they can blackmail you if you got if they got that then who knows what they could do basically you lose all your leverage so yeah with those people specifically i, I, I like that you think that trumps the release of the hard drive. like what do you mean like if you were in the room with waller and you said she, they've got black they've got coverage of you now it's just like yes they do that's the idea they have something that i think would destroy yeah. the u.s if it was released so yes, yeah. they have leverage over me, um, and that's the thing. Situation both ways, I guess. Uh, it's it's no. going to be a matter of seeing how Walla may play this in future. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Did I, did I was was someone saying no there? I can't. I couldn't tell. Oh no! I, I, I was, was saying I was I was, I, I was I was saying no in response to what Evan was saying. <laughs> Okay. Um, it's just the, the Suicide Squad holds all the cards now, basically. Yeah, and, and it was a particularly smart move on Bloodsport's part, and it makes me really happy that he's no longer a puppet for someone else, and I want to see him do his own thing. I don't know if I'll see Bloodsport yeah. again, but I want to. Um, yeah. And so or Bloodsport. He, yeah, and, and so he says, like, this is a good outcome, we saved the city, and we've got blah blah blah, but she's sad, and he's like, I know Rick was your friend, he was mine too, but like, this is, this is the outcome we gotta have. And I'm just sitting there like, Man, I actually believe the friendship between Rick and Bloodsport more than I do Harley and Rick. Like, even from that one yeah. moment where they're laughing together, that was enough for me to believe their friendship more so than anything I've seen for Rick and Harley. Yeah, uh, if they were going for something between those two, they did not convince me. They shouldn't, shouldn't have split them up. They shouldn't, shouldn't have let them it. have their own little adventure together where they can talk about stuff and tell us... We're, yeah, we're tight now. We did like 17,000 missions together and You're the, the time, perfect opportunity in that opening. Yeah. They both managed to escape that beach with plot bullshit and then they both go on their side adventure but they they bounce off each other the whole time. And do your best to write it. I know you can do it. You got a straight man who's gunning for his principles about making sure the worst things in the world stay under put and she's just crazy. It's like there's plenty we can do with this. Absolutely. And you can make it so that she actually cares about him because he saves her life a couple times or whatever. Um, yeah, and then she's like, I can be your friend. And he's like, nah, so, you know, bye. <laughs> <laughs> a smart man. A smart man. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah, they see a Norway, and he's like, looking to, he keeps pointing to all the corpses and saying, dob dob. They're just like, no. <laughs> um, yeah, and they get on the helicopter, and you get some nice, sort of, we did it looks from everybody, and something that's wonderfully satisfying to watch. Ratcatcher falls asleep on, um, the Nawe and and he smiles because he's got a friend. They're adorable in this movie. And uh, Sebastian wants to cuddle up with Bloodsport, and he's freaked out at first, but he comes right down, and I think he smiles as well. All all these and he, and he like he pets him too, right? Yeah. Like on, mm -hmm. All these yeah. journeys. And the movie ends on the shot that I think sums. <laughs> Sums up the movie in general. A good rat. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and I guess we'll probably. Uh. So it. Yeah. It almost Great cuts connection. to credits, right? At least I think you think it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is the Suicide Squad. Yes. And so we're like, that's it for the movie. But then <laughs> suddenly, <gasps> look who it is. <laughs> 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 Oh my god! Yes! So much. This probably bumped. The, the, this is a talk about a good move. <laughs> as, as, let me actually say when we watched the beach scene, when they said when we saw that like Weasel was killed off immediately, we were like, I I don't know how to feel about this. I, I don't really like that because uh, I didn't they made like us it. Really, I'll flat yeah, out say they, I didn't like it. Yeah, they made us mm. really like him, and then the they weasel. just immediately killed him <laughs> off, and we were kind of like. We were kind of reluctant to get into the movie at that point because we were we weren't sure what they were doing. But this this like lifted up our spirits even more than it all they already were. Like, yeah, ah, and on the, yeah, I, yeah my, the cherry my, on top. My, right. my viewing, my repeat viewing of the film was greatly bolstered by knowing Weasel will be okay. He's just, he's just <laughs> taking a nap. Can I just point out that the literal, the literal child murdering weasel is more <laughs> likable than the entirety of the Justice League? We don't know the con we don't know the context of those. <laughs> maybe, those maybe those kids were little shits. Who cares? Yeah, maybe they we just wanted it's almost just the nature of it being dragged onto the mission and drowned. It just seems unfair. <laughs> like you know, you know what I really hope is that the twenty-seven children that Weasel 
killed an eight Allegedly. were the, the the children on the bus that Clark pulled out of the we all finished them all. He was like, he was he restoring balance. You see, yeah, Jonathan Kent like, for Saul. He ate it's the like bus some, of children to keep his identity secret. It's like some Final Destination bullshit. <laughs> yeah, Weasel we, is actually the, the reincarnation of Jonathan Kent. Weasel indeed lived. Um, Weasel's out there. And yeah, and the the after credit scene is just confirming Peacemaker is indeed alive, and he'll be in his own show. Mm-hmm. And that is the True Suicide fact. Squad. Yeah. Yeah. True fact, when oh. they uh, fucking cut to the ICU, I thought that was Superman it, for a second, and I thought he was just going to give, like, a really pained thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, yeah, now, Star was defeated. He's like, oh, good. Oh, so... <laughs> so the, um... Oh, oh yeah, like, especially if you go, like, oh, I, I want to congratulate the leader of the team that <laughs> helped take down this horrible yeah, monster. Yeah, that would be great, actually. Um, now, what's funny is, so... I said that there was a character that was originally going to get killed off that uh, James Gunn decided against killing off. That was Ratcatcher 2. He yep. was originally planning to kill her off, but he just couldn't do it because he really loved her journey and felt like she was the heart of the film. So Polka Dot Man was, yeah. took her place on the uh, sacrificial altar, if it if it will. It would honestly, um, as much as I was uncomfortable with Pokemon Dot Man's death, I would have been very uncomfortable killing Ratcatcher too. I'd have been like, yeah. "Damn, dude, really?" Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm quite happy keeping Ratcatcher two alive in uh, in exchange for Polka Dot Man's death. Yeah, ideally, I mean Harley would have been fucking dead. So yes, <laughs> yeah. that would have been nice. Um, out of I out of curiosity and fun, if you could all from left to right. Just, just the name of the character, who your favorite is in the movie, if you managed to figure it out. If you didn't, I guess name more than one, because it might be a draw or whatever. I'm just curious what the results are. If, uh, Evan, you want to go first? Just my favorite character? Yeah. Uh, Peacemaker. I wasn't going to prompt. Just go left to right. You can do it. Um, I think Bloodsport. Bloodsport. It's, it's a tie between Peacemaker and Bloodsport. Uh, uh, rat Catcher 2, I think. Or Sebastian. Bloodsport. That's the name of the rat, right? That's Sebastian's the name of the rat, of the rat yeah. yeah. I do like Sebastian quite a bit. Um, it's either Bloodsport or Milton. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's blood sport. Um, yeah. Mm. Um, mean. Uh, well, if I c I'll discount my bias for anthropomorphized things, so Starro and Weasel would win otherwise. So it's definitely blood sport for me. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I was just curious because um, I think it makes sense people go with blood sport, but I honestly think that the trio that was hard to pick between for me was Peacemaker, Blood Sport, and Ratcatcher too. Although yeah. all three of them were excellent. Yeah, that's my trio. And then, um, factoring in, King Shark is still great. Like, he wasn't yeah. in the top three, but he's still oh, yeah. great. Rick Flagg is still great. Um, well, so uh, maybe... Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's, if, if you want to do a quick sort of conversation about each of these sorts of characters, because I think that some people might be a little bit lost on exactly what's so valuable about the ones that have less sort of screen time slash development. Why do people like King Shark? Why? What, what's the, can we only do as good as, well, he's funny, or he's relatable? Is that the best we can do? What yeah, can we well, do? There, well, I, I think that there, there's part of the relatability in there, and that it doesn't matter who you are or what you are. There's an aspect of, I don't have any friends, that's, that is very, very relatable. There is an approachable aspect to that, and you feel because of his stupidity, because he is a stupid character, um that he can be taken advantage of in a way that isn't that, that doesn't feel right and you want things to work out for him you want him to be happy um you, there's a part of you that or the part of me that feels at least that he's just kind of he's kind of swept up in all of this and he doesn't really understand it in a way and he doesn't have much to latch on to and so you want things to turn out all right for him and there's also the aspect of he clearly displays emotions and there's he, he's you know he is a he is a character um and he does learn and you know from the things he's told and people do reach out to him and he responds positively to that 
and you want things to work out for him. You want him to be okay in the end. I think animals generally and children benefit from an aspect of us believing as uh, fully developed adults that we're like, those things, they are less developed uh, or at least less capable, but they're, they're also a lot more honest in that sense. They, there's things they want and need, and if they provided it, they will be um, happy, and that process is very satisfying to watch. And knowing that in, an, in a sense of his id, he just wants friends is some of the most, like, it's just so... Like, 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 more so than, like, food and water and oxygen and stuff, it's, it's uh, incredibly endearing that this creature just wants someone to talk to and be friends with. Um, yeah, especially because, is... like, he is a, like, appearance-wise, like, in-universe, right? He's kind of off-putting. Like, why would you want to befriend a great white shark man hybrid that has developed a taste for human flesh, basically? Um, and if he can't join the others in the little like night of partying at the bar because he he's too conspicuous um there's a lot of like reasons why he's socially ostracized that makes sense yeah but he's still humanized uh really really well even as a shark man and you look back on the most damning scene he's in of nearly eating someone who's supposed to be friends with but it's it's literally just because he doesn't believe he not only that he doesn't have friends but he has the capacity to have friends, question mark. I think he's come to terms with the fact... I think this informs the book reading. That um, he's come to terms with the fact that nobody wants to be his friend, and that sucks. But maybe if I read a book and I'm smart, maybe then people will want to be my friend. And I think that's what's going on there, honestly. Why else would he yeah, be doing there, that? There's a child... There's like there's a childlike aspect to him. When he's like, this is a hand. Look, I know what a hand is. And he, he wants... To, he, he's seeking the affirmation of others. Yep. Like he's satisfied with himself when somebody else acknowledges that he knows what a hand is. There's that that's a thing that kids do. Kids are like, look, mommy, a window. And you're like, yeah, that's a window. And then the kid's like, yeah, I fucking nailed, I nailed it. it. <laughs> they feel great. Also, the model that's, of something, that I, that's something that I see very um, prominently in uh, Nanaye? Nanoye? Nanawe. Just King Sean. Nanawe. Nanawe. Come on. Yeah, you can call him, well, call him Nanawe is his name. name. Yeah, everyone calls him Nanawe. Yeah. Jink Shark is his name. Nanawe is actually his name. Nanawe is his name. Yeah, is his meaningful name. That's his No, title. you got him backwards. Nanawe is the meaningful name. That's like saying King of England is your name, not George. Isn't um, isn't it the case that like the the when you're like Dukes and Duchess, like that's a part of your title? Oh, like that is part of your official name. Oh, King Nanawe. Like, yeah, his name is Nanawe. Yeah. Listen, okay. ev everyone this calls him King Nanawe Shark. in the story, so I'm going with Nanawe. Yeah. I'm pretty sure some of them call him King Shark. No, they, yeah, but everyone, majority of the time then, 80%. Okay. Also, sure. when, right. when, um, when Ratcatcher 2 is, you know, reaching out to him to be his friend, that's what she calls him. She calls yeah. him his name. Yeah. Uh, and I think he, he yeah. responds more to being given his actual name rather than King Shark. Uh, I'd imagine. King Shark has this like element of ridiculousness to it. Um, it I almost mean, sounds like a, like a. See it that way, but I, I, I was gonna say I wouldn't go that far because they've all got <laughs> names like that. I keep calling him Bloodsport, that's, right? I don't call him lame. Robert. <laughs> I, for somehow Robert, Robert seems more ridiculous I mean, than Bloodsport. <laughs> I mean, comparatively to comparatively to being called Nanawe, I, I don't know. Um, seems like his seems I call him by his name. Yeah, I think that's a decent that's enough thing to call insane. a character by their, uh, by their um, name. You know, something I didn't mention as we're going through, but when uh, when she's falling asleep and they're falling behind when they're trying to get into the jungle and stuff, um, they say like you got you guys have got to speed up about Polka Dot Man and Ratcatcher too. Uh, uh, King Shark immediately there you go, Freaky. I'm helping I'm you out. Carry. King Shark immediately says, um, "I carry friend." And then I she's carry. like, "That's okay, Nanawe." It's just like, oh, <laughs> he's, he's <laughs> Try to help out. Um, and yeah, that, just... that moment where he's like holding Ratcatcher up to his mouth and about to take like a chomp out of her head, and then he realizes that he's busted. He's got yeah. that kid with Aww. a hand stuck in the cookie jar. Yep. Caught look is yeah. <laughs> hand in the friend jaw. Mm -hmm. Also making the model of out of a uh, plastique of Peacemaker oh, yeah. to him that moment like that was some good stuff again like that's that's kind of reinforced over and over again is trying to like impress other people like it's those little things that like he's trying to make friends with basically and doing gestures like that's that's something that's relatable and yeah, yeah and I believe I, I think... that by the end of the film he believes that he finally has 
friends now. And that's yeah. something he's yeah. gained on this adventure. Yeah. Which is why, by the way, I, I would totally be fine with anyone picking him as their favorite. It would make sense to me. Yeah. Definitely but I have to... considerations, as many of them are. That's the thing. Yeah. It's, it's actually kind of tough to pick a favorite. I fucking love it when you're in that scenario. That's great. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. definitely there. Because I've seen people pick Rick Flag just for just for that fight at the end and, and stuff. And that's totally like, fair. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Totally see why you'd be invested I, in a man like that. Very quickly. A part of me was considering just uh, jokingly picking Harley at first, just to, <laughs> to mess with everyone. Oh. <laughs> like, Couldn't even joke really about that. Really subvert expectations. Jokes are funny. Yeah. That's sad. <laughs> that's sad. <laughs> <laughs> what what I have in my notes for King Shark is um, King Shark's loneliness and desire to be accepted often shown through quick yet effective shots of him needing to hut, to be hidden away give greater insight yeah. into his character than words ever could he may not be the brightest but he clearly has the same underlying desire to be accepted that we all do yeah. and it's heartbreaking that his outward appearance is such a hindrance for him Absolutely, he's fully fledged. He's not some kind of side character. You've got plenty of references to work with. A strong through line. He's great. Thumbs up to mm. Nanawa. He's good shit. Thumbs. Yeah. Um, I feel like we've pretty thoroughly been over the the others through the analysis. I don't know. What what do you guys want to talk about in the relation to this movie? Uh, um, I guess. I mean. I, are we going to cover videos talking about how maybe this isn't good at all, or that the original was better? Most of the stuff I've seen has shit? been positive for this film, generally. Good. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I'm... there's many people saying the original was better than this one. There, well, Snydoids. One person I saw totally say it. The Snyder people. Oh, I've yeah, seen the Snyder people claim this movie exist. failed because Snyder people have boycotted it, which is hilarious. That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> You imagine they thought that they had that, they had that kind of power, <laughs> as, if, as if there's not something very clearly happening right now that might explain it. And I feel bad for that, by the way. Uh, I feel bad that this film will be considered a failure compared to the fucking 2016 one. Um, well, I mean, Snydernoids wish that they could, you know, be as affect the world as much as a different disease. <laughs> you know, that's that's a conversation we should have. Like, for, there might be some people still confused in the audience, like, what the fuck is happening? EFAP are the literal ones to care about the plot, and they've defined the plot as spaghetti. They've gone over all of it. Why don't you hate it? Um, and the way that I, I feel like we've tried to go over this a bit before, the way that I see a storyline, you know, when you like unwind a really strong rope and it's made up of loads of threads. Like, that's how I mm -hmm. see a storyline, is constructed of many threads. The plot is one, individual characters will be one, the world building's, like, consistent sort of, it's like the world building's a character throughout, and then this applies to, like, the thematic through lines as well, and all of these lines, if you have, like, one guy in one room for the whole film, you're probably dealing with, like, one line. Um, movie like this, we've got several characters um, that I think are incredibly strong and consistent, and then you've got a plot line that's in complete tatters. And what does that mean when you wind that up into the rope? It's like, well, the rope is nowhere near as strong as it would have been at full capacity. But we've still got stuff in there that means that it, it's 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 still strong enough to hold itself together, for, for lack of a better way of trying to analogize that. And if you wanted more of a numbers way of doing it, if the plot was, uh, let's call it a two, may, I, I think people around, would everyone agree it's a two? Or maybe three? I don't know. Two? Three? Yeah. I do. I think it's, it's in the two ish, three ish range because I feel like yeah. a lot of the issues. It's fixable. This is a fixable plot. Not, Definitely. It doesn't yeah. have a yeah. lot of. Like, yeah, it doesn't have the, a lot of intrinsic sort of issues to it. For the sake it of the argument. Scale. For the sake of the argument, if we called it a two and then we said thematically, we haven't really talked about that, but for the sake of the argument, let's call thematically a, a five wheel building. F I don't know. Um, wheel, 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 wheel building. I don't know. World building is. Um, <laughs> is. Where's the Justice Not League? Particularly it, it's fine except like for that, forefront. right? Is that the main issue? Yeah, it's just the Justice League. That If they didn't exist in this universe, I think it'd be fine. I don't think... Yeah, I don't... Yeah, um... I'm fine with the Justice League not being here because this is a remote island and it takes a very... It's a very limited time that these events occur and I don't think any of them are just around in the True. vicinity. So I'm fine with the Justice... In fact, I would probably say it would be weird if they showed up. I'm not sure I agree with that. Um, no? The problem I have... So, th it's really hard to judge the likelihoods here, because if mm. if Superman's just chilling out there. in his house, 
And then someone wrote, like like Lois calls him, and she's like, "There's a fucking giant starfish attacking some some things. I don't know what it is. An alien, maybe it could be from what it's what Superman." I will say Superman is the outlier to what I've said. I can believe that if Superman learned about this, he could be here in 20 minutes. This is what I mean. It's a close call. Uh, you know, but, if we were told yeah, Superman have... was literally five minutes away because he was told like five to ten minutes ago because that's how fast the word spread. It wasn't super quick. Then, you know, it's like I could believe it. Um, but that's certainly, look, for the sake of what I'm trying to finish off my argument, let's just call that a will building floor, and if it gets lowered to like a, a six in will building and it's a, a solid like eight, nine for character, it would average out at somewhere near, to me at least, like 4.55, somewhere like that. Mm -hmm, and that's mm -hmm. pretty much I how will, I feel about the movie. That's what I would give I it. I will call this a five. Well, well that's, that's actually five. five. Yeah. That's actually worthwhile doing. What is, what is everyone's scores? So I'll go with five two after our conversation. Fringy and Rags did too. What's ever what's the remaining yep, four? Yeah, sticking with five. I, I I was like somewhere between four and five. I think when we first watched it, but I think yeah, I think I'll I'll decide on the five two. I'm I'm pretty pretty cons full stop. There was no sentence anymore. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh i think i'd probably go with a soft four um a lot of the characters were a lot better in retrospect i don't think i gave blood sport enough credit when i first watched it like talking about some of the stuff like there's a lot more material going on than i remembered it's just that plot because my trouble is that a lot of the character moments are affected by the plot like you've got that scene where blood sport shoots um peacemaker as which is one of my favorite moments in the film but the mechanism that brings him there and then obviously how Peacemaker gets out, those are part of the plot. And that's an example of plot affecting those kinds of character moments. So it, it's something that's kind of troublesome for me, but there, there's a lot more redeeming elements going on here. Like I, my thing with the four slash five is I feel my, it's maybe a little too generous, but there's, there's a lot that, that, should, that this movie has going for it that should give it credit. So I'm like bet, probably between like a four or a five for me. Two left. Who goes first? You, uh, you can go first. All right. Uh, when we finished the the movie for EFAP movies, I said it was a four. Um, and that was recognizing the merits with the characters that I spotted on first viewing. Going through this and breaking this down um, and hearing everyone's analysis... Uh, has me convinced that the character stuff is strong enough to lift it up to a five. No higher than a five, because the plot is garbage, and it does unfortunately compromise a lot of the stuff that I like about this. However, I do like that stuff quite a bit, and I think that there is a, an amazing amount of talent that went into at least writing in those arcs, even if they are heavily, heavily affected by the plot. Um, and I, I think that having it at a five, it puts at least like one further point above the rest of the DCEU that we've watched. Cause the highest has been like, what, a three, I think so. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and this is not just barely better than justice league or birds of prey. It's, uh, significantly better. And, um, but I, I, I cannot stress enough that the plot is non-functional. And that's unfortunate. Um, and I'd, I'd go as far as to say this is like a guilty pleasure of mine. And there's there's definitely, you know, even the character stuff isn't like immaculate because of Harley. Well, if you want to, so. if we get memes out and then I want to do the exact same thing again, but on the yeah. um, good old feels train. I want to see where everyone rates it, how much mm -hmm. they get out of it personally. But meme, go ahead. Yeah, um, well... I'd say, you know, it took me a while to just kind of like separate the emotion from like the critical analysis because obviously I was on an emotional high when I first saw this. But having now sit, sat down and uh, really examined things, um, gone through all the plot issues um, and how everything kind of feeds into everything else. Um, I think at the beginning of this, I was sitting between a five and a six. And while my heart wants to say a six, I will say definitely... Um, uh, I'll, I'm going to go with a five, um, just because I feel like that's probably the most intellectually honest answer I can give. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's where I'm sitting at the moment. Um, now, you're about to say we're moving on to the feels. Before we do, the person who super chatted about how we were wrong said five out of ten at best, so I expect an apology from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Pretty, and, what, and, what did we say? Uh, when we, I thought we all said these numbers when we started, didn't we? Mostly. I, I thought we I, all said, I said these, five we after start... we watched it, yeah. And, and mm -hmm. of course, the recording of the EFAP movies will vindicate us if there's any doubt. That was basically the sentiment we at were, the time. We were, yeah, reacting very strongly to the bad shit that was very visible in this film. Um, I, uh, I forgot what I was, was uh, going to say, so fuck it. Well, um, if... You know, you, you guys can elaborate as much as you want as soon as the seven have, have had their say, right? Give me a number out of ten for for feels. Where does it rank for you when you're watching this on your your own personal meter? And as much as you can ignore anything that you recognize as issues, you just want to go, you know what, I just, I'm having some fun. Evan, go! Probably a seven. Uh, do, do you want me to elaborate? Or nope. Just... Okay, there we go. <laughs> I, do, I don't even have to say names. I was hoping this would just go boom, 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 boom. So let's let's try. We can do it. I'm sure. Seven. Awesome. <laughs> Come on, Frankie. Frankie, you're you can do it. Frankie, you're next. In terms of the feels, I'm like at a at an eight. I think. Mine's I really eight. like this movie. Eight. Seven point five. No. Oh. Eight. Eight. Oh, there you go. wow! Fucking hell. <laughs> 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 Like the, the the thing that's dragging down the enjoyment for me is just the stuff with Harley. Absolutely, um, that's that's exactly what I was considering yeah. in my head. I was yeah, like, I can't honestly a... go higher than an eight because I actually get it frustrated when I see her scene start. I'm like, for fuck's sake, here we go. And I can I can enjoy Tismy action that doesn't hold up. Like I can still in like there's aspects to it where like well it's it's shot clearly. I can tell what's going on for better or for worse. Um, it's edited well. The choreography has the surface level, like it looks cool, like like on a, on a surface level sort of thing. I can see why it might impress someone that doesn't care about like the actual the stakes of the scenes. Um, um, I think an interesting comparison would be like you know watching Rick Flag run to cover and getting missing all the bullets around him. That stuff yeah. on rewatches I can sort of get through. However, if Peacemaker were to be shooting and missing, it would frustrate the hell out of me. I'd be like, no, no, he shouldn't mm -hmm. be missing. That shouldn't be happening. And well, like, it's funny. In some ways, that can be the, the difference in terms of plot armor. Well, it's funny. Like, uh, yeah, you've got... Like, actually, so yeah, we were, we were wrong to say that there wasn't a single like fight scene that didn't work. Uh, it's Peacemaker versus Rick Flagg. That's the... The that's the, the worst, best fight yeah. in the yeah. film. That's the that's, that's the, the good one. And thank fuck because that's like one of the most. That's the one you need to get right if you're gonna get one right. Like, because it's mm -hmm. oof. You need them both to be behaving as they should for that all to work the way that it does. Mm -hmm. Um, and in a you know I don't know if you could call it a fight, but Bloodsport versus Peacemaker um goes the way that I think it probably should have with who those two are. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, you know, it is, um, it's it's interesting. So much plot armor in this movie, and yet I was terrified they would kill my favorite characters at all moments. I was. I mm -hmm. was worried people I liked would die, and I hoped things would turn out well for people, and I was really kind of invested, and I was nervous in a way. Um, it was kind of nice watching a superhero movie where I feel that way. Um, but yeah, Any, anything else anyone else nice thought well, oh, I, I appreciate I appreciate this film uh, is like a great, well, not great. It stands on its own very well. It doesn't rely on seeing any of the other DCEU movies. Like, I could see myself owning this on Blu-ray and just enjoying it as a standalone story. <laughs> um, I'm going to jump ahead with this one. Super Chat just came in and said, I don't see how the plot doesn't function. It's just plot armor allowing characters to live that's egregious. Fixing it with better choreography wouldn't change how the plot is written which works okay. So when someone is shot at and should die but doesn't, we've now entered a different universe where like they did survive somehow and we do that with every fucking bullet fired and so now your plot is in tatters already. That's how that works. Um, the plot line, if you will, is what's that? what that's running on. And we have about 100,000 instances of that in this film. Um, the idea of, well, they still would have gone to the island, they still would have tried to blow up Jotunheim, so the plot still works. Like, yeah, every film works under that logic. I don't understand what we're talking about at that point. The the intricacies and the details of how the plots work, uh, like that's all we talk about. Yeah, doesn't yeah, so like, like some kind of plot armor. What like 
what uh, happens what happens if the character doesn't have plot armor and dies as they should that kind of drastically changes the outcome of yep. the story doesn't it you might say the plot would be very maybe different. the confusion is because they said functional in terms of like what makes a story functional how would you say that a story like functions maybe that's where the confusion was coming from and how you would how you would classify something as functional or non-functional i would argue this is this dysfunctional as a plot line though Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's not typically mm -hmm. something you're going to hear elaborated on often when it comes to stories, when someone actually says it is non-functional and here's the criteria for a functioning story. Now, I've said it too much now to where it doesn't <laughs> even feel like a real word. Um, I, I feel like Southwell's already nailed it. The whole, like, it's, it's non-functional the second they should be dead and they aren't. And then we get, like, a million instances of that. So you just, you times non-functional to the nth degree, and it's like, so this is way worse than even that we usually have in movies. Um, under um, that logic, the plot of yeah. almost every single action movie ever is in tatters. Um, welcome to EFAP. Uh, <laughs> yep. First welcome off... EFAP. Most things are bad. First off, um, not, so you say almost every single action movie. I'm hoping that you know, it's like that's probably true. You understand that there's exceptions. That, well, it's probably true. There, uh, uh, almost every, if also, we're looking at every single action movie ever made, it's probably like ninety percent a non-functional under the definition that plot armor fucks up everything. Correct. Correct. But then you get ones like Mission Impossible Fallout that hold up really, really well. Yeah. No. And and Extraction does a relatively good job. There is there is pieces in it, but this is what we talk about with scaling it. Like this mm -hmm. this movie has some of the worst levels of plot armor in anything ever. Black Widow so, probably still outclasses this, but I mean that's a fucking low bar. <laughs> like, like so, so like how many? Was... Well, go, go ahead, Evan. Oh, so um, so how many instances of closing the distance are in Extraction versus how many instances of that are in this, The Dark Knight Rises, um, Black Widow, well, yeah, Winter Soldier? It's if you go abstract in your head and you you see that plot plot line. And you go, you you cut out. You put like you took take a scissors to that line and snip for every time a bullet is fired and should have killed somebody, or an instance like that. Snip, 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 snip. As you go along with the timeline, this movie, you, like I said, you end up with tatters. In other movies, you've got a couple of snips, and you're like, eh. it's 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 broken, but like you know, it's there's still big long chunks that still exist, and we can still praise that. Well, it, it um. I know that it's a meme that I bring up Star Man 2 all the time, even though I don't, but in the bank fight, when uh, there's like three security guards that close the distance on, on Doc Ock, yeah, that's dumb. That's also the, th the only three instances of closing the distance in that entire film. Um, it's not the only thing wrong with the bank fight, and so it's worth pointing out as like part of a, a yeah. pileup of the issues in that scene. However, uh, compared to most movies, Star Man 2 holds up pretty well if you just count the instances of closing the distance and uh two clarifications one from someone saying including when bullets aren't fired when they probably should be it's like yeah that's included as well and mm -hmm. um guys i never said i disagree with that assessment i've literally been here for years that's totally fine i'm just i all i did was read what you say and like flatly it sounds like you're saying it's an absurd standard because all action movies fail when i would say the great ones don't yeah yeah again people do yeah. miss real life having every single time when someone could have died but didn't be a flaws a little bit much there can be explanations for that we don't count literally every single um, missed bullet can be reasonable misses yeah so um yeah there's loads of instances of this throughout all kinds of movies uh where someone if someone it'll depend literally on what gun they're using who they are and what the distance like we'll take everything into a factor if you've got like we mm -hmm. said if one guy was shooting at blood sport with a rifle and he was sort of kind of hip firing or just sort of firing without necessarily aiming and he fires, let's say, 15 bullets. And if the film says he wasn't hit once, I'd be like, um, yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe. It's, it's yeah. possible. It's just... If it's some Randy from this probably not really well-trained military in the middle of the... And what we want is like a 50% plus. That's when we're, we're golden in terms of like, is it more likely he wouldn't have been shot? And you're like, like, so say someone's just got a pistol and they shoot once from that distance. You'd be like, yeah, I doubt they're going to hit him be real yeah, tough. It would be strange if they did hit. We'd, com we'd probably Yeah, exactly. It goes both ways. You're right. <laughs> um, so if we were like all like instances of plot armor in this, um, and then it's just like left up to whether uh, the um, decisions that are being made uh, make sense. Um, not like 
character decisions, but like the plot in general, outside of the plot armor, what would we be rating this film? Mm, interesting question. Like the plot wise, I mean. Sorry, what was Why, your question? Yeah, say that again. Yeah. So okay, how how would we rate the plot if we removed all instances of, of plot armor, and then all that's left are basically just your standard contrivances and holes. So we still we still got the the transceivery comms stuff happening. We still got yes. there's a couple of decisions from certain factions and characters that are a little mm -hmm. dumb considering what they could have done that relates specifically to killing people, but none of them necessarily include our main characters for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, the bad AI inside of the insurgent camp, would that be plot armor or would that just be plot? So, I guess that has to be that they're all... It's all it's critical of every one of those people individually. It's like a, each one of them is fucking deaf or extra, incredibly stupid. Like, you have to try and find a way of categorizing that as a flaw. Because it... In a sense, it's plot armor in that all of them are unaware of our heroes constantly, which is incredibly useful to our heroes. Um, it could just be a categorization issue of trying to figure out where it sits. But if you remove plot armor, this film, like, the flaws in the plot definitely, like, fucking 80% of them probably get erased. Now, uh, yeah. what about, like, let's say you have uh, an actor driving a motorcycle that then crashes into a car and they get flung from the motorcycle and they are not wearing a helmet, but the actor that's playing the character actually did the stunt for real. Is that plot armor or is it easier Again, you're looking to... at likelihoods. So for example, everyone wants to bring up whenever you're shot that someone could survive that. If you're in a car crash, you could survive it. Like you could, 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 it's just like a matter, I think Frank brought up when we were doing Black Widow, he was like, there's only so many times before you've basically capped out your health bar and then we're like, you died. Um, but then sometimes a thing happens where you're just like, no, that on its own should have killed you. Um, even mm -hmm. if someone theoretically, like, survives it and some astronaut, like, like for every thousand people that have it done, one survives, meaning it's okay if they survive it. It's just like, that's incredibly lucky. Mm -hmm. just, and then you um, just have, like, you can have a couple of instances where it's like, well, I guess that's reasonable for a person to the, survive. Again. Yeah, the majority of plot armor is um, probability. It's not holes. Like, like as in, the only hole we found, I think, through all of this, right, was um, Starro killing uh, Peacemaker. That should have happened. There's no way he can escape that because of the way that it was shot. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, a fucking 40 guards all missing blood sport. It's like, yeah, I guess that is possible. It is possible that that could happen. Fucking unlikely, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's plot armor if it strains your capacity to suspend disbelief. It's inherently a subjective metric. Nope. What? No. Nope. No. It's well, The funny part is, I, I think they've missed this. So, we don't actually factor it in as much as you may think we do in our enjoyment level. But we can't deny it when we're trying yeah. to be as objective as possible. This shit exists. It if I said to these guys about the fucking bad AI scene, it didn't really bother me though. I think you'd all be very fucking confused. Be like, I didn't ask if it bothered you. And I'd be like, yeah, no, I'm just saying it doesn't bother me, so can we talk about something else? Like, <laughs> no. Not asking whether or not this stuff yeah. bothers you specifically. It exists. It is describable. This is something... A human being has ears. When someone screams as they die two meters away from them, they will notice. Well, a dude once took four bullets to the head and lived. Then make a movie about that dude and <laughs> tell that story, all right? And then we'll be okay with that, you know, you know that dude is still fucking lucky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you know, uh Gettysburg, all right? Evan knows this uh this one. Um Jeff Daniels seemingly gets struck by a bullet on Little Round Top because he's the guy leading the twentieth Maine. And uh you think that he's been he's been killed or badly injured. And then he lifts up his uh, saber's scabbard, and it's bent because it actually uh, took the impact of the bullet and saved him. And that actually happened to that person in real life. You can go, yeah, that's lucky, but they're depicting something that actually happened in this event. Can be described does not mean it isn't subjective, but good try. If that was my only criteria, that would be a boon, but it wasn't, <laughs> so bye. Um... <laughs> but yeah, that's 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 the Suicide Squad. I was gonna say I don't know if there's anything else you guys wanted to talk about. I really you know, fucking honestly, liked it, and I never thought I'd say that about a DCEU film. 
I think. Yeah, I'm really, thorough. really glad that this happened and that we yeah. watched it. Really, uh, really glad I saw it. I'm gonna I see it in the theater means... at some point. Yeah, I, I um, thought it means it was a great experience. Experience. The future. Dare I? Dare I go further than a lot of you? I think this is like one of my favorite movies in a while uh, for new stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah same here. Yeah. Really yeah. enjoyed it. And I'm not. I mean, as it's been said a few times, if this was as bad as it gets, that's I'm okay with oh, that. Oh, what a world! Yeah, <laughs> I would the bottom of the DCU, we, we, we would be right laughing. Now. Yeah, and it's so interesting too because. I feel like this is a movie where we'd be like most people are going to be annoyed at us for our take on this, aren't they? Because we're going to be Debbie Downers about the plot. But no, this is a, an incredibly divisive film. I've seen people hate the fuck out of this film. It's like, oh damn, yeah. why? And you've also got the yeah. Snyder people who are like, fuck this movie for existing. It's Warner Brothers turning their back on Snyder. And it's like, all right. You've got people saying like all of the comedy falls flat as fuck. And, and it's just like an embarrassing movie that like wants to be several things, but it's just a jumbled mess tonally and blah, blah, blah. You got, you got people who are like, the character work is like, just, just just not very good. It can't hold up for the rest of the floors and stuff. And it's just like, yeah, okay, I, I didn't see it coming. I thought people would have liked this. I think I, I say in the recording um, at the end of it, it's just like, I was surprised by, like, it's a lot better than I thought it would be, considering a lot of the hate I'd seen for it. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of what I th think we said it was going to be before it came out. We, we were like, it's probably going to have good characters. Don't know about the plot, though. We'll, we'll have to we'll have to see about that, because... Mm -hmm. This this applies to James Gunn. Um, uh, what am I struggling? Uh, uh, Taika Waititi and well, and Joss Whedon to be fair, and the Russos. Um, so all of their best work a lot of the time have really shitty plots or plots that are just not as well thought out compared to the characters. I um I finally remembered what it was I was gonna say before I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so I, my my brain is just lagging today. Um, when I say this is like a five out of ten. Now, five out of ten usually connotates like it's just average. It's it's like it's fine, you know. Um, but like I said, it's a mixed bag. There's terrible stuff in this, but there's also really great stuff in this. And I would recommend watching it and sitting through the terrible stuff in this because what is great is worth experiencing. Um, well, that's, that's, I would I would recommend it on the off chance it works for you. If this one works for you, you'll have yeah. a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I yeah. really would recommend it as well. There is legit good stuff here, and I think you should appreciate it. I had one person who couldn't get through the first 10 minutes, even with their girlfriend, and I don't really understand that person, but, you know, vis-a-vis. -vis -vis. Well, Maybe the first 10 minutes I can understand. Why? What do you mean, because of the goal? I guess because he lost Weasel. Well, for, yeah, that's one thing. Some people hmm. like are legit turned off by gore, and they don't want to, you know, and I can understand that. Um, and maybe there's an aspect of people want a safe movie. People don't want a movie where they're worrying about people dying horribly all the time. You know, I, I can see why some people would really not enjoy that. And they just want to really have a nice, easy viewing experience. Um, I think that's fair. Uh, it was the opposite for me. The, the intro had me engaged because I was like, nobody's safe. Woohoo. I can actually feel the experience of caring for people that... It's weird looking back on the 2016 one. It's like, who died in that? It's like Slipknot. And Diablo <laughs> at the end. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. I, um, I think that I would have liked it a little bit more had the deaths been a little bit more spread out throughout the movie. Um, but I can't say that what we had with the beach... Well, so the beach scene is, has a lot of issues, but what they were going for with... Uh, killing off most of the Suicide Squad in the very beginning, that works just fine as well. It's, it's one of those things where you have less characters to work with that you can develop tighter, whereas if you brought characters along to basically kill them later on, it might make it so that development's yeah. wasted. So I kind of see why they did that, but it, it could have gone both ways, basically. You know so, what I will say, though, is if only... Katana were, were in this movie, then Rick Flagg probably would have made it, because she had his back after all. She did. I think so. Uh, someone said, nobody is did. safe, and then everyone has plot armor until Gunn decides they don't. So, you've just described how nobody is safe. Yeah, when the plot armor is that <laughs> inconsistent, it's... I mean, it's it's like it's the opposite end of it, but still functionally yeah. the same. It's a it's I I agree it's with the weird. chatter. It's that got it's, a horseshoe it, on it. It's a bizarre fucking concept, but it's true. You have so much plot armor in this, and yet I care that these characters could die at any moment. It is it is bizarre, but that's how it works because there's so much plot armor and so much killing. 
Well, you, you like don't we know. Were, we were like never worried about the characters in Black Widow. Um, no, no. However, however, King Shark, man, I was exactly. about to fucking lose my mind. I, as over I said earlier, legitimately worried. James Gunn could have killed him, and I would have. I could believe that's something James Gunn would do. And I, I been fucking I, sad. I think I would have been sobbing. It's just not straight into my mind. I would have had. Yeah. I would have had to mute. I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> and yet Milton, like man. A... Milton didn't have any plot armor, did he? No. Nope. Yeah. Best character. Most consistent, by far. <laughs> I just liked his arc. That's, yeah. I don't need to ex describe it. You guys all got it. Delivered food. Uh, and I was getting so emotional when I saw them walking towards Starro, knowing that they were probably going to die because... That's what heroes do, and it was good seeing heroes in this universe for and, once. Yeah, well, you know, people have said, like, it's better than DCU and it's better than uh, Marvel Phase 4, and I'm like, that does a disservice to this film, I think, saying it's better than all of them. It's like, well, yes. It's, <laughs> like, that doesn't really describe the quality you've got here, I would say. No, it doesn't. It's um, one very uh, limited facet of it compared to the whole. I want to I wanna actually emphasize something here. Milton literally died so that Harley Quinn could have some funny lines. Like, that is such a noble <laughs> sacrifice. Yeah, I, I oh, cannot understate that. Is that a no, noble man. sacrifice? I, I would say it's a very selfless sacrifice to... to I don't know if he had a choice. <laughs> well, no, we like no. to believe that he did. I'm sure if you he got his, knew. I'm sure he if definitely you asked knew. his opinion. That is my headcanon. He, he knew. He knew that, like, oh, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to die and then... Harley Quinn is going to actually say something funny this time. She'll say a few things that are funny, even. And then she'll be inspired by my sacrifice, and she'll put her own life at risk to help King Shark when the, the Clyraxes are, are trying to eat him. And yeah, by the way, for, for people who character. have noticed, uh, we haven't really had a strong sort of concrete five to refer to for the scale, but I feel like this is going to be that movie now. In future, when yeah. people are like, you always say things are terrible or amazing, we'll be like, oh yeah? We said the Suicide Squad is slap bang in the middle, so how about that? I mean, it's honestly a good example of a poor plot, but great characters, and how that can, like, kind of. Might just even be out. the example, you know? Mixed yeah, bag. Oh boy, what a mixed bag it is. Yeah. It's like a mixed bag of dicks. Yeah. Got, got really. Big ones, little ones, some that fall apart instantly, but some to, hold up. You get to to eat an entire bag of dicks to get a an entertaining movie with likable characters. You know, I'd eat every single dick in that bag. In that bag. Yeah, mm. it's because you're a hero, and that's what heroes do. Exactly. Yeah, I would I would do it for for good writing. Wasn't Underwater a five out of ten? What did we give Underwater? I can't remember. I, I thought you guys said it was like a six. Would... Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember I'm fine. I think that one was pretty was definitely higher than average, which uh, was think, higher than a five. Yeah, I think we gave it a six. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, so, I think yeah. so. Yeah, that's another movie you guys should see is Underwater. Yeah, I still need to see I that like underwater. underwater quite a bit. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, there's, good there was stuff. lots of fun in that movie. Good stuff. Um, yeah, um, I guess I shall begin reading super chats. But uh, no reading as per usual, I shall offer this as an as an uh, exit point for anybody if you've got lives to get on with because it is we are six hours and 40 minutes in but at the same time you're also welcome to stay i'll i'll, I'll chill for a bit still i'm, I'm, I'm all stick hanging around. Uh -oh. um i'll i'll Best hang and do some worst. work at the same time uh oh um, i'll be around so I, I actually saw this happen on one of i think nid streams where it like glitches up and stops you from Oof, this was like the one time I didn't have it running automatically, so now I'm like... Mm? Oh no! It basically, like, it doesn't let you load them up, the past Super Chats. Oh. You could go into the VOD and read them, kind of just scroll through. Mm. Um, that You can go backwards in the stream, so you could do that. You should be okay if I do that, actually. I should be able to stream it. I was about to say, I can stream it on low resolution. It's like, well, then I can't fucking read them. <laughs> <So let's... laughs> um, we'll make up the super chats as we go. Okay, I'm gonna try that. Um, I'll put it on, like, two times speed so that I can just pause whenever I reach one. But this is fucking unfortunate. Um, 
Yeah, because if you if you go see all, it just doesn't load anything. Oh man, there's gotta be some other fucking way I can do this. YouTube. I kind of just so, I am. Um, if you use the arrow keys, you could like just go. D -d 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 oh, there's one because the well, chat. That's would, not. Would still... That's not a problem. Like I said, I can put it on two times speed. We'll be fine on that regard. I just I, I don't know if yeah. it's gonna affect my the stream at all to watch the stream back. I should be should be okay. Um, yeah, I will do my best to simply like just right. I'm gonna start using the arrow key. Come on, it's gotta be. There's the first one. It says hi rags. <laughs> <laughs> oh hi. <laughs> We did it, everybody. <laughs> we found the first um, one. Good start. <laughs> okay, scanning, scanning. <laughs> when Rags speaks Australian, my ween gets bigger. Also, hi, Rags. Ooh, hello. Wow, you didn't say the your famous hello? Australian line. No. Do it. No. I just said it. No, I meant. So, Rags' famous Australian line is yeah. No. Oh, right. No. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Um, Goodell bat? That's not a loin. No, that's a loin. Dude, no. Molson bagel nut. Bagel nugs? Oh. I get it. Good old Hassan. Bagel nugs. Hi, Raggy. Hi, long man. Hello. Hello. Love the... The Suicide Squad themed profiles. Oh, yeah, no, they're, they're fucking just yeah. wonderful. Yeah, Nimlex, uh, once again delivering like quality fan art for Beautiful. us to use in our ACU arc. I I improperly credited um Kara for the the Justice League ones and I, I felt really bad about it. In fact I made sure I made sure to name drop Nimlex uh during the EFAP movies on the Suicide Squad and You uh, paid him an exposure? <laughs> I, I paid him an exposure. That's right. I'm I'm just like a son. Um I love the film though it's a Tismy four out of ten IMO. Can't wait to hear what y'all thought. Well, I'd be curious after the conversation, uh, Dread, if you yeah. feel the same way or not. I don't know. I might probably, probably do. I don't know. But uh, I, I, I think we busted it up, lifted it up one for you. Well, maybe yeah, we, I, we I, bopped I, it down. Who it's knows? It's reasonable. I think I think that a four is like it's still a reasonable rating for the film. I, just, I think so too. I, I I bumped it up to a five because there was more good stuff in it than I realized. Well, I think um, there are enough problems in it that you could like make an unbridled rage out of it. Like, there's plenty to complain about. Totally. Totally. Um, I would only... The wonder I have with stuff like that is just, like, did you see the good stuff in it to that person? I'd just be like, did you see the stuff that is, like, running on cause and effect? There's a lot of stuff in there that's working, and I'd just be curious if they factored it in or not. Or if they think, like, there's enough flaws that it just fucking counters whatever you're pulling out of mm -hmm. it that's good. I don't know. Possible. Um, I'm guessing the plot is flawed, but I love the characters. Yeah, that's pretty much where we're at. Um, basically our take. Yep. It's the base uh, take. Yep. Pretty, also, uh, pretty spot on. has anyone seen Succession? It's a brilliant show. Season 3 soon. Nope. It's not. Oh, no, I've never heard of it. Succession. Never heard of that? No. Um, oh, and that was just a heart. That's nice. Oh, oh. This is kind of, this is the weirdest way I've done super chats ever. Like, mm -hmm. Just tap in the keys. Uh, play Majora's Mask, you waffles. Also, hello, Mr. Rags. Oh, hello. Um, maybe maybe at some point Majora's Mask. I, I mean, I wonder if a Zelda game is not suitable for someone like Super Chat Catcher because I'll have to like think on the puzzles and stuff because like, yeah. I haven't actually played it before. The Mad Lads finally oh. did it. They made a better than three out of ten movie. Never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, all it took was James Gunn and complete well, com creative control, and he was able well, to do who, it. Who knows? Maybe they already did it with Shazam, and we just haven't gotten to that one yet. Because that that one's that one's next. Uh, I wonder if James Gunn knows we exist. Given this film literally has good rat, he must be a fan. That's the only way you can explain Clearly. that. Yeah, he's contractually not allowed to, you know, say it. But yeah. Um, so, ear scritch, pet, belly rub, applied to German Shepherd, Golden Retriever, and Newfoundland. Newfoundland, I think, is the pronunciation. Oh, is it? No. Okay. Is it? Newfoundland, you... yeah. I mean, I've... Newfoundland. It's spelt Foundland, but I have not heard it pronounced, so... Oh, Newfoundland, I, th I think. I'm looking... Hold on. Newfoundland, yeah. That's it. Go to, go to Google. 
I mean, sure. <laughs> I, I don't have an investment in this. Um, so like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, what were the three options? Eastridge, Pet, and Belly Rub. They said you could substitute in Fuck, Marry, Kill, but I feel like that would be weird. <laughs> For a German Shepherd. Golden Retriever, New Finland, if that's right. Boromir gets um, killed by a banana in the Lord of the we Rings want to Lego do an, game. We want to do a scritch for the German Shepherd, a pet for the new Finned Foundland, and the uh, belly rub for the Golden Retriever. Also high ranks. Hello. Hola, Senor Ragleton. Hello. Um, what are you guys' takes on the rampant goblin phobia going on these days? <laughs> Disgusting. I, I, am, I Disgusting. for one, support it. I'm pro-goblin uh, phobia. <laughs> I, I feel like hashtag not all goblins. I'm going to go there. I feel like hashtag enough goblins, so... Wow. We're gonna we're gonna go there. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, let's do like a better. Time. Wait, what? Better. Um. So instead of better red than dead, I'm trying to do one with green. <laughs> better. Um. Mean than green. Yeah. Better mean than green. <laughs> Someone in chat said they know what they did. <laughs> they do. Don't let them tell you did. otherwise. Quick. Anyone else answer except Fringy? Where would you rather live, Australia or Canada? Canada. Uh Probably Canada. Canada. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, right next door. Canada. 21st state. I like how did mean. Did you just say Canada as well? <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. But at the moment, yes, Canada is looking appealing. Um, and what would you rather fight? Polar bear or honey badger? Uh, honey badger. Honey badger. I think I, yeah, you, fuck, have you? Polar well, bears are the only bears that aren't scared of humans. I'll have you know. Presumably, the honey badger can be dangerous, but like it's a polar bear, so I'll take my chances with the badger. Yeah, I'll yeah, take the not yeah. polar bear. Yes, the, the polar oh, bear. If the you were trying to mock bear. this, dude, you gotta like disengage from internet politics. If you what, unironically what's think what was Marxist? Canada and Australia are turning Marxist. <laughs> like, th th this is very much a matter of you need to stop with just internet politics. Well, are they and, like, are they more Marxist this week than they were last? This week, week than last week. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta. Do Seems like we could see a trend, Fringy. It's turning. I you mean, could say technically, well, if, always... if if it gets even point five point zero one percent Marxister, it is technically turning Marxist. I'm still by the, with if, the honey badgers. What's happening? If there is a 0. 0.0001% <laughs> chance of it turning Marxist, we have to treat that as an absolute certainty. Yes. They are, though, dude, it, dude, the conservative government is currently in government in Australia. Like, I don't know it's what I'm meant position. to say. That. Maybe the conservatives are communists. Maybe that is yeah, their official they're... position. Yeah, maybe that's their official yeah. position. Uh, yeah, they know what they're doing. Watching this movie made me realize that Idris Elba is a heavily underutilized actor, and I hope it gets fixed by him being in the next Bond. Um, yeah, I've seen the sentiment mm -hmm. that it's a pity he feels like he's been discovered a little too late. It's, he probably had right, a shit ton he could have done. Now. Yeah. Like, yeah, in his late 20s to early 40s, yeah, no. he could have done a shit ton of different things. He's a fucking great actor. We still got a really few is. years, right? Yeah, well, he, <laughs> can still, he can still do some more blood sport, right? Yeah. Yeah. Look, if Stallone and Schwarzenegger can, can still do fucking action flicks, I I, I think this will be fine. My concern is like, where do you take the character from here? And I, I'm not saying that's yes. impossible to explore him further. I'm just like me and Fringy speculated a whole movie for him that we want to hmm. see. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would see it. I would totally see it. Um, There's I'm so just... much stuff. I, I don't want to go into it because it's just it's like maybe we'll come back and peacemaker. But, uh, oh. Can can he please be paired up with Ratcatcher? I want to see more of him with Ratcatcher too. Yes. And Weasel. That would be great. And Weasel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bring back Weasel in every film. Ever. Weasel will be like cannon fodder. Like he'll just like run across the battlefield. Oh, 
<laughs> with his like, weird little run, and then Bloodsport we'll see, kills the people that are shooting at Weasel. I think of the subversion. If, for example, a The Suicide Squad 2 ever existed, and Weasel was back on the new team, I picture it would be, again, kind of a goofier intro, but that he's in more of his element, and he's unleashed on the enemy, and he just fucking slaughters, like, a whole group of soldiers or something, yeah. and we're just like, oh we my god. We want to see what they were hoping would happen yeah. the first time. Um, what do you guys think about Margot Robbie's um, performance as Harley, aside from the movies not being good, high rags? I mean, she's a talented actress when she's not given, you know, crap material. Yeah, yeah like so when, when I saw her in the trailer, I, suppose, well, I was like, wow, like what a talented actress and actually sort of like playing a character here. They just, the problem is they just didn't do anything with it. It's not her. I suppose the question mm -hmm. then is like, how well do you think she performs the shitty, you know, content that she's provided and it's like it's i think she puts question. full effort into it i think she yeah it's not her oh. fault i'll say that oh milton milton <laughs> <laughs> her I mean, delivery was so she's good got, with that line she's got an incredible set of facial expressions and like yep. when she's called upon to you know tear up and deliver like things seriously this, this, i can't help but think it's the writers not giving her a proper chance that she's ready and waiting but um yep. yeah yeah any I don't rough edges she had in original Suicide Squad have basically been ironed out at this point, so it's all on the writers. Yeah, and, and it's not even like, because if I see her in some other property, I am going to be like, oh, for fuck's sake, but it's going to do with Margot Robbie, really. It's just what I expect yeah, they'll have I written don't... her as. I don't blame her. Um, and, it, and I wouldn't recast her because it's not her. That's the problem. I'm not mm -hmm. changing what the problem is. Mm -hmm. Gotta fix that script. Gotta fix that script. A fun movie, but uh, Harley and her plot armor. It's not just Harley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, if it were yeah. just Harley, we'd have a lot less to talk about arbor-wise. But uh, yeah, true. Really enjoyed this film, barring clunky exposition and plot in general. Capaldi was a highlight, and I'm glad I predicted your reaction slash takes to this. P.S. First super chat to y'all, so thanks, Longoids. Well, thank you. And, um, mm -mm. Yeah, I feel as though if you know how we break stuff down and that you're very much aware of how much we value not just plot, but also like character consistency, you probably could have drawn that we'd give this what we've given Yeah, them. this shouldn't really confuse you or surprise you. And I think we've elaborated well enough on many of the good things and many of the bad things that have it land right <laughs> in the middle. So in chat. Socialism is an evil faith-based cult of death. Like... <laughs> ah, so I see that the politics discussion has continued. That is entirely 100% correct. I, I it's agree. just hilarious because it's like the plot of the movie, socialism, evil faith-based cult of death. Uh, <laughs> and like, throw it in. Well, someone said, Rags, what did you totally. think of Margot Robbie's feet? I need to know this. Is this all, is this all because I said I prefer to live though. in Canada right now? I think so, yeah, yeah. Shouldn't have said oh, that. damn. Yeah, they're both oh, mobs. Yeah. <laughs> that was your first mistake. Okay. Um, okay. So you gotta just go jump, move it to the ocean. There's only like fish out there, and they just they're just they're non-political fish. <laughs> they are oh, apolitical fish. Yes. You, you talk to the fish like, what do you think about immigration? And the fish is like, I don't have an opinion on that. I don't. <laughs> I, I eat food and, and breathe water. That's my life. I think immigration like, is both immigration. good and bad. How's the weather in Atlantis this time of year? No, nothing. I thought it was pretty good. It's it's nothing because there is no weather here. It's just water. I guess there would be weather in the ocean, right? It would be like differing yeah, currents yeah. and temperatures and stuff like that. There's got to be. Yeah. 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 Just, just to be clear, I, I said swim immigration so that you know, I think I just wanted everyone to know. For those who missed it, I thought it was pretty good. So immigration is actually it, that's pretty good. Yeah, there you go. It's <laughs> it's funny, but not ha ha funny. Yeah, it's like ah oh, okay yeah, yeah yeah it's it's neat. That's all I need. Fucking wait, Canada. There's loads of people now, like angrily arguing against each other in chat. It's like hey. Stop with the politics, that, because there's clearly people who are fans of EFAP who both hate and think socialism's okay, so now we've got <laughs> claws out. Right. Go back to talking about superheroes and their laser beams. Gosh darn it. <laughs> I'm always lost in the politics. I'm a retard in that regard. I was like, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do, 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 do. Um, uh, movie, Kakum. Just started watching EFAP. <laughs> Can you believe this Jared fellow? Can't wait to see where this goes. 
<laughs> that's, that's like season one shit, man. Yeah, enjoy. Now that was ha ha funny. Speaking of happy endings. Mm. All right. Cool. Evan, where's your The Suicide Squad relevant profile picture? Tsk, tsk, Monroe. Well, there you go. There it is. It was, I hope it was got right on later, that, man. During, yeah, like during the stream, and it looks great. It's, yeah. Thank props. Yeah, it's. I just want to say it's awesome that he was like available to do this. Yeah. Like he was, like yeah. he wasn't caught up at work or something. It's it's, Nimlex. Thank you. You were you were on it today, buddy. You, you got, not just me repository, but Evan as well. Yeah. yeah. I'm so. I kind of want to put this next to the Martian meme hunter one actually in some kind of. <laughs> They're really good. I'm so sick of the MCU's depressing tone that I literally want the next Avengers to win with the power of friendship. <laughs> well, dude. I want them to navigate the universe with friendship. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, great. It's gonna be weird when the they finally get around to making an Avengers movie because everything is so in flux right now. First of all, what the ensemble would even be, but secondly, just uh, how people are generally worried right now is like, is Shang Chi gonna flop? Is it possible, considering what it I might? It's like it's... apparently the uh, the box office projections are um low for uh, for an MCU film. And if that flops, and if Eternals flops, they're surely going to be like, we need to rethink what we're doing for our release plan and budgets. They're going to blame Asian hate. Well, they'll, my words. They'll blame all kinds of things. Uh, like um, um, I imagine they'll blame COVID mainly. Yeah. But... Um. Yeah, you, you do get, like, I'm you do not get, actually sure where that I well, maybe, so but like I imagine I it would be mostly COVID. I don't know what Rags referencing specifically, but I assume it might be close to like that whole you know Charlie's Angels. They blamed like men don't want to see women in right. movies or whatever. You could expand that to other things, but yeah, like it's. I think COVID would be the main issue. Lockdowns would be the main issue, and um, I guess the ritual of going maybe, to the cinema seems to have been damaged probably by now. I think so. Yeah. And then, of course, while. there's also just the element of, like, you would imagine that Shang-Chi would make less than, like, Thor or something, because it's, like, a new character. It'd be, like, Ant-Man well, numbers, probably. You, you're correct for two reasons. One, it's a brand new character, but two, like, when you watch the trailers for something like Iron Man, you, you can get what we're gonna be in for. This guy makes weapons, he sells them, he gets into a bit of trouble, he decides to start making weapons to destroy the people who are using his weapons to kill people, or whatever. You're like, okay. That seems like it could be interesting. Shang-Chi is like, I used to, I was like, I had a harsh upbringing with my dad, and then he let me go, and now he's back, and I wanna, I guess I gotta fight people who are trying to get me back into his sort of, th and I'm just like, what the f I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think it's, like, go away. Even the name, though, even the name Shang-Chi, because it's, we we're saying Shang, it's Shang-Chi, so already there'll be a lot of probably confusion there. shang And the legend of the Chen, and the legend of the Ching Ten Chong. Rings, it's like, that's a... That's a long name for a film. That's also like not six, even rings. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings? There's only like six rings on the poster. I was very confused. Yeah, I noticed that oh, too. What's are there only that? six? Oh. Asians are supposed are to be good put, at math. Yeah. I thought you'd put ten rings on there if it's called <laughs> ten rings. No. I just assumed there were ten. You guys, <laughs> you, you guys are thinking with your lizard brains. There what? could be all kinds of reasons for that. Maybe there were ten and four of them got eaten or something. You don't know. Maybe it should have been called ten chi Exactly. Like one post I saw, there was like, there was like flinging around or something. I don't know. Yeah, he's shooting him around or something. It's, yeah, it looks like some weird crazy. shit, dude. Not only is it gonna be weird shit with those rings, it's gonna be generic. It's gonna be like lasers and and levitation. Shang and Chi yeah, and well, the Legend of Chechen Trings. <laughs> and um, I mean, oh, I'm pretty sure. Does Shang Chi even like? Is that even something that he can do? Wield rings? I thought he was just really good at like. He was just a martial artist. This is why I hate rings. This is why I hate Fringy. Judging the film before it's even out, terrible. You can put rings on your fingers, so wielding rings seems pretty easy. That he wields them on his arms. In Soviet Russia, ring wield you. Yeah. See, Shang Chi wields them on his arms. There. Well, yeah. I mean, whatever happens in that plotline, he's eventually going to learn about the magical rings and how to use them. I don't know. Oh yeah, I'm sure well, it'll be great. It's his dad. It's his dad has the rings, so he'll claim the rings, right? He'll but kill his dad, and good, take his evil. rings, and save the kill world. Him? I don't, I don't, I don't think we'll kill him. I think we're in the phase of the MCU where like nobody ever dies. Villains will be allowed to, well, yeah, like like Agatha. She's coming back. She's definitely coming back. No, no, no. We're talking about villains. 
Oh, that's good point. Actually, yeah. <laughs> She's yeah. So it was like, like Walker's coming back. He's like, yeah, of course the heroes come back. That's good. Of yeah, course, yeah. The protagonist. But Carly, she might be coming back, and she, you know, that was a trend. Undisputed. That was two in a row. The yep. the punished hero, Agatha and Walker. Well, and I'm surprised and, Wanda was allowed to live to tell you the truth. Hmm, you know, the well. Villain. Well, remember, she had to just get, get out of there because she's like, she's just feeling a lot of grief and she knows that she did something bad. She's just got to get out of there. It's like, man, we got to like jump through hoops to try and justify uh, Gelded, running away Gelded from her up, the strange. Strange. Fuck her up. Yeah, I weren't this way for Saddam Hussein. That's all I'm saying. So, anyway, Drink it at a live stream for Pick Tropic. Up your mother's 10 rings. <laughs> Brinker did a live stream for Tropic Thunder. You guys should do an EFAP movies for it. One of the last great comedies before the woke era. Man, there are good comedies that came out after like 2008. But, uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to... I'm going to say, there's got to be loads well, that came out after 2008. There's, there's a lot. I mean, it's like... Because we got uh, World's End, so it's like the end of the Cornetto trilogy would be included in there. Mm. I'd consider Suicide Squad to be a really funny comedy. I would call it a comedy as well. It, and Ragnarok um, is certainly Scott a comedy. Is really cool. Ragnarok, I Guardians call films. Maybe you get wow. maybe the person's you, criteria you for great Trump, comedy is a bit different. Like I don't know. Somebody's... Maybe you guys yeah. seen uh, Taika Waititi's other films like uh, What We Do in the Shadows and Hunt for the Wilder People. Those are those are pretty good from what I remember. I have not seen Jojo Rabbit was really cool, and that was that was hilarious. Oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. and The Hangover oh. came out in two thousand nine. Yeah, The Hangover was was really cool. Yeah, and, I, and nobody's good comedy. The Hangover was made by a guy who said like we can't do that kind of comedy anymore because of With Todd Phillips, yeah. Yeah, what yeah, I'm suggesting is like, you'd have to consider The Hangover to be valid by whatever metric you're using, surely. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, no, A um, lot of funny, unintentional comedies as well. I could see us <laughs> doing something for Tropic Thunder at some point, yeah, it could happen. That'd be cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> wait, so funny. You, well, we watched it both times you came over, right, Mel? I think so. Well, obviously. Yeah, it's just, it's just a really good one to fucking throw on chat um this is katana she's here i guess no. dude it, oh uh, i don't know why they didn't take that opportunity wouldn't it have been fucking amazing if she walked on late again and then he went this is katana she's got like starts delivering the whole thing again you see like boomerang like sigh because it's like it just implied <laughs> that he does this every time that she joins the suicide <laughs> squad <laughs> even when katana's not there and he would simultaneously explain her fucking power set, but this time it would be self-aware and hilarious. I don't know, I feel like that's a missed opportunity. There's a lot of things I, I kind of wish he would have done, but I'm still very happy with so many choices he made. Uh, yeah. Another movie just remembered, the 2019 Shaft that we randomly watched. 2019 uh, Chef? Shaft. Shaft! Oh, oh. Shaft. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, um, that one was really fucking funny. We watched that well, twice. <laughs> the thing is, Mel, a lot of people had mixed results on that one. I kind of we should watch that free fight movie sometime because me and Mel were laughing our fucking asses off watching yes. that film. Yeah, that was great. What movie? Shaft, uh, twenty nineteen. Shaft. Oh yeah, you said it was really good. I I mm. I would see it absolutely. And yeah, oh, yeah, okay. we, maybe uh, we'll check it out at some point because I was very amused by it. It was funny as fuck. You could do a triple feature with that, like mix in some certain older episodes of the show and then the Shaft movie from the 90s and then the new one. Or is, was that Shaft movie in the early 2000s? Like the Samuel or Jack? The original uh, early Samuel 2000s, Jack, I think. think. Could be wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, um, Slipknot is an awesome band. Also, Fringy is wrong in high ranks. Hello! <laughs> okay. It's just by default. Yeah, Fringy is wrong. Yeah. Fringy needs to get this, he needs to get on the same page as the rest of us. He needs to get on the right side of history. I don't know. I feel like this last month or so, he's he's really been slipping. I mm -hmm. don't know. I feel like he started to soften I up. Feel once like, let him be I feel like you should have spoken to me about these things earlier. If it nah. Was, if it was really a problem. <laughs> nah. nah I, wanted, I, wanted to, I wanted to watch the crash. Rags and everybody. I agreed this was the stream we would reveal this. Yep. Yeah. It's, oh, man. It's time. We knew that we knew that the Suicide Squad stream would be the one. <laughs> this was the one. <laughs> this, is, this was the we, one to pull the, the blanket this, this of the wolf from my well, eyes. We felt, it, we felt it would be dramatic. All of the EFAP drama is the bad plot and we're the great characters, so it seems <laughs> decent enough to you know make it this stream. Well, yeah, people were like, what the fuck is the plot of this show? You went after a political streamer for two episodes and you went back to watching movies. That makes no sense at all. <laughs> this is like, well, There's some plot holes here, yeah. I didn't write this. I'm sorry. Um, and yes, who did ride this? God, I guess. Well, if you, well, <laughs> whoever the spaghetti monster. 
Oh, he's he's a legendary writer. When he cares. I like the idea. Now I've got that picture in my head of the spaghetti monster sitting next to a typewriter, just trying to figure out this story with a blue pencil wedged in yeah, he's his like, spaghetti ear. He's a hundred thousand years ahead of where we are, and he's just trying to get it all done ahead of time. He's like, oh god, <laughs> yeah. they're catching up every just... day. <laughs> yeah, he's the just sighing. <sighs> I don't know, is this inspired? Like, is this... <laughs> I'm not sure if this is speaking true to the character. Uh, Jim Melch from, uh, from Louisiana. Melch? I just, what I don't know. What's name is Melch? It's probably someone's last name. There's a good chance Jim somebody's Mellon, got the name Melch is crying yeah. right Melch now, Rags. Is, I'm just... No, no, I'm, I'm not mean, saying it's bad. Look, it's just that, like, seriously, uh, what kind of a name is? Like, yeah, it's, where... it's not bad. It's just a what kind of a name name, <laughs> which I mean, is much better. That makes it better, terrible, right? You know... <laughs> like from what from what country or ethnicity or you know what's the origin of Melch? Melch M -E -L feels M -E -L -C -H? like a Colonel Melch. Mel yeah, I I feel like Melch seems like Melch. a Western name. That feels like a that feels like an Anglo name that would exist. Not like a not like a, a Smith or a or a um Avery or something. Baker, but like a you know like a well not like so a Baker a either. I feel like it'd be something else. That's what I'm saying. So Melch you were naming is, things that's not. Uh, the origin okay. is Old English, right. uh, or the or uh, but otherwise origin is uncertain. Probably ultimately from the Indo-European base of Mel, like Melish, a right, derivation so Mel which okay. accords well with the sense of the word in Old English, but is later in later use apparently influenced by and partly remodeled after Mulch or one of its Germanic cognates. So right, I didn't pull too much from that, but it does like. It, it does mean it's an adjective, mellow, soft, tender of weather, mild of soil, friable or loose. So if someone is uh, melch, they're like they're a mellow person. Like him, he's pretty melch. He is a melch character right over there. All right. What a fucking melch. Yeah. Uh, you guys should buy you know, a hero. Spanish people say melch. I didn't know that. <laughs> you guys should buy a hero from public domain, be a mascot for EFAP. So that was something they discussed um, on the um the Red Letter Media yeah, review I saw of that. this. It sounds hilarious that the those people did they so you wouldn't buy someone from public domain, right? You just grab them? I think you just just uh like right like a is it like a website where you just claim it as yours or well, I'm not sure. Again, I guess if it's you public have to domain, register the rights or something. If it's public, well, public have, domain, means yeah. that no one can own it anymore. Yeah, it's just something you can use. But, oh, because so okay. But anyone is could a, use is it. There a, yeah, I, I, I mean. But at that point, when you just make know. your own superhero, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty public super. Heroes. Yeah, we're not heroes because all we do is destroy Thanks art. But mm -hmm. you know, I, yeah, it's something. Dab art to death. Um, check out Turf Nation's Why Captain Marvel is Great. <laughs> ooh, that would be a blast from the past. Yeah, I, I mean, keep ooh, having to remind man. myself that Turf Nation Did that happened. Like... Oh, yeah, Turf ooh. spelled T U R F, not T E R F. Yeah, T U R F. Turf not... Nation? Oh, so like a, like a football. Like, uh, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. lawn. Yeah, like the grass, not the like other Like milch? <laughs> mulch. Man. Which is kind of like mulch, but different. But similar. And his, and his auto playing video on his channel is why the last Jedi is great. Mm. Keep oh it up. wow! So this is just a person who's wrong about all kinds of things. We've covered we've covered people like that before, but they never cease to amaze. Public domain what sounds like comedy toxic talk. prequel. Oh my goodness me! Oh um, come like on! What is going on? Public. Wait wait look at this. Public domain. That's only like comedy talk. When fascist Disney buys everything, we're screwed. So Disney wouldn't be able to purchase the rights if it was public domain. Yeah, everybody aren't... Uh, dude, dude, the reason why Mickey Mouse is not public domain and freely usable for everybody is because Disney has, like, repeatedly been able to extend the deadline on that. What a... <laughs> like, they've single-handedly <laughs> free to lose his mind. Thanks for Mickey Mouse. I just... I got to... <laughs> I'm not sure what I meant to do with that. Um... Let's see, why Ray does not need fixing i guess the the critical drinker i guess as a response to critical drink oh why the oh his last video was why the critical drinker is toxic um we have mike uh, i love my comments how to deal with hate you guys rank star wars does geeks and gamers hate it's probably women um <laughs> Kids they would admit to that. <laughs> I think jeremy would say it why falcon and the winter soldier was perfect oh why attack oh. of the clones is great 
Uh, Are we just uh, reading off every single time? No, I'm just reading off the bad ones. There's just a shit ton of bad ones. <laughs> and Falcon and Winter Soldier be great? Man. <laughs> no, he says it's perfect. perfect Surprisingly man. awesome. A debunk of ro Robot Head? That can't be that hard. Look up Milich... Milichina? Miliciona? Why the Phantom Menace is great? No, that movie's shit. Yeah, like we don't want to be. What I'm? No. Well, <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll what put is this that in our word? Back pocket, just look up <laughs> Milit Militioner. Does anyone Milit recognize what that is? Militioner. Oh well, let's no! I just scrolled down. Militioner. Militioner. And apply it to. Uh, is it is a... an upcoming video game. And okay. apply it to other worlds. It uses voice communication. Why the Amazing Spider-Man is great. Oof. <laughs> Man. <laughs> oh, but he made a video implying Avatar The Last Airbender is overrated. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what's happening. Oh, and he made a video person. on Anomaly Inc. as well. Why, oh no. Why Luke was perfectly written in The Last Jedi. Man. Does this guy not like anything? Does well, he, he just likes like... things. They're I was going to say, perfectly like, written. He clearly likes some stuff. I was saying, does he, does he not like anything? Does he hate anything? Like... What the hell? Jeez. Why what is this thumbnail? Just oh, fucking... why recasting Jack Sparrow is a terrible idea? Man, he is just like <laughs> oh, it's just like all over the place. You, you don't know what's know what gonna happen gonna next. <laughs> the Ray vs. Kylo Ren fight makes complete sense. This fight was perfect. <laughs> That's a video. It makes sense. I do like Look that. At that. Oh, are sense. we in there? How did how did we slip away? <laughs> how come this loser is making fun of like anomaly and critical drinker and geeks and gamers, but he hasn't made fun of us yet? What the fuck? Give him a chance. <laughs> he might it. get around to we it. To hey, <laughs> if you're listening to this and you can understand what words are, make a video on us. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> um... A month ago, he went after Plinket. Why Captain Marvel's? Yeah, Dude, this is uh, a yeah, wild we'll card. Put this guy in our back pocket. Yeah, this guy could. We could just. Oh, that's what we could do. We could do a spin the wheel. We could get a bunch <gasps> of his videos, and we could. <laughs> and then we could spin the wheel, and whatever video it lands on, we can cover. He, he's like a wheel of the worst for Eve. I'm just him. <laughs> he's like a wheel of the worst for Eve. <laughs> he will bring us so much joy. Thank Wait, you for bringing this does, <laughs> this clown to our attention. Does he have a Last of Us Two take though? Ooh, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't question, see though. one. I I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that he thinks it's great. Yeah. What Someone go into. Oh, I'll sure. ask him. I'll go into his latest video and ask if he liked The Last of Us Two. One of his videos is literally how to deal with hate. I love my comment section. Smiley face. Aw. Turf Nation YouTube. Oh, this is a different Turf Nation. <laughs> Rise of Sky. You two, Turf Nation, Rise of Sky. Uh... Oh, and no, I can, I can oh, here we go. Turf Nation. Oh, okay, I found it. Let's go to his videos. <laughs> the problem with reactionaries on you. Oh, he used the retarded R word. I remember being very confused by reactionary because everybody I was. Used to because I thought reactionary just meant you reacted to stuff, but it specifically yeah. means on a particular political bent. It's like no, but those on the other like, side, they definitely don't react well, to things. Yeah, nope. I guess that's what I mean. It's like it feels like why would we not just use a really broad term instead of being like are, no, specifically if you're on that side of the aisle. We are a small group. Oh, we are a we are a small group of reactionary verbal terrorists. I would say yep. so. I've watched the first five seconds of his Captain Marvel video. I'm already getting out the bleach. So anyway... Um, almost forgot to tattle. As said, Iron Man 3 was a good movie a few days back. I, I was on a stream with him when he said that. And, uh, I'm afraid. It's just like, yeah, I, I, I hate that fucking movie. It's a piece of shit. <laughs> um... Alright, I've asked what his opinion is on The Last of Us 2. Await further bulletins as events warrant. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I think it was on a real BBC where the main argument I lay out is just that, um, Tony gets fucked over in that movie, and then that's not even including all of the, like, insane oh, no. plot bullshit that happens. And, 
How much trouble Shane Black made for all the writers after who had to take care of Iron Man. It's like, thanks, bro. Just fucking ruined it for everybody. Which was bizarre to think about, that they were given free reign with the scripts back then, to the point where they weren't even like, hey, make sure you have to make sure these particular things stay the way that they are so that the rest of the stories can continue. Because, um, as a little known fact about uh, Winter Soldier, making it so that S.H.I.E.L.D. was Hydra was not something Joss Whedon was made aware of while he was making the TV show all about S.H.I.E.L.D. A little bit awkward, you could say. Creates some problems. But, uh, yes. no, no one here really has any thoughts about that. I'm, I, I was a little bit surprised. I think everyone's very busy right now. Must be a, I, oh, I, I, I was I'm, not I'm listening sorry. at I, all. I actually, I actually was looking at something. Uh, I, I'm sorry. So, so okay. Iron Man three? No, I, I really am actually interested. No, you know I, what? I I'm just looking at chat. Is. Chat, you can react to it, and I'll, I'll appreciate that as my company today. You know? Oh, no, I, I, <laughs> I, oh, that's right then. No, 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 I don't accept that. I will not accept this. The MCU would be better off with the Iron Man three inch Winter Soldier. <laughs> hey, don't ignore me. <laughs> I agree. Hey. <laughs> Hey! Can anyone hear anything? There's some weird background noise. <laughs> it's only got this weasel. <laughs> He's in my room. Um, okay, uh, have some shackles, long man, and pet rags for me. I forgot to say hi to Fringy too last time. Um, oh, hey. Yeah, I guess that counts. And um, thanks for helping me to develop my own writing of characters. Oh, that's great. Uh, hope you're doing, you're doing all right. Good stuff. Uh, was very scared when Pete Davidson was going to be in the film, but then he was promptly removed. Yay. That's what I hear. I haven't seen any of That's his work, but people find him incredibly unfunny, so seeing him get his head blown off was uh, apparently very satisfying. Wait, what is the guy's name? Pete? Something? Pete Davidson. If he's the equivalent of, like... Oh, fuck. What's his name? Chunky British guy who's in... He's Conk Relief in loads of movies. James Corden? Yeah. If it was like that, and he got his face blown off at the beginning, of, that would be very fun to watch. So if it's similar, I can understand. Um, I knew I would love Stallone as King Shark, but Polka Dot Man was a big surprise. Fun fact, Stallone reprises his role as Rambo for DLC in Mortal Kombat 11. Hey, neat. Yeah, he did. Um, and there was much rejoicing for the, the killing of that guy. It was good, I, just, I haven't seen any of his stuff. Um... Yeah, po Polka Dot Man, a lot of people came away saying they were surprised, and that just goes to show you how set in sort of standards and, and tropes we are in terms of, like, the guy who's dressed with polka dots and stuff, he can't be that interesting, right? But it's just no reason why he wouldn't be. Because that's how writing works. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe if um, James Gunn makes another Suicide Squad film, he could have the Pete Davidson character's role filled in by Amy Schumer. That'd be great. Oh, uh, yeah. She doesn't have a face? What? <laughs> I think she does. It's all floopy. Um, <laughs> right. She's alternatively <laughs> handsome, is that what you're saying? I would say alternatively ugly. <laughs> it's, it's a whole new realm. Uh, Rags, would you like to come to Brazil? I'd happily show you some places. Please come and put me in your bag. Get me out of this place. Also, hi. Hi. Um... Uh, unfortunately, no. I'm not, I'm not seeking to visit Brazil mm. um, at the moment. Um, other places are on my list, and I, uh, I, I do oh, wish you like the, Australia, the for though. instance, possibly. Definitely, in definitely, yeah, definitely, exactly. Yeah. Um, long man, hi rags. Hello. Hello, hi there. Uh, your cutting wit delivered with dulcet tones, is a delightful pastime. Thank you for gracing us with your time. Have some money for your troubles. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, thank very you kind very and, much. Yeah. Cheers. Oh. Um, Savant not being played by Neil Breen is a failure. Huh. I mean, I would be happy to see Neil Breen as one of those no, opening Neil Breen characters. Is an, he's an actual genius. Yeah, so <laughs> it would be pretty cool to see him in a movie like that. Yeah. I just don't know. I don't know how he would behave on set. I wonder if he would be like, "Can I direct this scene, please?" He'd be like, uh. "What if they had Neil Breen do the uh, the mocap for Weasel next time?" <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be a star, Neil. No, 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 no. That's too demeaning for Neil Breen. He has directed, starred in, and written five feature-length Hollywood professional films that yeah. have all turned yeah. a profit. Yeah, it's true. That would be funny, though, to see Neil Breen and the Suicide Squad. Um, Where is the star? How can we find him? 
Being fluent in multiple languages is being a polyglot. Hmm? Polyglot? Is that real? I don't know. Polyglot? polyglot. I don't believe you. Po polyglot? Oh. Yeah, that's okay. Knowing or using several languages. I'm looking up the etymology for this bitch. Mm -hmm. um, I can see where the poly from came pol from. <laughs> yeah, polu from your Greek polu many, and then glotta, which is tongue. So what do you call people who have a lot of tongues? <laughs> they really got themselves into a corner with that one. I don't know. Not I a lot of forethought went into this. Luckily, there's not many of those people, so they don't feel that disparaged. But you're still correct, yeah. Gotta worry about that. Um, there's a word correction. What do you Tisms think of high rate frame rate films? I'm fine. Uh, with not them. a not a fan. I I think 24 is probably best. I mean, I know they've experimented a couple times, but it tends to look uncanny. It's not impossible, but it's 24 frames has just kind of become the film look, in, in my opinion. Is it, well, is it uncanny because it isn't the, the norm? If they were all in 48, would, yeah, would you, that solve the issue? You have to wonder if yes, everything were in first... whatever frame rate up till now, and then someone goes, what do you think of this 24 I'm trying, where it looks a little choppier, but the action feels a little bit more gritty. I could see people being like, ugh, you can't see what's happening. It's all so laggy. Because I know the first yeah, time I... I played video games at a really high frame rate, when I got a big boost to it after like a new computer, it felt bizarre mm -hmm. because there was just so many more frames than I was used to, and it was so smooth. It was, it was, it was just bizarre. It was strange. Yeah, I think it's going to yeah, depend on execution. I've seen so few examples that I really don't think I can be definitive on it. I, uh... The Hobbit sequels had like the 48 frames per second, right? Or something mm -hmm. like that. And yeah. it was like Gemini Man recently that uh, neither of those Gemini movies man? were particularly good. Gemini Man? Gemini. Was... Gemini Man, sorry. Uh, Gemini, like, yeah, like the cricket. Jim, Gemini, Jim, <laughs> Gemini. Gemini. I was about to do that. <laughs> you gotta be faster. You gotta be faster. Yeah. This is EFAC. Yeah. You gotta, gotta be go on your toes. Faster, right? Gotta go fast. Gotta go faster, yeah. faster, faster, yeah. faster, faster, faster. It just helps. It just helps. It just helps. It's just Elba's someone... knuckles. Oh, yeah, true. Can get... Yeah. Can we get someone to edit the Gemini Man poster with Jiminy Cricket staring Jiminy, at Jiminy Cricket? Jim... <laughs> when you wish upon a starro. Starro. Oh. Get on it, chat. I can't Do believe it. James Gunn said in this film that all boomers deserve death. Just the one boomer, really. He was, uh, and I wish he would have put a bit more. Mr. Yeah, boomer. Bury him in the boomer tomb. Boomer Tomb. That sounds kind of cool. Tube. I will. I'm gonna say it. Boomer Tube. It's better than Boom Tube. Okay, so I'm getting to the point now where they're a little bit more separated by time, which means I skip, wait, skip, wait, skip, wait. I feel like there's a good chance that I might miss one this way, and I'm so sorry if that happens. But I'm gonna do my best to make sure I catch them all, because, like I said, it's just glitched out for now. Uh, safe to say, is it better than the previous? Not even close. As far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's not a good question. Yeah. Um, yeah, this one, uh, yeah, the, the old super, or the old super, the old Suicide Squad was really shit. It really was, yeah, it's really shit. It wasn't even <clears> fun <throat> shit, like Aquaman, which we thoroughly enjoyed watching. <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed gaslighting you as we watched shit, but other than that, it's just sludge. You shouldn't light people on gas. Fucked up. Hurts too. How many dollar to do EFAP 150 in your Welsh accent? You didn't even spell Welsh correctly, you put Welch. Um, <laughs> but, um, I'm gonna say that's, that's a no. I would not want to keep that going for a whole stream. I like talking normal, right? None of that disgusting moon accent stuff. It's just anything that isn't my own. Normal. You know, mm -hmm. lighting people on gas, as you know, will result in the fire truck immediately arriving, just instantaneously, as we learned from Gardaphone yesterday. True. Yes. Um, like, I'd... Like that. I'd say this is worse. This is a worse Guardians of the Galaxy, but still fun. Um, from what I remember, yeah, it's worse than Guardians of the Galaxy, but mm -hmm. um, still fun indeed, yeah. My EFAP headcanon. Mola, the daddy. Rags, the wife, because bottom. Bringy, deadbeat roommate. Oh, wow. Battle, angry German neighbor. EFAP yeah. guests, the kids who went to college and come back to wash clothes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Lord Longbone of Mublington Abbey, did you know that modern giant monster Dyk 
kaiju movies use mocha, M-O-C-A, uh, both because it's useful, as in, I guess that's mocap, um, and as a I nod to the classic Japanese anim suitimation. Maybe it's talking about something else? Well, I mean, I they're, assume, they're well, the, old Jap the old Japanese is, movies uh, would have a person in a suit with a miniature mm -hmm. city, so maybe they, they that's oh, called well, suitimation or something like well, that? Well, I would say that it's not a homage, but rather because, like, mocap is incredibly useful. I was just going to say, that's just how we yeah. do a lot of stuff now, right? Like, Well, yeah. we, I mean, that's what video games do now. Like, basically all of them. It just it just makes it look more realistic, well, like, if that's what you're going for. If someone was like, can you believe it, Godzilla was actually mo from like a guy in a suit, I'd just be like, that makes sense to me, I guess? I know that sounds yeah, weird, Yeah, that but... makes total sense to me. Yeah. Um, P.S. It's really Hello. hard to animate. Oh, sorry. Well, you, you can carry on if you want. It was about Godzilla. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's like, like really hard to animate believably realistic people. Like, it's tough, because yeah. there's things that we do, we don't, we, whereas, like, if you're animating for, like, cartoons, it's like, you're not really going for realism, so you can start pushing it a bit more. <laughs> well, a bit more, a lot more, depending on what you're doing. Um, yes, hello, Waggly Fwaggly. Hello! Uh, Fwaggly Walk, squitches for the good boy. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, Ganning. Ganning. Any minute now. I believe in you. No, I'm just. Oh, oh. oh, that one didn't have a message in it. You're breaking all the rules. Oh, oh scanning. Oh, very exciting. There we go. I thought the military was deliberately not killing Harley because they want her captured. Maybe I'm wrong. So they nearly kill her a million times over in that beach scene. Any one of those yeah, bullets could have hit her. her. So the only time you can Maybe. say that really is when they finally have her near that ending. Eh, but it's still a bit wonky, I'd say. So, like, how does that, um, how would you say that impacts the plot if she dies on that beach? Like, what No javelin, right? Changes? I guess javelin might, might give it to someone else. So nobody else is going to well, be there to be able to get it. Flag, so. flag well, already fled, I so yeah. I guess the big thing would be, would there have been that screw-up in terms of, like, Milton dying and him getting mad and then there's people coming in at that time? Would Starro have been released? Well, Why? the other thing, I guess, would be um, the the deal with, like, I think... What's the, the dude's name that she fucked? Luna? Oh, yeah, oh, he'd still be alive, right? right. Yeah. So, so no matter what, it changes a lot. Like, there's no getting around it. Maybe Weasel would have taken the javelin and used it to save the what day. What the mm. fuck? My phone just said, Twitter is required by German law to provide notice to users who are reported by people from Germany via the Network Enforcement Act reporting flow. We've received mm -hmm. a complaint from someone in Germany regarding your account. We've investigated it and found that you have not violated any rules. Metal. What's metal? What the fuck? You? Metal. Jesus. <laughs> this whole that time. That weird. Too. Like. What's Tell you, hey, we Metal were required the to mole. let you know when you've been reported. Um, there's Mold no reason mole. for you to be concerned. It's, spe it's like, specifically no, like a German person happening. reported you. <laughs> like, oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw that I have message heard of before. this happening from Middle Eastern countries. <clears throat> now Germany. You would think that like pursuing. it'd be more comforting to just never be told this. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> so part of the message, it seems that they are required to tell me. Apparently. Yeah, probably. So that's right. weird. Is that nation's but... rules, I guess? It might, yeah. It's got to be some kind of something in some contract or law somewhere. Yeah, because there's uh, like privacy laws and, and stuff like that and information. Yeah. Metal that's was what, the imposter. It's what you get for making me cry all the time. Um, Nothing? Yeah. I mean... Alright then. <laughs> I'm not very invested in this. I'm gonna, just a second, I'll be right back here. I feel thin, like a stormtrooper scraped over too much plot armor. Bill Burr Baggins. Yeah. <sighs> Happens. Scanning. <laughs> uh, damn, y'all might rip this apart, but I'm probably just gonna buy HBO Max, watch this, and catch the last half of the show. I'll be back. Well, yeah, you could have seen the movie almost three times by now. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably... You probably managed to come back. Um... Disappointed that David died when he just began his arc, and Harley Quinn looks like she finished his multi-movie arc. Maybe he got stuck in Tentacle. 
So David is the one that everyone keeps saying they're happy he died. Um, but apparently someone out there didn't want him to die. So there you go. Good for you, David. Has Fringo showed you any more episodes of Simpsons? If not, I suggest you watch the season 6 episode, Homer Badman, the best cultural commentary. Um, when they say I you, I assume they I mean Rags. Yeah. Rag. yeah. Um, and yeah, because like me I'm and Fringo have right, seen I'm... all of classic Simpsons many times over. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Rags, I, I, only, I think I, I was only showing him the episodes because I happened to be watching them. I was, I wanted to see some of season six again. But you're right, um, well, yeah, on the Batman's a good one. Uh, Ben, I have a question. <laughs> no, Ben, no. <laughs> Not just the day. Like, just cuts. I don't know anything about Homer Simpson, but I say we should have, what was it, less? More, it? more less funding Homer for Simpson's public schools. More money for public schools. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> just totally disconnected from what's happening. So I think this film, continuing from the previous, shows Waller no longer trusts Flag and was looking to replace him and was willing to sacrifice him. Why would she not trust him? Yeah, I feel like that's a little bit post-talk. I don't know that she would have known Flag's reaction to the information. Obviously, he wasn't told by her. Um, well, when she, she knew, she couldn't have accounted for um, uh, the thinker telling them about this, right? Well, no. What I'm saying is, um, she could. She has that information. She could have told Flag. That's the nature of the data. So you got to make sure that nobody accesses it or releases it. But she didn't. Meaning she obviously didn't trust him with that information. Um, or she just can't compartmentalized it, felt he didn't need to know it. Um, which she did, she did not do in the first one, right? She, Flag knew that they were picking her up, I think, right? Yes, yeah. they did. So, it, she did. but like, the idea that, like, she's okay with him dying, I feel like we need something to work with more so than just he nearly died and then did die and, you know, like, like, if someone said, know, like, Flag is dead, and we got a facial reaction from her that you could interpret as more of a, like, good sort of thing, I don't know. Um, better question, knowing what we know later. Why not have Ratcatcher come in solo and take the entire enemy army out with zero losses? That's a stupid idea. I don't That's know. That's very stupid. So, like, have her come in on her own and hopefully... I don't even... Like, why wouldn't you want her to be as part of a team? Mm. Why wouldn't it make yeah, sense to give her... one more? bullet, and the, that plan's fucked. Yeah. She's, she's um, a glass cannon, she's got the rats, but a bullet She's also her, so. gonna be the least, ex like, combat experienced or combat ready of the bunch, I think, besides Weasel. <laughs> you don't know that, man. <laughs> he, could, he could be phenomenal. Uh, he's mm. just not oh, good with man. water, you know? I just, I, I, I would love to see Weasel in action. That's the one thing that we really missed out on from this well, movie. I, I need to see Weasel in action. Yeah, like imagine an environment similar to like a jungle, and he's just really fast, and he's bouncing off all kinds of trees and jumping around, and like he's got claws that are retractable, and he just fucks people up. You're just my, like, oh my god. He bounces my, into a kindergarten. My, yes. so what I'm, what I'm visualizing is, and, and I've called him like Murder Scrat, right? You know how Scrat, he's kind of like Mr. Bean in a sense. He's just like, he causes chaos inadvertently wherever he goes. I, I feel like that's what Weasel would do. That's how he takes people out. Just setting off chain reactions of uh, completely unpredictable events that result in catastrophic losses of life for the enemy enemy side. Got it, got it. You know, he needs to be paid respect, I would say. Mm -hmm. Respect that character. Um, Remember Booba Lady? Booba Lady survives. She goes splattered with blood, but she's alive, I think, so. Could see her return. Good for her. Yeah, she can be in the Suicide Squad Trey. Um, oh, yeah, it's had the devil. It's a uh, possible style for, uh, for Weasel. The main analyst guy is the on set stand in actor for the shark character. He's like the mocap guy, I guess. That's neat. I've seen uh, photos of it. Obviously, they had to have somebody be Nanawe. Um, scanning. Oh gosh, do you want to do you want to see what the the name of the song that plays when the rats start taking over Starro? Uh, what is it? I would greatly like to know. 
Ratism. <laughs> <laughs> Noise. Still, didn't really mention oh, it, but there we go. music and soundtrack in this movie is also really good. A lot more tonally girl. fitting. And what is it, John Murphy? Like his music was actually really solid. Mm -hmm. So, Suicide Squad, perfect. A movie that represents what people who love this film or universe should maybe shake hands on. If I wasn't clear in Minecraft, kill yourself. Oh my goodness. Oh, um, okay. All right. Uh, on on hardcore mode after I've you know gotten pretty far, I guess so. Yeah. Belch. Please watch and criticize, oh. or just watch and judge the video link I emailed you a few days ago and the other videos I have uploaded. There's a TLJ review. I'm afraid that is like the fast track way to definitely not. Could you imagine <laughs> if like a five dollar super chat could request me to review videos people have made? It's like fucking hell. Like there's no way I could accept that. Uh, I would be. We can't even get through all the backlog for Super Chats, let alone reviewing people's videos and stuff. Um... Do, do, scan... Oh, there was a high ranks. Hi there! There you go. Um... Yeah, I am actually... This is kind of a neat way to do it in terms of being able to know how far into the stream I am. I'm now at 1 hour 20 <laughs> minutes. Oh. So. Huh. Almost done. Oh, neat. Canning. <laughs> Canning. So I'm gonna hop off now. It's getting quite late. Uh, Very well, Mr. Metal. Um, yeah. Suppose we'll see you around. More people to, even more people to to to, to report, to report on, on, Twitter. on Twitter. Yeah, I'm gonna. I need to try with Muller again because that didn't mm. work. Uh, mm. Yeah, that's that's silly. Make sure that you have your Boulder's alibi lined up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for people interested in chat, uh, the the gaming thing from yesterday should be up tomorrow on my YouTube archive if people haven't cashed out. Duh. And there is a link to your Twitch in the description where Metal plays video games and stuff. Uh, yeah, you could watch that oh, there yeah. too for the next 30 days, but it's already archived, so no worries. Oh yeah, yeah, you can find it there, obviously. Um, I think there's an unlisted version for... Mola, but it'll be on Moolah one day. One day. Yeah, like two one years day. or so. Who knows? Or another. I'm gonna find that's a song. I'm gonna get you, get you, get you, get you. Yeah, uh, yeah I'll, I'll catch you guys around. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Mortal. Toodle. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Hello, lads. Got to get ready for work so I can't stay long. Hope you all have a great day. It's been a fun Oh, one. you it's too. Been fun. I've enjoyed talking about this movie. I figured I would, because we had a lot of fun with it, and um, it's almost a little more interesting than a great film in that there's so many topics to talk about in terms of how things sort of go back and forth uh, in terms of, like, quality and stuff. Um, I don't know what we were talking about at this point. This says, no, Molly, you're wrong. I'm with rags on this one. Honestly embarrassed you'd even say it. Yeah, I mean, that could be anything. <laughs> that really. could be all um, of the things we've I mean, talked we about can't today. Even Really you have the slightest idea how little that <laughs> narrows things down. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, I just I couldn't possibly know. Could have been talking about anything from guns to, to peens. I know those are related, but I just, I don't know. It could be either or everything in what between. What about beans? Beans, yeah. Me and Ryan's talked about beans before. Probably. It's great. I am pro beans. Yeah. Except... Lima beans, I hate them. Oh. I really don't like lima beans. I'm convinced nobody does. It's just an agreed upon lie that <laughs> some people just tell. The lima beans. The just lima sure. beans. <laughs> Efap is my muse, my love, my friend. Don bless you all. Don bless you all. The Don bless you. Don bless you. Do, do, do. Yeah, I'm afraid. So scanning is going to start to come chunkier and chunkier as I go on. So I'm just, just going to have to, you know, just going to have to give me a sec while I push forward again and again and again and again. That is the exciting way I fill this air. Oh, heroes of EFAP. Yeah? What oh, do you guys think oh. of old goodest boy Brendan Fraser making a comeback? Also high ranks. I'm excited. I am pro him making a comeback. I mean, yeah, he, he seems wonderful in any piece of like interview I ever see of him and from what I gather 
He, like, several really unlucky things happened to him that fucked his career. Um, and so everybody wants to see him succeed. And he's gonna be in a Scorsese movie, which is, you know, there's a level of prestige there that hopefully... Oh, that's great! Maybe he can get some more roles as well. Yeah, fingers crossed, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, is, is, we're gonna call it The Daddy Patrol. Returns? Instead of The Mommy Returns? Mommy Returns? Oh, yeah, yeah. Could do it. Yeah, that'll be like him. I'm glad I, um, they only made two and then stopped after that. He's also yeah, wonderful I, on Doom Patrol. That uh, yeah, a lot of people praise Doom Patrol. I have not seen it. I I really enjoyed watching The Mummy and George of the Jungle growing up. So I'm happy for him. Yeah. Two hours late. No worries, since it's an EFAP stream. You know it'll just have started still. I think by two hours we was we were a good chunk into the movie. So you know we were. We you made a ton always... of fun very quickly. Oh my god, I'm scanning this just like Harley is cringe, like from loads of people at once. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no disagreements there. The only, that's, that's the only word I can describe it. This makes me cringe. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, the White House would consider a foreign country being destabilized a positive development. Was that a dig at Trump, the CIA? Uh... Then they said, well, would make more sense. Oh, so was it a dig at Trump? The CIA would make more sense. I don't think it makes sense in any way, shape, or form. Um, I don't know what, I don't know if you consider it a dig. I think it's just bad writing where it's like, the governments yeah, aren't I concerned, let Starro win. And so it gives our just, heroes a dilemma. I think it's just a half assed attempt at a like political satire uh, that's like sort of a dig at American foreign policy across history but i think it's just, just a lazy context... way to get uh conflict between yeah, Waller and the honestly spot. i think the answer is a lot simpler yeah. than anyone's giving you credit for yeah. they need it so that the government don't get involved so they go yeah the government totally are okay with this happening lol you're like right it's just the context is just no it's nonsense yeah um i'm a fr look rags you have learned um what is it called cyrillic you know exactly what this says, right? I, c I can speak it phonetically, I think. I cannot speak it. So, unfortunately, um, uh, love e content, um, ah, uh, what's the why? Right, uh, little. Lethal of eat there what little of it there is. Love the content, what little of it there is. What little? Well, thank you. I do like <laughs> uh, I do like the fact that you uh even though you um you know don't get as much though you will be getting some quite soon. Oh my goodness. Um there uh that 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 you do like it. Yeah, there's a it's few better things. than most could say. A lot of it is that you don't make a lot of it. But what I hate is terrible, or even worse, you make a lot of it and it's all shit. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. Um, Harley feels 100% inserted because James Gunn was told to. She doesn't fit with the rest of the story. Yeah, she I feels think, that way. I was going to say, That's is that a thing. failing on his part then? Because She feels that way, but I don't but... think he had any mandate on who he had to include. Yeah, I don't think he did either. I think he just did a bad job and we have to... That's... I think he just did a bad job. He certainly yeah, had the screen time to do something good he just yeah didn't and do it. the next super chat says it sounds like or it seems like warner brothers added holly's subplot to gun script and it's like it's so funny that that's how everybody feels about it and yet it probably wasn't that it's always the studio's fault like it's weird it's always the publisher we will uh, yeah it's the same as it's always the publisher and it's like yeah you know there's plenty of instances where the studio the publisher is interfering but like don't assume that's always the case it's crazy how James Gunn said Harley deserves to be in the upper echelon of heroes like Batman and Superman. I never got the intense love for it. That's what I mean. Like, this could be the explanation. Those scenes he gave her, that's him, like, being like, Harley's so fucking awesome. And you're just sort of like, man. <laughs> and you're like, oh, you're, you're just having a Zack Snyder moment, unfortunately. He's having a moment of some kind. I, it kind of feels awkward, like, like, oh, I love her. This is, my, this is how I want to see her, what, what she's doing. And you're just like, all right. But she has her own, you know, specific scene, like Harley Quinn scenes, two big ones, while everyone else has to be in, like, group scenes, which isn't a knock to them, but it... You know, thinking about it from the direction that he really wanted to celebrate and have her, 
kind of lines up. It's just, I just don't think they worked out. I just don't think they're particularly good. Um, I messaged that I unfollowed Hassan. You wanted to know why I watched him. His angry gamer energy paired well with America's craziness, covered big issues, BLM, Capital Riots, felt connected to the world. P.S. Love this podcast. Oh. Wait, could you... I, I, I kind of missed the first part. Was he saying, like, why he watched well, so, his son? Yeah, we kept asking, like, why the fuck would? And he, so he, he actually said, I, I messaged that I unfollowed him, and uh, the reasoning that he did follow him in the first place was he had angry gamer energy paired with America's craziness right. and covering big issues, and he felt connected to the world while watching his son. Oh, that almost... I ugh, guess that's, ah. like, an explanation, but all I would ever Bizarre, say is, like, yeah. I feel like you can just find... Better. Well, that's that's so it though, right? Like, so when you things. when you fall into his chat as a result of just imagine just I'm not saying this person's a child, don't misconstrue it. But if you're a, you just came onto the internet, you know, like Twitch, big streamers talking about events I'm interested in. Oh, this chat, and then you just get involved, posting the pepes and getting to know the community and the memes and the history and looking at highlights and joining the YouTube. You can just get subsumed in one channel. And then it's like, yeah, do you know how many happens. other channels there are and what they offer? And some people are like, yeah, like whole world Jesus, out did you there. not like did you happen to just find him first and you literally never looked for anyone else? Because he is a a fucking idiot and a hateful prick. I was because yeah, everybody so, covers all those stuff that's like in that format yeah. and genre. Obviously we don't, it's but not like, <laughs> and it's not like what Hassan does is unique. There's like plenty of Hassans. Oh, no, does anyone do it? Does anyone does anyone do it as bad as he does? <laughs> I mean, um, I'm sure Mike from PA. somebody somewhere, but <laughs> yeah, Mike from PA probably, but like somebody as big as him with that profile, like, man, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how many people I would say are worse yeah, than I him mean... and what he does. And what he does specifically, which is political commentary. And it's not even like, it's just vacuous. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I, I genuinely think that the answer to it is just uh, there's a lot more out there that offers what you get from him and a hell of a lot more, I would argue. Yeah. Um, but hey, you know, they're apparently enjoying EFAP. Uh, hopefully we satisfy your por portions of your media desperation. Media stuff. Like I said, yeah, I do. Uh, I do hope it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so the, the next one, I'm a little bit confused on this. Uh, it says, I agree with Southpaw with Thor. There is a lot more of weight due to stakes. Wow, weight. Is that, that's not pun, pun. Is that in reference to the I humor? It, like the well, cutting the jokes stakes thing? is spelled as the food. Uh, ah, so it's <laughs> fun. Fun, <laughs> fun. Uh, I see what you did there. I observed. So the, I am evil because I am fat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, 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 like, it is a sub, a form of sort of signifier and sub stuff where it's like fatter characters will just be like, you'll just associate with it. depends on their personality that comes with it, right? But like, them being fat can help with you believing that they're some kind of like gluttonous character. It'll yeah, be... like, I could believe a fat person cooked and ate a dozen innocent school children. I can't really believe a skinny person would, though. It doesn't. <laughs> doesn't. Mm. What if they have really good metabolism? What if they're, like, bulimic? Uh, they just vomit all the children I back up? This is a, a movie right <laughs> now, yeah. Um, so, I have zero social media, and I really only watch the news at lunch when I'm at work. So why was everybody happy when Blackguard died? Has the actor pissed everybody off recently? Anyways, love you all, guys, and hi, Rags. I'm with you on that one. As far as I know, he's an annoying comedian that people don't like from SNL. Um, okay. That's all yeah, I know. Anyway, I don't. No, I don't think it's. I don't think it's like a really serious hatred of him. I think it's just they find his jokes cringe, and so it was really funny to see his face blown off. I'm guessing that was it. Like in the same way that we wouldn't get some kind of crazy, oh, right, yeah. um, ad adoration out of seeing people hurt that we don't like actors wise. It's more so just they're so fucking annoying, and get watching them get killed straight away is funny. Um. I watched the movie with my mother. She grew up in Panama and recognized a lot of the locations, enjoyed the film, Take My Money Massives. Oh, is that where they shot it? In Panama? It's That's shot in cool. Panama, yeah. Panama. I thought the same thing. I didn't. Um, but yeah, the, the location, um, as, as Freen was saying, it's, it's quite neat. Lots of places to go, lots of things to see. And crazy weather out there. Blinding sunlight. 
I, I can believe there's blinding sunlight. <laughs> yeah. And it arrives yeah, just when you need it. Yeah. The old, good old rain shine. See, that, honestly, that's one of those things where I'm just like, when you were writing it, did you not think, like, wow, this is kind of really stupid, actually? I'm sure it'll be fine. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, did no one ask you, uh, Mr. Gunn, what's happening? What is, what is it you're saying is happening here? And he's like, the sun's yeah, really like, bright, shut up. Oh. Oh, yeah, that bright sun. Okay. Um, Just gotta watch out for that Bryce Sun. Two, he'll, he'll get you. Did Hiddle Subtleties co write with Gun? There are hidden subtleties in this, I would say, yes. They work quite well. Maybe if I start reading the ones that are coming in while I'm searching for the next ones, because that'll help with the pacing of this. Um, the newest one says, Also, working at a theater, someone had private watch party and watched Empire Strikes Back and played classic Star Wars Battlefront 2. A great day. That sounds like a lot of fun. It does sound like a lot of fun. I wonder how, yeah, gaming on a fucking theater screen. I wonder what that experience is like. I'd hmm. probably hate it. Because, um, oh. generally speaking, doesn't, doesn't like, uh, gaming on a, on like a, uh, PC monitor tend to have like better, um, like less input delay. Yeah, because like, there's a uh, good frame rate. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would be my concern. Um, I mean, of course, getting to play something like Uncharted on a big screen would be neat um, for the spectacle, but if I'm like playing a multiplayer game, I probably would just stick to my desktop uh, monitor. Um, doesn't it make sense for Flag to go back to save Harley? He is shown as someone who cares for everyone and go out of his way to help them. Thoughts? Uh, I don't know about go out of his way to help everybody. I it's we talked about it the whole friend thing. It, yeah, like I don't, I don't think they friend. really earned it, but at the same time, I, I guess it's like he's like we he doesn't want to leave Harley. It's like okay. I guess if we if we accept that he doesn't want to leave Harley, he'd go get her. Like it's not even, yeah. it's not, I don't think it's out of character, but it's it's not something that I feel is like I wouldn't have guessed that. I'd have been like, oh yeah, okay. I, I didn't know that was in character of him to do, but I guess it is. It's the same problem she has with because that's the thing. That's where Rick Flag was until we got into that building, and you start to get a lot more of a feel for who he is. And I just feel like nobody's done that with Harley across three fucking movies. Yeah, three movies, and we still don't really know anything about her. Um, old topic. A hard lock forces you, Dumbos, to delete a save and create slash revert to a new one in order to finish the game, which isn't in DDLC. Or is it? Well, um, I don't know. The, I guess maybe I'll never know. Yeah, you know, it's, that's, I don't Who know how long they've been Dumbos. asking for it, but I do not know if we'll ever play it. No guarantees. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. What are we, some kind of the Suicide Squad? Yeah. It's, you almost wish that was in there as well. Maybe that would be too fourth wall breaky, though. No, they, maybe they someone was gonna say it and then someone stops them. We some kind, and then yeah, yeah, we could do that. And I then, and then, and, and, and then, yeah, uh, Anaya, uh, then he finishes I, it. Suicide Squad. I, I think <laughs> that, like, the the way that they incorporated the the nickname Suicide Squad in this movie was like very smooth. Like, yeah, it's just the the nickname of Task Force X makes sense. Yeah, and they you have the whole like the, and, yeah. that mission suicide, and he goes, "That's kind of our thing." It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, killing I'm, yourself is your thing. Interesting. Um, I'm curious. Was Idris eating the chicken a reference to that article about him not being black enough? Fucking, was it, what was that article Black about? I forget. Ah, uh, yes. Because there was some bullshit like that. I, I I remember reading it, but I can't remember what the specifics were now. What, they said Idris Elba wasn't black enough? He's pretty black. He's Yeah, because um, it's about where he comes from or something. He's not from a black enough background or something to it play was, a particular uh, character. It was for Luther. Yeah, BBC. Some, um, when they some were cast for Luther. Yeah. Fucking diarrhea. That, that shit is just, oof. Yeah, that, that in particular frustrates the hell out of me. Like, wait, that's just good old-fashioned racism. Wait, what What does? Saying a character- a person isn't black enough to play a particular character, like, yeah. because they wouldn't have the required- I don't even- I'd have to- I don't want to misquote the fucking quote, so I'll just say it's something like that in an article and it was annoying to read. 
Y'all triggered? Yeah, a little bit. I'm not a fan of racism. I am kind of against it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm anti-racism. Milton versus the Don, who the wins? Hottest. So I think if the Milton Don. was to battle the Don, the Don is gonna win. The Don is gonna win. Yeah. Not even close. In terms of who's a better person, again, the Don, I mean... Well, he survived an entanglement would... with a god, and <laughs> Milton did not survive a meeting with bullets. So, so what if what if the Don let Milton win out of pity for him in his Milton usual would win. saintly I think nature. that's a win for the Don at that point. A moral victory, yeah, that's true. You, you see that as an absolute victory, then? He just can't no. be... The Don always wins. Oh, yeah, wasn't raped, that release thing. the Aya cut? What's happening in that tweet? So they're she's implying that, that Holly she was, was raped? raped what? Jones. Holly was not... No. She's, yeah. She seemed really into it. She pulled, she pulled him into it, if you watch the scene. He's asking for marriage, and she grabs him and kisses him, and then starts this. Like, Jesus Christ, yep. give women some chance oh, to make God, decisions. It gets worse. It gets they worse. Said, they said that he, like, groomed her, is the oh, thing. Oh, what? Like, yeah, it was the day! It was a day! It was a day! Is she very easily groomable? Is that her superpower? Also, like, doesn't grooming mainly refer to, like, you know, Oh, yeah, the, are they talking about literally grooming her? Like, providing assistance for her hair I don't and skin? Yeah, like, you would groom a dog or something. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think that that's how that works with adults Good God. one day. No. Of course it's from Not Twitter. Every, and everyone wants to say to the others that you weren't paying attention because they just want to fucking him half fight. Naked. Calm down, it's a dress. Half naked. Good God, where were these people for Wonder Woman? <laughs> because for some reason, because they're saying restore the air cut attached to this, it's like, oh God, Snydoids are doing this? Like, I can believe that they're oh, that dumb. Fuck, Good. I've just looked at his fucking. Wait, hold holy on. Right, fine. What? Right. Would you say that they're that dumb or that malicious? Dumb. I feel like they're just dumb. being purposefully no, it's like, it's like how, here. It's like a mob, kind of, where I just owe it more to them being stupid. Uh huh. His I don't know, maybe some of them are. I would dumb. say that some of them are malicious, but I would say most of them are just stupid. Ah, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. Um, AEFAP and Hyrax. Hello. I watched The Suicide Squad and actually enjoyed it. My family hates oh, it, good. but loves current oh. Marvel and Star Wars, which I find hilarious. Oh. Oh. Yeah, well, oh. don't worry, you're adopted. <laughs> My condolences. Um, also, what are your favorite movies slash games? Oh, you threw that on the end? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Soma and... Um, uh, it's one of those questions where aliens. everything everything blanks when you try and think of the answer because you've got millions yeah, of them. They're all gone. Yeah, we'll just give one of each. Stunt and aliens. Okay, my turn. Um, Metroid Prime and Terminator Two. Mm hmm. What question was favorite game and movie? Yeah, just pick one for both. Uh, I usually go Saving Private Ryan and uh. Damn. Super Mario Galaxy? I'm gonna put that up there. Alright, next up. Uh, Groundhog Day and Batman Arkham Knight. Next up. Uncharted 2 and in Bruges. And finally. Um, Highlander and KOTOR 2. There you go. I feel like that was very efficient. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I really like your new face, Muley. It's very shiny. Oh, this is an old face. So, um, let's see, the, I just used the mask to aim better. At least in this continuity. Um, hi, everyone, and hi, Rags. Hello to you. Hello. A better explanation for Walla telling the Suicide Squad to not fight Starro is it gives too much attention to the Black Ops Squad. Better leave it to the Supers. Then again, if it got out that Americans had deployed criminals as part yeah. of a rehabilitation program and they ended up saving the world, talk about good publicity. You know what? You know what, Shadi? You, you might have solved two problems at once with that, because that means that there's an acknowledgement that the superheroes are on their way, and we can say nice and vague, which would be like, the heroes will sort this out. And then they're like, how, you know, you could be like, they're not here, people are dying right now. 
And it's just like, I don't fucking care if they find out you guys are here. You know, it'll it'll cause whatever problems and stuff. Yeah, I think that works way better. Well, it's like in Mission Impossible, the the briefings always end with, you know, if any of you or your uh your if you or any of your team members are are caught or killed, the secretary will disavow your your actions and it's basically like they're gonna cover their own asses. Mm-hmm. Um this is Weasel. He's got my back. Yeah, you could have seen that happen. Um, can I get a character breakdown for Weasel? I, do, you, do you really need to explain? He's phenomenal. Like, you, you just don't see many Should characters like that. It's evident how incredible yeah. he is. That's the voice true. of an angel. <laughs> so much subtext in all of his uh, facial expressions. You could tell what he represents, I would say, just thoroughly. Trying for the human spirit? Yeah. yeah. Um, any thoughts on the recent Harley Quinn animated series? If any of you have seen it, Hi Rags, Mola Gay. All right. Oh. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I've not seen it. Haven't I've seen it. Seen... Have... Oh, go ahead. Oh. oh, I've seen clips. Some made me laugh. Some made me cringe. Uh, I don't have an opinion beyond that. Is it, no is it well liked or well hated? Does anyone know? It's kind it's of one of those mixed wide. opinions kind of things where some people think it's phenomenal and other people think it's horrendous and a lot of the opinions seem to be very politically charged either way. Oh, oh boy. A just, recipe uh, for good results. A modern piece of media, mm -hmm. you say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, didn't mean to put you on the spot with a video game slash movie question. No, it's totally fair and totally fine. And no, I, that's totally fine. I if, hope... If that's no. what being on the spot is, then I'm, I'm fine with it. I just wanted to pick you know, pick one. Yeah, I was gonna say it's just it's hard yeah. to balance because like we could go into way more depth and make way longer lists. I just I feel like hopefully you're okay with the answers we gave. Um, obviously yeah. there's a lot Six more of our giving you know twelve suggestions. Hopefully that'll work out. Yeah. Um, each of us would be able to have very long lists. Like, I guess that's worth clarifying. Is like we have a lot of favorites and they all rank in different places and it's hard to pick. But I, I'm totally happy throwing out some different ones here and there. An interesting thought based on that question, what would be suggestions for like foundational games or foundational pieces of media? Ooh, well, that's a good question. In terms of movies and stuff? Well, like, well, for in instance, games? if I think about video hmm. games, it'd be like, so probably like Super Mario 64 is just required. It's like a well, I've never claim. actually played that. I would yeah, that's argue what I, mean. I would recommend that. Doom, Quake, and Half Life are all in that category. I feel like I was they have you know I was thinking Quake. Category. I was Super actually Metroid thinking Quake. and Metroid Prime. I would put in that category for sure for like Metroidvania. Oh. <clears throat> and um, I'd probably put in Halo Combat what, Evolved as well. What is the goal? Yes, I agree with that. Here that we're trying to. I think that, so. When I say foundational, I mean like these would be the games that you need to play to get a good understanding of what video games are and like what their potential is. Um, like if you've never heard of video games before, this is your introduction. Well, to say like, this is like the peak. This is this is what we're talking about when it comes to like the hides that we can achieve with, uh, with video games. Hmm. I always feel like there'd be certain ones I'd put on there like that maybe it would seem unconventional because i probably recommend like i feel like deus ex needs to be on there as well if, if we're like... talking about i want to go with approachable and easy to complete if we're giving people a list so like super mario world in that case yeah we like you need to on, yeah a couple of smaller ones on the um that aren't too that they don't have to have too much of an investment in that they could play and soak up and get through um and an int an interesting thought on that like if you imagine so letting people know what you know retro video games it could be like um like i wouldn't necessarily even tell them to play an old game it'd be like play shovel knight this is like this is a distillation of that era of platformers it's a really cool yeah game. it could be a modern retro game absolutely yeah it could mm. um yeah hmm. Super Metroid or like Symphony of the Night yeah. would kind of yeah. probably like you. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah, I I mean, yeah, probably a Super Mario game was probably good for platforming because it's, you know, not particularly difficult and there's a lot of stuff in there and those are well, mm -hmm. well designed games and they have a lot of appeal and a lot of stuff to teach you. Um, I think, you know what? I probably would put 
I probably would put like The Last of Us or Uncharted on there just to be like, so this is this is kind of like the cinematic game. Like here's here's your here's what that is. Not well, necessarily that's... that I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah, The Last of Us's gameplay is not very it's good, cool. but yeah, I know. Yeah, but, but Pokemon, no, things. no chat. I would not have well, Pokemon. On we that list. we had that a is... couple of threads made on the subreddit after what we said about Pokemon. People were very upset with our treatment well, that's of fine. Pokemon. They can grow up at their pace, um, but yeah, they're uh... Pokemon is not a game that I would give to someone who I was talking. If if like if we had to compose a list of here three games to get someone into gaming. Or even a single mm. game to get people into gaming. I feel like that's almost more of a more of that who is that person kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. But um, if if it's just like a, I, I guess your quote unquote average person, um, I'd huh. probably give them Call of Duty Four with multiplayer. That'll be like a really easy way to get them hooked in. I think. Mm. Maybe I the... guess the concern will be if they want to play that. And only that, or if they would actually go somewhere from there. Maybe the Spider-Man game on PS4, because you've got, like, parkour That's elements, you've got some laser. combat. Yeah. It's very much your, your third-person action-adventure game with stealth elements, for sure. Yeah. Tet well, people say Tetris is like, man, I do really like Tetris. I love that game. I'm not sure if that would be the one that I would suggest. If, well, if, if we're it was talking like among actually many. first video game. If it was among like many, absolutely. First, yeah. yeah, if if we're saying you can give them a single video game to get them interested in the idea, I think Tetris would be pretty solid as a yeah. as a starter. Maybe, yeah, game you know what? You know what? Yeah, because it's so it's so straightforward. It's, um, yeah, it's and simple. Yet it it's easy to learn how to do. People Tetris. In, in Tetris is a game where someone, if they suck at it, they can they understand what it is to improve at it and what that means and what it looks like, you know. And it, I it, think so. Yeah, it's good in a way of like this. This you understand the the scope of the game relatively quickly, so you can. Yes. So yeah. this is the playing field. This is what it does. Do it. Now that I've been reminded of Tetris, I just booted up Tetris 99. As usual, <laughs> it's that, every it's day. the curse. It's the curse. And um, I just realized, so you, you have tokens that you can use to buy uh, stages that have different music and aesthetics. I don't think I've ever redeemed any of these because I have 325 tickets and like unlocking a theme only costs 15 and there aren't that many. I could unlock everything in this game, I think. That's how much oh I've played goodness. it. By the way... Uh, Mark the Cyborg, he's, um, he's a lad from uh, the Geeks and Gamers team, I believe. He watches us sometimes. He's, he popped on um, uh, on an EFAP prior. He was he sent me this. He's like, uh, my dog <laughs> looks a lot like Oh my Queen's god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Suddenly the confusion is much more understandable. That top <laughs> left, I totally see it. Holy crap. <laughs> oh Jeez. my good god. Mark, you are so lucky. Terrifying. How does it feel to own a celebrity? Yeah. And by the way, I, I want to take the cover off so people can see it more clearly, but OBS is currently frozen for me in such a way oh that goodness. it works, but my display of it is frozen. So I can click yeah. to go back to the things that I want, oh. but it doesn't change on the, on the program itself. Very kind of eerie, but yeah, so I'm sorry about <laughs> the cover, but you can kind of see it. Um... Amusing, to say the least. Portal might be another Hilarious. one. Portal, uh, Portal, Portal's a really good one for like Portal puzzle is games. Up there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. It, that, that's like the next stage, I feel like. this. That's a, the next this stage, is, kind of, yeah. Yeah, like what? You, you like the idea of video games? Because just flat out, some people just won't be. Um, for some reason. Yeah, some people just don't like video games. Don't um, like fun, enough, don't like cool things. Freaks, but <laughs> don't like people awesome like, yeah. stuff. Well, I'm so, not going to pretend like I understand that. I don't understand how somebody couldn't like video games. You know, uh, maybe well, a, a maybe a coke addict Roger, would say that about us. Not like Roger Ebert didn't like video games, Fringy. Yeah, I know no, he didn't no, like video yeah, games. Was, was it that he didn't no, like no, them? Will never be art. Oh, he or thought just, they weren't art. Yeah, which which oh, is also yeah. another wrong, very very <laughs> wrong. Well, opinion. fucking, very I'm pretty wrong. sure um, Amazing Atheist said that way back when. Which is a major mistake Man, that's, too. That's 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 one of those blunders. 
of a thing to well, say. The thing about it is, it's it sounds so it. wrong that you're like, what do you categorize as art then? Because like, it, you must be working with some kind of system that's just completely alien to me, because it just doesn't make any sense at all. In some it ways, make any like, sense me, video yeah. games are the greatest collection of many crafts all at once. It's like, Well, it's art, it's programming, it's design, it's storytelling. Uh, it's sound design. It's like it's 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 Acting. everything that film has plus like additional elements. I can't. Yeah, I can't open up a movie and pwn noobs. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we have people in chat being retards here. A game cannot be art. Art is paintings. A game cannot be art. Well, dude, I'm sure. Th I think they're joking. Well, art I think they're joking. Th that I person really... went on to say, "Is Monopoly art?" It's like is yes, yes. To art. Yes, 100% yes. Yeah. So, so this is why yes. we often don't use art yeah. as a way to like describe it's all art. art. It's, it's all art. art. Because art is super broad. <laughs> art is crayon. <laughs> like, yeah. Everything. It basically. Yeah. Art is communism. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, as we... Oh, wait. What? Oh, that thread. Do we even want to delve down Do we even want to? <laughs> remember that thread? Well, you remember it because it came up like just today. That thread where it was like, if communism is achieved, what will you do? Oh and my then everybody God. was told, nobody, wanted to, nobody wanted to be a farmer. Everybody wanted to be a farmer. Everybody wanted to do something really nice and fun. On their farm, I like that one. On my farm, well, yeah, and then on the response, my farm. your farm, your farm. <laughs> our farm, comrade. Well, and this person, and it's this our person, farm, comrade. <laughs> Garen fucking T. They have never been on a farm. Yeah, they. Where they, did you They'd have the idealized train? version of it in their head, which is yeah. That, as opposed, yeah, they they think that it's Farmville, and they could just give their friends shovels <laughs> and shit, and that's where, it, it's easy. That's where, a reference. Where did you? Oh yeah, it? shit. Yeah, a lot of people might not know. When did you read the Communist Manifesto? On a farm? <laughs> <The> farm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Fringy. <laughs> uh, yeah, that ought to dispel the Fringy as a communist <laughs> means where, for where at did, least another 15 minutes. <laughs> where did you learn critical theory? On a farm? <laughs> yes. I feel like... Yes. A lot of memes. Anyway. Next up is Rate the Rick vs. Peacemaker scene out of 10. Oh, that's like a, we're getting to like an 8 or a 9. Yeah, it's pretty good. There's, if I was to inspect the choreography, I might find some little bits. I know there's a weird cut at one point where Rick punches him and it cuts to an elbow, him elbowing him. It's a little weird. Um, I don't think it makes no sense. It feels more so like a jump forward in time by a, like a second um, for the sake of the action, but... Um, and I think you can give some room to Peacemaker not making sure he kills him as soon as possible because he really is more so invested in the drive than killing Rick. Um, which gives him a few gaps, but then, of course, he commits to it. And I think you, you get a vibe when he's, um, he's strangling him. The Peacemaker's like, you're really gonna kill me, so I have to kill you. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, really, really strong scene. Uh, is it, is it the favorite scene in the movie, do you reckon? It's oh, uh, might be mine. It might be mine because I think about Ooh. these two people and why they're doing what they're doing, and it, it gets me very invested. But there's a lot of good scenes in the film, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, there is a, there is a lot. Favorite. The fact that we have a bunch to choose from is kind of like it's kind of neat. Yeah, that's, that's interesting because like uh, instead of saying the end, was... the credits when it ended, when I could go home. <laughs> it's it's funny because you said that your your favorite character was like Sludbort. But you you picked a scene where that he's not even in. It's like as your favorite scene. Is that yeah. funny? Is that is that funny? Is that weird? I mean, it's not it's, fucking hilarious. Well, no, it's just <laughs> it's just it's it's interesting that um you know these two characters their conflict is so good. It's still like a favorite scene of the film, even if uh the, you know your favorite character period isn't a part of it. Yeah, it's, um... it's not. It's not like a critique or anything. It's just yeah. To me, it's a testament of the the character work in the film. That's uh, that's probably the better way to phrase it. Rick Flagg's final line is the counter to the whole "you can't talk about media for longer than it is" argument. Yeah, it's it's one of yeah. many. We talked for a while about Why that man? line. <laughs> like, and you know, we we talked about the movie in total for about seven and a half hours. That's not that much longer than the film. You know, this is it's kind of the same. Long man bad. Oh, what a joke. 
Oh yeah, that was, that was said about B and B Studios. Um, sorry, mm -hmm. I don't have a hundred dollars to tell you why you're gushing over trash. Like, oh, well, <laughs> you don't. I tell you what, you don't well, have, well, you do not have enough money to explain how we're. I mean, it's just well, as we. I feel as like we we've been pretty line, reasonable. We tore into this like film quite a bit. We did. It's five out of ten. You, you got to think we tore into it for five. We gave it a five yeah. out of ten. We you gave agree it with us. Um, this movie was fun because of the great character writing. That's it. Enough said. Uh, th this, um, you know, th th what you can draw out of it for fun. You know, when you have plot armor scenes or scenes of Harley killing everybody inexplicably, I could totally see someone saying, "I found those fun." I'd be like, "Yeah." I mean, you can find yeah, anything fun. fun you know? Zack Snyder probably loved it. Sure, well, I think he really—he probably can't promote it, right? Or be happy about it, because in some ways, this uh, people see like celebrating this as shutting down Aya, and Aya is connected to Snyder in in ways. The whole Man, thing. Man, just there's so much. There's so many things you need to factor into you could, this world instead yeah, you of could, just is it good? There's is it so bad? many fucking biases that makes it impossible yeah. to know if someone thinks something is something the way they've said it, or if it's because of, they got to toe a line of some kind. Man, it's not a fun way. It's not that is not the way to do it. But to each their own, I guess. Attempting to have a back and forth with chat, you guys learn nothing from Mister Nuggies Hassan. Hail EFAP High Rags. Hello. Don't worry, we'll ban all of you at the end. That's the way we do we'll it. We'll all here. be banned. Yeah. One of how you many months? In. Eleven months. <laughs> you. The more months you have, See the ya. faster the bad. Go outside and and uh, consume eat vegetation. Grass. Consume grass. Yeah. Remember yeah, to your good gnome, fuck. Look! Look at this super chat. Gnome. This movie fuck gave me something I haven't felt in a while: real stakes for the characters. I was concerned for if they would live and die. How amazing is that? With how much plot armor there is. Oh yeah, that's that's yeah. But like, yeah. I felt the same yeah. way. I was genuinely concerned. I feel like yeah. the plot armor in this movie is something that we will be referencing into the future as an example of whenever it crops up. Yeah. This is a good movie. Love you, rags. <laughs> All right. Four, five, and six do not register with these loons. It's either a negative or less than three if they hate it, or a what greater than seven. I think it's with. I think it's. Oh, they're talking about chat. Some people in chat. I was gonna say, how can they say that about us? We literally gave it a five. <laughs> we went yeah, for yeah. A, a very confused. Four, um, yeah, I yeah, I, I I get you. I get I get what you're saying. Uh, Rags, please stop saying the n word so much. Uh, well, no problem. Not charge cheese. Do they, oh, they don't like that word? Damn. They want rags to be... Hey, what? Nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> no, well, they, they just want rags to be more niggardly with the N-word. Uh, yeah. Man, you, uh, yeah. you, gotta be, you gotta be careful there. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the bot might have been like, what was that? What was that? It's a, it's a legitimate <laughs> word. <laughs> legitimate word. From, uh, from from that game. The, the, yeah, the you're one. acting like Back for I'm Blood zombies. Out. <laughs> that is just such an amusing story that these two separate lines just matched up at the worst possible time. Uh, it's really funny. Peacemaker 1, capture the flag. Oh. You didn't capture him, killed him. <laughs> but I guess you know, just counts. Uh, just got that's, out of the theaters. That's pretty good pun. Yeah. Just got out of the theaters and was notified before the film started the characters easily carried the film. Can't wait to hear you guys' thoughts. Well, we felt the same way. There you mm -hmm. go. Yeah. Um, it's it's like as if uh, applying the standard to this movie, it's generating a lot of very similar conclusions. Yeah, seems to be. At least in our community, different communities, different results. Um, like I said, I've seen yeah. some hardcore hatred for this film. And people who are like, "Hey, look, you know, this movie's not great, but Harley Quinn, man." <laughs> um. Hail, been an e-fapper from the beginning. Here is to another year of e-fapping. Hail Mola, hail Rags, hail Metal, hail Fringy, hail Mods, hail Guests. Hail indeed. Hi there. Oh boy. Yeah, hope, hey. you, hope you're still having fun. Three years on. Um, How can you hate Loki and like this? And then they got lots of smiley faces, so I don't know if it's... So, probably a Kappa thing, a Smug Ross? Possibly. In case Possible serious, Ross, yeah. just watch our Loki coverage and you'll know why. Yeah. Uh, we covered the whole thing. 
Assuming Gunn gets to do the series for Max, he's been named in a lawsuit alleging sexual assault. Yeah, I heard about that. Apparently recently he's, he's got a new thing that's... Uh, oh! Yeah. Oh, I hadn't heard about this. Um, but agree Gunn did Yeoman work on these characters? Yeah, I mean, I think he did good work, but yeah, I, I obviously don't know what's going to happen with whatever that lawsuit is or, or what's going on. I know very little about it. Um, I think there's a super chat F for Milton. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Named an, uh, sorry, James Gunn named an underage sex assault lawsuit for hosting pedophile-themed party. That, uh, I thought that that's the thing that he got fired from. Yeah, that's what I... Over. Well, so he got fired by them for it having happened. This looks like it's a step up from cancellation. This looks more like an allegation that's much more serious, I guess. I don't know. What the fuck? Oh, oh, Jimmy Urine. Oh, okay, that's his, that's his stage name. Okay. Uh, Jimmy Urine? Like P? Like P, yeah. Yeah, so his real name is James Uringer. Uh, you want us to make a good argument, but we have only 30 characters per dollar at best to make them. It's not an excuse, but that should be able to explain the lack of arguments. It doesn't when you have chat, and we were, we were keeping an eye on them all. And it feels weird to me, like, I, I feel like there's a lot of arguments you can still make with a paragraph. Um, mm -hmm. And then if you at least start a relatively strong argument or something, and then you can, you can bounce back and forth. Um, again, I'm just trying to think of an example, but obviously you can summarize plot armor in just two words. If you were like, my issue with, I don't know, Peacemaker's approach with Flag, if, I'm trying to think, like invent a scenario, it's just like, I don't know, I, um, I think he should have killed him way faster. It took him way too long. Like, that didn't take me long to say, if that was a position you, I'm just trying to think of like, what is this argument that it requires the essay, or longer than a paragraph? I feel like you guys have got plenty to work with in chat. And again, it doesn't have to be through a super chat. Funnily enough, you probably would have gotten too faster um, through chat than with through super chats uh, when we get onto sections like that. Um, but of course, you can't make arguments like we can because we have relatively infinite Big time green. and voices, oh. so you go boom, 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 boom. But like you do, you have to as much as you want us to appreciate that you can't make the argument in that time. Saying to us, "You're wrong. It's terrible." What do you want us to do with that? Just, I don't know. Um, Food for thought. I like the movie, but I know a guy who hates it because of all the violence. He thought the innocent civilians dying was unnecessary. Thoughts? I mean, it Some makes... Some people don't like violence. I mean, it's fair enough. It's... I mean, that's, if you're talking about thing. the act itself versus depicting it, so, like, I think it's good that we had that level of damage to motivate these partially bad people to really think about the choice they're going to make and stuff, but... I mean, it, it is a gory film. I don't know how much I can say for, you know, like, when people talk about, like, boobies or, or blood, and it's, like, justified to be in there or gratuitous, it's a tough line sometimes to define. Oh. You okay? Did you come? Oh, no, I just read what Southpaw put in the chat. Is it's controversial to think Birds of Prey is terrific, because it's terrific, yes. and if James Gunn had made the same movie, everyone would have completely embraced it. Nope. No slight against Gunn, just think we're undervaluing Kathy Yan here. Don't care who no, made Birds of Prey. No, you're a fucking crazy person. It was shit. Birds of Prey was shit. Fucking terrible. I mean, Birds of Prey's plot like, is, like, you know, it's got very similar and, and frequent problems like this one does, uh, plot armor included. Um, but, like, there's no fucking characters that are interesting in that. They're all, there's, like... Thin as Nothing. fuck or non-existent. Nothing of merit. Um, Rip, Jimmy, and Milton, our fallen comrades. Yeah, man. Gone but not forgotten. Yeah. Um, no text for one dollar. Even using chat, you can miss it. There is a two hundred to two fifty character per limit per message. Well, uh, change what I said to one ninety nine then. Whatever the lower one is, I I don't know. But again, like I said, we were reading chat at that point, so you don't need to worry about it. Um, with regards to the grooming comment about Harley, there are apparently sapient bipeds that believe women have no capacity to become adults, thus, from the Sesimo perspective, it was grooming. So, if someone was to argue to me that she's clearly doing it because she wants to maintain this strong position instead of being a prisoner, I mean, there's an argument there, but I don't think you can call that rape. Um, 
Especially when she's so engaging. Like power Stockholm dynamics. Syndrome. It would just be really bad power dynamics would be the... the yeah, and, and so that's without context. With context, she's like one... She's initiates. Um, he's just talking about getting married. It's all very weird, but like calling it rape, it's like we need to save that word for things yeah. like that are more, you know? That's a serious thing, so we should treat it like with the amount of seriousness well, then, I feel it deserves, you know? Then she kills him. Like, she doesn't seem to be worried about the power dynamics <laughs> there. So it's the just, power mm. dynamics of killing a person. <laughs> yeah, there's some power dynamics going on there. <laughs> um, oh no, this one says message retracted. I don't know what it said. It's gone. Oh. I guess, I don't know if they took it or YouTube did, but it's dead. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it friends. Still be in the friends don't eat friends. Well, yeah, and, you know, once Anawe got his friends, he didn't want to eat any of them. Um, this movie kind of reminded me of old B-movies I grew up watching. I think it's really appealing for that reason. Also, this is the thing. I figured this movie would be loved because its problems lie in plot, and most people don't give a fuck if your characters are on point. Um, so I'm just, like, weirded out by the reaction to it. You, you'd almost expect that it would have been beloved and, like, people would just hate the fact that EFAP have to piss all over it just because the plot line is convenient or something. Um, but no, uh, people, people were still pissed at it. And, and I think it's easily enjoyable for that, by the way. Because watching bullets miss from people who are random soldiers and stuff, which happens a lot in this film, is stuff that I can oftentimes just be like, eh, whatever, get back to my characters doing things, it's fine, I guess. Um, like on a personal level, and I think a lot of people feel that way. Because as you can see, a lot of people will like react instantly like, it's a fucking action movie. Like, as if that's a response to that. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's not like you're watching a Batman show where Batman is like a really, really incompetent detective. It's nothing like that. That felt pointed. That felt. Mm, I don't think that. I. Was, I, I don't mm, know. Mm. I wasn't. I wasn't being specific at all. I'm not naming any names. Um. Any of you guys big readers? I'm currently deep into the Wheel of Time series. Uh. No. Not. Like not books. for a long time. I finally <laughs> decided to start reading. Android's Dream of Electric Sheep because I've never read that. Watched Blade Runner, but I read that. Interesting so far. Hey, Fringy, we just need you to say, So smart me. Love book. <laughs> <laughs> so, so smart me. <laughs> love, love book. Um, and. <laughs> Uh, did any of you, anybody else? Because uh, I know Wheel of Time is considered like fantastic by a lot of people. I just uh, I do not. I'm not familiar with that. I've heard of it, but I'm just not familiar with I it. Really I really want to read like, it at some point. I think that's one of Wolf's like favorite book series. So, mm. um, I wish I was a bigger reader. I'm just attention deficit as fuck, so it's difficult. I'm a slow reader. I I need to read more. I've been trying to lately. Uh, I think a better way to do this help scene would be. So this is it says would be dead dash whoops. I'm a little bit confused about that, but it says blood sport shooting the fish things. Oh, I guess because oh, they're saying I almost like as if they were about to say dead. I get it. Blood sport shooting the fish things and the shark getting close to Harley in panic. Um. Oh, do you mean like he heads toward Harley so that it helps that they're able to connect with him fast and then. I guess, uh, dead shot. Sh it's, I just did it, thanks. And there's a blood sport shooting <laughs> them. Um, yeah, th th this is what I mean. We could speculate for a while about all of the... Th this is like, everything's fixable in this, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Um, I think people are being possessed in Hollywood. I don't, okay. I'm not sure. Well, I guess, like, a Kappa meme thing, or... I don't know. I don't. Know. Well, the thing is, the problem is, I don't even know what part of the conversation that's referring to. But yeah, uh, King Shot hits the ground, and you see a tear roll down his face. I was gonna mention that. The thing is, he just come out of a torrent of water, so it's not clear if that's a tear or if that's just water. But uh, it is lined up with his eye, so you kind of it's just like, oh man. Again, just making you feel even worse for him. Um, stories like James Gunn are crazy and bizarre. I assume they're referring to the story of like the 
the pedophile party thing, which is weird as hell, yeah. Or he, like, dressed up as a priest, a Catholic yeah, like, priest Yeah, I think the party. idea is you dress as a, like, lol, those, those types always prey on children, then dress up also as children. Like, you can choose to come as either. And it's just like, that is really fucking strange. That's bizarre. It's really off-putting, but it's... That's I don't, bizarre. If you, I, I guess if you've got the right vibe going, everyone knows it's a joke, and you're like, how ridiculous... I, I, it's a super edgy sense of humor. But like, it's it's the kind of thing where if, it, if some friends came up with that idea, I'd just be like, I ain't fucking going to that. <laughs> yeah, not... I mean, you no, guys no, do your no, thing. No, I just no. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. uh, I, in no, fact, I, I would actively yeah. advise against it. Especially if I were like a celebrity or a politician. Oh yeah, Man, even, if, even, if was, even if they were a celebrity, I'd just be like, I'm you saying, really especially think this is a good idea. Yeah, especially, no, I, yeah, playing, especially, yeah. yeah. If I was like, if I was the Pope, you know, it would be really bad for my image if I went to a pedophile <laughs> theme party. However, my my priest outfit would be fucking on point. Yes. Um, what if, like, what if what if no one recognized the Pope at a pedophile party because he wasn't dressed as the Pope; he was dressed as a priest. Some guy, and people aren't just aren't just not used to seeing him when he's not in his <laughs> Pope outfit. Yeah. There are things an arrow can pierce that bullets don't. Physics is a wild lady. Yeah, they I can, imagine yeah. that. Yeah, I, that so, right? yeah, like how sharp and how fine is the point at the end? I think it's. I think if it's plates, though, like if you have like Kevlar threads and things, that's that's one thing. But if you have like plates, I don't think an arrow or I don't think an arrow is going through that. Hmm. That's the thing. I I just um. I don't. So if if a bullet can't pierce a thing, does that mean no knife can? I'm like, I don't know that that's how that works. I guess uh, I just don't know enough about how it all works to, to be definitive. I don't. I don't think that's a whole. Rather, it's like just a way that certain materials can, can do certain things physics wise. Yeah. Um, quick addition. That's a 50 AE. I assume in relation to the bullets being fired. Caliber of the Desert Eagle, yeah. As far as I know, they they they're in 50 AE and um, 357. Um, I'm not sure if they make them in other sizes. That's just the two that I'm aware of. Hail Mola, King of the I Welsh couldn't remember Long. off the top of my head if he had a big ass 1911 or if he had a Desert Eagle. I just could not remember off the top of me. It was a little absurd as sure a gun, Desert but it's Eagle. also kind of cool. It was, yeah. Like it's just big ass fucking gun. Yeah, it is definitely an intimidating firearm, that's the thing. Yeah. Um, Hail Mola, King of the Welsh Longman. True. There are Longman in many different factions. I am the King of the Welsh ones. Um, king of the Welsh ones. Collisions of that velocity make bullets deform and deflect. Definitely not shatter. Neither character could get hit from those shots. Is it impossible for it to do that? A bit, the problem is, like, it's nanotech. I don't know the nature of the the tiny bullet. I don't know if it's like weird nanotech or yeah. it looks like a yeah. I don't know. I just don't know. Like, uh, if I had someone who knows this sh like super shit about all kinds of bullet collisions, I could be be convinced that what happens there is impossible. I guess, but it's probably here's the thing: it's probably horseshit. I almost it's almost certainly total nonsense. But well, does it not enter into sci-fi if it's like these bullets are made That's this way and can do this? It's 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 Knuckles's weird fucking thing that he <laughs> I don't know the nature of it. I I'll believe that the important part is that his bullet is special because he's he uses special gear and tech so it goes through the other bullet. I guess I can go with that, but I say sorry. I, I totally understand why anybody would think it was yeah. it's, it's a bit bullshit. I understand. Um, if I super chat, pee pee, poo poo, and I make as many arguments as you did as you were doing something wrong, just saying you're wrong is not helpful, pee pee, poo poo. <laughs> okay. Just saying you're I wrong is not helpful. I agree, word. yeah. Uh, well, because that's the thing. If someone said, I'm not trying to be helpful, I'm just telling you I think you're wrong, I would just be like, okay then. Look, there's just not much I can do with it, that's all. I'm just, like, I'm just gonna say the reverse back, I guess. Uh, I like that random percussion cap revolver Harley grabbed was loaded, didn't discharge when dropped, and all it had, all they had to say was a quick lampshade. Well, apparently they recognized that that one was ridiculous. They didn't seem to notice the rest in the movie. 
because we, that's the only lampshade we got. Um, and it was pretty distracting too, because like, why couldn't you have done anything else to make that work? I don't know. I guess they really wanted the payoff of he turns around and gets shot, because it's so un, un unexpected, I guess. Well, st her stabbing him would have had the same effect, and they were they were in an area where it would be more believable. Well, and they smashed like us with these shards of glass to use as well, right? Yeah, exactly. That could work. Um, exactly, guys. Doc Ock in Spider-Man 2 isn't accurate to his original comics counterpart, but he's still a great villain. No. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. I didn't appreciate, bring it up. I didn't appreciate bring it appreciate the spirit of the comment, though. The, mm -hmm. the the if you and this is majority accepted if you think he is a strong or great villain and is he not comics accurate because I wouldn't fucking know he's not comics accurate the tentacles do not talk to him in the comics I know that for a fact is that enough to throw people off though will they say he is in spirit still on on point um, this, this yeah, usually where it goes venom, venom I I don't I don't fucking know. I just it's like, you know what? It's great that you separate your assessment of Doc Ock's quality from the comics, but maybe you should like pay attention to just how he how consistently he behaves through the film or how the entire plot runs on New York police being too stupid to track him when he's like the easiest person in New York to track. I don't know. Or how about the fact that he uh doesn't uses tentacle blades to kill Spider-Man when we know that he has the intent to kill him, or even just injure him. <laughs> um, my point about someone saying Harley being groomed was that there are people who believe females that literally cannot consent to acts with males because of sexual power dynamics. Perhaps I misheard the point before. Well, so, this is the thing. I think there are reasonable things to say about power dynamics, including, but not limited to, stuff yeah, like more you are trapped in a hole and you can't be fed until you agree to have sex with your captor and he will put you in better standing. It's like, so that really wasn't... You can't really call that giving consent, can you? Well, it's all about informed consent, you know, like informed, not under duress, not under, like, fully, this is your decision. However, having a woman and man and thus the man has, is stronger and therefore it's an imbalanced power dynamic and she cannot consent to sex, I'd be like, so that's a crazy world and I do not consent to live in it. Uh, stop saying yeah, imagine, yeah. you're confusing the poor people. Just say, my watch is great, the company that makes it is bad. My watch isn't now bad. I rags. Hello. I don't know that, I, you say that that would confuse people less? I feel like they're gonna be more confused because now we're talking about like products and companies and um, someone could go as far as saying a product becomes bad when a company that made it is like revealed to have done it through the harvesting the souls of children or some shit. When we're talking about someone enjoys the story and considers it well written and then you find out it is non-faithful and does that affect the story at all? And the answer is that it shouldn't, but some people may actually try and bite that bullet and say, you know what, if it turns out he really did base the Lord of the Rings books off a comic and he completely shat on the original works, then yes, Lord of the Rings is now bad. I'd be like, damn. But, um, I don't, the reason we pick Lord of the Rings... Standard. Yeah, and the reason we pick Lord of the Rings is because I don't believe people will bite the bullet on Lord of the Rings. It's not gonna happen. God, well, I mean, there's, like, pretty big changes from the books to the movies that were necessary, like the, uh, the scouring of the Shire was, was axed. The thing is, um... You need to, like, the reason you come up with that hypothetical is you have to slay most of Lord... Because, like, some people will be like, well, most of it is intact, the spirit is there, and the changes were reasonable. They'll say stuff like that. But if you change it to the point where it's, like, a completely different story, they can't say that anymore. Um, no one's saying the spirit of Hill House was carried forward into the show, because it's got nothing to do with the book. You know, like, the spirit of it being spooky, I guess? Mm -mm. Well, you, um... It's it's funny because the characters in the Suicide Squad, like, I was curious to see what Polka Dot Man was going to be like because, as I understood, he turns the Polka Dots on his suit into, like, gadgets. And I thought that we were going to get something like that in the movie, and it wasn't that. They, like, it was, they were a lot more weaponized, but it was fine. It was, like, it was, it was a fine change. It doesn't, I, I can't say it's, like, 
uh, like an improvement from the comics or it's a step down. It's just like it functions. And if, yes. if it's some, if someone's only knowledge of Polka Dot Man is from this movie, then I highly doubt that they're going to have that change affect their experience with the movie. Um, someone in chat said, I think with Tolkien and such an epic work, people should create something that respects the written word he created for it to be considered good. Did we have this conversation Wrong. at the Bible once? The problem is these are extremes and people just don't want to give them up. <laughs> like, yeah. if someone can make a whole Lord of the Rings well, film like that has nothing to do with Lord of the Rings, right? then surely it has to be considered bad. And it's just like, no, I'm sorry, no. Spider-Man is the big part of the, you know, Spider-Man, the established character. It's like, right, so that well, means it's beyond reproach. You know, if, if we, if Lord of the Rings existed as is, but Frodo was called Peter Parker, and Gandalf was called Uncle Ben. Did you say <laughs> Peter Parker? No, I didn't say that. That okay. would be very bad. Um, <laughs> and so, and what I'm arguing is, and someone goes, yeah, I adapted it from one of those Spider-Man comics, but I changed up the story a bit, quite a bit. Does Lord of the Rings just become shit because their names have changed? It's like, no. No. Not. Uh, yeah, I fucking hope not, because there's a lot more in Lord of the Rings uh, than just whether or not it was faithful. This is the problem we face. Um, uh, God, all modern comics are just garbage because they differ from the original Golden Age comics from the 40s. I don't know if I'm assuming they mean. It has to be satire. I think that's sarcasm. I think that's sarcasm. Yeah. Think that's has sarcasm. To be sarcasm. yeah. yeah. Well, from what I understand, modern comics really are in a fucking dire place. But I don't know that it's because they're not faithful to where they started. You know, it's more oh, so just the writers well, are shit. Yeah, apply, Superman being able to fly. You, to, you know, that's something. Yeah. Well, I think I think you could apply it to everything, right? Because the comics changed from the 40s to the like 50s, 60s, Golden Age, then Silver Age, and then like you get into the you know the 80s and the 90s and then 2000s. It's it's never the same. You can't be consistent over the course of like eighty years. Mm. It's really hard. Uh, Mola, can you give me a refund for this super chat? I couldn't find the exposure option. Um, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, oh! There's your exposure already. You've got it right now. Here, here it comes. It bathe in the exposure. Hi, rags. Hello to you. Um, adaptation is a bad argument. EFAP is correct. Losers. Listen, it's just impossible to maintain. That's why we can't adopt that fucking argument. It's useless. The ad like, this isn't that we don't like the argument. It's fucking useless. You, you cannot, Remember like, Snapchat? figure out where to put it and when. It's really hard. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's why we don't like it. See, so someone's super chat isn't this basic knowledge. It's like, ugh, don't, don't. <laughs> just, just don't. Like, like, I wonder no. what these people think of the Lego Batman movie. Is that a bad adaptation of Batman because it's because parodying so it? Does he kill any Lego yeah. people? <laughs> well, well, let's look at the Snyder people. How many people who are usually like, it has to be yeah. exactly like the comic, suddenly sacrifice that standard when Snyder Cut came yeah. out? Well, that's the thing. Oh. They sidestep. They say, yeah, well, it's Elseworld Superman, so it's fine. Oh, and okay. there's a lot of well, shit Elseworld MCU, that's Elseworld well, I don't, yeah, Spider this is what I mean. As soon as you accept Elseworld as a possibility, surely everything's on the table. Well, so, it, this is really funny, right? Um, in, the, in, the, in the first Batman comic, Batman punched a guy into a vat of acid. <laughs> um, in, in other early Batman comics... He used guns, um, yeah. and then uh, come the '40s, the Comics Authority, like, like there was a there was a, a code, like a like a moral code that they had to follow that was bestowed upon them by the publisher. Oh, well, that Batman could no longer kill. You. So um, you got this this fellow of mine, this 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 friend of mine, Batnick, who was like a big Batman fan, basically explained this to me. The creators were forced to give Batman a no kill rule. Which basically means this rule that Batman is widely beloved for nowadays came as a result of censorship. Actually, that's not true. Um, exactly. Yeah, Southpaw, get fucked. fucked. Yeah, Southpaw, get um, fucked. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's a little bit of a wrinkle because the Comics Code Authority actually came not in response to Batman killing people, but people thinking that Batman was gay with Robin. What? Um, thanks. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> And that was in the fifties. Went sliding up and down the bat pole. <laughs> so there was a there was a book called Seduction of the Innocent that just oh, went no. to great lengths to try and paint Batman as a pedophile 
gay man who was in a homosexual <laughs> relationship oh, with Rob. Oh no. <laughs> Citing weird things like occasionally they would sleep in the same bed together for some reason. I've seen um, some of those, yeah, images. It's odd. It's odd. Yeah, so they so so there was a mandate that one, okay, yeah, the a government's mandate? gonna be a Oh no. So there was a mandate um, that, um, uh, from the publisher. There's uh, not from the publisher, but like the comic industry in general. That okay, we got to start. We got to start fucking taking care of our own shit, or the government's gonna start cracking down on us. Uh, so, so that was so they just basically introduced the thing where you know you couldn't have like violence, sex, drugs, vampires for some reason. Um, gay. Like a whole bunch gay. of kooky shit. Gotta have gay vampires. <laughs> Homosexuals, obviously. Uh, but the no-kill rule actually happened uh, as a mandate to the editor when Robin came along. So there was like one year of Batman being able to kill people in 1939. And then um, as soon as Robin came along in 1940, um, a publisher then said, look, he's got a kid psychic now. We kind of want to take it in some different directions. Uh, let's have it be that he abhors violence and gun use and all that. And uh, that's kind of how that happened. So they were still figuring out what they wanted from the character. At that point, but it wasn't it wasn't the the writer's own conscious decision. It was forced upon them by the publishers. Um, I need to actually read the book that goes into a little bit more detail, but I think that might be I think that might be the deal. Um, and then that and then like the Sorry. oh the editor yes yeah, so the editor yeah. uh so the editor fucking yeah. Yeah, uh, I guess because it's a part of the conversation, Glib just said, uh, DC Comics heroes stopped killing because parents wrote letters to the editor concerned that their children would imitate the violence and killing. Specifically, they mentioned Robin, Batman 4. Um, okay, because I read something different. That's why I got to get this book well, where a I've, lot of this is I've, documented. I'm yeah, I got my information from an unreliable source, apparently. Well, I, I'm sure it's easy to get lost in all the specifics for this because it was so long mm -hmm. ago and there's going to be lots of different this accounts. Is a... Because there's a Wikipedia that shows like what the code was in 1954. It's a long list. There are yeah. a lot. So here's an interesting one. Um, the crime shall never be presented in such a way as to create sympathy for the criminal, to promote distrust of the forces of law and justice, <laughs> or to inspire others with a desire to oh, imitate boy. criminals. That's quite a restrictive thing to do. Never, so you can never show someone committing a crime that leads to you having sympathy for them? What about the guy stealing bread? That feels like the immediate one. I guess they just avoid that. Bread for well, I guess, yeah, you... Um, yeah, and it but... says, if crime is depicted, it shall be as a sordid and unpleasant activity. Um, Damn. Policemen, judges, and government officials and respected institutions shall never be presented in such a way as to create disrespect for established authority. Um... In every instance, good shall triumph over evil, and the criminal punished for his misdeeds. Um, no comic shall use the words horror or terror in its title. Um, man. I killed a lot of books. Oh no, the horror. And there's a lot, oh no, there's the a terror. lot here, yeah. Um, All lurid, unsavory, gruesome illustrations shall be eliminated. Seduction and rape shall never be shown or suggested. Not even seduction? What even counts definitively, you know? <laughs> oh gosh. Well, females I mean, this shall be drawn. Was... Yeah, females shall be drawn realistically without exaggeration of any physical qualities. <laughs> yeah, nobody How the fuck that do you one, qualify that? <laughs> But I mean, in in general, I guess this is like what happens when you have a code that was written in the 1950s. Like yeah. it would be written different time, man. It was a different everybody... time. Well, yeah, because I guess when they wrote it, they assumed that everybody knew what they were talking about. But like at this point in time, it's like this is so vague. A lot of this is really vague. What... Meanwhile, a lot of these are incredibly restrictive. Um. Sorry for the random question, but have you guys seen Goldman's, Goldman's, Goldman's uh, two-hour Ray is not a Mary Sue video? I have not. I, I, no, I, and look, he's wrong. I don't, but I, I, this is the thing, I, I just don't care about the Mary Sue label as much anymore. It's, it, it almost seems like it only ever blurs the conversation. Like, does she really qualify as having each of these particular characters? It's like, Ray sucks. She's a terrible character. <laughs> I don't care character. if she qualifies as a Mary Sue anymore. Like, it's such yeah, a, regardless, like, she's shit, regardless. Yes. Um, 
you. Uh, fair enough. Was just thinking if you tried to tackle it from a different angle, it'd be more digestible. I mean, it's not like anyone thinks the Patriot's bad because it isn't historically accurate, right? I rags. Ugh. That was a thing. Well, I mean, Hello plenty of people still you, absolutely do, yeah. Uh, do you, um, scanning. I feel like the problem with modern comics isn't because it's not like GA comics, but because of inconsistencies, changing established characters, and attacking the fans. I, well, I mean, well, I mean, the attacking the fans would be independent of the content itself, right? Yeah, because there's there's plenty of people who are going to be complete ass. Like, for example, if if Peter Jackson was consistently an asshole to fans, he just always was. It's like Lord of the Rings is still good. Like, it's just going to be mm -hmm. independent, unless you're saying that bleeds into the writing. Which can happen. It you sometimes can... does, like with She Thor, I think. There's a couple of instances. Well, the, um, I feel like the obvious example, uh, this isn't necessarily one to one, but just Red Skull saying Jordan Peterson things. Really fucking weird, <laughs> sort of bleed in. You're just like, oof. Okay. Um, so, yeah. You're like, trying to flip there a little bit. But um, I still think there are ways to do that with talent, you know? So, like, I guess I would just go as far as saying that um, we can still boil it down to good old-fashioned incompetence. Um, but there are flavors. I appreciate that. Uh, does Milton get to join the other EFAB legends, such as the Don and Jacob Kane? I think Milton would have a seat at the table. He's, he's a good guy. You know, the got an untimely death, yeah. Uh, just watched it. First and best movie I've seen since Joker. The first um, movie you've seen um, since Joker? That. Holy shit. That was wow, that's been a lot of good movies Jeez. since Joker. Maybe they're talking specifically about comic book movies? Um... Would that make sense? Uh, yeah, I guess. And that makes more sense. Yeah. Um... It's... But they said first movie they've seen since Joker, it's just like, holy shit. Man, that's not a lot of content you're watching there. I was about to say, of course it's the best movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true, yeah. It's the only movie you've seen since since then. That checks out. Person's like Jay. Yeah. Uh, Lego also has a preclusion of violence, which is why you don't have Rick and Morty Legos or Halo Legos. No explicit warfare is allowed. Um, you have Halo have Mega Avengers. Blocks. Have Halo Mega Blocks. That's right. They have... but also, they got like Avengers. Uh, yeah, they've got Lego. they've got Lego superheroes, Lego Star Wars. They're actually they've made Lego Friends sets and a Lego Seinfeld set recently. Well, and Star Wars. Um, he followed up with saying, huh. "Um, does that make yeah, Batman Lego Movie censored? Does he not beat people up in that at all? He fights people. Yeah, he does. So there's a lot of fighting in that movie yeah it must be preclusion of specific kinds of violence i'm guessing but as long as it doesn't Maybe. impede your story as it was but for example if he goes to punch someone and then he just like pushes them over because he's not allowed for, and it's just fucking jarring as hell it's like yeah that's gonna cause problems but if it's like no you can't detonate any nukes in your batman story it's like that's fine like, i can yeah, deal with that right yeah um i figured bloodsport was just using drinkers multi-barreled concept gun I remember that. That was Jesus. Seven cylinder Christ. revolver. Was that twenty nineteen? That joke was That was Joker. Oh Jesus you Christ. Know what? Lego also had Pirates of the Caribbean and Lord of the Rings sets. Yeah, and fucking hell, talk about violence. Like orcs like orc minifigures and Urukai minifigures and shit. Like hmm. Funny that. The Lego thing is about military vehicles and war relating to the sets, I think. So, Avengers Infinity War Lego sets, are they cool? Star Wars. Because they exist. Well, and as Star long as it's Wars. not Infinity yeah. Terror. AT-ATs. I mean, maybe they do yeah, Maybe, maybe fantasy is okay? Is. I don't know. But how... Well, well I mean, science yeah. fiction, right? Like, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm with you. I, I don't get how these rules work. Yeah. These rules never seem to... Maybe it's because Halo was, like, M-rated for a long time. So it'd be weird to have an M-rated uh, Lego set, even though a lot of adults, you know, you play with Legos. I don't know. Um, didn't like Polka Dot Man's death. He got what he wanted, becoming a superhero and dying, but making it a joke was distasteful, or kind of distasteful. Would have liked a sacrifice better a than joke. a death by lack of attention. A death by lack of attention. I mean, you, you can you I, can see why he was dis like is distracted. He's doing the thing that he's always wanted to become. And he's looking to his leader for like some form of adoration, and then he's killed 
like I don't I don't really see that as like that insulting. I don't even know if I'd call it a joke really. It's like I didn't know it was supposed to be a joke. I I yeah. was heartbroken and I think a lot of people were too. I think I don't I, know if this I person's didn't... saying making it a joke haha or making it a joke in terms of like what a fucking joke. He just died cuz he wasn't looking. I don't know if they're saying it that I... way or not. Um, I disagree. I don't know how long. insanely competent he needs to be as a character also. I mean, he's, like, I yeah, he's, he's super backstory. unstable as, as a, as a, like, a, his mental state. I don't know, it, it all lined up for me, and I, I felt it. I was very sad when he died. Uh, and I could, I could fucking see it coming, because he wasn't looking at Starro. That's, like, specifically why. It was like, oh, fuck, it, it could get him, it could get him, it could get him. It's, it just got him. It's just like, ah. Uh. Yeah, I, I don't know. This is the problem when it comes to a lot of breakdowns, where it's just like, someone's like, oh, that was just insulting and bullshit, while someone else is like, I found that really meaningful and quite tragic. It's just like, hmm. And it's it's tough to go further than that either way. Shows Tentacle Blade. It's your mom! Hi, Southpaw. Hello! I mean... Yeah, that, that, was a, that was a legitimately funny your mom joke that James Gunn pulled off. I loved it. That is your mom! Ali dying in a sacrificial way to defeat Starro would have been a pretty good way to write it out while also making her last act a good one. I don't know. I don't know what I want for Holly. Whatever I... gets her, whatever fucking kills her. I would, I would have wanted the, the, what are they called? The Silaxes? Crylaxes? The tear to pieces? I... Yeah, like she's helping King Shark and then they turn on her. Um, they fight off the maybe, maybe Starro like falls face down so that she's stuck in the eye. Oh god, blood. you watch her <laughs> drown in inside. blood. <laughs> Oof. Be eaten alive she's poisoned by the blood because it's actually, actually kind of acidic. I wouldn't call that plot armor, but it's like, yeah, she would have been really unlucky if Starro fell the other way. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Was, was, that was like the whole conversation. Are you only just accepted that was happening? <laughs> it seemed no, like you reacted well, yeah, to it well, really I, late. I'm only just computed. No, I'm... I just I only just processed what it what what it means. I only just got the mental oh, right, image, okay. and that was my reaction to it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it would have helped with the whole no one is safe thing. Like, I mean, yeah, the, the, she was the main one. Everybody agreed that they knew she wasn't going to die, which is really unfortunate. And in some ways, I really do think it would have helped the film to have her be one of the instant kills at the beginning. Um, because we, we'd be like, holy fuck, not even Harley Quinn survives. Uh, this is late, but chat could be an acronym for completely hopeless and terrible. Oh, they're not completely hopeless and terrible, though. It's not just completely. It's just some flumps and flams in there. We've seen Hassan chat. Yeah. Just got here. Has EFAP chat bitched about Southpaw yet? Um, you know, bits and pieces. Probably. We, 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 we've all gotten it, I say. <laughs> Probably. Mm -hmm. Different takes, you know? People have been bitching about Fringy, too. And Evan. I'd say and Rags, we, of course. We've all had chunks taken. People are very upset that we we would rate this so highly when they would rate it a 5. That was like, yeah, we were... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, javelins were used by the ancient Greeks to destroy tanks, you know? That's true. It's on their vases. You can, yeah, read it. Often. Yeah. Um, someone said in the Ray is not a Mary Sue video that Ray is only hated because she is one of the only main female characters who's not dependent on a main male character to be relevant. Yeah, excellent analysis. Just top tier. You nailed it. There's nothing more to it. Um, I have five rats, and that's a lot to handle. Five million is something else. Yeah. But yeah. It's gonna be... It's gonna be a nightmare to get them all fed. But there's, you know, there's plenty of corpses around, I guess. <laughs> how, how, we, how we go. Um, the AT-80 is a combined arms weapon. It needs air support. The problems are General Veers and General Recon, not the weapons, vehicles, or troops. Oh, are we gonna have to talk a little bit about Hoth? I mean... I don't want to talk about Hoth. I guess their argument is that they're supposed to be combined with other units to make them as effective as possible, but it's just like, but you can make them more effective as individual units if you wanted to. Yeah. And they're just not. Well, it's just... they're. I think the, the biggest issue, of course, is just the Rebels see these vehicles that are so... that have such obviously 
easily exploitable weaknesses and they're like no we're gonna take them on from the one angle that they can fire us upon <laughs> That's the thing, man. The first thought is, like, maybe put a cannon on the back end and have one guy in there. Just well, There is a design. There is an AT-AT design that has a rear gunner, and I don't know why they didn't go with it. They, The juggernauts from the prequels were actually, uh, like, they came up with those for Empire Strikes Back. They were going to be an alternative to the AT-ATs. They went with the AT-ATs instead because looks cooler, I guess. <laughs> Um, I once had to beat a rat to death with a mag light. Don't underestimate their power. Well, um, it's funny when they get into the eye. It's like rats are fantastic at swimming and holding their breath. Um, and obviously gnawing and chewing. Like, it's, yep. it's kind of insane what rats can do. Yeah, rats are a little bit OP in a way. Um, so is this movie any good? Well, that was sent in around the time we were It has many good in things end. in it. Yeah. That's the thing, the word to describe this one is complicated because good is usually 5 plus, and then 5 or lower is bad. It's just like it sits at 5, it's just like, it is a movie. It is okay. Uh, Star should have been controlled by a supervillain. The Suicide Squad has to find Superman and free him from crypto prisons. Superman frees Starro. Hold on, hold on. Guy in chat saying, Ratcatcher being the most OP character was kind of dumb. She's not OP. She's not OP. She's a glass cannon. Yeah, she's a quintessential glass cannon. She can get punched to death. There's a reason why she was, like, running away from Peacemaker, absolutely terrified, practically shitting her pants. Yeah, she tried yeah, exactly. to get her rats in, but even if she'd gotten the time to be able to activate that thing, he probably would have killed her. Like, if he hadn't knocked it out of her hand, she kept it going. It's like, by the time the rats get there, she's dead. Uh, Starro... Yeah, so the, about the whole Starro should have been controlled by a supervillain and the Suicide Squad has to find Superman and free him, I, that just sounds like a completely different story. That sounds like a knockoff of what they did with Taskmaster and Black Widow, and that was shit. Well, you know, it, it could be executed well, maybe, you know? Um, Y'all need to read all tomorrows. I'll keep posting this until you do so. Read all tomorrows? Is all tomorrows a comic or something? Read all tomorrows. Yeah, I got no clue. I'm assuming it's a comic. All tomorrows. Do not know. Uh, tips for video essays? Oh, man. Ray dropped. <laughs> uh, Volume you, balancing. Yeah. Learn from your mistakes. Accurate references. Learn to speak well. Have friends watch them before you release them. Try and get some friends yeah, who are willing to criticize you, I guess. Purchase a decent microphone. Get good acoustics for your um audio. Really, you know, cover the stuff you really fucking care about. Don't just cover it because it's topical. It'll show. Yeah. But the, the person that said Ratcatcher was OP said, Oh my bad, I meant in the context of Sorrow. Still not OP. Still no. not OP. It took. Remember, consider how many rats it we, took. Yeah, like consider what, that Harley had to jump into the eye of Star with a what I presume to be a magic javelin. And and it like it would have taken those rats a long time to eat Starro if, well, if it hadn't been for the eye hole. That's the thing so I can like, picture. Starro man, might try to just fucking roll its way to the ocean and go mm -hmm. under to get rid of the rats. You know that could have happened. Um, and secondly, like, if Superman was to fight Ratcatcher 2, she ain't fucking winning. <laughs> um, if, Superman, if Superman were to fight Starro, he, he has his heat vision, he has his super strength, he has his flight, he could, he could carry Starro back up to the stars. That's, yeah, this is the thing about Starro. I, I guess people wanted it to be stronger, but it's like, it is, from what we gather, a fleshy creature. And uh, if you have the right weaponry, you can kill it relatively easily. Like, like I said, I think we said earlier, it's like, could a nuke kill it? It's like, probably. I don't, I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, and so just because it was knocked out by her and her rats doing something very complicated and specific, it's like, I, I don't really see how that, that's that bad. Um, the super chat said, obviously Peacemaker High Rags. I think this is about favorite characters. Hello. Yeah, it's a great choice. And... I hope his series is top-notch, especially compared to the fucking Marvel shows. Like, please. If it's been written by James Gunn, then please, it, it wouldn't fall for a formula, right? It's gonna be an actual story. That'd be nice. 
Um, I like that the poster for it is like, fuck, it's Peacemaker. <laughs> yeah. What if King Shark just non-stop dropped the N-word? That'd be a different movie, you know? It'd be a different movie. I don't know what people would then think he about would it. Be my, then he would be my favorite character. There you go. It would be bold. He, he'll like, do anything for liberty. If you don't like He'd eating like, human, I'm you're boring and I don't want to be friends with you. Damn. The Norway likes eating humans. Yeah, he does. Some are delicious. I wonder which humans taste best. Mm. Maybe he knows. I wonder if the fat ones taste better or worse. Like it depends on how fat. Yeah. He wants that juicy shack meat. Mm. Um which is better on character, the Suicide Squad or the Guardians movies? Oh. Uh. That's actually a little bit difficult to answer instantly. Because. Uh, um, yeah. I need to rewatch them. So, mm. Guardians 2 was better with characters than Guardians 1 was, as I recall. Um, Why do you conclude like that? Like, Guardians. Um. Just paying off a lot of stuff that was set up in the first movie, basically. Uh, I'd say probably the strongest character from Guardians 1 is probably... I mean, I guess it would have to be Star-Lord. Maybe followed by Groot? This is, It's tough. We'd probably have to rewatch yeah. them and break them down fully. But it's going to come close, because like, we're dealing with some strong character content in uh, the Suicide Squad. Seriously. PSS has Harley, so Guardians... I don't She's think not... Harley completely undoes all the great characters on TSS, like, though. The problem is, like, I don't like her, but I would. I don't think she. The film is docked points for character for her. I don't think that's how. I don't think that's fair. She's. She behaves as Harley probably would from how she's been written. Like, I don't. I don't like so... the dialogue she has, and I just don't find her interesting because of a lack of development they could have given her. That doesn't like... make her like broken or anything. Like, let's say that you've got. Like, okay, five great characters in Guardians, and then you have ten great characters in the Suicide Squad, and then you have one bad character in the Suicide Squad as well. Like, I mean, the reality is that the Suicide Squad had double the great characters. Well, the problem there is, is that I don't know which film yeah. does have... That's the thing, we'd have well, to break them both down. I'm, 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 I'm being hypothetical here, but, you, like... If we're to assume that Guardians has no bad characters, no characters as bad as Harley, right? And Harley's just the only really bad character between the two movies. I don't, I don't um, know that. I don't. Think I would call her a bad character. I don't like her. Bad characters to me are people like Zod, where I'm just like, he's completely broken. He makes no fucking sense at all. Yeah. Um. I don't know that that would be something I apply to Harley Quinn. She, to be honest with you, it's really hard to apply that to Harley Quinn because she's so fucking crazy that like she can do lots of things. And you can be like, well, it doesn't necessarily break anything we know. Um, I learned a while back you guys don't cover anime, but I still want to express that JoJo is really poorly written. Dio's multiple returns are as bad as Palpatine's. Look. All, right. all, all I've heard is that JoJo's beloved, and whenever someone criticizes it, they point to the title, and then they make you stop saying stuff. It's a bizarre adventure, okay? Bizarre doesn't mean bad. It means bizarre. But, um, yeah, I, I, I'm not intending to watch it anytime soon. You know, yeah. like, so I, I hope it's wonderful, and I hope you guys who love it in chat love it as much as you love it. Angry Super Chat 3. Damn. Just sending all those angers in. Oh, this one says Nom Noms. That's nice. Would Finn's arc in TLJ be better if he criticized Rose and DJ through his trauma as a stormtrooper, calling out several of their points with experience? I mean, it would make him sounds... much more interesting to fucking watch. It sounds categorically better than what we got. <laughs> He's talked at for ages when he has the kind of experience that would give him so much of a uh, sort of input on so many scenarios. Um, yeah, Finn is often cited as just the, one of the biggest losses for the sequel trilogy and potential. Oh, 
Yeah, when I was first watching The Last Jedi, like, I, I, I was angry about Luke, but I was also really upset about how they wasted Finn. Well, he had plenty of potential after The Force Awakens, but... Yeah. Nope. Um, how better would the movie be if King Shark ate Harley? Yeah, I'd be on board. They didn't truly get introduced as friends, you know? So, didn't make the mistake. Um, sad how these villains are the most relatable characters in all superhero movies, DCE or MCU. In fact, most of them are better people than the heroes. In in the current era we're in, yeah. And, it, like, we meme about it, but, like, it's kind of true. Just... I'm... I'm reluctant to call these people villains. Um, so there's, there's complications to it. Like, uh, if, if Pe Peacemaker and uh, Bloodsport are killing people for their respective, like, I'm keeping the peace, I murder you, and I'm, I'm getting money to kill you. You know, like, there's stuff we don't know about them, but in the context of everything we saw in the movies, lots of arguments can be made that these are really good people doing the best that they can in the situations they end up in and stuff. Uh, the proper use of plot armor is that it is seamless and invisible. Often the worst TV series, Star Trek Discovery, and movies rely con constantly on plot armor for their entire writing art. No. Are we... When they say that, do they mean it's supposed to be that, like, the survivability of the character is because it's the, what the writer wants, but we can't actually tell because it's written in a way that they would survive the scenarios reasonably? I'm not sure if that's what they're trying to say or not. I mean, the way that we use it is just, it's unreasonable survival. I, the idea of plot armor meaning, like, uh... You have armor has... from the plot. The plot would have killed you, but you had armor that prevented it, that sort of thing. Yeah, but, like, this definition where, um, because you have a purpose to serve in the plot, even if there's no, like, um, unreasonable survivability from the character, uh, that's plot armor. I... I don't see it. I, well, I, it's just a matter of to know what they meant. It's just a matter of how they might be defining it. Because I'm familiar with this, like the idea of, for example, Luke has plot armor in the trilogy because George is his main character. He's not going to kill him or whatever. And it's just like okay, but and and you know the idea is it's supposed to be seamless and invisible, meaning you write it in a way that Luke doesn't just survive because he's Luke. He survives because all of these events take place in such ways that he has the ability to survive, and it's reasonable that he does. I understand if that's what we're going for, but obviously, colloquially, we use plot armor to specifically point out that someone is surviving when they shouldn't be. Um, and when people Indian bring up, nuke. <laughs> when people bring up, uh, hello, the writer wants them to survive and stuff, it's just like, thank you so much for your contribution. I am in love with the fact he's a... Um, but if, if that's all the Super Chat is saying, it's like, I understand. Um, and that uh, you could categorize it that way. It's just that at this point, it's really useful to signify it quickly that someone is surviving when they shouldn't be. Plot armor. Blah, blah, blah. Um, Efap enjoying a film? No, you were meant to destroy the art, not enjoy it. Say it ain't so, Efap. Say it ain't so. Good movie though. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. We uh, we did enjoy this. So, just don't tell anybody. We'll be fine. Yeah, we have a reputation to maintain. Um, haven't gotten to watch it yet, as my day hasn't gone as planned, but I look forward tonight based on your review. Genuinely happy you guys saw a superhero thing y'all enjoyed. Good night, you massives. Nighty night. What it feels like with how the ratio works, that now that we've enjoyed this, we've got a whole, like, two years of not enjoying it again. Until we get something. Oh, yeah. Something. We are. So, we're, we're dealing with a, uh, rather dire exchange rate at this point. Oh, and we've got a roller coaster coming up with... Doctor Strange 2, Spider-Man 3 for well, No More Home and, uh... So, yeah. well, so, let's see, 2018 we got Into the Spider-Verse, that's probably the best comic book movie that came out that year, right? Joker came out that year. 2018. Joker was 2019. Oh! Okay, yeah, yeah then probably, so, yeah, then it'd be Spider-Verse. I, I was, yeah, Spider-Verse, then Joker, and then... this? Nothing last year, really. Nah. Mm. Well, I mean, well, I we we got Wonder Woman eighty four. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, yeah. So nothing last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's unacceptable how incompetent Amanda Waller is in this movie. That said, I think more people should go watch it. I'd be curious. What? What is the argument for her incompetence? 
I don't think you think we mentioned this, her being asleep and the entire crew being asleep inside of the control room. Just everyone well, I mean, at the exact same humans time. need that to was... sleep eventually. So yeah, if yeah. the idea there is they've got it to alert them the second things come online, isn't that like hyper competence that they've not left the room and they will stay there until they get information again? Well, it's just that they've seemed to have like given up and they're not trying like anything else. They're like, well, we just gotta wait until the comm system. Comes Does that not back. make sense? There you go. What are you gonna do? Because so, it's a black ops mission, right? To like figure stuff like, out. We know like, that at least but, like a yeah, couple but we're days past, right? Those are. There, yeah, probably a couple days. There was there was at least overnight. Yeah, I wasn't it, a fan of that. If you're trying to be covert, and yeah, I, I imagine sending people to like watch over them with buttons of their own. Like and, and, I, and in fairness, they knew Team Two were alive and they're heading to their targets, and they just they lost signal, right? They probably weren't mm -hmm. going to leave the island. Yeah, and if well, if they did, they'd know. It's yeah, just, and if they're they all did, sleeping exactly, on the, the job on the when like, you could that... be sleeping in shifts or something like that. I mean, I know you obviously need sleep and you don't have that big of a crew, um, but I just found it weird that literally everyone, including Waller, are asleep at the panel <laughs> waiting for like an alarm. I was like, okay, I don't know guys. if we knew all of them were asleep. We just know that a lot of them were and that they got alerted the second anything happens, which I don't know, just that just lines up to me. That's fine. I mean, if yeah. they were alerted the second that anything happens, know. that kind of implies that there was at least one person that was awake. <laughs> And if you're gonna, if to, there's gonna be an alarm, it makes again. sense you'd sleep there, you know. Yeah, I um. True enough. I, to me, it seems like it's the, the, they committed quite hard to the point where they're sleeping at their desks. It's like, damn. It really, like some people do that with EFAB, you know. Guests, they will fall asleep at the desk. It's like, damn, committed. That's what that is. Getting nap time. Enap time. I'm halfway there. Uh, living this, on a prayer. This is the best DCU movie, but that's like saying you're the healthiest AIDS patient. No, no, no. Okay, so this movie is not what I would call an AIDS patient. Um, I mean, I, I understand. So this is someone who has a mild rash, but it's also very attractive. I, I understand that it is a very, very low bar, and the DCEU has just been struggling to get over that bar. But this one, I'd say, just fucking leaps over it. Yeah, I think people are acting like everything is so bottom of the barrel that this is like the the best that they came up with, but it's still really bad. It's like I think this is a pretty significant step in quality above this, anything that was in the previous DCEU. This is comparable to I mean some of the better MCU movies. <laughs> I just this is what I wise at least. That's what I mean. Like I I feel like because we get we get told sort of thing that it's like, oh you guys might be praising it too much because you're so used to it being so bad. And I'm just like there's a lot of good in this. There's good stuff. There was legitimately yeah. good things in this, and it is There's funny. A lot I of think it. a lot of the jokes land, and I think the characters are very likable and well written. I'm actually excited to edit this for once. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, a nice feeling. Oh no, the not the lost super chats. How will Rags ever know how many highs he's gotten? I will never know. Uh, the no-kill rule is better world building. Oh, world building. <laughs> That's not world. Uh, Character building. I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, who Maybe cares where it came from? It creates a challenge for storytelling and it's reasonable for the rogues gallery. So, you care where it comes from. Believe me, you do. You don't like it when writers get told they have to write things in a particular way, especially... I don't know why I have to explain this. Imagine someone came along and said, "You know what? This Punisher guy, we not no more blood for this guy. Okay, it's a bit. Mu can he can he just knock people out? Can that be his thing now? He doesn't he doesn't kill people. He's just very invested in making sure that they are hurt enough that they probably won't do it again." Yeah, uh, imagine how original Bat fans felt. They they might have liked Batman because he killed criminals because he gave fuck him fuck him South Pole. They're outnumbered at this point. <laughs> Yeah. This is such a strange argument. It's like, who cares where it came from? It, can't, it creates a challenge for storytelling. It's like, buddy, I can think of lots of things that create challenges for storytelling. How about you can't have any white male leads? That creates a challenge. You might have to change up how you're going to do your characters. That's a fun challenge. Why don't we do that? How about make all of your villains white males? That could be a fun challenge. Maybe it could limit yeah. you in some ways, but also create some reasonable sort of things for you to have to write. Every, uh, you know, Disney Plus MCU show you have must have a black woman that, you know, shows up the 
the white male. What is happening in chat? Finding out the origin of the no-kill rule makes me respect writers even more. Why? What do you, why? But they had to why? put up with it? Or? It's literally a restriction. Why would that make you have more respect? I certainly hope that... Uh, I gotta stop doing the clapping. I certainly <laughs> hope that, that you will that you will stay consistent on this one when you find out that there was like a mandate from a studio that was polit that was of a political leaning that you don't like. Yeah, like, what if someone said because like- Because it is the equivalent. It's way more interesting to make Loki less invested in causing people pain and more invested in just having people respect him as a powerful person and that he's insecure. It's like, no. That's inconsistent with his character. Yeah, it's no. like, I don't care. It, it creates writing That's challenges. That's yeah. Like, what the Dude, fuck? Go for it. Like, you I'm, can like Batman having a no-killing rule, but... Um, I feel like the, the Punisher well, one you... just nails it, because they're saying, like, yeah, oh, yeah. it's 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 a cool thing, it's a reasonable thing, and I like it. It's just like, what if I said that for Punisher, though? And he was just an early comic, a normal well, Punisher, he turns into a Batman type. When we talk about, like, restrictions, they should be restrictions that you chose yourself, not things that are, like, imposed on you by outside forces. How was that good? If you're like, I want to tell this type of story, and then it's like, like that is not allowed. You can never d tell a story like that. Well, then again, I mean, I guess we're willing to uh, hold that principle even with, like, Snyder's vision being maintained for, like, Man of Steel, at least, right? Like, he, he at least has the freedom to make it. It's just, it's going to be shit. Well, it's just shite execution. I think we maintained that throughout. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. At Muller, I think that people are defending it because it led to the Batman they like. Yeah, I think yes, so too. I, I think that's exclusively what people are doing. There. That is just yeah, that, yeah. All right, yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's not it really. If if you be hypothetical for just a moment, it's really easy to envision a character like Batman, the Dark Knight, who is brooding, and you know that does the detective, everything like that, in Gotham City. It's pretty easy to imagine that him as a Punisher type, where he just uses guns and mm -hmm. he fucks people up. It's mm -hmm. really easy to imagine that. Well, he was inspired by the Shadow, I believe, and the Shadow is yeah. basically... He knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men. Man. There's actually yeah. evidence that some of the earlier Batman comics were actually plagiarized from the Shadow, um, word for word in some cases. Um, so that's like an oh my parallel. goodness. Thomas Baker saying, I don't mind Batman killing, but Batman in, v in BVS is... Nothing like how he should be outside of the no-kill rule. He's incredibly stupid and tricked easily, which Batman is known for being very intelligent. I agree. Hey, meme repository, Evan, is there like a Batman show that we watched recently where that sounds Batman's incredibly stupid? Oh, that sounds Doesn't pointed. Sound pointed? One. Yeah. Man, I, I really well, hope it's... that that standard's maintained consistently. Yeah, I was about I to really say, hope so. there's an argument you could make that doesn't involve anything outside of BVS. You could be like, how the fuck did he get this far being this stupid? Like, how the, okay. that doesn't make any sense. Well, that's well, the thing about uh, Batman v Superman, is you can criticize it independent of reading any comics or knowing anything about well, the source material. Like, let's, that doesn't let, matter. Let's go a little bit deeper. The Lego Batman movie, he's a buffoon in that, but he's still a successful crime-fighting vigilante. It, that, that, that technically doesn't make any sense, but fuck it, it's a kids movie comedy well, he's still, he's still parody of... He's still inside of that. He's, like, good <laughs> at fighting and all that. There's, he's also like, fucking yeah. stupid. <laughs> He um, is, yeah. SK said, I question why Batfleck doesn't use guns in BVS if he's willing to kill us. Like, because Zack Snyder wants to show him punching the fuck out of criminals. That's why. He's like, how it's fucking a, cool is this shit? It's a rule of cool thing. And it does look cool in the warehouse, yeah, but he logically should be using guns. Yeah, you should just have sets of pistols, have a rifle. Fucking, he one hands <laughs> that, um, that light machine gun at one point, right? I think that you could, so I think that you, what, what you could do with it is just, he wants to prove that he can fuck people up without guns. I guess that's the, the thing, he'll, he'll challenge himself like that. I don't um, know, that's, yeah. that's... Well, this is an ongoing battle for EFAP, it's never gonna be over. This started all the way back when we had no idea what we were dealing with with Spider-Man. And it's just developed and developed and developed, because we're a part of spheres that seriously believe it's the same, so like when you have a character of a continuity that's disrespected or, or assassinated, they think it's in the same category as when you take someone from a comic and change them. And it's just like, EFAB have never been on that same boat, so we just always present issues for these people every once in a while. It's just like, I'm sorry, but that's just never been what we, how we do it. Um, 
And that's the thing. Superman, Spider-Man, Batman, whoever, um, it'll just keep coming back up. Because this is a very strongly held belief that you cannot go against uh, what oh. you're adapting. And it should be clear that our contention with DCEU Superman has to do with the fact that he's treated as a, like a messianic figure when he's the furthest thing from it in reality. Yeah, and so he's, it's just... he's a bit of a piece of shit. Um, mm -hmm. and... It's not that like you can't have Superman be a piece of shit, just yeah. have the narrative be about him being a piece of shit. They would never do that. They would never do it. that. The fact that it's contradictory is like the main problem with the it's... writing. Exactly. Um, could you guys check out The Suicide Squad is Worse Than You Think by The Synthetic Man? And I just popped it into, into YouTube. The ratio is harmful. It's a 1k up, 5k down. <laughs> he, got, he got pooped on. And the description says, The Suicide Squad is worse than you've been led to believe. It actually baffles me that so-called film critics, read shills, have called this an enjoyable movie. Is this for Wait, what? <laughs> enjoyable is so fucking subjective. What the fuck are you talking Those about? Those shills calling it enjoyable. Like, what? They said, I can uh, only turn my brain off so far. Well, I didn't turn my brain off, and I had a rollicking good time, uh, with a few exceptions. So, I, like, uh, I'm interested, because, I, I mean, there's so much to work with in terms of criticism for this film, but, I, I mean, maybe we'll check it out on 150, maybe, I don't know. Uh, be interesting to see maybe mm -hmm. what is it. Maybe, maybe. Oh, he does a whole breakdown by the looks of the structure. Excellent. He's got chapter headings and everything, oh, so. Oh, boy. Just what we love. Um, Barmia got done dirty by the theatrical cut, but dirtier by the Lego game. Gets killed with a banana and has his corpse used for pachinko. No respect. Uh, what? I. Is it funny? I mean, it's Lego. I'm not gonna. I mean, it's uh, granted it's Lego, but still. Well, this is the thing. It, it, I'd really have to see how it's executed, to be honest with you, because it is yeah, Lego. I don't know. I mean, yeah, that's kind of what they try to do with the Lego games. Is they. They make funnier versions that are like kid friendly. That's that's the style. I be yeah, that's what I mean. It's just like there is we could talk about disrespect, but like I just need to see the context to know if it's more so just having some fun with it rather than I, I, I have I have the oddest feeling that J.R.R. Tolkien, if he saw the Lego Lord of the Rings game, he wouldn't mind it at all. Probably smirk. If, if he if he knew the seen. full context, we're like, eh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. Though he might be pissed that it's been commodified to that degree, maybe? I don't know. I don't know how he felt about all of it. I assume he's more so fine. Because he might like feel it. like Lord of the Rings is a story that shouldn't be moved from where it is. A lot of writers can feel that way. Like Bill Watterson is with Calvin and Hobbes. Um, Thomas Baker in chat saying, please check out Batman Under the Red Hood. Uh, it's a really good movie and Batman does smart things in there. Yeah, I watched that just a little while ago. I think it's like a seven... By my I've standard. seen um, Under the Red Hood, but it's been a long time since I did. It, there's there's some really very like there's some hilarious tisms towards the end, but it's uh it was really compelling and I thought that was overall good. So thumbs up to Under the Red Hood. Please watch Cobra Kai. It has respect for source material and great characters, however plot tisms are pretty frequent, seven out of ten at best, four at worst. Is that um, show F still beloved or is it going bad? I can't remember. So season I, I one don't... was Season one was uh, very well liked. Season two was not very well liked. Season three was considered a return to form, with some issues involving character development being a little bit rushed for a couple of characters. And I mean, season four is coming in December. Um, I like Cobra Kai, and it's really cheesy. It uh, emulates the the campy cheesiness of the Karate Kid movies, and I think that it does a great job of honoring. The characters of uh, Daniel and Johnny and Mr. Miyagi. So, uh, yeah, I like it. I like it quite a bit. Uh, honey badgers specifically target the genitals of their victims. If that's tr again, it was a polar bear was the uh, other option. So, yeah. I, have you yeah, seen a, a polar bear? bear? They will tear you to pieces. <laughs> genitals like included. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how you'd go about fighting the polar bear. It's like the badger. It's like, it, if it's going for the genitals, that sucks. But good God, I, I think I'd have a better chance. Look, you can't live in either Canada or Australia because they both don't exist in the first place. Stop believing in the lies, you sheeple. Hi, Rags. 
Hello. In regards to the bear thing, there's a little saying. If it's brown, lay down. If it's black, fight back. If it's white, good night. So that should tell you all you need to know about the polar bear fight. Good night. Uh, dawn of the final week. 157 hours remain. Bell toll. Oh, is that... Oh, I get it, right? Because I'm assuming they guessed that this stream would be seven. And, and, no, wait. 157 hours. I'm still not sure exactly what that's referring to. I guess just when we start up the anniversary stream. That's probably it. But yes, it's coming. It's on its way. Be very afraid. Anything could happen. Um, hey, Evan, you know what the, the most reliable way of avoiding a uh, polar bear encounter? Uh, probably something from Beat. <laughs> just just live <laughs> in the South Pole. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That so was the, a good riddle. Reference to a different Batman show. Yeah, so, we actually <laughs> got stumped. Listen, this came through... Um, on the regular formatted text, so I'm assuming that YouTube thinks this is totally fine, so I just guess, I guess I'll read it. Uh, Ching Chong, Bing Bong, and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, <laughs> YouTube wanted me to why read would, that. Uh, why would YouTube not allow that? It seems... what This is just some funny noises and then some about jewelry. Um, well, that's the... I, I usually say it for every single Super Chat, but I, um, I just felt like I should lower it to one per stream this time. And that was the one I chose it for. That's the one, you know, complete coincidence if, if you felt there was any okay. particular reasoning. Watching Australian PSAs. Meme, Fringy, what is wrong with your country? Your PSAs are so messed up, I cried so many times. I, uh, wait, I, I don't, what P, I have no idea what PSAs these were. Australian PSA? All I know is those, the, some of those ads you show me, with the Australian, right? The, the, the scary as fuck ones where people just like, Get there horrible are, things out. There are some pretty well. Oh, dude. Oh, you just remind. When I was a kid, and you probably remember this one meme. Um, do you remember the ad that they played, where it was like about wearing seat belts, and the gist of the ad was that there was somebody in the back seat who wasn't wearing a seat belt, and then the woman braked, and because he wasn't wearing a seat belt, he flew into the seat so hard that it um that it killed her. Um. And it was like there was blood and everything, and this was like an ad that played in prime, like in prime time. It was a prime time ad. Jeez, um, that people wore their yeah. seatbelts. Fucking hell! I know that there was that New Zealand one that uh, played here, which I didn't know was from New Zealand, but um, it was the it was a really effective uh, ad about speeding, um, where basically a dude pulls out the uh onto a street he shouldn't have pulled out but the guy who he's about to be hit by was going too fast and if he wasn't going that fast he might have slowed down the two guys have like a chat while everything's frozen it's really effective it's probably one of the best like you know car safety ads ever made have you seen the uh the irish one with the with the toy car and the sweet child of mine cover no no i haven't seen that. no that's, I uh, remember the PSA that turned me off smoking um, when I was really young that like yeah. basically stuck a camera down the guy's throat and showed like what happens to the lungs and everything. Yeah. Um, a lot of yeah, those that, smoking that ones. Mm -hmm. Those smoking yep. ones were very effective. Um, they're, yeah, they're really scary imagery to have on like primetime TV, but hey, gets the job done. Um, Yay! A big alien crab speaking Vietnamese wrote this. All right. The EFAP Facebook group doesn't like Fringy. Oh. Oh. No. Why? Oh, well, I, sure, I like, don't know. I'm probably not, uh... not going to get an answer. <laughs> um. Hi, Molini, Ragarino, and Fringatello. Hello. Hello. Hey. And all. Would recommend The Dead Don't Die for EFAP movies. Could be the lowest one yet. My GF thought it was terrible and she liked Army of the Dead. Oh my god. What, so like, Man, fuck with oh, time? Um, I don't even know what that really means. Because if you like Army of the Dead, like, you're just a weird, bizarre person. I don't see how... Yeah, maybe they can't hate good things at that point, right? Like, yeah, I just... I don't know. Is it an ironic enjoyment? Like, I, I need more... Hmm. We love bringing Nora of that malarkey. <laughs> <laughs> I was screaming for King Shark. Yeah, everyone was sure he was okay. Um, 
How do you think No Way Home and Multiverse of Madness will turn out? Also high regs. Hello. Not good. Plot Not and world good. in the toilet. Characters will hopefully survive. Maybe, Can't guarantee. Maybe. Problem is, when you've got the options they have, they're going to make some stupid decisions more than likely in order to make so, certain things yeah. happen. They're Very... going to bail Wanda out. Yep. She's okay. She's just having grief because she lost a robot uh, husband. Or vibrator, as a lot of people children. say. Yeah, her dildo. <laughs> um, yeah, nothing but concern. I think it's it's a little... We're getting close to the level where it's just like, there's probably no hope for it to be great. There's probably no hope for it to be good. But, oof. In trouble. Um, if you do the throwback for why The Last Jedi is great, could you just oppose with it? Wait, could you do just oppose with the first Okuro's why Ryan Johnson doesn't understand Finn? Do oppose? I, I am very lost on what exactly... I am lost as well. I, uh... I'm sorry, though my brain is on very low power right now. Yeah, um, I'm running on fumes mate, too. I'm yeah. gonna hang in there. As <laughs> do, best do, I can do, do. Been... We're we're at a weird I position as well I, not because well. whenever I'm s scanning for the next one, I read some of the newer ones, and I've read like 15 newer ones. So we're getting to a weird point where I'm gonna start having a cross. Molly, you gay? Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the older <laughs> ones. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think you fellas did a great job covering this movie. Thanks, and have a good one. Oh, that's nice. You're welcome. Oh. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Um, are your thoughts on porn... What are your thoughts on porn in 60 FPS? Something about it looks weird to my eyes. Huh? I don't have... I mean, I don't know. To be honest with you, I, I don't I know that my opinions really would watched. be any different on porn than it would be for movies. I guess... <laughs> I was about to say action scenes versus... <laughs> Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Action scenes. I f yeah. yeah. I feel I, like whatever my opinions are with movies it probably re reflects with porn as well. I, d I don't know if it makes a difference. I could be wrong on that. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know if I've seen porn at sixty. I I just don't know. Um, I'll I'll get back to you on that one. Um, so E five one fifty is next. Any hints or surprises of what's to come, my great Tizmy dudes and Fringy, J.K. Fringy, a commie kiwi is okay every now and again. <laughs> the Commissar Kiwi, you remember the meme. Yeah. Um, hints and surprises for E5150. Well, I mean, honestly, the, the plan is to have a long stream covering videos with lots of little guests coming on. Say hello. Yeah. Um, I, I, I feel like, you know, it's uh, like the. the, the I, I said before, because a lot of people are like, oh, is, uh, you know, you're going to have blah, 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 blah again? I'm like, look, guys, episode 100 was an incredibly special time. Where lots of things happened, 150 is going to be a lot more like 50, where it's like, yeah, we spend some, a lot of a lot of time talking about videos and having a bunch of people on. I um, and I'm just I'm just so flattened on hype for anything these days. I'm almost like shouldn't hype anything at all for anybody in any way, so that you can just enjoy what happens instead of expecting X and getting Y or something. You know, we don't subvert expectations here. However. You know, there's some stuff that's going to happen that I think you guys are going to like. Not necessarily related or not related to 150. Um, and and we're very excited. It's just a week away. Um, f fun fun times, I, I reckon. Um, do, do, do. On Finn. Example would be Finn calling out Rose about sides, calling out the Republic for their lack of response to the First Order's actions, and DJ not understanding the First Order's cruelty, bringing in world and politics um the, to be honest, like i would take that over what we had yeah i think that this is the thing about the sequels and um how we sort of s see everything to do with the characters in them there's just so much stuff you can do they didn't do fuck all it's kind of the problem okay, imagine like james gunn directed tlj or something what kind of fucking will we be in i'm not saying oh, like man. he automatically makes a great movie i just mean like there would be so much like the character work would be so much better. I I I have a brief little vision of that world where James Gunn directed TLJ. Looks like this. Oh. Ah, uh, yes, that looks about right. Is that, um, that is Simpsons, my blowjob bot there? That Simpsons meme where it's just everyone's living in harmony and dancing under the happy sun. It's like, yeah. Is he walking a robot dog? Yeah, why not, he, right? Robot dog. 
Ro like even even dogs have had their jobs automated in the future. Um, I work at a movie theater and I clean movies after. I've seen empty so many empty seats at Squad movies. Zero tickets sold in two days out. Yeah, well, from what I hear, there's Man. a couple movies having this problem. Um, Black Widow had this problem, and so did Jungle Cruise. Not that this means anything specifically, but... Man, I don't know what's gonna happen to the movie industry heading forward if this keeps happening. It's gonna be fucking well, strange. Yeah, because it's, it's when we start having the full exclusive theatrical stuff, like the big things, and seeing how many people show up. That's when, yeah. And these movies are expensive. And not easily remake their money. And like, hmm. you gotta go because I don't want to like over exaggerate, but it's just like this could have cataclysmic changes to everything, right? If this keeps up. Well, well yeah, because you can't afford to make movies that cost like two hundred million dollars, and then they only make three hundred fifty million dollars. It's you, that's not affordable. Um. Maybe we'll get more yeah. stuff like Extraction, which is like, it's not like super Lower high budget. budget. Yeah. And it's yeah, like, it's they, enjoyable, they have to be well crafted, but more creative. If, and... if, but I mean, the thought that, because Lord of the Rings couldn't have existed if it, if it was making like way less money than it did, you yes. lose potentially like the big scale of cinema. Um, of course, only in specific circumstances. There'll be well, other movies that are fine. Surely it would rebound eventually as, you know... Well, will it? it? Or, or are people just like, nah, I want to watch them at home. Like, I, I got used to this. Um, that's that's the question. Yeah, I don't know. Don't know yeah, and there's, there's an see. angle of just how long will all of this last if it actually does reset. Well. And it's just like, hmm... Yeah, I guess that's the I, thing is, like, it doesn't seem like things are going back to normal for a while. Yeah, because I was partially under the impression that we were going back to normal, but yeah, I don't Delta think so. Yeah, and fucked it all up. Yeah, and there's already ones that are apparently on their way after Delta. Like, there's this... And they did, oh, man! It, it seems to me, it's <laughs> like, like, um... It's, it's like yeah. power leveling, really shitty writing. It's like this one is that one, but now it does it twice as fast, or it has it also makes you grow a, another head, and you're just like, Jesus, okay. It's like mm. just like privacy. level up, level up all the time. And um, uh, yeah, because it, it's it's weird to like think about it, just like oh, this what will it do to the movie industry? But it's just like I don't really. That's the thing. Like it feels like it's gonna change how everything works. Because if you have everything in Marvel and Disney and everything, they only manage to pull in half of what they're initial budgets are um well and of course you know even if they make money the companies aren't going to be happy with like having lost again it's opportunity cost if you used to make a billion dollars and you're making 500 million it's like that's a significant cut to your profits mm -hmm. um, God, maybe they'll have to actually hire like filmmakers to be able to provide what feel like bigger budget things for less money because they're talented. I guess it would just be the uh, the the streaming thing. Like there will just be more of a, a just television, like streaming Marvel shows rather than movies, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it could be. I don't know. Um, I I I'm fascinated by that whole thing. I just don't know what's going to happen. Um, I was pretty certain at one point. That Black Widow would just be the sign that things are going back to normal, but it like fucking dropped off a cliff, right? Yeah, because the opening weekend and... wasn't too bad, and I think we get our answers with um, Shang Chi, right? That's going to be the one that. Mm -hmm. Well, Shang Chi is forty-five days exclusive theatrical, so that will be something to indicate like what we should expect, and I guess next year too. And we might even start seeing films get delayed again, from what I understand. Like, just studios are nervous about the next few months. Yeah, because they haven't yeah. committed to a release date for No Way Home, right? Well, No Way Home doesn't have a trailer yet, and it's like, it's August. It feels That's like weird. It feels it's like they have to delay it now. Probably gonna get delayed, probably. Well, mate, I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure Venom got delayed by a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, because that trailer came out and it said fall. It's like, wait, I thought we had a date. <laughs> Something's changed. Oh. Yeah, it's currently scheduled to come out on uh, October fifteenth, the day before yeah. my birthday. So nice little birthday gift, Venom two. Woohoo! Yay! Aren't you excited? 
Well, the thing is, so I think some of them might just do really well randomly. Like, like in ways that we're just like, huh. Like, Venom 2 well, makes a million, a billion rather than we're just like, oh. I think Venom might do really well. It seems like people, like, really excited for Venom. And, uh, um, for whatever reason. Venom. 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 Um, hey, Evan, do you want to suffer? For, with Venom or what? I, I don't <laughs> suffer. No, <laughs> with Venom. So, suffer. Suffer knowing that we, you know, if it weren't for the delays, we would have been less than two months away from the Batman by now. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe that's sparing you. Uh, Who knows? What if the movie's terrible? Yeah, uh, there's <laughs> always that. <laughs> that trailer's so good, though. Um, the trailers can look like anything. That's true. They really can. Hi, Toxic Brood. Big fan of Peter Capaldi. Have you seen In the Loop? He's so funny in that. She is. I have not. Uh, no, I haven't. I have not. Like Peter Capaldi and everything he's in, I've never seen him in. So, um, I'm sure he's, he's very great. good. Bane is hilarious in the animated Harley show. And does anybody anybody have any references for that? Because I I don't know. Uh, so he has the comic book design, but he sounds like Dark Knight Rises Bane. So. <laughs> And he's also an idiot, hmm. but like yeah, they go like an idiot, the not like bad writing idiot. Yeah, like they make him like Batman and Robin Bane, right? Like just oh. grunt and uh, stupid, basically. The Lego Batman movie gave Bane the Tom Hardy voice too. He only had like a couple lines, but it's like, oh yeah, they're, they're doing. <laughs> oh dear. the fire rises. It do what indeed. A weird voice. <laughs> I like it. Right. Uh, I feel like I'd give someone Ghost of Tsushima to get them into gaming. That's like a perfect balance, in my opinion. I would not given them a game no, like I, that. To I start feel like that's market. way to too advanced. Basic. Yeah. Yeah, like, way too much. Yeah. They'll be in over their heads. They because remember, like when people don't have things like that that you and I take for granted, like the idea that one of the thumbsticks or your like your left hand controls your movement and your right hand controls where you're looking. That is a foreign concept to people who have not played video games that they might have to like legitimately practice to work to Absolutely, understand. Yeah. I think I we're just used to it. Nightfire on GameCube was one of the first games I got, if not the one I got with the GameCube. Um, I was loving it, doing all kinds of things, and then I remember because it's it fucking ages ago, but I still remember because it was just it was really like it, I get I guess because like, I look back on some of these memories, and I'm like, oh, did I remember that? Because it taught me something. Maybe is that why it's so strong, but. My dad had a controller, and I was like, yeah, go shoot people, do the thing. And then it would be, walks forward, and then he looks down at the controller for a while, and I'm like, yeah, that one aims, that one moves. And he's like, looks up, looks down, looks up, moves a stick, is confused, looks down. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> this is gonna take a while, apparently. Uh, just because you're so used to it with any controllers. But it wouldn't necessarily it could be something that they snap into after like you know half an hour or so of just getting used to it um yeah it's just a new thing but i just uh, yeah ghost of tsushima is like chill well yeah we're starting with like tetris and and then like a, a platformer that's like a 2d one where it's just moving left and right yeah uh, on the topic of books i've been reading the expanse i think they're fantastic i highly recommend I've heard good things about the Expanse books. Mm. Um, I don't know if any of you guys know anything about those books. Nope, they exist. I That's what they I exist. Um, yeah, I think um, a lot of people have gone off the show now as well. In the later seasons, it's gone. It's gone poopy for those who enjoyed the early ones. I didn't even like the early ones that much. I'm too snooty. Hashtag pimp rage. Mm. Shout out from the Dark Council. Pimp rage, raid. Oh, shouts from Pimp the dark raid council. Shadow Legends. I'm not Shout sure. I I dark feel bad council. if I I'm supposed to recognize that. I just I really don't. I'm not sure what a shout out from the dark council is or Pimp raid. But uh, thanks for the raid. Presumably that is a raid. Yeah. Thank you. Um, boop boop boop. First platformer, Portal or original Mario. Um, I feel First like platform. It in will terms be... of what you should give to a new gamer, probably like original Mario. Mario. I feel like Mario's again, gonna work better because yeah, because they have to master all the 2D. FPS stuff first with the uh, portal. Yeah, like I, I, you probably can't remember your first time 
but like remember that was a I kind of do my first first person shooter that I played like that was Halo and that was a bizarre weird thing where you moved with one and looked with the other it was just you'd never done that before and you had to just learn it um don't take it for granted uh when you think about people who've never done it I think the game I got used to it in that regard was uh, Quake for me on, and it was on PC. I fucking playing so much of Quake, so it was like my training ground without realizing it necessarily for FPS. Yeah, yeah, Quake's good. Y'all should play Quake. I love yeah. Quake. Um, is this the best John Cena movie? It could be. Um, Potentially. I've not seen a lot of John Cena movies, so. Are you sure about that? Yes. <laughs> Though... Oh, that was a fun noise. Yeah, it was. I got it. Uh, sometimes you just can't see him, so he could be in a movie without me realizing it. The only other one uh, I Jim remember is very good with seeing... invisible characters. The only other John Cena movie that I recall seeing was Bumblebee, and I don't think that one's better than The Suicide Squad. I mean, oh, he is he in Bumblebee? In okay. Movie. Yeah. He, he had the best line. He had a great line in that. And <laughs> Evan knows which line I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. That is so By the way, I'm still skipping forward with every press of the key is five seconds, and I'm half an hour behind where we are right now. I went from the fucking beginning. This has been the most bizarre way of doing Super Chats ever, but uh, mm. it's worked out. Um, yeah. Evan, I'm making a video similar to your video on whataboutism, but several logical fallacies. Any advice? Oh, um, you use examples. That's probably what I regret most about making that video. I wished I'd taken more examples from other videos and other movies. Like, try try pulling examples to pick apart. Like, that's that's what I find the most useful. Um, at least in terms of your argumentation, is like structure it around what other people have said, so that it doesn't seem like you're basically making up fallacies or making up examples. So. That's probably the best piece of advice. Um, and they follow up with saying, also, when are you making videos? Uh, probably next planning uh, that El Camino video. That's that's I need to get to the script on that one, but that's probably what's coming next. Not sure what's coming after, but I've got a couple ideas. Yeah. Um, whenever you guys cover anime, it will be the first episode of the last season of EFAP. Oh, God. Um, done, done, done. Also, now, I feel like if we start really covering anime, we're just winding the show down. And... <laughs> Sorry, guys. Season finale. Yeah. Running out of material. Really scratching the bottom of the barrel. Um, also, the only good restrictions are the self-imposed ones. I'm pretty much on that table we're writing, yeah. Um, and it doesn't mean that if you have a restriction, you cannot make awesome stuff. Yeah. It's just, my fucking god, like, we're not a fan of whenever you tell a writer they cannot do something for arbitrary reasons, or whatever reasons you may have, it's just that it, it can uh, taint, it can stain the story they're trying to tell. Uh, Snyder's Superman has more in common with Omni-Man and Homelander than he does traditional Superman. I can believe that. Yeah. I fucking, if you watch um, any Superman content that's like, dare I say, classic or whatever, and then you watch Snyder Superman, this is the stuff I just don't get, man. Like, with like a lot of people who are very version. obsessed with the faithfulness and stuff, it's like, how do you watch that Superman and be like, yeah, I like Snyder's vision, actually. You're like, oh. Because, you know what I mean? It's not just that it's inconsistent and fails the standards that we try to apply, but, like, surely Mr. Krypton had its chance is not the fucking Superman you were looking for. I hope not. I fucking hope not, yeah. Um, for a first game, I feel like Minecraft wouldn't be a bad idea. What do you guys reckon? Um, it wouldn't. Um, I feel like it, because of its pacing, especially its low risk, um, it, it's, it, it's, arguably lack of a fail state especially if you set it to peaceful and just give it to someone and just explain to them so this is your mouse mm -hmm. you use it and you look around and they do that and they said all right now the, here's your movement keys you know this is forward and it's all relative to you 
and you can just give them some time to fiddle around with it. They can jump up and down. They can look around. Nice, simple graphics, easy to look at and process. Looks very approachable in terms of just the aesthetic. Um, they could break a block. This thing, they could break a block and they could see how it's changed and they could stack them on top of each other. And it's like, oh, I can do things. Like I just, the bare bones, basic fundamentals of I can do things in games. I could take a block here and I could put it over here. And then it just gets bigger and bigger from there. But yeah, I think Minecraft would be actually a really good one, a uh, really good first game for people. And you know what? There's a, there's a, there's a, the benefit with that one as well is that there's so much for, the, like the ceiling in terms of exploring all of Minecraft will take them a long time. So if they're comfy with the game, they don't have to go to another game to do more things. It's like no Minecraft, you've now now you can go here and do this and do this and do this, and uh, they'll probably feel it, safer what? developing all yeah. of the stuff in that game. Oh, there are enemies? Oh, no, we, there's no enemies to it. We can turn them on if you want, but there's no enemies here. It's like, oh, can I die? It's like, no, no, you just just walk around and just piddle around with stuff. And, you know, then, you know, once, you, once you're used to, like, looking and moving on, with two independent sets of controls, mm -hmm. um, then we can get into, you know... Yeah, it, it's very, like, the, the difficulty for it is, oh, you've done this, now we can do this. Oh, you've done this, now we can do this. And you just sort of progress. In a, in, a, in a not so bad way. Uh, first FPS was the Jedi Outcast demo level. Um, I'm guessing for that person. And, and I heard, yeah, I, I don't know. know what the demo level was, but I did play that and I liked it quite a bit. I hear good things. I've not played it. Uh, Dark Council is myself, Drunk 3PO, Abu Nas or Abu Nas, uh, Fatal J, Lord Callus, and the Gospel According to Mark every Tuesday at. 8 30 p.m. EST. There you go. Um, I I'm I'm aware of Drunk 3PO. I I'm not sure I'm aware of a Fatal Jays is a name I've heard as well. I'm sorry I I'm not fully not familiar heard. with everybody in the spheres, but uh, good stuff. And of course, thank you for the raid. Um, thank you. That's it. We've caught up. I've scanned through the whole stream. Hooray. There's a chance good I've time. missed one or two because of the way this worked, and I'm sorry about that if I did. Um, and we've we just about hit 10 hours, which feels perfect to me. Before we shut everything down, out. however, Evan, do you wanna do you wanna chat a bit about what you're up to, what you're doing, and where people can find you? People can find me on YouTube. My name is Evan Monroe. Um, I I finally released that uh, Last of Us Part Two video that I've been talking about for a while. Got it through copyright and everything, so. That's up. It's pretty short, but I was I'm proud of how it turned out. Um, like I said a minute ago, the uh, El Camino of Breaking Bad movie is what I want to cover next. That one will probably be a little more comprehensive, so I'm going to be working on the script for that pretty soon. So that's what you should expect coming next. I'm not sure when though. So in the meantime, enjoy my latest video. Sweet link in description. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer one super chat and then move to the next person. You sure you guys didn't skip any super chats? No, I'm not sure. That's the best I can do. Um, we tried. Meme, what are you up to? Where are you going? What's happening? You're all purple. What's going on? Uh, well, you see, um, I've got, um, you know, there are things in in the works, um, things that may or may not manifest on this channel at some point in the near future. Um, who knows what the future holds there? Um, but. Uh, Obviously, I've uh, had some EFAP commitments um, pretty heavy over the, over the last uh, few months or so, which has been very, very good. Um, and over the next few months, I'm hoping that I will be finding a balance with uh, the EFAP content and with the uh, content on my own channel. I'm hoping once I've got Snooderoonies um, out and um, once I've moved on to whatever comes after that, that I'm also going to be able to work on my Mandalorian video. I want to get that out before season three or at least, or before Book of Boba, whatever comes first so yeah. that I'm not suddenly feeling out of date with that one. Uh, so that's, so that's next on the bucket list for me. I've got a, I've also got a, quite a few scripts written and I'm also investing in some primary sources for comic book history stuff. Um, in case I want to make any videos relating to certain things and I want to actually back up my assertions with facts. So, uh, Things are in the works. Uh, yeah, you can check out the channel 
and uh, not much new content there yet, but it's on the way. And I also stream um, on occasion as well. So you can also catch that whenever I feel like and uh, I have time to do that. So yeah, that's what I'm up, up to at the moment. Yes. Chonky things on the way, one could say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so now, back to a super chat. I'll never understand the hate for you guys. Hi, Rags. Hello. We regularly murder art. I think it makes sense. A lot of people hate us. It's, people it's... just... I'm telling you. And... They just can't handle some of the... Mm. What was it you, things to say. You missed my they super chat, sad face. I feel bad now. Because I don't know. I was like, oh man. If, if, if that's truly a true... I was gonna say, like, put your thing in the chat, and I'll read it, and it's like... Wait, it's so someone said they saw it. Okay, put it in chat, and I'll read it, person. Just, just do it, just put it in quotes, I'll, gra I'll grab it. Uh, this, this was a long, hard, somewhat cruel, yet ha. Ah. Ha! Ah. Ha! Hmm. Uh, Southpaw, what are you doing? What's up? What's happening? Your ropes. Explain well, yourself. I am focusing on... Uh, a couple different projects. Uh, the one that's gotten the most attention lately, of course, has been Batman the Animated Series. Went through that show, most of it with Evan, and of course, the uh, long and short of it is, wasn't impressed with most of it. And so, as I work on a video for it, I will actually be covering a fair number of episodes on my podcast. We've only covered one thus far, but it's a big one. It's Heart of Ice. And I didn't have Evan or my other co-host Buzz Axe on for that one, but I did have the meme repository here with me, uh, as well as uh, Shiny FX, and um, we all came to basically the same conclusion about the episode and broke it down, starting at about the three and a half hour point. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just post my the link to my live streams channel where I've got my podcast there. Um, so you can go there and check it out on South Podcast number 20. Uh, and we're going to continue doing more BTS episodes. I'm also bringing on a fellow called Pendulum, a uh, highly underrated content creator that's a uh, part of this community. Um, he made a great almost three-hour critique of A Quiet Place Part 2 with Evan as a, like, sort of a making multiple cameos. Um, really entertaining video. Highly recommend checking it out if you, uh, whether or not you've already seen A Quiet Place 2. And he's also a fan of the show and he's going to be going through it with me. In fact, Evan and I have to watch a couple episodes with him tonight and one of them is, uh, seriously, like, probably my all-time favorite episode. So, yeah, just, I've got some exciting projects going on. I'm still tackling, you know, beloved media and don't worry, The Last of Us 2 is still on my radar. Um, I just really fucking hate thinking about that game. Um, <laughs> so I, I keep putting it off. But that's the thing that we were like, we were planning on like collaborating on with each other, right? Sort of sharing our uh, our footage and whatnot. Oh, fuck. Like... Don't I, like, I'm not going to say anything about any plans I have anymore. It's just not a thing. It's like... uh, yep. Yeah, that's right. Um, so... Who knows? Who knows what's happening next? Um, also, the the person said my super chat was something like I figured Bloodsport's spinning gun was based on Drinker's multi-barrel concept. I did read that out, and we did say. Yes, we a, did. Yeah. yeah. And I, I said I, it's I crazy that that was in 2019 or in 2021. It just it's just whoosh, you know, flying by. Good ideas, they stick. Um. So you got like the dismissive smiley, I think. Censorship is bad in general. However, the no-kill rule is good for Batman. So calling it out for censorship seems like a poor argument in my opinion. So you just no. begged the question. Oh, oh. That's a good old-fashioned begging of the question. You just said it's good for Batman. What does that mean? What does it mean to be good for Batman? What if I told you that adapting Batman to be a black woman is good for Batman because it helps us explore other aspects of the history of the character that could potentially exist there in an alternate. And so I'm saying they cannot use a white guy. Is that, is, if that leads to interesting or good stories, like I, I don't see how we can't just expand your definition into doing anything we want. Why is it that forcing him to not be allowed to kill people is good? Would it, just a killer well, argument to the, me is, is it okay yeah, if I do I this to Punisher? Can I do this to Punisher? 
it's interesting because yeah, perfect for like perfect for Batman is if that isn't its own thing that we have to narrow down what is perfect for bat is it just because you're used to it which is probably what it is yeah. i just because i feel like it's actually kind of weird well, when you see his appearance and his attitude and the kind of uh, the the setting that he's in oftentimes and the vibe that he puts off like i said he he really comes across as a, a punisher he's super violent kind of guy well look at look at uh how comics fans well some of them threw a shit fit over Tim Drake being revealed to be bisexual. It's like, I just, I don't think that they like change. It's like, that is a change that's coming within the comics and the McComics crowd doesn't seem happy with it. But like, Very interesting. You know what I mean though? Cause if I did it to Punisher and people were like, you don't, that's bad for Punisher. It'd be like, but this is what made Batman bat your, what you believe Batman to be. So like if, I did that to Punisher, and then I fast forward a thousand years, and people are just like, yeah, Punisher at one point killed people, I guess, but that's just not who he is anymore. And it was good that they changed it, because I way prefer the Punisher that doesn't kill people. Like, that could happen. What are we basing this on? It's weird. Um, and they said, yeah, so calling out that as censorship seems like a poor argument, in my opinion. It's like, tell it, I mean... You haven't argued me away from it yet. So a uh, case of censorship yields a good result, so this is it's poor to argue against censorship as a principle. Yeah, it doesn't work to me. Um, was, that's bizarre. Yeah. In fairness, they followed up with, sorry, I can't articulate my argument, I give up. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, like, okay. The, no, the, the no kill rule is a fruit of censorship. Fucking cope. That seems to be the case, and I just, as long as we can be straightforward about it, then yeah. Uh, finish The Last of Us 2, forget everything else. Hey, join the queue of people saying that about everything else I've talked about making. Okay? <laughs> I'm just going to well, hide in my corner while I make stuff. Yeah. Um, happy birthday, Metal. Yeah, yeah, so that's very kind. <laughs> uh, I just want to say Cobra Kai is good. Good night. That's what I hear. That's what I oh hear. Oh my god. I, I, so... I, I looked through my little update notification things to see if that guy had responded because I asked him about the do you like Last of Us 2 thing. This one person that I made console reply videos to years ago Jesus. says he commented on one of those videos six hours ago. Oh, like he's not commenting to you. You just you just spotted that, is it? Yeah, four years ago. Damn. And yeah, it just happened to be I, I assume, well, this, maybe this isn't him. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, I don't think it's him. It's, okay, yeah, it's not him. It just happened to be the same name. It was someone, I guess, pretending to be him. But that just took, wow, that was almost, like, really crazy. It's wild. That was a blast very, from the past, almost. Very strange. Very well, strange. A, it's an oversimplification of what happened. So, we're not your enemy on this one. We're not actually, like, trying to say that, um, in this particular, like, it led to bad results. We're just saying that you've got to be consistent on this. What they they changed Batman from who he was into something else, and that we advocate you should be able to do that with adaptations, and that all kinds of things could happen as a result instead of simply being like, no, it. And this applies to Batman. You guys don't like to hear it, but if there is a Batman who kills people, which is the obvious example to go to here, doesn't automatically make him bad. And it's even weirder well, to think of saying, well, okay, but you can concede he's a bad Batman. It's like, eh, what is Batman? Well, then, then you have people saying, well, that's okay because that's his original creators that are making these changes, not some random yeah. people 30 years down the line, which is like, I think that's a highly arbitrary uh, qualification for who's allowed to make changes to these characters i think that there's there's people that you know 200 years from now they could come up with new ideas for like changing a character tweaking a character slightly and making a new version that could be interesting so my thing is i like joel from the last of us a lot the first one um and pedro pascal is playing him in the show I just see him as a different version of the same character however pedro pascal plays him in the show isn't going to affect Joel existing in the original game and how I feel about him. And I'll give him a yeah. shot to 
lend his own interpretation of the character. That's someone how I feel about it. Someone said if he kills innocent people in cold blood, we have a problem. It's like, oh, I give up. <laughs> like, it's just not going to work. If we adapt him to lose every single element of what you believe to be Batman, and it turns out to be great content, and enough people adopt it and say, this is Batman now, which has happened before, it doesn't matter how many changes you make. It's about what the story itself is, what the character itself is written as. But I feel like we're broken records at this point. Yep. Hi, Rax. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Springy, have you ever drank Carlton Draft? And if so, how was it? I don't like beer. So, oh. no, I haven't. Some of the old beer? That's like one of the just Australian beers. And it's just, yeah. You know, like Maybe I have had it. I don't it? know. I don't, I don't like beer. Oh, it's just. Beer, I don't know. It's weird <laughs> when people say that because beer tastes so different. It's such a very I'm sure wide... it does. I'm sure it does, but I don't know anything about beer. Like, it's just not something I'm familiar with. They beer reference. Uh, some of the old commercials for that are hilarious. It's the Carlton Draft Tingle. We demand fat girl Geralt's unbridled praise. That's a fair request. I I, I yes. understand it. Like I know why I, I know why I'd say it. I think that fat Geralt should be in the next Suicide Squad. We'll just Hell yeah! Show up. That's fat Geralt, the man that can punch anything. <laughs> Fists of gold. Fat power. Geralt Milton. Um, every every single time he punches someone, it just launches their head into the nearest object, and then they twirl to the ground. Um, I don't know if we've we we've mentioned it before, but on the prior EFAP, I'm sure we have. But uh, Fringy, you did come out with a video about a movie, and I'm assuming people are aware of it on the old EFAPs. But if not, I was gonna say it's just you and me and Rags left now for sort of outros. Um, right. You made so it about you, toxic you... masculinity, I think. Like like hey, double no, dozen, no, oh, no a dozen it. people it's... get really angry at stuff or something. A double half dozen. A dirty <laughs> dozen. <laughs> There's the superb character writing in Twelve Angry Men. Or Twelve, of 12 Angry Men. That's the new video. And otherwise, I've just been I've just been working on something. He's been working it's on been, something. Uh, it's been keeping me a bit from Endgame stuff in the comic, but there's there's still comic pages coming out every week. Endgame is happening. Um, but yeah, I've, j I've just been working on a on on this other this other project. Um, but yeah. And to be honest with you, that's the, like a, we're struggling to keep up with that. Well, we, we've covered all the Super Chats for this stream, but um, just that, yeah. that backlog's on pause for a moment. There's lots of things happening. And um, yeah, I'm going to be going right back to them as soon as I've gone to sleep slash eaten and then recharge both of those batteries of forms. Um, but the stream is now unlisted. And uh, we're pretty much at the point where I'm, I'm happy to say uh, goodbye. Unless there is there anything else for anybody wants to say before we loomp away? Cock and no. balls. Cock and balls. Yeah, yeah. Anything else? Watch terriers. Watch terriers. There you Flip go. Not deserve better. Flip not deserve better. All right. Milton. Milton. <laughs> okay. Well, that was Milton. real fun. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thanks so much for the donations. Next week, at the same time, will be EFAP 150, which is your, your good old-fashioned standard affair of a 24-hour set of us with different guests all the way through looking at all kinds of videos. Hopefully we'll have lots of fun. See you guys there. Um, and until then, good night. Yeah. Uh, good night. Good night, everyone. Uh. <laughs> Toodaloo. Goodbye. Boy. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I, I'm running on like an hour and a half of sleep. Yeah. I got three hours of myself.